I want to break it. <laughs> but there's just pieces <laughs> flying out of it. Wait a second. <laughs> Come on. Do we get one ladder? <laughs> okay. Do we, do we fight for the ladder? Have you got any ideas of what you might be doing today? Um, something to do with a car. I don't even have a driver's license. Okay, well, this should be pretty good then. Hello, guys. Did you sleep well? Because we have a lot of work to do. So the first thing is... Changing the tire. Yeah, the wheel. Okay, so get to the work and I'll get my morning coffee. Go on. Zero instructions. Shouldn't be too hard, right? No, <laughs> easy. So I guess we need to change this tire into this tire. How do we do that? Unscrew the, the bolt. So we need the, the, the clutch. <laughs> this is red. Wrench. Yes. But my dad is absolutely, absolutely gonna kill me because <laughs> I've been doing this with him for 10 years. You wanna try? Yeah. Ah, yeah, this works. Yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But is the car already up? Or do we need to put it up? Maybe we should put it more up, or? Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. nice. Yeah, that should be enough. Oh, wait. I need to hold it, maybe, huh? We're doing it wrong. Wow, this one is hard, huh? This is... Because maybe it's... Maybe it's... Take it out? <laughs> <laughs> How did you do that? No, I don't know. To take it out. You both should use your muscles. <laughs> Bro, you got to crush my hand. We're doing something wrong, I feel like that. Yeah. The, the wheel shouldn't rotate. There is a way. I'm missing one step. Are you made one step faster than should be made? Okay, so first step was we lifted the car. Yeah. And then we started uh, unscrewing, right? Yeah. Maybe you should uh, exchange them. So first unscrew and then lift up. Ah, okay, yeah, probably this makes sense. Then it wouldn't rotate because the weight is on it, right? Ooh. Yeah. Come on, this can't be right. <laughs> Come on, guys. <laughs> More power? You should uh, put it up because you lose bolts and the wheel is in a oh, different sure. direction. Okay. Okay, now what we need to do, David, we need to screw them all on again, and then we right. put it down. And then again? And then we do it. This is, I think, the start. It seems we're, like we're back to the start again. Am I, am I right? Yeah, so I think we screwed this up a little bit. This is stuck. We need to move this tire a little. Ah, okay. okay. And now, because the, the wheel is, yeah, yeah, is yeah. moving. Yeah. When you loosen every single one, then we lift it up and we take the wheel. Exactly. I think it's time for coffee break. Okay, try and not take it off. No. Not yet, we need to unscrew it, I think. More. Come on, come on. Okay, take it off. Oh! Yeah! First one! Okay, oh. every single one now. <gasps> oh, bro, this is exhausting. No, okay. So the last one? Two more. So two more, okay. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> come on! <laughs> Just get a breather, get a breather. <laughs> Take a breath. Yeah. Get some oxygen into your well, brain. It looks like you're nearly done the first tire. What's up? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is tough, tough job. <laughs> David is red. And he's doing, it looks like he's doing most of the heavy lifting. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to hold Oh, you're holding the tire. Okay, okay. okay. Just two more, David. Yeah, yeah, bro. I try my best. Just maybe check this one. You were doing the wrong one every time? Bro, this was this is valid information. No, don't tell me, David. Yeah, I think so. It's even marked, bro. We are stupid. Oh, I'm stupid. No, this is way easier. Bro, we were oh, using the wrong I wrench. I thought you checked all of them. Oh my god. <gasps> oh. We just had a little workout. We made it extra challenging. The first one, and we have three more. No, we have three more. No, <laughs> no. no I'm just kidding. <laughs> now we put on the same reverse, like this. Boom! Nice. Number one. You, I can see your, your teaching technique is like leave them to figure it out on their own. It's the best way to and learn. I remember it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like it. Okay, now we can put it down and then we can Good. tighten it at the end. How do we put it down? Uh, here, if I remember, and then you twist it. That's right. You can use this one. Right. Yeah, and when it clicks, it's done. 
doesn't click. No, 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 you can, you can use more force, trust me. More force? Yeah, you can use it, but don't jump on it. Yeah. It's enough. Yeah, we're so, done. Should, be, should be done, no? That's all. How long? About <laughs> five minutes. Like, this was the first time I did something with a car. I never will forget this. Next one. We will try yeah. to change the wipers. I think we can do a kind of competition. Right side and left side. Okay. Do we get one ladder? <laughs> do, okay. do we, do we fight ladder. for the ladder? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do here? I don't want to break it. Okay. <laughs> I can't imagine. But <laughs> there's just pieces <laughs> flying out of it. It's my client car. <laughs> can you also do this? This? Oh, no. And do this? No, this can't do it. <laughs> no, I can't now. After piece. some pieces came off, we can do this stuff. Oh, wait. Oh, yeah. I saw it. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> oh, I think I saw it. Down, 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 down. Yeah. Uh, oh my god, this is easy. Yeah. Okay, but if you break the new one. <laughs> wait, I put, I, I put it on, but without the. <laughs> why did he check? But why is it like that? This part is on. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Teamwork? Not the kind of first competition. <laughs> you already won. <laughs> the first place. <laughs> You've done it now? Perfect. Looks great. When you figure it out by yourself, you really learn it. I didn't learn it now because Matti uh, finished it. One activity done and we got another one coming up. So. There's one more? Yeah, there's another activity. So let's find out let's what it's going to be. Right, let's go. Are you familiar with the car battery? No. Nope. So go on. All right, first we need to open the trunk. Okay, so you can go. No, 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 I don't go. Should, you should go. <laughs> Bro, it's a sports car. But... Wait here. Aha. Holy shit. Yeah. yeah, this I know. Nice done. Yes, man. To open these arrows here, and you just, I guess, open. Okay. We need to unscrew both of these, and then you just take it out like this. Oh, you just do this. Okay. Ah, I think you need to unscrew this one. Yeah, yeah. we need to pull this off then. Is it going? Yeah, it's working. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Nice. Oh, but wait, wait, wait. What? Wait. You be put it down. It's fine. The plus oh. was. Jesus Christ. Plus was left. Heavy. Plus was left. It was here, yeah. Left, yeah. Yeah. Okay, nice. Oh, I see. Nice. Easy. Yeah? Yeah? It's okay. Put it back on top. Yeah. Should be fine. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine? Yeah. It's okay. And then. Perfect. Have you gained some some experience that I processed? It was really interesting, to be honest. Like um, and also like really useful, right? How do you think the guys did today? They did their best. <laughs> <laughs> they did. <laughs> well, you know. I think they need more experience, but they are quite smart. So if you will be tired of playing games. You are welcome. Now the question is, would you drive this car after you've done all the work on it today? Yeah, 100%. I think we can drive into the sunset. We've done <laughs> our work today and uh, yeah. yeah. It's been fantastic having you guys here, learning some new skills and plenty to take away from this one of Roll Swap. Congratulations to Process and Mantu for taking on the challenge. Thank you. All right, we're here with the we're here with the Navi camp. I'm diving into the middle of the camp. Hey, Ima's gonna run, but I'm with Alexi. How are you doing, Alexi? I'm doing good. Starting with some media. Starting with some media, yeah. I'm gonna pause while these guys walk off. I want to get your thoughts before they, you know, so that way you can speak openly of them. They can't hear you, so you can be truthful. <sighs> Alexi, suddenly everybody's talking about Navi, like the new dark horse. Yeah, what's the case? What's the case there? How have you done this? How have you done this? I have no idea. None at all? Some. Tell us the secrets. Our past three games. Okay, okay. Just those three games are starting to shape the narrative. Now you come into Katowice, obviously stakes are higher, dude. Uh, you guys get to skip the play-in. Does that feel good or is that something that you would have liked to have been involved in? I mean, to be honest, it does feel nice. I've been uh, some, like playing in the play-in and it feels nice that you kind of get the the tournament rust away. Yeah, yeah. The, but at the same time, we did play some officials this year already and we just came from the blast groups which went fine so i think we we already have some 
mattress under all beds. You're there. You're there. You guys, are, there's no doubt you're coming in hot. Uh, we've seen a marked improvement statistically from the core of this team. Everybody is playing better straight up. Um, is that something that everybody is very aware of? Is it something that, you, that, that, that they're talking about? Like, like, Ema, this has to feel good for him in particular as like, let's be real, bro. There was a lot of people calling for his head pretty quick with the drop off after Paris. That's something that you've pushed aside and you've gotten way better out of him. So is it is it something you are particularly focused on? Is it something that he is super aware of? Um, just, you know, speak of that, please. I mean, there are many factors that could um, change someone's performance. We had a roster change. He had more time in the system. He had more matches um, played, more officials, more mistakes to be fixed, if you could say so. And overall, the whole team did it. And we evolved as a team. And when the team is doing good, that's when usually the individuals perform better, right? I mean, as an IGL also, it's way easier to call when people finally understand their roles in certain stat, uh, strats or how to play their positions on the maps or how we want to play as a unit. And I think that's the thing we've been getting a lot stronger in. And that's the reason uh, why people perform better. So players play better, team plays better, Alexi B keeps winning. That's, that's the secret sauce of Navi now. That's the sauce. You got to tell me, bro. How do you beat your ex-teammates so consistently? What's that secret sauce? That's the secret sauce that you cannot... You're not, you're not selling it. You're not selling it? I'm not selling it. No matter what? No matter what. Okay. I mean, Alexi, you just keep doing you, bro, because what you do works. Thanks, See you. See you. Ime. Ime, my friend. Ime. You got a second. I have to. Two seconds. All right, come here. Two seconds. One. You're playing super well right now, bro. How good does it feel to be back on top? Not that well. Not that well? Could be room for better, just. Okay, what, what's going to take you there then? Practice. Practice makes perfect? Of course. I tried to ask Alexi earlier. I said, Alexi, what's the secret sauce right now with Navi? Like, why is it all working? Why is it all coming to form? Why is everything looking good at the start of the year? He wouldn't tell me his secrets. Will you tell me Alexi's secrets? I mean, there is no secrets. Basically, we are playing 24-7. Okay. And then out of that, we just, uh, like, basically, we had boot camp and then we play over and over and over. And then we are testing each other even more. Then we have, uh, we are getting used to each other a lot in the server, outside of the server. And that helps a lot because you might you will get like a lot of situation that comes out of nowhere because in official it's totally different between uh, practice and then if you have something new then you you know you need to know how to react like, in like not even a second like you have to react faster and to be on the same page with the person next to you yeah. and then that helps out, us a lot because we just uh, we are just we have, we are building more chemistry between us that's good that's good to hear I, I do agree with this right it comes down to the split second and you don't have time to think about how to react you just got to do it you got to know the guy to your left the guy to your right and you got to know that he's got your back does it feel right now like everybody on Navi's got each other's backs? Of course. Yeah? Yes, definitely. Who's the least trustworthy? No one doesn't exist anyone like this. Not at all? Not at all. Not even JL? No, no, he's the hyper man. Okay, all right. Where is he? There he is. I'm gonna go ask him the same thing. Go. Best of luck, bro. Thank you. Strike squad, moving out. JL, my dude. Gonna hit you up. Yeah, you better run, wonderful. Better run, better run, dude. It's all good. JL. Hi. How's the year going? Fucking awesome. Yeah, it is fucking awesome, isn't it? Yeah, good for you guys. Uh, I just talked to Ema. I was asking him why exactly everything has kind of hit the ground running in 2024. He said the boot camp was good. He says that everybody on Navi have each other's backs right now. Do you feel the same way? Of course, of course, of course. I feel that the trust has grown immensely in our camp. Um, we love each other, we support each other, and we're there for each other whenever it needs. Well, that's interesting, because I asked him, I said, who, who's the least trustworthy person on Navi? And he said, JL. It's fucking crazy, man. That's because I just lied to you. He said, there is no lack of trust, and everybody has everybody's back. I was just testing you. That heart's pounding. Ah, I couldn't believe you could do such a thing to me. And what if I ask you the same question? Is there a single weak link in this Navi camp? What about Blade? Okay, he's a quiet guy. He's not in the server with you. There's no sabotage? No, 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 for sure. I, I think in the Navi camp, whenever things are going wrong, we're going to point it out. We're going to say, we suck at this and we should improve on that. And there's no talking behind your back. And we just try to fix things if they come up. 
It sounds great. It sounds like something everybody should be a part of and everybody should aspire for. You know, there's a lot of uh, talk right now in Counter-Strike. I think about like team identity, team culture, this and that, and seeing Navi come to form at the start of the year. We don't want to jinx it. You know, but uh, it's nice to see that these are the kinds of ideas and thoughts and positive things that you guys are pushing forward. You always strike me as a positive guy. So what's what's one positive thing everybody should do every day to be more like JL? Oh, more like me? Ah, uh, you caught me off guard there. Uh, whew, uh, How do you do it, man? What's got you smiling at the start of every day? I don't know, wake up. Wash your face, uh, look into the mirror, smile and say, you got this, man. You got this. You got this. You got this. And maybe, maybe Navi got this too. Good, good luck in Cato, brother. Good to see you. It is my pleasure to introduce all of you to Ula, the Navi performance coach. Is that your official, official title? Correct. Yes. And how long have you been a performance coach? Um, so performance coach in esports, it's been like 10 years. So I'm like dinosaur right now, right? <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that. Uh, yeah, it's 10 years. And uh, yeah, I've started working with Navi as of October. And so far, so good. I would say so far, very good, uh, especially in 2024. It feels like, you know, I just had the chance to talk to the boys. They they are all very positive at the moment in, in the mental space. So what is that like trying to bring together, you know, five, six players or coach included at that point? You know, human beings, are we're, we're a complicated species and it's your job to make sure that all of them are working aligned with one another. So what are some of the, the, the common challenges or challenges, particularly with this Navi team that you've kind of faced in recent months? I mean, common challenge, not only in esports, but also in traditional sport, is that um, athletes come into the team having like individual goal. And quite often that individual goal that they can have inside of a team environment could be super destructive. So usually my work starts with like aligning the team into having a common goal, a goal that is achievable, a goal that is within their reach, that is motivating them to push the train like forward, you know, so we are not stopping, we are not looking around, we are not thinking what others think about us, but what we want to get into the specific, from a specific scenario, from a specific tournament. So I feel like starting a work with the team is very often building that atmosphere that uh, you know you have teammates that you can trust that would sacrifice themselves for you good for the good of the team so there is no me inside so as long as you unite them as long as people have the same vision the same level of productivity because that is also super important inside of the team then it's easy to like give it a shape and see you know and push like as far as you can just to see how much or like how how well they can play together i like this point you just bring up about balanced productivity right um it's it's a notorious tale in counter-strike of there being harder workers and lesser hard workers so in this you know in this instance when you do have somebody who say is struggling to keep up in that level whether it's professionalism or whether it's just you know maybe they don't have the right system in place to to maximize themselves uh how do you go about that without maybe stepping on certain people's toes. We know that egos can be sensitive. Uh, what are some of the tools that you've been able to utilize to make sure that everybody is aligned in that regard? I mean, one of the best tools is to make people equal inside of the team. So there is no uh, a star player inside of the team. We're all equal. We all have the same rules that we apply. And we introduced uh, in uh, like in Navi, but like we know, in all the teams I've been working with, we have a specific schedule that we adapt and there is no person inside that we are not doing something together as a team. So whether that's a morning walk, whether that's a, you know, mental warm up, whether that's visualization, whether that's trying new activities that are supposed to engage them into um, um, getting more productive on the server. Inside of this environment, what I like the most is that there is no no, that people are trying, they're giving a shot and they're believing in all the things we're doing. So it doesn't matter if I'm introducing, I don't know, easy cross crawl activities, if we're introducing meditation, breathing or, you know, teaching or maybe learning about each other. If you build an environment where people really are interested in each other and they're having fun with it, then it's very easy to translate that on the server. And then that feeling of we're the same, we're equally important, gives the players the vibe that, uh, yeah, I can do anything for the player because the other player will do the same for me. So it's all about how you manage the energy from the very beginning once you join the team, just to make sure 
we spend time together, we eat together, but we also give each other space when it's needed. So it's all about building that sensitive atmosphere of trust, support, but at the same time, the atmosphere of uh, we can do it together. Mm, all right. So a certain togetherness, yes. right, must be key. I, I like that. Well said. Um, there's also this question, I think, on my mind right now, just because th there's a big talk in the town here in Katowice with the, the big land debut of Donk at Tier 1 International Counter-Strike. And when we talk about Donk, we're talking about somebody, a young man who's coming into a world of huge pressure. And, you know, you have younger players on your team as well at the moment. And when we talk about togetherness and equality between five different pieces, but some Somebody can have maybe say a decade or a near decade more of not only in-game experience but life experience. What do you make of that kind of a situation where somebody is so fresh, not just to say tier one Counter-Strike and, and professional competition, but just kind of life in general? Mm -hmm. I mean, it all depends on the player. I've been facing many situations in life when we had a fantastic talent, a uh, very skilled individual. But if it comes to teamwork and team environment, the person was totally not a fit in. And after a season or two, we had to say goodbye to the player and we've never seen the player again. So. It's kind of how you build your reputation, but also how, what kind of opinion your teammates have about you. If you're supportive, if you can mingle, if you respect everyone around, I feel like that is a um, that is something that uh, is building your personality as a player. But if you're not humble, if you're very, I would say, selfish and like you know try to get all the spotlight and build your own personality on other people's back, then obviously this is something that as a young talent, people feel like the God mode is there, but you know, the God mode is as strong as your teammates can handle this. So it's again, it all goes down into um, the personality, how you find yourself in the team, but also how you respect your teammates, even when you just, let's say, have a spotlight as long as it's your spotlight and you're not building yourself on others' back, then that's absolutely fine. Oh, so incredibly well said. Thank you, Ula, for your time. You. It's always a pleasure speaking to the professionals in the space. Yeah, thank you so much. What's up? What's good, man? How you doing? Good, and you? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. Well, here, I don't even know if we're supposed to walk and talk, but we can. To walk and talk? We, we can just stand here, too. Uh, we're too good at it, so it doesn't matter. It's too easy. It's too easy. Yeah. It's too easy. Hey, man, so Katowice. You know, it's kind of a big one uh, for you, though. Pretty big one, right? Yeah, definitely. Especially after last year's uh, result for me and uh, our ro last roster. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So you come down here, though. Like, what are some of the big challenges you think that Miles is facing coming in here? Um, I think it's uh, a little bit about consistency, uh, what we show in practice and officials. Uh, I think practice has been really good for us. And, uh, yeah, I want to show that we can do the same in officials. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to show that we're still a contender team. and. Yeah, I think that's the biggest focus for us this event to make sure we're on point and uh, doing our thing. So let me ask you this, man, because, you know, every team's got different stuff going on. Um, so what is one thing when you look at your team and your teammates, you're like, we can do this better, like in game, out of game, however you want to put it? Well, I think, uh, as I said before, it's consistency, consistency in our performances, individuals, myself included, uh, consistency in our communication. I think that differs from game to game. And I think when people are on point and they're playing their best game in this team, all of us were, like in my opinion, one of the best in the world. Uh, so I think our potential is very high. And one thing I would really like to work on with my team is comms and uh, our progress and how consistent we are um, with it. So probably that. So you guys play a lot of scrims coming in here, obviously, I'd imagine. Uh oh. What's up, David? Here, hey. You want this, or? <laughs> ah. You guys know each other, right? Yeah, a little bit. That's my homie. Nah, that's my homie. Interesting thing, though, right? So, you, I mean, you have teammates over the course of your career, and then you see them, and everybody kind of goes different ways at a certain point. Um, how do you feel about that? Make you feel a little old or sad or, like, happy that it happened or sad that it didn't happen? What do you think? I mean, I think it's a combination of everything. Uh, I'm, I'm happy for David. I think he's uh, in a place that he uh, wanted to be. I think he's in a great team, of course. They're uh, one of the best, if not the best team in the world. Um, so I'm happy for him. I'm also happy for my past teammates. Uh, for me, in general, I don't take stuff as badly. I just take his experiences. So mm -hmm. I'm happy I experienced playing with Dexter, JDC, and yeah. uh, Frozen. And uh, I mean, everyone in my past teams as well, before Mouse as well. So I think I'm just happy where people are and how where they are. And I hope that they're happy. Um, for example, David, I hope he's happy in yeah. face. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's just about experiencing and having fun with everyone and making the best out of every moment. So in those moments before you come in here and before you get to playing and getting into the official tournament itself, you're playing practice matches, right? You're playing scrims. So tell me on the radar, who's the one that everyone's like, 
holy sh they're beating everybody in scrims? Uh, I think on top of my head, definitely. I mean, Spirit is one of the main ones. Yeah. I mean, I think they are playing incredible. Uh, I mean, obviously, Donk is amazing. Uh, it was, it's always to fight, nice to fight against him because we play the same role. So, yeah, uh, the kid's nuts. Yeah, he's, he's incredible. Yeah. Like, honestly, he's very good. He's very smart as well. It's not only about his aim. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, we play the same roles. We face each other often in the same position. So, it's mm -hmm. nice to play against him. Um, but, yeah, I'm excited to see how they do in officials uh, with their full roster here. Um, and uh, yeah, I think they're a great team to look out for, definitely. So all that spotlight on Jim Pat is now on Donk. Are you sad about that or? I mean, I don't think that's true. I think they play different roles. Uh, so I'll just mess with you. I know, I'll just <laughs> give you the, the, the boring answer. I think Jimmy is, uh, is, is incredible. I, th I don't think you can compare between them because of their roles, but uh, I think they both deserve credit. They both should get praise. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to stay with Jimmy on my team and see, uh, <laughs> see where he thrives as an individual. Better with you than against you. Definitely, yeah. Definitely that. All right. Well, that's Miles. We're going to walk off, man. We're just going to walk off out of here. Come on, man. Come on. Bye. What's going on, Jimmy? You uh, you hanging out in the player lounge, huh? What you doing in here? Yeah, we were playing some games, and I got to beat. And in every game, I lost in every game. No chance. Tell me about this game, because we did get the footage of you playing it. But, like, A, it's really loud. And B, I don't know, there's a lot going on there. So tell me your thoughts on this game. Yeah, I think some some kind of reflex game, and I I'm really bad at this as well. Um, <laughs> I played against a couple of people and I lost. Um, it's just uh, not made for me, I guess. Maybe next year. <laughs> Maybe next year, yeah. <laughs> Maybe next year. So, Jim Pat, you've been around for a while now. What are you thinking, man? How do you feel about it when you come into Katowice? I mean, I'm really excited to be honest. Yeah. Especially playing with Luda now, we had some good practice, I would say. And also, I would like to play in front of the no. Sporek Arena. It would be really nice. Um, is that a bucket list thing? Is that like something, oh, I got to do that, like got to do it, right? Yeah, of course it is, because also my brother, he said that the Spodek Arena he was really amazing when he played in the major final, so I'm really looking forward to that one. Wait, who played in the major final? Sergei, my brother. Hmm, funny that. Now you know, because if you didn't know, now you know, Jim Pat. Uh, what's he up to these days? Hmm? What's he up to? Uh, he's just chilling, living yeah. life. He's not playing that much. Hmm. Everyone needs a break every now and then, I understand. So uh, rest of your day, what do you got to do? You got some more media stuff, I'm sure of it. You got a couple cameras here. What, uh, what do you do with the rest of your day after this? Mm, yeah, we finish the media and then I think we just have some team, team talk and we preparing for the event in general. And then tomorrow maybe we have game or the day after, not sure yet, I think. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to those ones. I mean, team talks are fun, but for you, what's the most fun part about being a professional Counter-Strike player? I don't know, maybe just having fun with the team. I really mm -hmm. enjoyed it and just spending quality time together. Everybody's laughing, having a good time. That's a good vibe, right? It's a good feel. Yeah, exactly. Huh. <clears throat> well, that's Jim Fat. This is Miles. And uh, I'm going to let them go on about their day. As you can tell, they're pretty busy over here. So, um, yeah, we'll let them, we'll just kind of let them exist. How about that? <laughs> this is the lobby. <laughs> Intel Extreme Masters Katowice is brought to you in part by Intel, Acer Predator, DHL, Monster Energy, the United States Air Force, One X Bets, and White Market.
We are deep in the Selassian countryside for the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice, where if you're really, really quiet, you can spot a wild EVS op, a producer, even an infamous sighting of a TD. Yesterday, there was a lot of chaos, so let's start off with the order. Phase taking down Rebels 2-0. Complexity turning up big versus Apex. Heroic, yeah, they did push G2 to the brink, but when you've got an inform Manasi showing up, it's not going to end well for your opponent. So, Shocks, how does that set up the A stream today? Well then, on A stream, we've got tons of action. At the end of the day, it's FaZe versus Eternal Fire. Do you think Eternal Fire can do it? Before the tournament, I would have said no, but for now, it looks like it's possible, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, Navi is also playing Apex, and I'm going to talk to JL. Before that, Navi lost yesterday, so... Yeah, but, I mean, they, they felt the dunk, and they experienced it <laughs> firsthand. I'm going to be sure that the Apex is not going to be the same. Yeah, they got absolutely donked indeed. And the first one we're going to see on A stream is Cloud9 versus Maus. Maus, it's the first time we're going to see them here in Katowice. I'm really curious what they're going to look like with Brawlan. Yeah, new roster. Brawlan, one of the best things to come out of Sweden in the last couple of years. Haven't really found his groove, but maybe his time is now. Maybe his time is now indeed. Over to you, Tech Girl. Thank you so much, Shock. So over on the B stream later today, we have Rebels up against Falcons. Polish fans are going to love that one, Moses. Yeah, potentially. It'd be nice if they could have some hope of another Polish team making it through the group stage or at least challenging it. But Falcons is such a good team. They're still going to be favorites despite the fact that they looked mortal the other day and it's a new lineup. They should have all the advantages. Are you going to be rooting for your NA brothers complexity when they face off against Spirit? Uh, my heart's going to be with them. My head's going to be with Spirit. I'm just thinking about Grimm saying he's excited to see what the hype is about. And I think that's going to be a rude awakening. I I think he's going to be pretty upset, to be honest, but we'll have to see how it plays out. We're starting it off with Monty up against Gamer Legion. That should be a fun one. It should be, and I'll tell you what, I love the way Gamer Legion ended the play-in stage. They absolutely demolished VP at their own game. Snacks called a wonderful game. Gamer Legion looked great. Monty hasn't played a single official yet in 2024. They could just get steamrolled. Could be a bit of ring rust. A little bit of a fist bump for making it down the stairs. Good Booyah. job. Freya, I, I hear you might have lost one of our analysts. Yeah, we have got so many banging games set to go down today at the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice, but I don't want to alarm anybody. Um, Machu was meant to join me. Anybody got eyes on Machu? Where the f Machu? Machu is... Is that you? What do you want? Um, <laughs> Machu, my dude, we're, we're live. Look, that, that little red light there means, means we're live. Are you all right? Did Vitality come back? No, no, Vitality didn't come back. I'm sorry. Then just leave me in peace. M Machu, um, let's be real, my dude. We've got a job to do. Come on, come on. O o Ollie, Ollie, come come help me. Get get this coat off, man. I've never seen you in such a state in my life. Are you all right? Um, they're not eliminated, Machu. Maybe we should look on the bright side of things. One loss doesn't mean vitality is out. It's okay. Breathe. Deep breathe in. And I'm a professional. Out. I'm a professional. I have a job to do. All right, um, I'm back. Let's start with some exposure therapy. Sorry, Machu, you come from psychology. This is the best way to get over a traumatic experience. Relive the pain. Do we have to? Yeah, we do. Explain to me, why did Vitality lose out yesterday to Ents? I don't know. It's, you know. it's all confused in my head. I'm trying to relive this moment. I spent the night here by the trophy just trying to understand what happened. Um, Apex, you know, very erratic. I think we saw the ghost of last year. You know, Katowice is still haunting these halls. I mean, I don't want to take anything away from Ents. It was beautiful. Beautiful, Glaive, oh my God. But what the hell is going on with Vitality? I, I, I'm worried, I'm scared, but they're not out quite yet. Yeah, Maui, if you're out there, please check the air quality for the next matchup for Vitality. I want to see if Zywu's going to be back. But let's not take anything away from Enz. Hades, he was looking great if we can take away the Vitality bias just for a second. Oh yeah, if I put that to the corner for a second, that was great from Hades. Oh my God, the, the whole team, the whole team was surprising. Take two maps out of three for a new project like Enz. What a scalp to be able to push Vitality down to the lower bracket. Okay, maybe some shining light. I'm really reaching here. Maja is kind of French, right? He speaks I guess French he speaks French. So, so I claim him. great showing right. for Eternal Fire just yesterday yeah. versus Falcon. And I'm going to say I'm not that surprised because I had a feeling that they would peak in this moment. When you look at some of their results ramping up and how many hours of Counter-Strike they had, we carry at the top of the FPL stats as well. That is a tell. That is definitely a tell. He's been giving us good performances here. Major, I think you told me he had a Banger of a game. Yeah, we talk about the youngest player on the side of Falcons. Uh, that's, of course, Boris. The oldest player on the side of Eternal Fire. That's, of course, Major. Um, ten head-to-head -head duels. How many times did the old guard come out on top? I'm going to say four. 
Uh, you're wrong. Ten. Every what? single damn time Maja went head to head with Boros, he took him down. Age is just a number. What uh, the hell I is guess. that? So what you're telling me is I should go back to being a player? You can come back anytime you want, Matthew. Although I don't want you to leave this. Let's talk about the last matchup uh, that we've got on our radar. Of course, it was Spirit versus Navi. Yes. We wanted to see Spirit get tested. Whew. How did they pass? Uh, flying colors, flying colors, honestly. Every single game of Spirit is going to come with a ton of eyes and scrutiny and expectations. And when they lost that second map versus Na'Vi, I started thinking, ooh, here, we, here it is, here it is. Like, it's everybody calm down. But they made a fool out of me. Huge reaction on map number three. Off the back of Shiro as well. As if we had forgotten about Shiro and who he can be, he reminded everybody here in Katowice of the kind of why he can play. A bunch of clutches, great stats, great openings as well. Don't for once had to do to his left or his right and say, wow, Shiro, you, you got my back on this one. It was incredible to see them going up against what was their kind of biggest test today. Excited to see them going forward. Of course, we've got the trophy just behind us. We've got a whole bunch of cash to give away, but also a very important spot in terms of the Intel Grand Slam. So Tech Girl, uh, how is that shaping up so far? Several teams here at Intel Extreme Masters Katowice are in contention for Season 5 of the Intel Grand Slam. They've already lifted a trophy, which means that trophy for Katowice is just as important, if not more so, for them. Two of those teams, FaZe and G2, they're in the mix. G2, though, can Manasi do this all on his own? Yesterday he did it, and I think he is the one to watch for the tournament. He is my pick of the, the tournament. Pick of the tournament so far, Babski. Let's add the so far, because, I mean, Donk might be able to take yeah. it. But Spirit's not in the mix for the Intel Grand Slam yet. Uh, there are three teams, though, that are Vitality, Maus, and Ents. The not-so-Polish, but now Polish team that could end up at the Spodek and possibly getting another trophy to add to the mix and get them in contention. Do you think it could happen? Yeah, I would love to see it. I also think Glaive is hungering for uh, like a, a big tournament playoffs. Again, it's been so long since he's been in there. It's going to be really interesting. I'm curious to see which team is going to take it. Who do you think could jump into the lead for the Grand Slam? I don't know, after the results yesterday, it's open for basically anybody to be taken. Uh, Yanko, you, you doing all right there? Just yeah, a bit of a cable situation. Your cable management was never my strong suit, Freya. I'm more of a just plug in and play. Let's see if this is your strong suit. We've got a game to be playing, gentlemen. Obviously, Sydney was the last IM event that we had to be closing out the year, the first CS2 event. So during the media day, I posed the question to some of the players. Where do you think CS2 will be by the time we get to Kadavit? So on the left-hand side, we've got the players I asked. On the right-hand side, we've got the predictions that they made. I want you to match the player to the prediction and tell me for why. Maui, what's standing out to you? I, I got one to kick it off because I feel like this guy is the most stoic by far. And so I'm going to say Rain probably just said straight up, nothing's going to change. That just feels very Rain. You stole like what I want to say. I, <laughs> no, not, not Rain though. I think Grim is so dejected with life. Okay, like, he's yeah. so depressed in complexity that yeah. he would be that. Okay. But now I can't go for it. So now I have to go. I was going to... Oh yeah, Carrigan. I think he'd love this, mm. right? Yeah. He's not a f not fans of Vertigo. I thought that was gonna be. I would have put Rain there because he did enjoy a little bit of train True. himself. He had that legendary one before against VP like eight years ago now. Is that on Kingwin? Was he on phase at that time? I think it was phase already. Oh, okay. I mean, he's been on phase for a hell of a long time. Yeah, yes, right? forever feels like. Who's, okay. uh, who wants better movement for the B hop specifically? Oh. Bunny hopping movement. Definitely not snappy. Yeah, who's a movement player here? I feel like it's. Um, I'm kind of. I, I think it's got to be JT or Grim then. I don't think JT really no. cares about movement though. No, it's Sun Pius. You think Sun Pius? I think Sun Pius. Man. Okay, He's like okay, jumping yeah. around That's with true. the AWP. All right, let's no. do that. Let's do that. Let's give him a little bunny hop too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, CL right hand. That's like. A I feel like that's a tick for some player. You know, that likes to s switch it around or likes mm. to play with the left hand. So, maybe someone like. I think that's more of a grim thing. If we're yeah. gonna give him any, if yeah. we're gonna attribute him to everything. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. You want to draw it? I'll draw it. Yeah. Please. Like left, oh, wow. left, right hand. <laughs> okay. <laughs> switch, 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 switch. Yeah. Uh, smoother left. movement. We got, well, we got economy changes and smoother move. Oh, but, okay, movement. Okay, there's one. an important yeah. caveat, but not necessarily for the better. Oh. It's the economy changes. Oh, a pessimist. That's very important. I think the pessimist yes. here is clearly snappy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, he's always, uh, he's always got something to be mad about. Oh, oh. Well, there you go. That, yeah, uh, perfect. It's kind of point that. to point. Point, yeah, one, one to You're one. You're revolutionizing the, the <laughs> Telestrator as well, Maui. Yeah, I'm changing the game, I guess. And JT smoother movement, that's what we got left. I guess, I guess it has to be that, huh? Okay, well, we'll just do that. They've been sliding down the rankings pretty smoothly. 
Yeah, is that what you're going to talk about today when you intro them? Probably, yeah, how they're frauds. Oh, okay. <laughs> I can not frauds. <laughs> they have a tough game today, though, uh, on the B stream against Spirit. You know, uh, no one is having a fun day in the office going against them no. with the way they've been playing. But yeah, I think we covered this one pretty nicely. Yo, what do we do for you? You, you want to know if you're right? Yeah. Uh, no. You're going to have to wait until the break because oh. we also asked Furia and uh, they're going to be giving their answers very shortly indeed. And From the airport. how correct our analysts are. But uh, before we do that, let's go ahead and check in with our casters. It's another day here at Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2024. We're on day two of the group stages. And our first game here on the A stream is Cloud9 versus Mouse. Yeah, I look, it should be a good one, but you have cause for worry if you're a Cloud9 fan. Things have not looked great. We're still waiting for this Cloud9 to kind of find their form and show us what level they can get at and stay at. Not quite there yet. On the Mouse side of things, Jimmy, we know he's going to have a good game, yeah. but I want to see Exertion. I'm waiting for Exertion to get back to his top level as well. Well, I'm looking forward to seeing if Brolin still got it as we head into Intel Extreme Masters Katowice's group stage, day two. Welcome, my friends, to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike! Elevated level on our way to the top, headed to the peak. All them boys want to talk, hit them out of love, but don't got receipts. Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the site. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Okay, so for this one, we're going to be revisiting some predictions from IEM Sydney about the state of CS2 by the time that Katowice rolled around. Oh, they were happier days back then. Everyone was so <laughs> full of hope. <laughs> is Moofer movement? Green, maybe, yeah. JT over. Oh, we got some differences of opinion here. Do you know some pilots if it's like a surf player? No, I don't know. I can now reveal that it was some part oh! <laughs> economy changes but not necessarily for the better i go for the j again yeah <laughs> JT again <laughs> i hope he is happy yeah, yeah. Snappy. i like the confidence there carrigan for me carrigan okay. <laughs> wow we've got a broad <laughs> selection that. here we got jt we got snappy <laughs> we got carrigan no actually he's happy oh okay oh, last yeah. minute change well snappy. the correct answer is Snappy. Yeah, oh, I know. I knew it. I knew it. Okay. 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 It looks smart. Does this mean you're two out of two now? Yeah, yeah okay. Hundred percent. I really hope you get to take out JT. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> All right, let's go. Ah, uh, let's see what JT said. <laughs> <laughs> Minus very good plus train. Oh, that's a Kerrigan one. Do you, who do you reckon said that? Name Rain. Uh, rain, for sure. Rain or Kerrigan? No, Rain. Rain? <laughs> rain. JT? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, the correct answer is, it's JT! Better movement, especially bunny hoping. I will pick you Rain again. Rain again? Uh, rain yeah, Rain's now. possible. That's right, you can't pick JT this time. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. It's all on you, you now. Broke world. <laughs> I'll go for Kerrigan. I'll go for Rain. I think, remember him, bunny hopping. Right. I don't know. I pick your Rain too. I believe in art. Oh, sure. Let's go. All right. <laughs> Let's, Let's go. go. Let you down. Let's go. The I answer believe. was Grim. Grim. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Nothing big will change. That's a very negative comment. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> we have two players. Rag. Honestly, Grim. whoever said Grim. that was actually Grim. right. So, you know, <laughs> kind of nailed it. I oh, must be right, rain, right. I think. I think it rained too. JT said that. 
<laughs> correct answer on this one was uh, was Carrigan. Actually, oh, said that. So a bit of a a bit of a negative Nancy, but also I'm not right. Carrigan. So Love. that means the last one has right. to be Rain. GT. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> CL underscore right hand. If you guys got that one a little bit sooner, I think you would have known that was Rain. I think that's a pretty Rain statement. Yeah. I see why yeah, you got true. tripped up but, on the last yeah. one. Mine too. So that was our little CS2 predictions with Furia, and that's all wrapped up. Sydney was a long time ago, but Katowice is just around the corner. Mao's back at the Intel Extreme Masters and back in Katowice, but now with a slightly different twist. Frozen out and Brolin in as a permanent fixture. And now the pressure on the shoulders of Mao's to prove that losing their star hasn't wounded them too deeply. So let's go ahead and check in with Shue, courtesy of Shocks. Exertion, welcome to I Am Katowice. I'm really happy that Mao's is here. Um, Tell me about the beginning of the year, how happy you are with everything and how it's progressing for you. Well, um, thank you. And uh, yeah, we are very happy with uh, our progress. Uh, I think practice has been going really well for us and uh, we have been showing good signs. Um, of course, uh, the online qualifier was not as smooth as maybe we would have wanted for the RMR, but I think it's normal. And uh, yeah, I mean, our level in practice has been pretty good and I'm excited to show it here in Kantovitz. Of course, the big question is going to be how is Brolin going to evolve within this lineup? And I'm assuming for you, role-wise, not too much would change, but are there going to be other shifts? Well, maybe a little bit. We have to, we have to uh, wait and see uh, how we play. But um, yeah, I mean, I think overall nothing really changed majorly. Um, I think in general we're just adapting to Brolin. We're letting him feel comfortable in the team. And uh, I think Shuhi is doing a really good job calling around it. So props to him. And uh, yeah, I'm just looking forward to get more experience under um, with Roland in our team and uh, making sure we do the right things to progress. For you personally, I think 2023 was pretty insane. You had a lot of highlight moments. So um, how big is your goal here to show that straight off the bat in Katowice? Well, uh, of course, that's uh, something that's very important to me, my individual uh, level, but uh, it's not my major thing. I always look to win as a team and uh, make sure that we are winning games and tournaments. Um, I would say I appreciate the kind words, but I think 2023 was not the best for me. I think I can do much better and I'm looking forward to do much better this year. And yeah, I mean, for me, it's the most important that we win as a team and uh, I do my role as an entry uh, f to set up my team. And uh, yeah, that's it basically. Okay. Well, you can start today versus Cloud9. Good memories from playing them, of course, at Blast. So how do you think this one is going to go now that they have also, I think, taken some steps forward? Yeah, I think they're they are a much better team now than they were. Um, I think we have going to have a tough matchup today. Um, also, probably some nerves. Um, first official, um, basically in a big tournament for us as a team. So yeah, I mean, I think that they improved a lot, and I'm just looking forward to play them. I love all their players they have there, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. Awesome, we're excited too. Thank you. And that is the question on everybody's lips coming into the group stage of IM Katowice. How will Brolin be integrating into this new look Maus? We obviously saw glimpses of that back in Abu Dhabi where he was just a stand-in. So, uh, Maui, Bobski, how do you think stuff is going to be changing with Brolin in Maus going forward? Well, one thing that's great about this addition for Frozen is that Brolin played a lot of the same positions back on his older teams, so the swap was actually rather seamless. That's why Exertion was able to talk about that in the interview. And so obviously we see some of the dates here, the fact that he stood into the Blast World Finals. Things went so well for them there, achieving a top four finish that they then signed him on loan quite quickly, actually. And the caption on top, kind of a funny content piece that Mouse put out where they just were like, blood thinks he's on the team. And then they were like, wait a second, he is on the team now. <laughs> And I also think it's a very deserving change. I think if people think about Brolin, they think about that NIP era, which didn't look too good, frankly. But before coming into that team, he was really the one to watch in Sweden. He's the best thing to come out of Sweden if we talk about the last five to six years. Mm. Do you agree with that take? No, it's kind of crazy when you think about it that Sweden has you know, slowed down a little bit. 
Ooh, <laughs> don't say that. Don't say that too loud, Freya. They might hear you. No, actually, I, ha I have to agree. Obviously, we see the form here from Brolin hasn't been too hot lately, but I actually would like to jump on Bubsky's point there. The fact is that when you're looking at Swedish talent right now, there's a couple people on top 10 teams. There's a couple people we know are in the lower rankings, and I feel like unless you're going to say somebody like Isaac is past Brolin, which I don't think anybody's going to make the no. claim to do, I would say Brolin right now is the best player out of Sweden. Yeah, and I also think there is a couple of other names. I think Riz is the... Talent that we always we're holding on to that. Yeah, we, we want it. So we want it so bad. That I am Oakland 2017. People still praise him for that, but I still think he has the individual level to like go back and potentially override Brolin. But for now, I think he is the one to watch if you're a Swedish Counter Strike fan. Do you think this is the player that made the most sense for Maus to be getting? Because I think that they were impressive back in Abu Dhabi. They made it to the semifinals, made it to top four. Did you look at this and go, yeah? This makes sense as an integration of the player. I mean, I think of so many positions that both of them played, like a rifler on Mirage, outside rifler on Nuke, a rifler overpass, and I thought, wow, that weirdly actually worked out pretty well for them. You wouldn't actually look at the form and say, yes, he can replace Frozen, he's just as good, but with a limited market in terms of what the options are that are available and somebody that could speak English well enough, I do feel like Brolin is a satisfactory replacement. We have to see if Brolin can actually change his form and re regain some of that that ability that he showed and potential that he had early on with that Swedish speaking fanatic. But I do think that right now, Mao's, their hands were a little bit tied. So they had to go with this kind of move. And because of that little success they had at Abu Dhabi, felt like they were forced to. How does that uh, affect, you know, the supporting cast then of Mao's? If we take a look, uh, you know, semi outside the server, Cyclone, we've acclaimed him so many times as a coach. Yeah, I mean, he is the synonym when we talk about Mao's next T. He waited all the way up to the main team. And I think he's a very valuable piece to the team. I think we can't doubt that he has the tactical knowledge because he's proven it time and time again that he's able to somehow get this team to work to a certain level. He also recently resigned, and Astralis was also looking for a coach at that point. Mm. I felt like that time was a little bit odd at times, but I think it shows that he's loyal to the project, and I think it shows that he's the one for the future. Cycrone has more or less been the father figure to a lot of these players as they were coming up. Torji, Exertion, Shuhei, they all played under him when they were on that Mao's NXT lineup where they were capturing We Play Academy League trophy one after the other, and so for him now on this roster, we saw the accolades he's already been able to find now that he's on the main roster. He is one of the brainchilds of this team. RIP to JDC, who also helped put it together, but Cyclone's still standing. Well, from the coach on one side of the server to the other, let's go ahead and check in with Groove, courtesy of Shocks. So, Groove, you're about to play Maus, uh, setting up here at IEM Katowice, and uh, kind of when I look at your last couple of weeks, I feel like I've seen a very good Cloud9 at times. You know, yesterday you were able to beat Virtus Pro as well, and then sometimes a Cloud9 where there's a lot of question marks. Why do you think uh, there's a, a bit of inconsistency right now? So, it, uh, I think it uh, depends on maps, depends on the style, because Everyone knows that uh, we don't have the main sniper. Mm -hmm. It's not a huge problem for us, but anyway, uh, in different map and different play style, it's really hard to play. So uh, I think uh, that is why. Okay. Um, especially uh, in Axel's performance, sometimes you see big fluctuations. Do you think he is, um, or that is because of the situation with the sniper that he's not as comfortable? No, I don't think so. It's uh, for him, uh, for example, communication and the atmosphere during the match um, makes sense a lot. Uh, it is the first thing. And uh, the second thing, it's still the new game and a lot of uh, issues. Uh, everyone just feel it. And uh, I think uh, he needs more time. Uh, just he, he spent a lot of time in CSGO, and that is why he played really good uh, in the end of CSGO. But uh, CS2, it's still a new game. Still needing to adjust. Uh, your opponents are Maus, who of course at Blast got the better of you uh, the last time you met them. And they have a new member now in Brawlin. So how do you think this is going to go? So as far as I remember, at Blast, we played already after they made the changes. At that time, Brolin was a substitute player, but anyway, they played with him. Uh, now, we, we just did our homework. Let's see <laughs> how, it, uh, how it will be, so, yeah. You did play a couple of games already, and it's their very first match at Katowice. Do you think that's going to help you? Yeah, for sure. I think that uh, the teams who played in playing 
uh, have a little bit advantage because uh, they already feel this tournament atmosphere. But yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. I mean, that logic certainly rung true with some of yesterday's results, but going back to Cloud9, the matter at hand, what stood out to you, Bubski, from that play-in stage? Yeah, I mean, resource hasn't been the best for Cloud9, but I think they play beautiful CS at times, and I really want to show it here at the Telestrator. I think we have a clip here where they do a default execute from the start of the round. They smoke off that thing, get the molly down. It's very common, right? But look at what Axa is doing here. He's listening for anyone taking the ladder down. He doesn't hear anything. And then Electronic purposely doesn't blow up the door over here to avoid that the CT or to make the T go forward and think, okay, I can uh, safely pass into underground. They get that flash, get the information here from Rexal, and it's such a good round already. Now they have all the information they need to purposely push VP into the beast bomb side. Here, Exile makes a great call. He realizes underground is clear, short hasn't been pressured, let's take that space and smoke off monster at the same point. They smoke off the monster, they take short. Now they have all the information they need in the world. We can see all the teases outside here. We have the guy on jumping on A side, gathering the last couple of information. And now we even see Hobbit with the anti-strat position. He realizes where the flash is gonna pop. It's gonna pop up here. And he's gonna be purposely not blind at all. Gonna get the execute. Really, really good round from Cloud9. And I think this is what the players can bring to the table. Great demonstration there, Bubski. I do feel like Cloud9 are doing the absolute most with the limited pieces that they have, given that they don't and can't rely on a solid opera, so they have to take these kinds of risks. But that's exactly what spelled doom for them when they played Maus last time. Maus were so well prepared at the World Finals for these kind of proactive plays, these kinds of setups, and they were ready to catch them, and they even had counters for some of these plays too. And so that's my biggest worry for Cloud9 in this one, is that because you don't have an op that you can just sit back, rely that he's going to find an opening kill, another easy, easy shot, they have to be a little bit more active and mobile, and Maus, they just ate that up last yeah, time. Yeah, we saw G2 last, uh, yesterday, they didn't really have anything tactically I think, found impressive, but they had money. See, he was constantly locking down those A executes, and you don't have the luxury. I agree with you. At this point, when you're going up a coach like Cyclone, it's going to be relatively easy for them because they don't have, they can't do this every game. Like, mm -hmm. it's a thing that works once or twice at BO3, and then you have to rely on other stuff. We will get Overpass coming in as the pick of Cloud9 mm. in this one. Mirage, uh, you know, similar pick, or exactly the same as last time around. Uh, any thoughts, Maui, on this map pool? Well, I feel like this is, I mean, this is great that Bubsky showed that round because then it's exactly what we can actually expect that Maus will prep against. And so really for me in this one here, in these two first maps, I do feel like Cloud9, they've, they've found some comfort on Overpass, but at the end of the day, I respect so many of these players on this team, but they don't have any opera that can stand up to Torzi. I also think the thing with picking Overpass is that you're gonna be, in my opinion, on the roughest T side in the entire game, getting control and default requires a lot of structure. And I'm not sure that Cloud9 is at that level currently where they are able to potentially push Torsi away from the defaults. So how does that affect your predictions coming into this game? On one side, you know, we've got Maus who's trying to uh, make up for the loss of what was undoubtedly their star player. On the other side, we've got a team who's uh, struggling with the orping situation. Whose favor does this fall in? I feel like Cloud9's recent form has looked okay, and but the thing is that this is the weirdest, weirdest situation where I look at everybody in the server, I look at everybody on Cloud9, and I think if I took them all individually, I would take them all above Torzi, but in this particular matchup and what we saw at the World Finals, Torzi just destroyed them because there was nobody that could stop what he was doing, and that's where I'm so worried for Cloud9. So for me, I actually will be taking Maus in this matchup just because it's just still such a big difference maker for me to have a capable AWP player versus one that's just switching hands. We also saw B Big versus Cloud9 at Blast, and where Mantu is normally, a, I'm not saying he's a bad opera, but he's not the one who's normally taking over games, but against Cloud9, he was the sole carry. They had no answer to that, or holding the angles on the CT side. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to find the way, or is this answer simply a new player? Well, it is time to get Mouse's debut in IEM Katowice 2024 underway. We've got Overpass, we've got Mirage, we've got Ancient if we do so require it. And we've got Moses and Dinko to be guiding you through this first best of three. Thank you very much, Freya. Yes, the first sighting of Mouse here in Katowice, and they're going up against Cloud9, who have mixed results. And their lack of opera is what dominates the conversation today, Jason. The lack of opera, yeah, that'll always be a topic at the moment with what's going on in C9. I think the other big one to have is, man, where's, where's 21, 22? 
20, year 20 exile. It was like 20, 20 yeah, Where is he? He's like, gone. Uh, He's missing. Watching watching that like triple overtime game the other day and seeing him with like nine, 19 kills, like three or four overtimes in, I was just hurt my heart. Blown. I, I was mind blown. I was just like, where, where's he at? So a lot of things to see step up. I mean, on the other side, I mentioned kind of like a little a little walk and talk that we did this morning. His is, is uh, it feels like he's dropped off in terms of his impact. It's been Brolin at the top. It's been Jimmy at the top for Miles. I want to see that old school exertion who's going to be pushing and taking space and making creative and dynamic plays and wreaking havoc on the defenses. We'll see that when we switch sides into the second half for now and execute at the B-bomb site. Yeah, three plies over here for Mouse to try and defend it. Boomich with the first headshot. Good night, Brolin. Not the start of the pistol he would have hoped for, but Jimmy fighting back for the barrels. A second kill locked in until he runs out of ammo, and we're going back and forth. And there's Zershin out from short side. It's going to be the kill to draw them into the clutch. Perfecto alone in this 1v2. And we know what he can do in clutches. We've seen Perfecto in a few of these in his career, and he's got himself into the 1v1 now up against Zershin. He has got time. He has to get that bomb, and he has utility too. Zershin sees that and goes forward for the fight, and that is the impact straight away. No, 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 he says. Yeah, appears in the pistol round with them duallys. Triple kill, and he's getting a little bit hyped as well. Takes the aggressive push when he sees the smoke coming out. I think a lot of pro players right now are just like, we enjoy being the aggressor in CS2. Good initial hold from Jimmy as well, and uh, unfortunately for Claude, this gets stopped. Almost a clutch for Perfecto, but those duallys land a nice little headshot. One to nothing. Yeah, we've seen a lot of new teenage prodigies coming out lately, Jason. Jimmy's certainly one of those. And, you know, in this event, obviously, Donk's sheer level he's at, but, but Jimmy... Jimmy's like a different star, though, because yeah. hey, you could see Donk, right, like with how aggressive he is and just like volume fragging. Jimmy, like, just seems like such a smart player, fundamentally sound, decision-making is on point. And that, that seems to me when I watch him, like, obviously, the aim is good. Obviously, he's putting up numbers. But it's like the decision-making, the positioning, uh, and the fundamentals that seem to be what, what is so striking to me. Yeah, and obviously it comes from a Counter-Strike family. We miss Sergey. Hope he comes back someday. That would sure. Be great. It's been a while. He's eclipsing his brother. He is. He is at this point. His brother once had a famous run in Katowice. Let's see if he can get one, too. Cloud yeah. Nine's, uh not going to be getting too much done here. Brolin should be taking a lot of these kills away, but he doesn't. It's a bit awkward for him, and there will be kills in the end for Maus. The Boomich and Electronic looking to do as much as they can, and that will be not much. It is 2-0 here for Maus. Yeah, Torres, you get you that op money. A little bit of bonus cash with the SMG. Yeah. That's what everybody's talking about. You know, the death set up perfectly the storyline of Torres. He destroyed them last time. Let's see if it happens again. Very well could. That the, the op equation is something that Cloud9 have not yet found an answer to. First gun round coming in, though. All AK-47s. Not enough money for the aforementioned AWP. And live into round three. Torji and Shuhei to push forward and defend Fountain. Go down into connector as well. Cloud9, so much of their T sides in the play ins powered by Electronic, their strongest performer in the play in stage on their offensive halves. Yeah, he, he said a couple of months ago, I'm burdened by the shackles of in game leadership. He wants to release beast mode again. And it's actually kind of crazy how quickly he got back to that kind of form. And, and you can really see the difference between the time he was in game leading versus now just being a fry grip. But I'm sure Electronic will still have a lot of say in the team. Yeah, it's one of those things where you're like, man, why did you ever in game lead? Yeah, why'd you do that? <laughs> why would well, you? Why would you take this away from us because well, boomage wasn't around anymore true his fault but now he's back and he is back and he's back in a big way big boom it's up on top of long clear and close corners no one's spotted until brolin gives a peek it's not the weapon for the job to fight at that kind of range so he gathers the information and falls further back into the site it causes a shift as well as he slides over brolin's going to be playing at divider hopefully torji can be enough of a distraction Enough of a prospect to keep Cloud9 moving forward. Now, they do like to move between the bomb sites, and oh, that's a good peek. A hard clear from Boomich. Berlin had taken a deeper off angle, so Boomich is easily able to pick that one up, but blinded and dinked, and there's no escape. Yeah, sure. It takes Boomich out. Look like Brolin actually got hit by the Molotov on the other side of the wall there, which actually forced him just slightly out of position, and then the kill came through. Exertion up short. That's MP9. It's a good position for him. He tries to get the up on him by swinging into the fire. And it does work out. He goes back for seconds, and this time on Hobbit, it's Perfecto and Electronic taking over this B bomb site. Shuei left alone. 1v3 for him, and he does as well as he could, but it ends up being the first round for Cloud9. I think Mouse thought Cloud9 was way more dedicated and way deeper into that bomb site when they actually pounce up that ramp. They, uh,. They walked right into a trap. Cloud9 was ready and waiting. So a little counter push for Miles before the bomb plant starts going down, and they get annihilated. 
I can't believe Bubsky actually unironically brought up the Oakland performance from Ruz back in 20. <laughs> <laughs> that's we were still talking about that on the desk. That's I don't think there's ever been a performance that's warranted that much conversation. We were having a convo about Swedish Counter Strike this morning, so he, so he had it on the brain, and we were trying to figure out who is the the best prospect coming out of Sweden in the last few years. And yeah, the Oakland is still there. <laughs> it's still out. Oh, it was so sad. We've seen, obviously, Snacks come back in Dallas in 2022. Now he's in game leading with Gamer Legion. I'm just sad that the Forest setup, uh, the standard didn't work out this time around. Would have been cool to see Forest back in the mix. And here we go, walking down into the short tunnel with C9, looking to get some control towards water and Shuei. He's close by. That Molly is burning in front of him, so he's not going to go any further. Just tossing and juggling utility. A very aggressive defense of the B bomb site, though. They want to challenge in these choke points. I would imagine it's mostly because of the SMGs on Exertion and Jimmy. They want to stay close range. Another opening kill for Boomit. She gets the first of the round, and that's going to pull Shuhei away, which leaves just the MP9s to defend the B bomb site. Although, I take that back. Shuhei sticks around, slides right back into the bomb site. 48 seconds for Cloud9 to play with. And if they show any presence, if they show any pressure at the A-bomb site, like utility, boomage gets spotted, anything at all, I imagine it's going to start making this defense pretty jumpy. Well, they are getting ever closer to the A-bomb site with boomage. Look at this push from Zertion. This is everything. That's a third smoke that just dropped. Electronics got a timer on this, so he's got to keep moving forward. Doesn't realize it just yet. Already the defense is starting to shift. Exertion, not even going to check short. That door opening, though. Oh, he realizes that's so frustrating. The door is closed, has to go and open it. And here comes Axel down the stairway, looking right at him. Exertion still wins that fight. Boomer hits the headshot on the defensive player. Shue in nine seconds left. Limited time. They've got to start getting that bomb down now. And that's exactly what happens. Perfecto punches those digits in. And towards and Exertion, while well, they are certainly in a weak position here, especially with this learn from Electronic in behind, sweeps up Torzi, and Exertion would like to save that AK-47 now. Yeah, it's all he's got. It's all he's got. And Cloud9, I think just the, the number, while well, there's a stack at the B bomb site, the repeated smokes and monsters, and they're like, you know what? We Let's just not deal with it. Let's just not worry about it. Time's running down. Good find. Working the map and finding an open A bomb site. So the question becomes if Exertion wants to challenge for any uh, exit kills with only 17 HP, though. He's not going to be super aggressive. So yeah. all tied up at two. Yeah, based on the start of this half, though, we won't be seeing the, the Torsi ult for a few rounds at least here. And that was definitely the main talking point. And this AK, it's not going to go into this round either. Boomich hunts it down. Triple overall for him. And, you know, the, you know if Torsi gets that ult out, then the game obviously changes. But we're talking about the fact that maybe Cloud9 don't have it in them on the T side yet of Overpass to put together a strong enough tactical half to negate the problem of having an AWP against them, but if they can keep their money low, they won't have to deal with that for the first few rounds of play here. That's, well, that's the thing. If you, if you keep it out of your opponent's hands like that disparity, we don't really, we don't really get to see it, so they'll be happy to, uh, to limit what Miles can bring out for some time as this losing bonus builds up. It's now at two rounds. Miles will be getting a decent chunk of change in the next round. Exile. Going to get a lot of attention. A chance yeah. to warm up. Oh, come on, Axel. You gotta get these ones. You gotta sink your teeth in. And he does get a double. Does eventually need the help of Boomich to clear out the rest. And Exertion and Yimfat, just two SPs now. I, I like the call just to sprint to Axel. See if a strength in numbers mentality is gonna work out. Doesn't this time. And Yimfat, he's just gotta do as much as he can with this AK-47. If he can bring a few more players down, that's the best case scenario. Waiting for a footstep, an indication. Gonna get pulled forward, can't get one. Aim punch is a little too strong. Cloud9 took like a lead. Uh, tenuous lead. Yeah. And a timeout called by Maus. And this will be, this is a topic of conversation too, because still, as we just mentioned in that previous round, that AWP is not gonna be out on Torji. Not enough money. Everyone's gonna be buying up M4s. How do you wanna approach this? Cytron having his say? Was an interesting point brought up by Bubski, showing that Cyclone's commitment to this mouse project is certainly there because, you know, a team like Astralis are searching for a coach. You've had such a, a great track record being a Dan yourself. Most Danes want to be a part of that Astralis project. Um, but Cyclone resigns with Maus and stays with this project. And I, I think you probably have an emotional investment when you started with these players so young in the academy team and you kind of grown up. I think, them, I think it's like almost kind of like really hard to make a decision to leave this kind of core that you've been with for years as an academy team to this point. And I think, you know, he deserves a lot of credit, Cycrone, for, for how he's been able to help this team grow and develop into the scary squad they've, they've been at times when we see them hit their peak. Relatively new coach as well. Was a player not so long ago. Exertion getting into short. 
an aggressive maneuver here for Exertion, and it hasn't worked out. Hobbix is holding for it. Axel with a great shot from Connector. Brolin was tunnel vision to try and get that trade kill, and ends up getting caught by Axel. So Cloud9 in this gun round already have two players up. Yeah, taking a big risk, Brolin. Trying to slide out and take a peek through door. Good shot from Axel. And now, I, this is so long for Cloud9 to get a chill. They're going to wait, look for the follow-up peaks. They'll trade them all off. Shui and Jimmy go down. It's just Torji. Yeah, and he's staying committed to this. He's staying over towards this B-bomb side, but it, it feels like it's just destined to go the other way. He's not really in a position to fall back now either, so he's just going to chill out and short and hope that some miraculous moment happens for him. Cloud9 already on the hunt. I mean, just just look at the map. It's like Boomich and Hobbit are just kind of paused, looking for pushes. Axile a little bit as well towards the A-bomb side. It's only really electronic hunting Axile a little bit. He's kind of hovering between passive and aggressive. So they're just waiting to find out exactly where Torji is before making a decision. Torji's going to hear these footsteps. Sure, it'll be Molotov. Not as deep as they'd like, but Plant should be just fine. Yeah, I think they realized the only sort of blind spot that Torji could be in is short, and Boomich plants on the other side of that pillar and peeks him. And Big Boom was certainly making a lot of noise throughout the, the early stages of the play-in, right? They had a, an upset go against them earlier on in the competition, but they had a lot of domestic matchups against their countrymen in this event, and that definitely fired them up. Boomich was probably the loudest player with Donk inside of the Hall of Heroes. Yeah, I mean, that, that third map he had against uh, VP was, was quite nice. He really got them uh, on the right foot, Cloud9, to to keep marching to a victory and, and avoid any more, uh, avoid disaster, really. The loss that you're mentioning they took to Rebels in the best of one stage was a shocking upset, and that was a real damning indictment of the level Cloud9 was bringing into this. So we've watched them improve over the three days of the play-in stage, and now we get to see if that can continue into the group stage of Katowice. Ah, you imagine Electronic will land this one. Axel actually gets it, and Electronic follows up. That dastardly duo making their way through water, and Axel with it. It would be great to see Axel build form into the event and get some confidence back. I'm sure uh, he's probably not dealing with all the pressure all that well, and I certainly set upon him. But cutting through them against the weaker weapons in this round. Yeah, well, it's, it's time to handle the pressure. It's time to handle it if you're if you're Axel. Yeah, it's been years of this, and you've got other big stars around you, the experience with it. What do you make of this Mouse team, though? Because I thought when they lost. <coughs> When they lost Frozen, I didn't really believe that they would be able to stay at the level yeah. they were at, obviously. And, and then the move for Brolin, I just felt like that was pretty underwhelming. Um, but Maui kind of was pointing out that it, it's probably one of the better moves they could have made, and, you know, realistically, with the side, the organization, the players available. Yeah, uh, yeah, for sure. I, I can't, you know, transport my brain back to remember who, what was actually uh, exactly going on at that time. But, um, I mean, look, Brolin's a player that's had a lot of potential, and at times he's kind of he's kind of lived on that potential. He's still young, still, still can still absorb a little bit more experience. But I don't mind it so much. I, I think no matter who you were to go with, Frozen's a very hard player to replace, not only for his talents, as a player, but just for the experience he has inside the server, winning events, and how long he's been competing at the top. So it was always, I, th I think, going to be a at least a short-term step down, and I think Brolin gives him that opportunity for long-term growth to meet back to that point. And Shue has shown us what he can do with the parts of Gamer Legion, obviously getting to that major final in Paris. So talking about adding Brolin in. This is a good mix of players across the board. Time to see what Shui can do. Time to see what Torji can do. He's got, got the AWP. He's got the big AWP out. Well, let's see. That's that's uh, that's the big advantage that, that everyone discusses when Cloud9's inside the server without like, a true AWPer of their own. They've been able to kind of uh, use it piecemeal on a couple of players in a variety of situations to different effects. Here he comes, Hobbit. Spamming down through the wood. He's actually taking damage from the other side. That's utility on over, blasts it on to default, and Shuei damn close to taking that opening kill. Hobbit's another player next to Electronic who's had a very good, very good Katowice so far. He really started to step up. Nice shot here from Torji. That's Electronic down, and now they know they're going up against the AWP. They know where it is, and Boomich is accelerating towards this A bomb side, trying to take as much space as he can, and his teammate Perfectos with him. Groove mentioned they did some research and they looked into this and they looked into this matchup and very much prepared for Mouse and that's a very convincing call. You spot the opera, you get the kill in bathrooms and no hesitation from C9. Pushed aggressively towards the eight bomb site, confident the route would be clear. Now they've got themselves a post plant. A little bit light on utility, plenty of nades and molotovs and smoke for Mouse. Let's see if they can pull this off. 
Perfecto. Now poked off of the truck, could peek out, and he has cover immediately to go back in and out with headshots. It is Cloud9 dominating Damn. Maus at the start of the day, and Electronic is fired up. Six rounds on the T side, and this isn't really a competitive at the moment. Look at the attitude in Cloud9. They came into this focused, ready to play today. Everyone shouting, Boomich is getting loud, Electronic's getting loud. This means a lot to Cloud9 bouncing back from a very rough and unconvincing play-in stage. What a sequence from Perfecto, just chilling on truck, hard to clear out, no Molotov at his feet, no nades to his position, and it's a triple kill. And that's everything taken from Maus. The first round they get the op is round eight, and he gets nothing done, just one kill, but no impact on changing the round. They'll have it for the next round here. They won't have all the support network around it. They're going to have pistols out. They're going to leave around $2,000 in the bank. Not the start Miles would have been hoping for. And maybe there is something you be said about warming up in the play and coming into the group stage. Because we've seen Ants yesterday against number one Vitality. They got that window for them. You know, there's, there's something you be said about warming up in this environment, especially at the start of the year. Well, Miles has that up on Torji again. He's going to have to be pretty aggressive with it. He's going to have to make some plays with it. If he wants to keep Mal's in this round. Oh no, he's about to be nade stacked, Jason. Here it goes, bang, bang, bang. And it's Torsi down to five health. Very fortunate to still be around, still stand on top of his teammate's head. Yeah, who's the secondary offer on Mal's? Pass that bad boy over. <laughs> this is crazy. If the AWP had gone down in that one swoop, you would have felt like if you're on the mouse side of things, a Cloud9 have your strat book. They have every read so far. But Torsi, five health at least is still standing. He's going to rotate up to the bank. He still holds that AWP. Looking for a deep angle. Cloud9 being very cautious and slow on the map. Letting Mal's with whatever kind of buy they have, burn their utility, maybe get a little bit of nervous, second guess any stacks they have. And they're going to start shifting back to the B-bomb site. Electronic's been waiting. They have control of stairs and connector. Good kill from Shui, and that's going to speed things up. Electronic just now moving through Monster. Yeah, coming right through, attacking this B-bomb site. Exertion's here with the Deagle. Help behind fire for the meantime, but 20 seconds left. He could create chaos here. If he goes down, though, that's it. That's wrapped up, and that's exactly what happens. This T-side is unstoppable. Well, they still have the AWP, and they just recovered an AK-47 they can bring into the next rounds. I, I think Cloud9 is going to be content with this victory, probably not going to go on any kind of a hunt, because the save has been called pretty much immediately. 7-2, to two, quite a gap and quite a scoreline being run up by Cloud9. This is a map. They took off Virtus Pro in that series to get through the play-in stage in the elimination game. And it wasn't really close, was it? It was 13 to five, and that's a Virtus Pro that's considered a very, very strong overpass squad. So Cloud9, they know how to work this map, and they're showing it again here against Maus. Yeah, once you take a big win like that over Virtus Pro and overpass, you really do stamp authority over your overpass performances. Everybody has to give you respect. And we're seeing quite an in-depth T side here. They're not making too many mistakes. They can pace change up a little bit. You know, you're seeing some quicker plays, explosive finishes to the rounds. It's great to see from Cloud9. And Cyclone's gone through three timeouts in this half already, and we're yet to see any yeah. steady improvement. I mean, at a certain, this third timeout is probably nothing tactical. It's like, all right, guys, it's, it's time to wake up. Like, it's, it's time to show up today. First game of Katowice. As Shocks brought it up, Effie brought it up in the interview with Groove and just said, you think this is going to be an advantage? And I think anyone who plays will tell you, having those extra days in the playing stage, Maus haven't played since January 20th back at the uh, the online RMR qualifiers. And we know how much of a different beast those are. It's looking like a slow, slow start for Maus. They better get it going here, otherwise this half is going to be unrecoverable. Yimfat. Starting outside of Monster. Electronic is going to send that net deep. Brolin taking control of Fountain. Some space taken here on the CT side, and he isn't stopping. He's going to go around that corner into the playground, and maybe Brolin can start to activate a flank around the back of B. And that is exactly where Cloud9 play is going. Here they come. Axel at the front, taken out by Yimfat. 
And this is going to stall out Cloud9 and, and really allow this flank to start going for Brolin. Yeah, at least for the moment. And this might be one of the few hiccups Cloud9's encountered in this T side so far. We'll see how they kind of adjust around it. They've been able to, you know, Boom, which has provided them with so many opening kills. Flank from Brolin gets spotted. Awkward fight for Electronic. And now it's a two man advantage. Yeah, I thought Electronic was about to take Brolin out there, predicting that flank going back for it. But as you said, timing just made it an awkward fight. And Brolin's just locking down this area of the map now. Ooh. Perfecto trying to come up the ladder. Timing works against Brolin. Yeah, but Perfecto doesn't know that, so he's being cautious to look for the fallback. And if Perfecto doesn't find him, Brolin's going to have a backstab. Oh, they line up. Almost doubled. Hobbit's brought very low. And 30 seconds left in a 2v4. Torsi just holding bathrooms. You've got so much money if you're Cloud9, you definitely go for this. Take weapons away is the goal, and obviously with the AWP in the hands of Torji taking on Perfecto, it's it's kind of over from there. Hobbit doesn't want to progress forward without a teammate. So this round's done. Maus have their third, and they do it convincingly. Four players survive, build up some money. It's not a sketchy buy in the next round. So everything you could have hoped for if you're Maus out of your third time out. This half is all about recovery. And a lot of it to do. And the issue is because they have been dominated so long in this half, <laughs> there's so much money available for Cloud9, so they can buy straight away. They can get everything they want, all the bells and whistles, all the utility out. So it doesn't get any easier for Maus. No, I mean, there's there's going to be no saving in this half for Cloud9 whatsoever. Good opening kill, good aggressive flank. Get a little bit desperate with the push that quick, but you can understand why at 2-7. At to seven. Is there enough mustard on that hot dog, Jason? Ah, there is now. You see that little... Look at that little glizzy. That looks that that bread <laughs> looks a little off. I don't even know what that means. Electronic hiding inside the smoke with Boomich. They're gonna bust right through. This time not spread whatsoever. Good nade chunks him down, but they're coming through regardless. Oh, yep, big headshot from Electronic. Follow up in exertion goes down, and now Shuei just chilling back. It's gonna be a lineup of multiple oh, players Lord. holding down, but only one kill out of it. Probably should have got a multi kill down. Shuei's under so much pressure, so much scrutiny, and still gets a double. Oh wow, okay, that's much better for Miles. They have woken up, and there's fist bumps all around. Yeah, that's my IGL. Well done, Electronic. Hands up. He's <laughs> very, very vocal between these rounds. I, I would love to just be there, like inside of the team comms, and just understand what Electronic's saying because it looks like almost a military-style drilling. Yeah, he didn't look happy about something. I think, if anything, it's probably that nobody actually swung out after he gets the first two kills. Shuey's able to take that fight into its tunnel. Three, four players just boxed up all together, shoulder to shoulder. That's a very tantalizing prospect. And Electronic saying, why did nobody swing? Why did nobody get out and create some space? Why is everyone just chilling? I've got five HP and two entries. And now he's gone down first again, so that frustration probably builds. Hobbit creeps out in towards water. Good position taken. Oh, Cloud9 starting to struggle. And Hobbit, ooh, it's not pretty. Starts to get burnt out of position, has to use a smoke. And Mao's are gathering info with that. torsi has got a connector locked down. So Cloud9 start to become the field very suffocated. In terms of the map control they've got available, that door gets blown open. Torsi locks that kill in. Yimfat follows up and Exertion swings back to Monster. Cloud9 getting outmatched now towards the end of this first half. Yeah, that, that third timeout did wonders apparently. It just took all three, but they've arrived inside the server, thankfully. And that story of recovery, Mal's have carved themselves out enough for the last three rounds of the first half. We'll see if they can come all the way back.
Nine started overpass very strong on the T side. It took three timeouts, but Mouse have finally woken up. Seven to five as we turn into that second half, and Mouse now have a T side of their own. Yeah, a daunting T side in which they're going to have to they're going to have to win eight rounds if they want to take this map in regulation. I, I mean, Cloud9 went on a seven round streak in the middle of that half, so Mouse just barely recovered, but it's still not pretty. Going to have to start out hot. Going to have to get to it right away. Plenty of utility available for Mouse, in particular Shue. And uh, even fat with smokes. This is Cloud9's map pick. Axel playing much better today. That's what we'd like to see. 12 and 8, top of the team. We did ask questions about Axel's performance today. Zershin making his way through middle. His teammates are coming up through connector just to join him. All the while towards he walks further down long. It's a stack from Cloud9 towards that B bomb side with four players. Axel's the only player over here in defense. Yeah, and I'm wondering how long it takes for someone to shift back because they haven't seen or heard anything on the map quite yet. Boomich is now rotating. It might be a little bit late. Axel's going to need to deliver something early. Gets gooshed up, has to fall back. That means all five Cloud9 players are going to be stuck behind utility for this retake. They do have a smoke and they do have a kit. Yeah, that could be absolutely key for this. Exertion, though, we know his aggression. We know his confidence when he gets going here, and he's pushed through bank. Behind that smoke, Exile is taken out. And now we're looking at this 4v5. A retake scenario for Cloud9 becomes a lot more difficult despite having the utility. And here they go with that utility being set up. Boomit sends the flash over. Smoke's available too. Electronic taking it down as he tries to round that corner. Yinfat, only one. Of he has to step up alongside Shuei, and it's done. It's six. And now Miles are just one round away from tying up versus Cloud9. Yeah, I mean, that's the, the benefit of the pistol round, right? Uh, when we saw the guns come out, Cloud9 absolutely dominated it in the first half. Now that could all change here. But let's not get super excited just yet. Good push through the smoke in the bank for exertion. Nice execute, and just by virtue of only one defender. Next I'll take an easy bomb site. Next exertion here you were talking about in that first half that you wanted to see step up on this T side and see sort of an elevation in his performance again and see that impact coming through. Yeah, he's such a he's such a creator for this team. Like he loves making plays, he likes being aggressive, he likes finding gaps in the defense and looking for places he can flank and, and, and timings he can push into. And it hasn't been I mean, just just by nature, a style like that is sometimes gonna be up and down. 
just because sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And obviously, when it, when it is working, this Mouse team gets a whole different dimension of danger to it. Yeah, and there were certainly examples of that last year, portions of the year where he would really have a good event and step up, and Mouse would look unbelievably good. I remember the RMRs going into the it's, Blast Major. That was, in particular, a very good tournament for him. It's because stylistically, when he's having a good time and things are working and he's got a good feel for his plays, it's like that, that kind of style opens up opportunities for everyone else on the team, which is why, even I mean, even when the numbers aren't aren't necessarily great for exertion just the decision making and the things he goes for can cause enough chaos for other players to step up these are the best rounds of counter strike for an individual oh no get those free kills and that's uh the attempt at least but uh brolin had the mac 10 doesn't get any money and in fact they've lost both of those weapons so cloud nine will take that galil perfectors even looking to do damage with it from heaven using their own weapons against them Exertion goes back towards the barrels. Sure, he locks that headshot in. And Axel, oh, I'll take it. It's free. Can always take a free sample. And he'll run away. Yeah, might even be worth keeping on the CT yeah. side, this Galil, for sure. Save some money. Ooh, Hobbit. He could catch some cash here. He's going to jump around that corner. He's got that Mac 10 out, making that money. <laughs> and he's got one. He died, actually, right at the end. But he's got an extra kill. Yeah, it's a good kill to find. 5,900 now on Hobbit. He could actually drop an op over. Yeah. If they wanted to get frisky, I mean, again, the conversation of not Who is going to do it? It's going to be Boomich, <laughs> as, as we've seen some some cool things from him. Yeah, we see, I mean, we've seen some rounds for Perfecto like, trying to use the op, and it was like, yeah, I think Boomich is probably the, the better option. That yeah, but I feel like every time you have, like, an, like a patchwork opera like this, it's kind of like you're just going to get a solid performance. Like, it's not, it's not consistent. It's like some days he's going to be feeling it with the op, some days it's going to be a little bit rougher. You imagine he's been practicing with the op, certainly. But let's see what kind of Boomich op we got. Here to start the group stage. Oh, Jimmy, it's not the start you like to see for him. He's just getting absolutely peppered, blasted by grenades and bullets. He's down to 17 health. Axel confident, goes for the peak in middle, does damage to exertion and then drops away. Flashes over from Shuei, sending his teammates into short. Good map control here for Mouse at the start of the round. They've got themselves a great position, and that shot and that kill is going to go a long way. That's going to frustrate Electronic. Dang, yeah, nice shooting from Shuei. Counter Molotov towards the end of Monster. They've got no more smokes for the Monster Tunnel. Boomich is off is at the A bombsite, hasn't seen anything. Exertion is slowly creeping up to apply a little bit of pressure to this bombsite, but it's Hobbit and Perfecto who are in the most awkward situation. Yeah, here comes that monster play. There was a smoke up and there was A stairs just outside of the bomb site, cutting off information for the Cloud9 defense. Perhaps trying to elude the fact that Mouse might be heavy outside there, but instead it's this B pop and Shuei and Yimfak coming in with multiple kills. They can get that bomb down. Shuei looking to lock it in behind the cover. And Boomich is not getting the shots on target here. Not quite getting the wall bangs in position. And Axel is going to have to lead the way if they want to go for this retake. Neither one of them have kits, so it'll have to be quick. But if the M4 can't produce anything, the op's going to have to bail out. Oh, so they're giving the op to Axel instead. Oh, what? Axel landed that one. And sure, he's down to eight health. He's so close as well. Yimfan nearly going down. Axel put his X-ray glasses on. And it doesn't work out. He's going like, to get out of there. Did Boomich not know the lineups? Was Axel like, yo, give me that op. I know I know the spam spot. <laughs> That's so sick. Just unfortunate not to get a kill, though. If he gets it on Shui, they go for that for sure. Well, that could have been something special, and it's not. So that's the reality of the situation here. It's Mao's into the lead, and this is after that huge streak in the first half from Cloud9, where we were saying this game's getting out of hand. Cloud9 looking fantastic. We were yeah. talking about that big win versus Virtus Pro. Perhaps they'll replicate that versus Mao's, but they just woke up after that third timeout, and it's been round after round after round since. Yeah, they thankfully cooled them off Ooh. at the end of that first half, and they've carried it over into their T side, but as you mentioned, three timeouts used just to get Mal's awake into the game means any kind of obstacle they hit in the second half, they can't get Cyclone involved. But on one level, you gotta say he's done his job. He got the boys woken up. It's a one round lead, economic and weapon advantage leaning towards Mal's as well. As we head into round 16, Shuei's been hitting some shots. He really has. He had that opener in the last round, too, with that smoke spam down through Monster. Obviously, when you get a kill like that, we, there's actually no chance of them actually shooting back or getting the trade. It's going to go a long way to giving you a comfortable T-round, especially if you're that in-game leader. 
Mao's hold the one round lead, looking to extend it here in round 16. Torsi brings the op on out. It is a straight up duel versus Boomich. Neither of them hitting the shot. I like the confidence though. The yeah. assertiveness of Torji. Just bullying Boomich with the AWP a little bit. So it's a little bit of a gimmick setup. Get Axel up on top of the sandbags. It's short. Electronic plays below him. Yeah, well, they're going to start clearing this on a timing pretty soon here with how aggressive they are. At some point, they're going to want to turn that corner, and Electronic's going to see it clear. Bubich is going to be the player that is heavily tested in this round, though, with Hobbit, who can get that early warning system going. With the 5-7, he's hoping when this smoke fades away, he can get this kill. He spots the head. Exertion couldn't see him. A quick switch to the AK-47, and no kill for Hobbit on the follow-up. A minute left in this round, 4v4, and Bubich is in the bathrooms. And you know what that means. The big boom has his magic stick and it's a kill on Shuaikon. A 4v3 kill for Boomich and no problem. He's scared off Maus. They don't want to go into the toilets when Boomich is hanging around. It's never safe. And then this is even worse. Double setup in short. Electronic with the Deagle. Axel is going to peek on contact. Nice and clean. That's a bit of a banana skin for Maus to slip up on, isn't it? They're up against pretty low weapons. You have the AWP in the bathrooms, and you still lose against some of these weaker and, pistols. And the important thing, too, is because Hobbit and, and Boomich each get a kill in that round at the front of bathrooms, you funnel Maus to adjust on the map and swing towards the B bombsite where you have that short stack waiting. So without the success of Boomich and Hobbit, they don't exit out this door. They might just continue marching forward, but instead they have to go back into the waiting arms of Electronic and Exile. Torji just trying to save the AWP. It's going to be under pressure. Yeah, Axel is close by. He's coming around that corner. Oh, and luckily he's able to save it. They're giving mercy. And now we're all tied up again. But that's the opportunity for Cloud9 to get into the CT half. It's not necessarily a sure thing because Maus still have enough money to warrant a decent purchase. Yeah, but that's such a strong win for Cloud9. Their money just balloons right out of the gate, out of that victory. They've got another buy built up behind this, regardless of what happens in this round. Two Tech Nines, two AKs, and an AWP for Maus to bring forward, and it's heavy towards the B bombsite. This might just be a B rush. Exertion leading the way. Here we go. Fast play for Exertion. He loves these, and not this time. Perfecto cuts them down through the monster tunnel. Exertion and Jimmy both gone. The nade combo just softened them up and made it nice and easy for the rifle to just brutally remove them from play. And Electronic spams the bullets through. They realize it was a monster rush and they cancel it out. I think somebody for maybe forgot a smoke on the mouse side of things because they were fighting in a Molotov, a very shallow Molotov at the exit to the monster tunnel. And there was no chance that was going to do anything. Yeah, you're just taking damage all, all over the show. You just melt. They haven't even touched anyone. And I don't, I, I don't know what you do if you're Mal's in this. You've got a minute, but it's such a low percentage round. You might be thinking you want to save this ADVP. We might have an extended, relaxed, chill end to this round. Yeah, Torres, you might go hang outside the nightclub, listen to some music, and try and get this AWP in the next round. Oh, I said free sample earlier, Jason. It kind of triggered a memory of my scumbag behavior, where okay. I would sometimes, you know, I would take my hoodie off, go up to a free sample desk, and get, like, a, a nice delightful treat and then I would put the hoodie back on make it look like I was a different person going up and down I was very young but do you reckon that worked or do you reckon the, the free sample person knew I bet the free sample person didn't care yeah that's that's probably that's reality I wouldn't so. care if I was a free sample uh, giver outer yeah I haven't really seen that anymore like you don't see a free food being given out anymore people Costco. hold back on that Costco baby Costco in the states that's where you get a good hot dog right dollar fifty foot long hot dog and a Pepsi. And a Pepsi for, for included in that dollar fifty. Yeah, it is. That's pretty good. You could eat that every day. And here's Torsi looking to try and stay alive. He's thinking about that corner. It's one. And he will hang on to that AWP. So that's into the next round. And I like this angle. Feels like we're getting a hobbit head peak just over the top of the monitor. Yeah, here's that Molotov. That smoke comes in a little bit late. <laughs> When they're already fighting and they're already pretty much dead, it does extinguish the Molotov, but the damage is done at that point by Perfecto. Single round lead for Cloud9. Oh, it's not good looking at all here for Maus because three players have Glocks. Oh, there's a Tech9. They realize, oh, actually, I have a Tech9 in my back pocket. Take that. Exertion is given an upgrade. Torshi has to win this, and he doesn't. Boomich locks him out. 
we wondered, you know, how that off lane battle is going to go. Many predicted Torsi to outmatch them, but Booing to CT up here of the last few rounds has been pretty good, and in this front actually beating Torsi in their heads up duel. Well, this T side has stalled out real quick after a single Cloud9 victory. Now, like, uh, their, their first plan in every single round has been stuffed. No utility, no smokes, no flashes to take anyone off the angle. Boomich might just have a field day in this round. He's got Jimmy and Exertion moving up Banana towards his position at the A-bomb site. Sue and Brolin convening towards Long, where Exile waits at range with a rifle. The Glock sets up the distraction to offset the crosshair of Axile to set up the AK to come on in. It's a smart play there for Maus to get rid of one of the rifles on this A defense. And now Bumich feels the pressure, decides to drop back, and not quite as good as Axile on those all Brawlbank lineups. Oh. And Hobbit swings in with Electronic. The Glock has got another kill. And suddenly with a bomb plant and a 2v3 with weapons in hand, there's an opportunity here for Maus to take this one away. No way. Oh, Shui can do this. Blocked oh, off by back. the Molotov. Exertion inside of the bathrooms takes damage too. Shui's held back, but there's still time on this. They don't fade away. He'll still have time to peek and deny the defuse. Come off. off it. They come off it. And now they have to get back to it. Shui dies at long. And Mal's make that competitive. They bring it so close. But Cloud9 just about stay afloat. Yeah, plenty of time for that defuse. But getting off, if, if, if Shui wins that next fight, all of a sudden it's a really awkward 1v1. 10 to 8. Cloud9 recover. That's a lot of pressure and a lot of danger that Mal's was able to put in this round just with the kill on Axile out towards Long. I think Boomich, when he changes his angle, doesn't realize how closely they've moved up to the bomb site. He almost gets caught off guard. Very fortunate Cloud9 to get away with that one. 10 to 8. That's a great example of staying in the round despite what weapons you have. You know, that's just great teamwork setting each other up to allow that one kill for Shuei, and then suddenly an opportunity presents itself with the first step taken, but... Close, but no cigar. They've got to come back and fight this one. And Electronic, he's getting into that monster smoke. He's taking a risk in this round. We haven't seen this yet from Cloud9. Perfecto and Electronic doubled up. And Brolin, oh, the smoke fades away. He's gone. He's eradicated. And now with a minute and 20 seconds left, Maus have to play the rest of this round. Two players down, thanks to Axel's push-up through Connector. We talked about Brolin today and what we could expect from him, wanting to see a good performance. He has struggled. He has struggled so much. 4-14. Four and 14. And this round is done. Everyone on Mouse seems to be struggling right now. This this Cloud9 team, once they've kind of uh, gotten a good feel for this CT side, they've been so disruptive in terms of taking away everything Mouse want to do. Pushing mid, pushing con, getting opening kills, stopping stuffing rushes at the B bomb site. I think Mouse is running out of ideas. There's not many rounds to come up with new ideas either here. We're getting to the end of Overpass. Mirage up next, that is Mouse's map pick. They would feel comfortable going to that affair, but with how Cloud9 are playing today, warmed up coming into the out of the play and rather into the group stage, it seems to be paying off right now for Cloud9. Good shot from Exertion. Need a lot more than that, though. 18 seconds left, Boomich impales him with an AWP and a second on the swing out. Cloud9 do have an opera for this map, it seems. Yeah, hitting some solid shots, Boomich. 11 to 8. And remember, no more timeouts for Maus. Mentioned that earlier, they yeah. burned the ball in the first half, so there's there's no way they can just take a breather and have a conversation. And Cloud9's getting, not giving them any reprieve and not calling any of their own. They've only called one in this half. Yeah, no need right now. It's going yeah. so swimmingly for them. And let Maus just stew in it. Let them try and figure things out on the fly. Well, that's what they've got to do with Tech 9s and P250s here. In fact, catches a timing in front of that utility. Actually, didn't land. Axel's Molotov does not get into position, but he does. And he's pushed up towards party, and he's going to rain on their parade. It's one for Axel so far. Yimfat hits the deck, and Axel just using smokes as defensive utility to keep himself alive. Remember, Buich is with him, so he can cover off that flank side, and that's why Axel seems so confident and comfortable just looking at this smoke. And Shuei's coming through it, and to his demise. It's now the Tech-9 pulled out for Axel instead of that reload. He's just handling business, and he is really feeling it in map one today. It's great to see Axel up here getting these numbers and fragging out. Yeah, he's got a bit of attitude to him. Torji's stuck over in the playground. 
I mean, this is the amount of kills he had in that quadruple overtime earlier on in the competition, so good to see. But again, it's like, I mean, even even in this round, I know it's uh, it's it's like Tech Nines and it's a little bit, it's a low buy for Mao, so they're not coming in with AK-47s, but they had an idea of what they wanted to execute even with those Tech Nines, right? They had some smokes, they had some flashbangs, they had some things they wanted to try and do, and this aggressive stance from Exile just disrupts anything. Same with Boomich paired up. They have to actually burn utility just to try and clear this position out. Which means even if even if they're successful, they don't they no longer really have a clear end game. Four chances, four round lead for Cloud9, four opportunities to take a one map lead in this series. Electronic boosted up. It's a good position here for him. An Axol and Connector. Yimfat's gonna go around the corner and clear it. He's gonna hard clear that, and Axol dishes out damage, but receives a headshot, so he's gone. And Maus, for the first time in a while, have a comfortable advantage in the round. Boomich! Oh, oh, that would have been a beautiful one to have. Nobody burns! Steps back into the Molotov from oh. Shui, and Torji builds on it. Taken down eventually. It's Electronic and Hobbit to defend this B-bomb site, and Electronic's doing it well. No way. Electronic is just devastating them now. A second kill. And he's looking towards Connector. In fact, peak Electronic with the headshot. My god, Electronic. What a turnaround in this round. 55 seconds left. Mal's are heading back to the A-bomb site, and they so desperately need this just to stay alive on map one. And they can make an educated guess about, you know, the A-bomb site being relatively clear because it's Hobbit over there. So utility's gonna come down. Plant's gonna go down. And Electronic's coming. The Bond villain himself. Making his way up those steps. Shui and Exertion, two sharp players. They've got to deal with this. They've got two smokes for the bomb, so if they can, even if you don't get a kill, you smoke the bomb, you toss out a Molotov, and you get going with it. Yeah, there's none of those pieces of utility available here for Malice to combat that, so smoke goes down onto the bomb. That's going to create pressure for the two post plant players of Shui and Exertion. Electronic brings down his fourth of the round, and nearly all five, but the defuse was stuck all along. It's Cloud9 with map one. It's overpass going their way. Not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. I've heard some uh, good rumors about Boomich. I feel like he's just a nice guy to be around with. I I've never seen him feel be toxic or whatever. He's one of those captains that always believes in his call and uh, his team, whatever, whatever the score is, and uh, he tries his best. I feel like he's a very flex flexible in-game leader. We can see he's taken up the op now in Cloud9. Cloud9 needed him. I don't think they needed him as an AVP player, but they definitely needed him as the IGL. Well, from my eyes, not having an opera definitely put some pressure on, on the team to perform. Every successful team does have a very strong opera. Going against that understanding is interesting and it's gonna be hard to prove, but um, yeah, it's up to them. I feel like he came uh, with a storm to the scene, like he was a fragging IGL with Navi. I feel like he was really good, consistent. I think Boomich is a, is a really good IGL and I'm excited to see him back um, in Cloud9. And uh, I think his special strength is uh, his explosiveness is an IGL. His aim, I think he has pretty good aim uh, for an IGL, definitely. Calling or anything, he was just annoying guy on the server to play against. Like he's always, let's say if Navi was like playing by the book and like doing things in a way that you could anticipate, Boomich was the one, you know, going out far left and doing things you wouldn't expect from from a team like Navi, like pushing with MP9 or like, I don't know, pushing with like shotgun or some crazy, crazy stuff. Uh, but I think like Boomich was this like, kind of like X factor that could win them some really crazy rounds and turn some crazy games.
Cloud9, large and in charge on the first map of this series. We're talking about seven rounds in a row on the T side, and the moment that Mao started to show any momentum Maui, uh, they aptly suffocated them, shut them right down. <sighs> Just not enough runway there for Maus to get anything going for themselves. It did feel like they were coming back into that one, both in terms of form and in terms of their game plans working out. I feel like the comms were starting to flow a little bit better for Maus, but it was off of the back of a very slow start for them and there are many things we're going to break down as to why that happened. Yeah, we also briefly talked about that play-in form coming in. It's such a benefit if you're able to go to the play-in area of Katowice and then actually advance to the next stage because you're already in form, you know how the setup is. It's the first time for Maus they play the latest game of all the teams here. It cannot be a benefit. Yeah, and we saw that, you know, really uh, putting the pressure on Cycro and shoulders. He used all three timeouts in the first half, right? Like, he was really banking on that, waking them up and being able to show some form in the second. I felt like it was actually necessary. Mm. I felt like the first five, six rounds there were so bad that he knew he needed to get into their ear, tell Shu, hey, hey, ever, and everybody for that matter, hey, everybody needs to communicate. There's way too many losing conditions that are being pushed out right now in Cloud9, and they're taking advantage of everything there. I also think with the MR12, you really need, as a coach, just to be there from the get-go. Like, if you're losing a couple of rounds, it's so meaningful, and he also knows that they are on the CT side, and if they're losing that many rounds in a row to a T side on overpass, like, shit needs to get fixed. We were putting Brolin under the spotlight, aptly so, coming into this map. Uh, he didn't deliver, to put it lightly, Maui. Uh, we had the line graph of his performances year by year that he's getting a little bit worse and worse and worse. This was <laughs> this was terrible, though. This was very bad from Brolin. I'm, I'm, I like Brolin. I think that he's been a really solid talent. We were talking about how he's one of the best things out of Sweden. But, I mean, unfortunately, that country hasn't been given a lot, so there weren't many options for us going there. This is a compilation of all of the times Brolin died, mostly from the POVs of of the Cloud9 players, he's getting, getting caught off guard. You see a couple of those that he's getting shot on the side of the head. He wasn't ready for the fights, Bubsky. And when you're putting together a defense here on overpass, your A rifler needs to be the most aware person for sure, especially if you're not bringing out an op early on. Yeah, especially when we see Exile on the opposite side doing so well, right? So Brolin is also a very very emotional player. When you look at the, the, the webcam, he's always like like in the middle of the rounds, and I'm not sure it's a beneficial start for when you get behind. I think it's going to play into his mind. Also coming into a team, you don't really know your place yet, right? You don't know how they're going to react. I think it's going to be really interesting to see if Brolin is able to pick it up. I like that we got to see a resurgence from Axel though, because I think earlier on in the tournament and I, I mean, kind of for the past few months, we've been critical of him, rightly so, because in the online era, he was really shining bright. We weren't, you know, uh, I think we had to temper our expectations a little bit. I want to see more of this Axel going forward. This Axel feels like a bit of the pro a product of the fact that really this Cloud9 game plan just felt a little bit more dynamic and mobile than what we saw from the Mao side. And yeah, we see the stats right there before us. 110 ADR from Axile. He's been on the chopping block for a lot of people in terms of discussions regarding C9. If they're going to pick up an opera, who's going to be? Is it going to be Axile? Is it going to be Hobbit? Well, this is a good performance to make sure that Axile's at least taking the lead right now. I've been so close to stepping off that hype train for Axile. I've been on the last step of being able to leave, and if they lost him, play and I'm like, bro, this guy is so close to getting cut. But once in a while, he delivers these types of games and you'll be like, okay, he's still got it, but can we see it some more? I'm not sure if it's a internal thing or it's like a personal thing with him not being able to deliver it because we see it sometimes on the aim aspect of it that he's still like, quote unquote, the old exile. Maui, you mentioned the AWP. Uh, you want to talk about that? Because a bit yeah. of a weird one to start on the first map. We have to. We have to talk about the fact that uh, for Maus, I mean, the reason I gave them such a big win condition in this game is the AWP difference, and yet it took until round number eight yep. for Maus to even bring out the AWP. That, to me, is is unacceptable. If you if you want if you want to have a game plan to beat C9 right now, it's get that gun out as early as possible. But the buys, the economy, it didn't really work in the favor to save up for Torzi. And so I saw him early on in the first five rounds. I think he had a 5-7 twice, and he had some armor and light light nades and things like that. So they couldn't they couldn't bring it out till the eighth round, and he only got four kills with the op in the first half. Yeah, you said it's not optimal. And I also think it's kind of weird when you're losing so much, you should be even more able to get it once in a while because you have that economy bonus going. But for some reason, he's prioritizing getting the rifle a couple of rounds, and I don't think he was a difference maker. I think he could have been with the AWP, like we saw earlier with some AWPs against Cloud9, but I'm not sure why the game plan was this way. You seeing the trend being correct of teams that played in the play-ins? kind of, you know, hitting the ground running coming into the group stage. I think that was the story yesterday, and Cloud9 are kind of proving that again, right? There's definitely something to be said about the fact that if you're coming, we've seen it with the major cycle, with the challenger yeah. stage into the legend stage, we see it with the play-in into the group stage, that 
I would say the first half at the very least is one where all of these teams that have been playing in this exact same hall of heroes for the last week, yep. they just come in so much hotter. Yeah, I mean, from my personal experience as well, when you get to, to experience a little bit before and you get the nerves away, you kind of already got the, to the goal for Cloud9, maybe like group stages, it was their goal. Obviously, they want to go into playoffs, but it just brings a certain calmness that you've tried it. Mouse have sat at home watching the games. Ooh, oh my God, Cloud9, uh, they're struggling. Virtus Pro out, what the hell is going on, Astralis? And then, then all of a sudden in the spot themselves, it just changes the mental part. Should we talk about the next map of the series? Uh, Mirage, obviously a familiar ground from when these two teams yeah. clashed back in Abu Dhabi. Uh, Cloud9 going to be wanting to forget that one, though, because it was quite a one-sided scoreline back then. <laughs> this is a map where I feel like Shuhei is just totally in his bag. He's so frequently at Connector just being a disruptor for the opponents, and also he's so frequently on the T side able to manage the mid-round so well. And so it feels like of all the maps where I feel like Shuhei does some of his best work, for me, Mirage is near top of the list, if not the very top map. Yeah, and I also think it, it relied a lot on Frozen back in the day because he's such a solid anchor. Now Brolin is going to step into that role and he had such a rough first map. He's going to be in his head. He's going to be expecting, okay, I'm going to push slow a couple of times alone and he's going to have to win that duel whoever he'll meet. How would you stylistically rather uh, describe how Shue approaches this map then? Do you think it's going to be any different with Brolin now in the place of Frozen? I think Brolin is still just going to be lurking towards A on the T side. So I don't think that that should change too much of the main focal point of the map, which is obviously going to be mid, and that's usually the pack players being, uh, you've got Torzi, you've got Shuhei himself, you've got Exertion, and I feel like every single round, Shuhei's trying to get into window, Exertion's trying to get into ladder room, and Torzi's just making sure whatever they're not trying to go to, no one's pushing from there, and that's where it feels like, that's kind of like their office. They set up this office space, they get everything in order, and then they're just like, open up spreadsheets and crap like that, and it feels like when Shuhei's starting to do that, well, he, now he's just flying. Yeah, I also think Mirage mid has changed quite a bit, because that instant smoke you throw for window now, there can become gaps if people stand on that ledge in window where they can see catwalk and I also think the nade thing where all of a sudden the orbers blow it off and then they see through it changes a lot we are kind of used to seeing um, the T's go behind the island but then all of a sudden people start molotoving now we see people going over to the mini delpam thing and hiding instead so it's constantly changing up between the utility and I think it's going to be really interesting to look who's going to be that team to make the new meta, I think Mouse could be a team that would go first. Yeah, and certainly not all lost for Mouse just yet. Hope on the horizon as their map pick does lay in wait. So let's check in with Shocks to see what she heard from the Mouse camp. All right then, for Mouse, back to the drawing board. I did get to talk to uh, Cyclone right after they got off the server and um, well, he said they just didn't feel as comfortable as Cloud9 did from the beginning of the match. And that is also what we talked about with Groove, saying when you played a couple of games here in Katowice already, then it's going to be easier to adjust once you get onto that stage. I asked him about Brolan as well, but he didn't want to tell me too much. Um, he wanted a lot of time to talk to his team, and that's what he did. Even though it was raining, they took every single second to make sure that they could talk uh, about Mirage. Fair play for bracing the rain here in Caddo. It's cold ass rain out there. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Mirage though. Let's talk about Mao starting on the T side. What do you expect from them? Well, we've talked about the pack players in middle. I feel like maybe something they can abuse is the fact that, to me, Perfecto, awesome support player, awesome anchor, but he's supposed to be the opera for C9 on this map. And I just feel like he's done a subpar job in most of the games that I've viewed. And so it feels like if you have to get past anybody, to me, one of the dynamic duos is the Boomich electronic A side defense. Yeah. And I feel like that might give Maus a little bit of trouble, but... I, yeah. I also think an issue for Cloud9 is going to be there's too many cooks in the kitchen because on Overpass you kind of have B down there, they can do whatever they want and then you have A, right? On Mirage it's so connected, like they have to come together and be like, okay, this is the plan, but I would expect Electronic to be like, oh, I want to do this, but Exile is like, I want also want to do that. So it's it's whoever who is the biggest voice in this team I st I'm yet still to find. If you could have your way, Maui, with this Cloud9 roster, I know you hate seeing Perfecto picking up the big green. I know it used to happen on H and as well, they've been switching it all around there. Who would you give it to? In the context of you can't change any players, oh. who should be holding it on this map? On this, I, I mean, okay, I'll say this. The In terms of pure opping ability that I've seen from all of the maps from Cloud9, I've actually liked Boomich. It's, yeah. it's weird. Uh, I love him with the MP9, but I also like him with the op. He just seems to be one of the most mobile people. He's always trying to catch the rotations of the Ts all the time. I feel like he's so dynamic with where he puts himself, whereas Perfecto, he's just a little bit more static for me, and sometimes he just kind of sets up an angle, and it's like, yeah, you're holding that angle, but you need to move. You need to get that op somewhere else, and Boomich does that better in my eyes. Yeah, I also think he doesn't really care about like dying. I think most of the other players have that kind of, mm, I kind of want to play it safe, but if Boomich sees a gap in a smoke, he goes for it, and I think that's the difference between Cloud9 being a 
predictable team and a non-predictable team. Get you a man who can do both, I guess. Maybe that's going to be falling down to the hands of Boomerja. Maybe, just maybe, Cloud9 might be netting this series in two. It's going to be an uphill battle, though. Mouser's pick of Mirage awaits. I think Tosi is a really talented guy, also pretty young, but has a lot of experience already. Plays his role really well. You can see when he has his highs dominating the server, and I think that's mainly for him, like finding perfect consistency on all maps. Uh, he's, yes, too, he's still a strong Alper. I think the gun is pretty difficult to play now, but he's still doing a good job. So I don't think anything too different come to my eyes when I talk about Tarzi, but you just know that he's gonna be there, which is already sufficient, you know, like he's gonna be hitting and getting performances, so yeah. I think he's a bit more aggressive than like the Russian style Alpers, but he's not like to the level of, of Monisi, which I think is like even a little tad bit more aggressive. So maybe in just like the, the normal range of what we see as Alpers. Tozzi is, is a good teammate, I would say. He's sacrificed a lot for Mouse, throwing a lot of flashes for them when like he has the, the lot of kills. He's, I don't see that he's selfish Alper. I believe he's from the few Alpers that, that play a lot for the team. I remember that debate about Tarzi was playing when changing the game leaders from Dexter to Siwi and stuff like that. Maybe he does feel more comfortable under his new leadership. Maybe he does feel that the team is stronger now, so he actually feels better. I mean, there is definitely differences in in-game leaders as an AWP in which peaks you are doing and what you are allowed to do within like the tactical realm. And if you are playing with an in-game leader that doesn't support you and give you the space you need, then you will not get a lot of shots off during a round. And I think as an opera, you need to get as many good shots as you can. There could be something to it. I think the biggest challenge will be top tier opera because you have a lot of talented operas right now and it's really hard to catch and like, I feel like there is a gap between some players, but I feel like the mindset is like to keep going, going forward. So it needs like always perform in this kind of sense. All right then, roster roulette with the boys. You got six chips in front of you and you're gonna place the amount of chips is the number of roster changes that team will make by the end of the year. Uh, we got Maus up next. Are um, you ready? One, one across the board, okay. Who's the one? Uh... <laughs> Brolin have, uh, I don't remember, he have short time contract or something like that? Could be one, it might be Brolin or Torsi. All six. <laughs> That's ice cold, Jimmy. I, Team I, sucks, I... get them all out. <laughs> Max one, but I will not even put you. I'll gamble on two. Gambling on two? Yeah, this is a gamble. No, 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 no. No, no, for sure. They're a young team. I think they have a good environment in, yeah. inside the team. Say they are number six in the world, I think they will stick to their roster. But let's say G2 are number six, they probably won't. I think it depends how Berlin plays, to be honest. If he, if he plays well and performs well, he's gonna like stay and they're gonna probably stay together. Maybe they will sell even some player also. I think the highest risk of them changing the roster is players getting poached. I think it's a um, good bet and I, 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 there, is, <laughs> there, is, there, is no, there is no like explanation for this one. Yeah. It's just from feeling. I'm getting scared from Jimmy. This has been fun.
Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2024. Maus have to come in locked in for map two. They're a map down now, but it's Mirage coming up. They went out in the rain, Jason. They got a yeah. little bit wet. Maybe they're ready this time. That's the way to do it. Unite in a miserable situation under the rain, and also just getting bodied by Cloud9 on map one. That'll get you all focused up, so Cyclone can have as much time as he wanted to talk to the boys, get them fired up, because it's Mirage. It's Mouse's pick, and we'll see if they can bounce back in this series, and boy, do they need it. Starting on the T side, attacking into Cloud9's defense. At least they have three more timeouts available for Cyclone. True. And, you know, that's definitely something we have to talk about and have a look at, but... Uh... <laughs> really, really looking for those silver linings, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I love how the, the cam was on the window. I thought they missed it, but I did go to connector. Oh, good. It's in the con. The smoke doesn't go out towards the window, and Perfecto is in behind that connector smoke. Zertion, oof. Peace. Oof. This is a split towards the A bomb set as well. They're committed to it, and you have Electronic at A ramp already. You have Boomich looking at Palace. This is going to be a tough angle. Oh, this is looking a little dicey for Malz, especially with the man down. Yimfat coming up through a window. Torsi's with him. Nice shot from Torsi. He'll take that one. And there he is, Cloud9's latest Alper, Boomich. Interesting. So Electronic's pushing now. So this is this is kind of this is kind of weird. If he wraps all the way around towards middle, it's Boomich. Oh, they're genius. Ooh, hoo, hoo. He's so smart. He's got the big brain moves, but Shuei's watching for it. So much brain power on display here, but it's all about the shots now. And Electronic splatters through his brain all over the floor. And now he's looking for a little bit more. Electronic swings and is dead to Prolan. Yeah, but do you continue with the tactic if you're Malice? They've spotted the bomb in Palace. Like, everyone can commit. And Whoa. yeah, they're moving forward. Jimmy's down in Cubby. Axel dueling. They know one's at ramp now. Needs to be a win somewhere. And Jimmy's got a trade. He does indeed. Axel <laughs> gets traded out one for one. Hobbit has to step up in his stead. And now Torsi with a 1v2 ahead of him. It's a good shot on that P250 up first. And the molly goes down to default, so Torchy can't plant there, but he knows exactly where his next victim is. He fakes the plant, he comes off it, and Hobbit knows that now. He knows he's in a fight, and Torchy's got the clutch! There he is, the little Hungarian hero. Yeah, P250 doing some work. Taking Hobbit down right at the end of the day. A hard pissed around win for Maus. That, was, that looked like Cloud9 was in a great position most of the way through, but... Some nice shots from Torji, as we see. A couple of nice headshots and cleaning Hobbit up, not losing track of him on the fake plant. It's one to nothing. But this is how Overpass started, so you know. Let's everybody stay reasonable. So plenty of time for things to go wrong. Oh my goodness, Boomich. He ain't happy. Be careful. He ain't happy. He's giving himself whiplash. His brain just bouncing around his skull. What is it with Snappy and Boomich punching themselves in the head? You know, gotta be uh, wrapping them up with bubble wrap. And Shuei, he's got that opening, no problem. Interesting conversation, you know, Brolan was talked about quite a bit on the desk about how uh, that first map wasn't particularly good, Jason. They, they had a sort of low light reel. They showed all his deaths on the desk. I like the, I like the idea of like Shox, uh, of FBI walking up to Brolan to try and get interviewed. He's, he's like, like, no. No, I don't want to talk. <laughs> that seems but, funny. But that's the thing. The thing about Brolan is I don't know if, what that means. Like that could be I'm having a great day. <laughs> I don't want to talk because I'm playing bad. He's just like, no, I'd rather go stand in the rain. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> Not being one, uh, I feel like we've maybe heard a couple of sentences from him over the years, and he's been in the scene for a very long time now. Yeah. There's something about Swedish players and people just talking about the fact that, you know, they're the young up-and-coming players forever. Well, we're up and coming into this A-bomb site. Palace Pop, Boomich is the only one, and boy, does he get overran. Good trade from Electronic, but he's got to hold on until reinforcements arrive. Good oh. spray control to grab Shuhei as well. And ooh, that's a pretty decent stop of this execute. Yeah, good flash up too here from Electronic. It's going to hold them back. Axel's got that headshot exertions down, and so far, not so good for Malice, but those kills are going to come back and put them in a winnable position once again. 2v2, but Bomb is down just outside Palace. I, and they've got to go back and get that. I don't know if they realize it, Cloud9, if the bomb is there. Axel, surely he would, he about would to find see it out. on the radar. Maybe not, but he's looking for Torji. Knife out, not ready for the fight. It's all in Jim Pat. Yeah, and he's a long way off. He's so far away, in fact. And fortunate for him, there's a full minute left on this clock. So Jim Pat's got to run all the way through T-spawn. But he's got quite the clutch ahead of him.
Yeah, I, the problem, the thing that sucks the most is there's no way the internal clock of Cloud9 doesn't doesn't trigger, and they're already watching for both their flanks. Perfecto's got Palace smoked off. Axel can just drop a Molotov on spot, and then they can dump. Oh, no, he can't. He's dropped on spot. Yimfat comes in with that headshot, and now it's up against Perfecto. There's time here for Yimfat, and he is so good in these situations. <laughs> Hits the headshot, but it doesn't bring him down. Perfecto has to win the 1v1. That damn Galil is what he's saying right now. A dink and not the cleanup after the fact. A nice attempt. That's a disgusting shot on Exile. Woo. But in a grander sense, Malice is going to be frustrated. You do a palace pop like this, you get that first kill inside the bomb site, and it feels like you're just poised for success. That's usually the kill that gets these these kind of waterfalls hung up, but they, they find it and still can't win out at the end of the day. Good recovery from Electronic at that A bomb site. Yeah, their waterfall dried up, and so will their cash if they lose this round over on Maus. They pulled out a Krieg in the hands of Torzi. I think this is the first time I've personally seen the Krieg in the event so far, so let's see what Torzi can do with it. When do they go? Because Axile and Hobbit are already pushing B-Halls. They're already shrinking this map. Electronic's pushing middle, and he's going to grab a kill. Now they know. It's all on Boomage up from above. Oh, and he's oh. on the ladder. Not as much as you'd like. How is he still alive? And finally, he's brought down Perfecto. Para headshots. You love to see that. And it's now Cloud9 up two to two. Good, good cause for celebration from Boomich. Even though you only get the one kill, you're such a distraction and stay alive just long enough to make those kills easy for Perfecto. As everyone's swinging to take him down in dark or on top of balcony, Perfecto's got an easy one in the back and able to recover in time for Suhei. <laughs> That's a classic. I know that word. Two to two. Glocks. Miles are broken down, and you did mention it just moments ago when they won the pistol, Jason. You said that's exactly how Overpass started. Yeah, win the first two rounds, and then it was seven straight for Cloud9. Oh, Miles is sick. They're desperately hoping that it doesn't become a reality again. Axile with that headshot on Brolin. Would be fantastic to see Axile stay in this kind of form going into the second map two out of Overpass. But again, I think that interesting talking point you brought up over on Overpass, the fact that you want to see Exertion get involved, be that aggressive player, I think that's even more of an emphasis here on Mirage, because the T side of Mirage is where I think I've seen the most statement performances from him. Getting into the window, getting yeah. into the connector, in these positions, he can cause so many problems for his opponent. Yeah, he's one of those players who really likes to make plays, as you said, in window, or moving up con and wrapping in towards jungle, and kind of really exploit that kind of seam that's created uh, due to movement of the defense. So uh, if he can be effective there, it, it would be massive. It's going to be It's going to be a big challenge for him. Got Electronic hovering around those locations on this map as well. And with all his experience and his game sense and knowledge and just his raw ability, Exertion's going to have his work cut out for him in this half. Oh, we've all been there. Blocking each other in spawn. An exile. He's got those swift moves. He's out short. He's jumped through the window to get here. He looks to try and pepper some opponents down through that smoke, but doesn't get that opportunity early on. Exertion will. Takes out Electronic, who swings into mid. Important trade from Axol, and it's followed up. I don't know how he was able to transition his crosshair up and get away with a second nap. He should have been traded, absolutely. Yeah, that was Shuhei. Oh, look at Brolin. He's in the done. middle of the site, and that's a big headshot. Not only that, but look at the space he's got now. Yeah, he's got to bring the bomb over. Yeah, that missed shot is from Shuhei, and, and I've noticed a couple. He also missed a spray on a Perfecto earlier from this position that Perfecto's in right now. Ooh, Brolin's going to just lock down CT. Now he's got a teammate and start a connector. Smoke goes out towards CT, and Brolin's going to peek with it. Climbs over Ticket, has a little look in behind it, and Exile... He's going to start pulling the pin in the utility. Brolin now knows exactly how close his opponent is, and he unleashes for a kill. Couldn't quite transfer to Perfecto, who keeps this one even, and Cloud9 still have a shot at retaking this, but Hobbit's still so far away. He's only in the underpass now, and it's not like he has the best weapon to play with here in his hands currently, but he's got the up on Jim Fat, who's not ready for this. Hobbit locks that in, smoke and now it's just towards you left alone in a 1v2, and they can smoke that bomb and create so much pressure, they don't even need it in the end. Hobbit yeah. lands the headshot. Damn, those are some great jewels. I mean, the, the flank is nice and easy, but that follow-up shot from Hobbit is beautiful. You're right, didn't even need the smoke whatsoever. Perfecto gets to hold on to that. In another situation that Mouse is going to feel like we gave ourselves the advantage, we got ourselves in everything we could have wanted, and still aren't able to pull it out. I'm not sure that one-for-one -one trade in CT with Brolin was really worth it.
He wanted more than one from that kind of an angle over the top of the smoke, but it being blown open changed the nature of his play. Four to two, and Cyclone's got to get on the mic again. Doesn't seem too concerned quite yet. He gives a massage to the player he wants to step up. I've noticed, you know, last you better map. go down the line. Yeah, last the last map it was uh, Shua, you know, last time out. It's on to you now, buddy. Passes the powers on to the shoulder massage. Now he's hoping Torzi has a big performance. Yeah. Well, they might want map one Shui back. He was getting some opening kills. He was hitting some bangers, some nice headshots. This one, as I mentioned, he's probably missed two, at least two, maybe three important kills and trade kills. Sat at one and six, the captain of Mao's. Shades of overpass. Mao's look to try and change that. A big win here would really help the economy. And it's so hard, again, like this team is still really, oh, good flash, good yeah. flash, great peek, easy double kill. Yeah, you gotta like those if you're electronic. Not if you're Mao's. Definitely not if you're Mao's. It doesn't get much better for them until this shot from Shuei. Electronic goes back for third. Is maybe a little too greedy. And you wind up going down. So down to three players now. Mouse. Look how confident the Cloud Nines being. They're just they're oh, aggressively taking fights. Yeah, this is the second time he's found this like lurk kill towards the A bomb site. He's hitting some nice timings on Boomich, who's probably getting increasingly frustrated. The bomb and Torji are on the other side of the map over in B Halls, though. So I think they're gonna. Oh, what? he's got another one. Ooh, that's a nerdy little angle, and I love that from Brolin. That's pulled a kill in, and now it might start to pull another player away. And sure, I... the bomb is coming back through the underpass. There's a better weapon on the ground too. The electronic left earlier, and you can get that into the hands of Torsi. So this round now becomes very doable for Mouse at the 36 second mark. Oh, so risky. Axile's got to go back and consider the B bomb site, though. So that was the pressure on Catwalk. I actually thought coming back to A was the wrong idea. But Axile gets pulled back, thinking this is going to be a fake. Even smokes Catwalk off. Ugh, so Mal's have light. a plan. If you if you drop this one, this is a knockout punch if you can't win this round as Mal's. Oh, but Hobbit is so sharp today. Another headshot comes in. And that's Brolin gone without issue. A 2v2. And remember, Hobbit has a little bit of utility, but Axile's got the kit. And Torch has come out window. Here's that drop down. Axile thought it was safe. Thought he could reload, but he is mistaken. And now Hobbit does not have a kit, and the chances of winning this round are very slim indeed. Time is ticking on, and Hobbit realizes that. He'll throw the flash over. Smoke goes out, and he's had enough. He's going to back away from this one, and Maus do pick it up. And we were just saying at the start of this how important that could be for the economy game, and it has allowed that economy to now grow. They're going to have a lot more cash available, and if they get this kill on Hobbit, that would have been a little annoying. Lose the AK-47, and they do eventually drop that out of his hands. A lot of congratulations going around the Maus camp. This is Brolin again opening things up and building upon it this time. Wow. <laughs> Haven't seen that angle used in a while. Really good stuff from Brolin. And he's, as I said, that's the second time he's found. We saw in the previous round that they lost in the post plant as well. Found a good lurk up the A ramp. This time it's out of Palace that he drops into the site. That's twice now he's had Boomich's number and given Mal's an opening into a bomb plant. It's Cloud9 who sit on a, I don't know, I guess I guess kind of weird funds. Perfecto's rich, so he's gonna drop guns over. There'll be another buy for the Cloud9 defense as the timeout comes to a close. That chicken's seen stuff. Yeah, it looks like it. It's been all around the world. Four to three now. Maus you heard them say it themselves. Torji said that was such an important round. And it definitely is. Let's see if they can build on it. It would be devastating to win that kind of round and then immediately get slapped back down to reality. Exertion going out middle. We talked about him like some of these solo plays and he is dead before he even gets around the corner. And now Maus have to accelerate into this B bomb site. At the front of the attack is Yim Fat and what a shot flying out. Hobbit couldn't do anything there. He is gone completely destroyed. And Torzi throwing the ball on over, giving it to someone else because he feels like he's got a chance to take down a player crossing over. And that's exactly what happens. Smoke doesn't bloom in time and Electronic gets picked out. Yeah, this round's toast. A good dink on the gym pad, but you're, you're not safe. getting out of that market. Yeah, you're going to bail out. I, I don't even know how that entrance works. They call that the boomer killer. I, I'm just confused. 
It's mind blowing. <laughs> Perhaps it'll make more sense when we see it from his perspective. Maybe like he stopped for a millisecond on the platform to give himself accuracy and lands the shot. But I don't think so. I think I think you're just making things up now. You're trying to justify it. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's what happens, isn't it? That's I, that's life. That taking that kind of a kill as Hobbit is that'll make you feel old. All right, Axel. Yep. Let me save this at four. Ah, no, not allowed. Brolin takes him out, and Mouser are very much locked in now at the start of Mirage. A better start to the game. Here we go. Nope, yeah, nope, was, that was BS, Jason. There was no stopping. No. There was not a single stop. <laughs> That's so ridiculous. Oh, I feel for Hobbit. You can't even compete against that, really. No, we've all been there. Ferrari peak. Well, you get a couple of those and things start looking nice. It's uh, Cloud9 who have to descend to the pistols. They invested everything in that previous round and got nothing. So Mal's hitting a nice streak, hitting their stride. Ooh, the collection of pistols. They're not short. The pistolas looking to bestow a kill upon Zershin. And that's exactly what happens. Electronic gets away with that, but. Miles are still prizing this B bomb site, and, and I feel like they do have an opportunity, but there's no need to commit anywhere just yet. So they're gonna slow a little bit down and get another kill here. And multiple players spot in towards this B bomb site at this point. Sure, he's trying to help his teammates, and then the peak comes in from the apartments, and that is enough to close up and give themselves the lead. Gonna miss gold B, but at least his poster's up there. Did I just hear something about Russian B? I think so. I also think so. We're going to find out. B-Rush? That could be fun. That could be exciting. Let's hope Cloud9 didn't hear it. They're calling for that, the old Jimmy entrance, they call it. The Jimmy jump. The Jimmy enter. <laughs> wow. Well, it is a B-Rush. Well, they're looking like it at the moment. Hobbit and Axile are going to be there to defend. Ooh, they slow it down. It's not a full rush. Looking for a timing to execute, perhaps after the Molotov. Yeah, just wet out the utility, and then you can go with a bang. It's a very deep Molotov. All right, Hobbit. I hope he has a better time. It's always about timing on these like jump spots. Like, when do you actually see him? He saw him pretty early. Defensive yep. utility deployed into the bomb site. He goes. Yeah, he gets back further into the side. Electronic trying to help from short. Axile was there too, but no kills coming in yet for Cloud9. Is there any kills to be had? Hobbit steps up finally. Perfecto chimes in with the AWP2 on that CT side, and Hobbit is dancing with death. He's got a good angle here, but couldn't spot Brolin through the whispers of the smoke. And Torsi's he's got that flank. Boomich thinks he's got the play, but he's mistaken. Torsi's he's locked that frag in, and that's the bomb. And look it's going back through the underpass. And look at Shui. He's, he's, he's checkmate. This is great. Brolin's just going to stick around at this B-bomb site and hide and be a nuisance. They might think he's disappeared, but how do you get past Shui? You have to go CT spawn. Torji's going to get a bomb plant front of the site. He can even fall all the way back towards Khan. Oh, free kill for Hobbit. Peeks out just as Brolin looks away. But absolutely now, Miles are in a very solid position to try and close this one out. Torsi has a deep angle towards CT and Perfecto's peak. Sick flashbang. That's going to get Torsi off the angle. And Shue is still inside of jungle. And Torsi surely gets a chance again to land one. But the shadow, the baiting out of the shot again. Torsi's under pressure. Perfecto trying to get around the back. But Shue on the double headshot. What a play in this round from Shue. Yeah, Torsi could never get a comfortable angle after his flashed off CT spawn. But that is a nice round from Shue. It's a nice round inside that B bomb site as well. It doesn't go exactly as planned, exactly as designed. Hobbit's defensive smoke gave him a lot of maneuverability at that B bomb site. But Shue's found the escape route and called the boys over. Two round lead. Looks like the rain did him a little bit of good. It did. It really did. Osmosis. Going through the skin as Malice get back into this. Mirage, a much better showing so far. And the pistols, they don't look like they're uh, going to amount to too Ooh. much. Thanks to Jimmy's headshot. Damn, he's sharp, isn't he? Yeah, he's on one. Gotta get your gun out, Brolin. They're coming at you. Oh, nope, he's dead. He's gone, and that's an AK-47. Yeah, and I, I, I don't... I, Zershin's gonna lurk through this con smoke. Up catwalk we go is Shuhei and Torji. They're gonna peek into that B-bomb site. Zershin's gotta be real careful. There's three players there ready to party. Oh, but Perfecto, he loves a party, and here he goes. Deagle out. It's a Deagle party just for one, and Torji and Zershin come back for a couple. So we're now looking at Maus with a flank around the back, dealing damage onto Zershin. Hobbit's locked that in on the 5-7, and he'll slip away. He gets the upgrade this time. And that bomb's down on the B-bomb side, and Yimfat, he's just fracking out. He's just unforgiving as he gets that kill from ladder room and drops down, doesn't give the second opportunity to be traded. 
And Hobbit doesn't have the kit, nor does he have the ground to get back into this. So he's just hoping he gets a mistake. He'll carry that AK over into the next round. And we're taking seven onto the board here for Mouse. Yeah, he could have gone for it, because they're going to be buying in the next round anyways. But obviously, that AK-47, that one bullet headshot is strong. So he'll just keep it as a low percentage chance anyways. But oh, they here's were going to buy regardless. Yeah, one kill in garbage time would be nice. And he's got it. Yeah. So best Cloud9 can do is five. And no, oh, that AK taken away. Ooh. Again, not a huge deal, because they have a full losing bonus. They've got plenty of money. It just would have been nice. Yeah, it still hurts to feel like you just wasted time uh, in the end. Precious seconds, you won't get back. Yep. But Yimfa uh, is just so good today. He's so good all the time. And I love that he's so Finnish. That's my favorite thing about it. <laughs> you know, that podcast he was doing in the content piece, he was like, he's just so honest about, oh, yeah, maybe it's good, um, maybe it's not. And the, his teammates starting to worry. He's like, I'm worrying about Jimmy now. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, he was stuck. He said that Miles was going to make uh, six roster changes this year. <laughs> So, take from that what you will, insider information. Second time I used uh, for Mouse heading into this final round of the first half, despite the fact that they're on a uh, five round streak. So, Cyclone just uh, not being cautious, just saying, we, well, I want this last round. Let's pile on as much as we possibly can. Wow, a little head rub. Wish I could get massages while I work. No, I'm good. No? I'm not helping you out. I was, thanks. Okay. Get Launders in here early. Not right now. Have you heard him? He's got. Oh, well, I don't want to eat what he's got. That's strong hands. I'm sure he does. I'm sure he does. Towards he's got the uh, the scope over here towards ramp this time around. Boomich has had a rough old time of things on the CT side. One kill and he's kind of been the the bane of the defense. He's just falling apart all the time. Oh, and here's this continuation. Oh, hold the phone. They're gonna walk right Ooh. through this smoke. Boomich. Yeah, he's had a rough time, but he does connect to this kill. Oh, Ooh, good follow-up. Dink and Axile cleans it up. Yeah, and Night Perfecto up on the stairway has got the AWP ready to go. I was going to say, it's the interesting continuation of the op conversation with Cloud9, because we obviously saw Boomich use it on Overpass. Here on, on Mirage, it's been Perfecto picking it up, so passing the op and, uh, you know, based off who feels more comfortable on the map. And Boomich obviously playing an A anchor role. Just think Boomich is the better opper, though. He's uh, shown some prowess over on Overpass. It was a tough question to have to answer. I'm sure he's got himself towards Sandwich. 50 seconds left in this round, and Maus are creeping ever closer to this A-bomb side. They're limited for choice. They have to go here. Can a brother get a flashbang to turn this corner? Nope. He's dead. Boomich peeks out, catches Shoe in the open. Zershin leaps out of Palace. It's an important kill, but many more need to come through. And leaping over the stairway. What a shot from Torsi. Oh my god, he nearly had a chance to bring down more. But a 7-5. Maus still hold the lead. They've come back in. They look locked in. And let's see if we can force map three. myself. 
If Malice want to see Ancient, they've got to take Mirage. They're up 7-5. Boomich is okay. We've assessed him for head injuries, and we're good to go into the second half here, Jason. Yeah, he's going to have to call a great game as well against this Malice team because they put up a very good number of rounds on their own offensive half as they switch over. Dooley's on exertion on Torji. Torji's got 14 kills. 14 kills, 5 deaths. That off difference hitting hard. Big time, and it could it could get worse. That's the that's the case here on the CT side, right? We're going to see towards you be a little bit more comfortable on the defense. So let's see how this goes. It's Cloud9 I, walking over with three players on this B-bomb site. Uh, two players on the B-bomb site, three players at A. I can't tell if this is going to be a fake or... Yeah, it's got to be a fake. Here we go. Up the ramp. Hobbit and Boomich making progress. Oh, everyone's biting. Everyone's biting. Oh, Torzi. Good first kill. Could have got the second. Did a lot of damage, but Brolin was the player to finish that off. And here comes that maneuver into the B bomb site for Cloud9. They put the bomb down. Miles started with the right amount of players on this side of the map. And here comes Shuei through short, looking to try and get in behind. Axel is just chilling, waiting to stop him from getting out of the market. But the jump out from Yimfat just comes through. He's got some mad moves here, Yimfat, and he's got another headshot. It's just perfecto left. And that defuse is already being stuck around the corner. Yimfat looking to lock that in, and he will do it. Yeah, Torzi's fired up with that one. And Yimfat, again, just he's finding some serious impact. Yeah, he really is. That's the first time I think I've seen Psycho and Smile in this series. He's, he's like, OK, they're awake, they're loud, they got some energy to them. The fact that this fake doesn't get them any kills is, is so is so rough. They need to alleviate some of the pressure when the, when the rotation comes back. And the fact the kills come in so quick allows Cloud or allows Mouse to stick around and mark it and actually spot out where that plant is going to be fast enough to relocate. Good information gathering from the market as window. You saw one at bench, you saw one shifting over towards catwalk, so you're able to kind of zero in. You know one's going to be coming back from the A bomb site. Mal's knew everything on that retake. Axel has a little peek around the corner. Good shot on the Deagle. It is just one as Brolin gets an important trade, not to let that one unravel. Yeah, but that's not bad when you consider there's an AK-47 on the board in the hands of Electronic. You get one Deagle kill, forces the defense to spread a little bit. I say that, but no one's sticking around at the A-bomb site. Two players coming up to Khan. Good trade from Torji, but it's still working out in the favor. A two-on-two. -two. Cloud9's going to be very happy with this so far. I can't believe Electronic got that headshot. It looked like he was going to go down without a single kill, but Electronic's so damn good, he manages one. Hobbit. Close up to that smoke. Now he's the AK bearer. He's got himself a position, too, that could take exertion out of this round because he's always aggressive, and sometimes it works against him. Bomb is down. Yimfat up against Hobbit in the clutch. Yimfat has a better weapon now, and he's so confident. He takes every fight, he takes every swing, and he wins it against Hobbit. Yeah, he's feeling it. He's just making decisions so fast and sticking to it and doing it 110%. Beautiful clutch from you, Jimmy. 14 and 10 and the defuse, and he's going to keep Mal's up by four. However, that's a very costly victory. Mal's going to have to reinvest everything. So if you're Cloud9, again, we talk about this all the time. This isn't a disappointing loss. You'd like to have it, but you know their economy is a breaking position, so there's no time for despair. Cloud9 buy back right into it. Well, let's see how Boomich starts calling this T-side then in the gun rounds. Towards he does have that AWP. If he's given the opportunity, he can make this half devastating for Cloud9. And Shuei's got aggressive into the underpass. He's not going to continue his run. He just wants to position himself here early. And Brolin is down. A straight up fight with a rifle between Boomich and Brolin. And it's Cloud9 that come out on top of that first fight. But the second is evened out. Yeah, but Shuei doesn't have an escape route. <laughs> oh, but he's going forward. Yeah, but he's, there's no way. He had two behind him. He had Boomich coming up as well. And I mean, because of his teammate going down in window, didn't feel like he could escape through middle. So he was just a sacrificial lamb. We see that that spot in window, the spamming over the top right of the smoke from the CT perspective, is it's being used by pretty much everyone. And I, we saw it in the first half. Mao's on their T side tried to pre-fire it this time as well. Boomich goes for it, and Boomich was actually successful with it. But people are very conscious of how how dangerous and how effective that position is. It feels like almost a 50-50 fight at this point. Cloud nine settling back into middle. With that player advantage, they've parked Axel outside of the apartments. And three players are about to walk towards Exertion, and he doesn't have any help from the A-bomb side. That smoke will make sure of that. So he's locked into a fight here, and he's got to win it, and he won't. Boomich is so sharp on that headshot, and now it's Yimfat. 
He has been so incredible so far on this map, but this round would be just a step too far. And that's exactly what it is. Electronic with the headshot, and that's the round. Torsi has to save the AWP on the other side of the map. And it's six rounds for Cloud9. That's a good first gun round showing here on the T side. Good pathing for Boomich as well. And, and Cloud9, as they move up catwalk, Bo Boomich swings to the left while the, while his teammate swings into dark Agsile. So even if Agsile doesn't win that fight, or Electrona, even if he doesn't win, they're going to trade Jimmy no matter what. So torji has got to save the op, but Cloud9's on the hunt. Yeah, they are. Oh, uh, my. Boomich damn. is damn sharp in this round. That's three overall, and that is huge because you take that op out of Torsi's hands, and there's no money left for Maus. They're in double eco territories. They're going to have to force into pistols, and Cloud9 have given themselves a runway. This is how it started for Boomich. That first kill into the window you mentioned earlier, Jason, and then that second shot against Zertions is sick. And then that's just a bonus kill, isn't it? That's just beautiful to watch from Boomich. And here comes this force buy from Maus. They lose this, then they're back down to an eco, and Cloud9 should be one step away from tying it up. Not a whole lot of utility thrown as what we're used to seeing. They're happy to take these fights. Going in dry. They're hoping that Mal's take these fights. Yeah, they obviously would come out more favored to Cloud9, and that's exactly how it's gone down. Boomich is taking that first kill. You know, I'm so glad we got Boomich back. You know, it, it, it was such a... Yeah, did you miss him? I did. I did. He's a great personality. He brings a fun style of play to the server. It's good to see him back in the server with Cloud9. I mean, obviously relatively limited... Um in which teams he could have called for, but it was it was weird seeing him. It was weird getting the sense that he, he didn't seem to have a whole lot of value across My the God, community. Brolin. That's a lot of value out of a 5-7. It shouldn't have happened. It should not have happened. And he somehow got himself a couple out of it. So damage control now for Cloud9. They've got to recover this, and they're sprinting to that B-bomb side. Fortunately, it's empty, and Boomich is going to be the man to carry the package. He's going to put that down for short. Naxal will have a good post plan to try and close this one out. There is a smoke available for Yimfat, but the lack of kit might cost Maus here on this force fight. But timing oh. nearly works against Boomich, but he's got moves and he swings out. Yimfat takes him out on the Deagle. He predicts that move and nearly gets a chance to take Axel out of the round and win the force buy. It gets scary for Cloud Knight, but they get the job done. What was Boomich doing? Boomich is running around without a care in the world, jumping off van, taking peaks with like red HP. He almost, he almost really sold Cloud Knight down the river in that round. Nine to seven. A two round lead, but this got dicey. This got interesting all of a sudden. Good shooting from Brolin with the five seven at distance as well. Doing damage, taking kills. Thankfully, Axile's there to hang on. 15 kills for Axile. Putting together a good series when you consider how strong he was on overpass as well. Only USPs for Mouths. Yeah. You have to remember this Mao's team too is like, uh, I don't know, it's, it's it, it, transition, not rebuilding. I don't know what word you want to use for it, but they're still trying to figure out exactly what the future is going to look like without Frozen, trying to fill the gap that he left and going to phase. I don't, yeah, it's such a big gap that you need such a big player to fill it. Oh. And Brolin ain't that just yet. Zershin with a nice headshot. Boomich is gone. That's an AK-47. And Miles are making these last two rounds of pistols a little exciting. Maybe a step away from this one being scary, but... As long as it's not a complete disaster, because Cloud9 have, have Axile coming from no. underpass. And, no. Oh, God, it's starting to look like a complete disaster. Oh, it definitely is. Disaster setting in. Cloud9, do they have the response? Do they have it in them to make this one happen? And Perfecto's got a double out towards default, but it's all over just like that. Full USPs, and Mouse pick it up. Shout out to Exertion. The one kill in middle to scavenge the AK-47, and they build upon it. God, you got to get Groove on the mic for that one. You need a calming presence. <laughs> that is so ridiculous. Yeah, that's a gut punch for Cloud9. That seemed like they were just marching forward to looking like they were going to be able to tie things up or just, just kind of cut away at this lead. And boy, does that get turned around. A great round for Exertion. Three kills overall and a massive speed bump for Cloud9. They look like they were right back on track, tying this game up shortly, but that's not to be the case. And we saw shades of it. We saw some potential in the previous round. Brolin with a 5-7 was like, well, make this round interesting too. Sure, but that's for the 5-7. Yeah, here you can somewhat understand that, but full USPs, definitely not. Problem now is his money is, is a bit dicey for Cloud9. They'll get two AK-47s 
excuse me, one AK-47 and three Galils because uh, they want a little bit more utility on Boomich. Back 10 on Hobbit. But you just force Malz into a double save scenario and then into this. Oh, it's not pretty, but it's something for Cloud9. The amount of skill they pack into this team. You know they can get the job done with inferior weapons. Now I just want to grab onto this opportunity, though. That jumping detects Axile, who does some damage. Yimfat's still jumping. <laughs> still doing it. He's like, come on, give me one more. And the Jimmy jump. Third time's the charm. Well, he'll take half health, and that's enough to stop Jimmy from going for those spots. And Cloud9 getting into this round so tentatively, you know, really slow start, building into it, and now looking into mid control. I think both teams have an understanding of how, how critical this round is, especially to Cloud9. Everyone's kind of playing it passive and conservative. Nobody wants to give up a mistake, nobody wants to give up a kill on an aggressive play. Over the edge of the smoke, that's beautiful for Shui. It really is, and that's going to work out. Hobbit didn't have a chance in hell to pick up that fight, and Shuei's come back into the ladder room for a second of this round. Eventually, it's overrun by Perfecto, but it's Axel jumping out of the apartments, trying to get some control here for Cloud9. Needs some kills to go his way, though, and that might just be the fight, but Yimfat picks it up and puts Perfecto into the 1v3, one that he will not even take the first step in. 11 rounds from hours, they stop that round from going Cloud9's way, and this really starts to look like Ancient. That's such a nice set of protocols over on Catwalk. Shui gets this kill over the smoke, and then his teammate peeks off Catwalk. That's exertion to go one for one and just thin things out to allow Shui to get one more. That's so much resistance on Catwalk where Cloud9 didn't expect it. And it's a four round lead. Yeah, that is frustrating for Axel because he's got to know if he wins that fight versus Yimfat, that round becomes so doable because Perfecto is coming in short and it was a fair fight. He did definitely have a, sh uh, a shot at winning that one. And this is why it was so important. Just look at the buy coming in. No armor, three P250s. That's it for Cloud9. That's all they can bring forward into this round. And what a turnaround. Mao's winning a full USP round and looking like they're just going to run the scoreboard after that to close out this map. You know what's better than a full USP round? A full Glock round. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I've seen one of those one. Can't remember the last time I've even just seen one of those. Yeah, they don't happen very often at all. And that's why, uh, because Yimfat just mauls them. That's four kills. Axel's deciding, nope, you're not getting the ace. You're not getting the satisfaction. No, run to the side of the map. Run towards rolling instead. And that's what'll happen. So 12 rounds for Maus, map point. Ancient is the next map. How do you feel if we go to three? Do you feel like the, who do you feel like is favored? Maus or, or Cloud9 heading into that third map? Uh, I don't know. I, I think with the, I mean, it's so hard to tell because both these maps have been like, Maus was sleeping on the first one. Now they're kind of awake and just piling on. I I, I would put this more towards Maus just because I, I'll be honest with you, the play-in stage really, really hurt my confidence with Cloud9. Really, really hurt my belief. Yeah, it's hard to believe in them consistently. And that's why you're always surprised when they have a big result, so. Had to wait and see how this one transpires. This game could have been very competitive from on Mirage. And this is the last chance to make it so. Cloud9 coming out it's, of Palace. It's a pretty nice call, though, into this defense. It's a very passive one. Nobody's in the bomb site. Brolin and Exertion, they'll have decisions to make when utility streams over on how they decide to be aggressive and how they try and do a little bit of damage. They're exiting Palace right now. Cloud9 going into this. It's Brolin with the first kill, but Hobbit is quick to answer back. Cloud9 need to make some ground up here, though, so a little bit of a lull in the action. Take some space, but that gap, I thought, Torzi was going to lock that kill in. Absolutely, but the plant goes forward. That grenade might be good, and it is. It sinks Hobbit, not before he takes a kill, though, and we're still even on this retake attempt. Oh, I think Yibby's got more to say in this round. Yeah, he's, he's waiting brewing. for his moment. He's being so incredible on Mirage. It's got to be a flank from Shuei first, though. Perfecto's got eyes on it, and he wins the fight. Now it might be time to back away. Yeah, Yimfat, unfortunately, he may have had more in this round, but his teammates certainly don't. And because of that, he can't get into a competitive position, and now he's trapped inside a connector. He uses that smoke to get away, or at least attempt to get away, but Axar will chase after him, and it's an eighth round as Cloud9 are on life support. Just four more, nice and easy. Timeout called by Mal's. Third and final, a Cyclone just says, everyone chill. We got plenty of money. 
We've done a great job up till now. We've had a solid CT side. Buy back up into it and let's get one of these and move on to Ancient. Well struck round from Cloud9, but that passive defense gave them a nice passageway into the A site. Access to CT spawn as well. Advantages that were too difficult to overcome for Maus as we head into round 21. AWP is back out in the hands of Torji. Plenty of nades, plenty of utility, full buy for both sides. Joy hops up into Winzel early on. Oh no, <laughs> he's gonna try and stop that smoke from coming in, but it isn't there. So ends up just burning himself out of the position. And Torzi looking into the apartments. Again, it's a passive enough round from Cloud9, just taking the time getting into early positions. And there's a little B-stream update for you. Monty, 0-2 versus Gamer Legion. Mon Monty dropped down to the lower bracket. Gamer Legion's like a real scary team. I liked what I saw at the end of the plan stage. <laughs> the exact, exact opposite of Cloud9. I gained confidence in Gamer Legion with the way they called against VP. Yeah, Snacks, what a, what a great job he's doing at the helm of that Gamer Legion side. Hobbit caught a nade in his back pocket at the start of this round, so he's down to 50. Yeah, not loving it. And he's got to stay on the other side of this wall. Yimfat's going to boost Shui up. Again, he used this position earlier, but they're already too far up. They're going through short already. Cloud9 have gained so much control of this map. This might be a surprise for the defense, and it's just Torzi over here, and that orb could be overwhelmed very quickly. I'm not so much worried about Torzi as I'm worried as I'm wrapping behind Shui. He's so focused on window, if they came up ladder, if any of them investigated ladder room, it'd be all over all the boost. The boost ruins him. Shui does get his one, but the B-bomb site is available until who else but Jimmy arrives. Good swing from Boomich. They've got to win a disadvantage post-plant. And that plant is going to go in. Electronic watches back to short. Shui trying to retake from short side. It isn't going to happen for him. Brolin's patient, waiting for an overextension. Electronic just walks right into him. So it's all on Boomich to keep them in Mirage. Has he got a big clutch in him? He looks out short. Here's those steps, and he cannot do it. He cannot get it done. Maus will take a Mirage. They will force Ancient in this series. They didn't start the day honed in, but they've warmed up. They've woken up, Jason. And now Ancient, it lies in the wings. I think I know he's Finnish, right? Then he was hyped in in uh, in Ens Org, and uh, his name was mentioned many times in the in the office. Thankfully, during COVID times, there was this academy league for for academy teams, which Mouseports have won a couple of times, and eventually three or four of the players are playing in the main team. And this is something which more orgs should should follow. I think he is a guy that doesn't show a lot of emotions, consistent and good in clutches and gets a lot of impact frags. So for me, he reminds me a lot of civics. He doesn't really make many mistakes is, is how I feel like when I'm watching him. I'm not sure exactly, but I would just say like his consistency. I think that he's just like a very like consistent like factor of his team, like kind of similar to NAF, I would say, where you kind of just like know what, what to expect and they can just pull off a lot of crazy stuff. I think he's uh, 17, 16, 17 right now. And this is crazy that so young people, same as Donk. It's incredible how skilled you can be at this age. He might take a little bit more responsibility in terms of like what people expect from him. But considering his roles, unless like he changes his play style to be more aggressive, I think it's harder for more passive players to normally like. So I'm not sure. It's kind of just depends like how they're going to change like their structure to accommodate for it. I think Mouse is, is definitely a team to, to watch. And also, you know, you heard rumors about Cyclone going to, to Astralis and, and that would probably be a dream for, for any Danish coach, but he chose to stay in Maus uh, for, for whatever reason. And I think one of the reasons is that they have an, a very exciting team and, and Jimpad is definitely part of that as well.
And Yimfat certainly a decisive force on the second map of Mirage. The full three required to separate Cloud9 and Maus in this opening series. And a great recovery coming out of Maus, particularly after what we saw on Overpass, where they, they looked a little bit sleepy, in all fairness, Maui, to open up this series. Yeah, that's kind of actually what we attributed it to. We talked about the, the play-in difference, the fact that Cloud9 came into that first map a little bit hotter. Well, this is them on even footing. Mao's able to find the victory here on Mirage, and it felt like there was still a little bit of that Cyclone presence where he needed to make sure that they got things in order earlier than later, and I do feel like he was a big reason as to why they were able to really have a, a big change, not even just from map to map, but even kind of like halfway through Overpass up until now, too. Yeah, as you said it, uh, before going into the game, Cloud9 had that advantage, but we saw it in the mid-game of the Overpass, it kind of became a more even 50-50, and we kind of see it translate into the to Mirage right here, and I also think Torsi with the orb was the main difference of why it was all of a sudden a little bit more impressive from their side. Yeah, let's dive into round seven because this is exactly what you're attributing it to, Maui. Obviously, Cyclone taking a timeout. What happens after that? Well, we see that he gives a nice little shoulder rub and you know, Bubski was asking me, why don't you ever consider being a coach? Well, I don't got meaty claws like Cyclone does. He gives some goddamn great shoulder rubs. And this round is a huge disadvantage to kick things off for Maus. Look at this, 3v5. And yet for whatever reason, they're able to maintain such better focus. There's not necessarily the most brilliant strategy that's going on right here. It's just that for whatever reason, when Cyclone gets into their ears, these players somehow just elevate their gameplay. Brolin was able to find a couple kills on a palace lurk there to open things up for him himself, and then we see these pistols come into play, and even Torzi himself picking it up with the rifle. But I also love to see teams lose when they play poorly. Like, I think we see that 5v3, really nice play with the underground flash, but then they keeps taking the duel, trying to get more and more, instead of just saying, okay, you kind of get punished by players on this level if you keep taking unnecessary duels, and I think they were, that was the issue from Cloud9, really. Meaty claws. I don't yeah. know whether Cyclone should take that as a compliment, or... He's a beefy guy. Meaty it's claws. Meaty claws. He would like that. He, like, he works out a lot. It, it, it's true, it's true. It gives so many good shoulder rubs, it's kind of crazy. Have you been on the receiving end of those? Um, can't say I have been, Freya. I okay. don't want to reveal any like private this information. This is all here. subjective knowledge that we have. I mean, it worked out for Brolin. I because, keep things to uh, what's going on in the server. Asleep on map one, Brolin, I wake on map two. Exactly, exactly. Brolin was so much better on this one. Yeah, map number one, obviously he was a hindrance to the side of Maus. He was not really holding on on those A defenses, but the palace lurks and the A lurks in general that he was finding on that T side were instrumental. Also his A defenses there in that second half helped him put this whole thing together. Yeah, and it also gives the safe space for Sui in order to him for to take control over the mid area. If you know you have a lurker that's not gonna die, he's gonna get a couple of entries on that T side and also make his stand on CT. It's just gonna be a really nice feeling as an IGL knowing and trusting. I think Carrick and, and Robs is the closest uh, correlation I can make between those two. I think they provide kind of the same, but obviously Robs is a little bit better than Roland. <laughs> In the context of this, let's uh, talk about, obviously, the man who's gone to join Robson Carrigan, Frozen. This is exactly who Brolin is stepping in for. How, uh, you know, role for role, position for position has Brolin been coming into Maus, obviously, filling out for Frozen? Well, it's just that it feels like you're getting a guy that's aware of how he should play every single position, but I would say that his floor is a bit lower than Frozen's, like mm. we saw there on Overpass. But you can still see some of the, the ceiling the ceiling that can be there that has that was actually unleashed when he was back on Fnatic on that old legendary lineup. And it, that was kind of a glimpse of it. I want to see it for a full series, though, because we got one pretty darn good map out of Brolin now, but we have one pretty bad map. Yeah, and that was the good thing with Frozen. He was always consistent. We had Torsi, we had Surge, and Jim Pat not really always delivering on the same cylinders, but Frozen was always there. He is a different type of player. He was more passive than Brolin. I also think we're going to see more on the T side from Brolin than what we see, saw on Bro Frozen. He's one of the most passive rifles out there. And Torzy, I mean, back in action on this mm -hmm. map, Bubski, we saw a lot more AWP kills going down, a lot more opportunities uh, to actually get the AWP working. Yeah, and no, we spoke about before the game that we needed that Torzy, we needed an AWP to take over the game, like we saw with the big winning against C9 as well, and he did so. I think even though he did it with the other the rivals, but getting that fear in the mind of Cloud9 that, okay, they could could be potential AWP. We see it in the last round as well. Like, they're trying to boost because they're scared of that AWP, but even though they, they do the perfect thing, they still get punished. Right, the, the op difference was a lot more apparent in this one, and what's funny is I think Torzi actually was able to bust it out around the same time, but it's on the T side, and I actually felt like there was a little bit more impact. You see him in a couple post plants here with the AWP, late round situations, and that's where he does his best work, and it's glad I'm glad to see it come out earlier, because when it was obviously on the on overpass, it was just like, what is this game plan? Why can't you guys put your money together together to get that op in his hands? Well, we see it now, and he's, and he's firing. Well, we do get to see Ancient as well on the cards, third and final just um, I just want to draw our attention to what happened last time around. Obviously, it was uh, 13 to 7 in Mouse's yes. favor. 
But Cloud9, zero CT rounds. We don't know what side they're going to be starting on, but what on earth do they have to do to, you know, do one better? Maybe post at least one round on the CT side? I, I remember that game so vividly because we were covering it in Abu Dhabi, and that one was just Cloud9 were throwing everything at the wall. They were trying so many different aggressive plays. They were trying to take lane space. They were trying to fight deep down mid, and that just, to me, was screaming desperation because they didn't have any sort of op presence where they could feel comfortable. Just leave them on the A site. Leave them on a mid angle. Leave them leave him even down, just peeking down B-ramp, anything like that. And so what I would, if Cloud9 want to do better this time around, either someone has to just opt better, and on this map, I think it's kind of switched hands between Perfecto and Hobbit a little bit. Yeah. Or they need to just be a little bit more gentle with their approach instead of just trying to force the issue in the first 15 seconds. Yeah, I also mean, sometimes, regardless of how much time you have, you can't always find the, the answers mid-game. I think it's the same if you're on a test. If you don't know the answer, it doesn't matter if you have five hours or 10 hours, right? And I think that was kind of the conclusion. Like, Boomich didn't have time to go and really look at the overview of, like, what's going wrong, and it can be super hard to mitigate mid-game. So I think from watching the last time, I'm sure him and Groove has sat down there and be like, okay, this thing was the crucial part. I remember that complexity game where they threw that deep ancient smoke as well. For the first time, people were like, what the hell is that? And nobody could find the answer, but for now it's really common and a lot of people deal with it. You were on the Maui's train going into map number one when we were prefacing this series. Have you, have you changed allegiance, Maui? Do you still believe? Oh yeah, I still believe in Mouse. Yeah, that's why I picked him. I'm not gonna flip flop. Yeah, I knew this was coming. I was uh, yeah one one when they were down on overpass. I just like cold start. I even gave them the most basic excuse ever. It was a cold start, and that's what happened. Now they're back in the server. They're firing. Brolin's looking better, and I feel like Exertion is gonna have his work cut out for him though. He's a guy that I really want to see step up, especially on these mid holds and mid takes. Luckily, I didn't choose a team yet. <laughs> I should didn't ask before you. <laughs> <laughs> you. You kept it ambiguous. You just nodded, smiled, and waved. Yeah. Agreed with Mouse's low, point. Low side, and then after when we finished, I said that Cloud9 was going to win. If they're going to win now, right, then uh, I haven't... Well, I'm asking you now. Oh, you're asking me now? So okay. Throw pick it one. Pick okay, one. Let's, pick let's one. take the angle that Cloud9 have done their homework. They've seen what they did bad last time. Boomich and Groove have sat on the, the tools and seen what's necessary to counter a mouse. And uh, I'll go for the 2-1 Cloud9. I like that we've got a slightly split desk. But whilst we're going to three maps over here on the A stream, a series has concluded over on the B stream. So, uh, Banks, what's going on over there? The B stream first game is already over, and Game Legion, well, they've continued their dominance. They rolled over Monty, who was struggling on their T size and was struggling to put up too much of a fight. That was what I didn't expect. But now we're moving on to Spirit taking on complexity, and there's a lot of hype around Spirit. We've got Magic sat right here. He's ready. Look at him. This is why we love him so much. These guys are looking happy throughout all of their games. They've been dominating so far, and they're now facing a complexity, who at least told me in an interview that he's ready for this game. He's been studying them, but is that even going to be enough to stop the run. Let's see. Well, if I was Magix, I would be pretty darn happy because you know who's sitting next to him? Oh yeah, Donk. And oh yeah, on the other side, it's Shiro. But back to the action on the A-stream side of things. We've got Ancient, the third and final decider between Cloud9 and Maus here at the Intel Extreme Masters, Katowice. Welcome, my friends, to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike! in the same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the site. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. Simple, it's not allowed. This is not FPL, this is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Here's some art questions for you. First question. Which artist, apart from his art, is known for having cut off his own ear? I don't remember. Can we leave that home? You should, you should know because you're French, no? He was not French, but he did spend a large amount of time in France. Was it Picasso? That is a famous artist, yeah. but I think he had both of his ears. Yeah. I mean, he said Picasso, but it, it's probably not Picasso. No. And right, they're no. going for Picasso? No, 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 no. Facts. What is the other one? He can help. Yeah, uh, yeah. Go on, go on, I yeah. can say just one. Ah, uh, one, go. Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> what? All right, we've got two <laughs> artists. There have been two answers given. Neither one was correct. It is, in fact, Vincent van Gogh. 
Which artist created the most famous painting Это in the world, the Mona Lisa? Актер еще есть такой. Ди Каприо. We should know it, but I have no clue. Да Винчи, но? Леонардо. Yes! Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Got one, so boys. Quick. Let's go! He saved me. Oh <laughs> Leonardo da Vinci. Da Vinci. Yeah! Very much pulling up! How, how do you remember it? what you said a minute ago? Yeah, I do remember. How did you say it? Leonardo da Vinci. It is in fact Leonardo da Vinci. Let's go. Сразу думал про да Винчи, но это было бы странно, если бы я назвал неправильно, короче. Ди Каприо. What traditional Japanese art form involves folding paper to create complex structures? Do you know the answer on this question? Yeah, yeah, this one, yeah, this one's can, actually you know quite... Us. I think when you hear the answer, you'll be like, damn. I didn't know anything about Japanese art. No? Yeah, me either. You, you make, I don't know... Uh, I know what you make, but Flamingo I don't know what... from paper. Yeah, but I don't know oh, what it's called. I know, right. Oh, look, it's on everyone's <laughs> mind, bro. Everyone's right there. I don't remember his name. He's a famous... Now... He's doing Brick, brother. He's doing it еще... Японский. Uh, yeah. Ты понял про кого я говорю? Как его Кидиама? Вам нужно не имя с чего. He's so назвать. close. I can tell. I know. Origami. It is in fact origami. There we yeah, go. go. <laughs> Anime fan boy, step up. <laughs> All right. Do you guys want to weigh in and it's offer? Origami. It? Origami. Yeah. Yeah. Can I say? Can I say? We know. Yeah, yeah we know. What, what do you think it is? Origami. Yeah, he's got it. He's got the yeah. knowledge. Leonardo DiCaprio, origami, <laughs> all the art from <laughs> Perfecto. No, that was actually that was actually really quite good. Thank you for being with us here for the final map. It's Maz versus Cloud9 and it's Ancient to decide this one. They called it a close, uh, a rather cold start, Jason, to kick things off. And it absolutely was. It was freezing cold, so they went outside and they got even colder. They come back in, they win the map, Mirage, and now Maz find themselves on Ancient. Yeah, they really do. Third and deciding map. And it's been a, it's been an interesting series when you think map one, Maz felt like they were sleeping, like they weren't quite arrived yet. Map two, completely different Maz who shut down Cloud9, who lost the round to all five USPs. So both teams struggling on their opponent's map picks. And now we've got this third decider of Ancient coming in hot. Mal's taken on Cloud9. Opening game of the IM Katowice group stage for both of these teams. It's been Yimfat, who's performing very well and consistently. 39 kills in the two maps so far, and he's going to be under some pressure here early. Exertion helps alleviate it, and then they all step up and piss around's done. Yeah, that's going to be nice and easy, nice and clean for Mal's to kick things off. And I think when we come on to this map now, you, you do have to favor Mal's uh, with the way they've been performing. They have the Opera, they had a cold start, but they, they dominated Mirage for that second half. And the fact that Cloud9 were able to lose against full USPs doesn't fill you with a whole lot of confidence. I, I think the problem is like, if, if we didn't, if we hadn't seen such a shaky play in stage from Cloud9, like we probably wouldn't have this kind of feeling of like, oh, shaky Cloud9 is, is, is back, you know? Like, 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 like Miles can just take control of a game off one, off one map. But they did have a shaky play in stage, so it's hard to kind of uh, be super confident they'll be able to bounce back after a tough loss. Looked like they were getting a little bit frustrated in that previous map. Here around with uh, four Glocks, three Glocks, and a P2 in two P250s. 
I did love the content piece they just did with Harry, and Harry just sitting there not understanding a single thing and saying that he, he thought they were getting close. I can tell he's close. He knows it, and they're completely talking about the wrong thing. <laughs> it's just a brilliant, brilliant piece. I can't imagine doing trivia in a second language. Oh yeah. Uh, mostly because I don't speak a second language, so I've only got the one. Chewie is going to get behind him. Oh, you love that. Oh, you love it if you're Chewie. Oh. Yeah, four kill, quad kill, plenty of money, big smile on his face. It's all going well. Yeah, he loves that. You can see the big smile on his face. That'll continue, hopefully, into this next round. Cloud9 are going to be buying into the AK-47s now. But here we go. You love when you see a huge group of players just like that. You walk in behind them. They all have their knives out. They're all quick switching. And you just hold down mouse one. Doesn't get easier than that. All the money in the world for Shue. He's five and zero, and, and a good start here for Maus. But they, they've been able to win most of the pistols to kick off these maps and convert it. It's the first gun rounds that haven't really gone their way all that often. Team Nade, Team Utility, good pressure towards A early on. Torji's heard the footsteps and actually pulled some rotations off of the ledge. Yeah, and then Cloud9 commitment. pumps the brakes and slows down. So Maus got to be careful they don't wheel themselves into some rough positions. And tries to start of the round, a lot of steps shown towards A, then Axel even going for a couple of fake shots, just send them out around the corner. You pump the brakes and you can reset, but Maus seem to have reacted quite well. They've got deep mid control. That, they don't have too much B presence, though. That early sprint, though, from, from Axile into A main and making those footsteps has kept the second player at the A bomb site this whole round. There's one at the edge of Donut, one committed to the A bomb site, two in middle. It's a sole B defender, which is where Cloud9 actually is. So that early fake and early presence has really made Maus nervous. And as Brolin is going to be that solo B player. Now, he's playing in a position that he can play retake, he can stay at range and just get that information. But they're not coming up that ramp. Instead, they're putting pressure towards Cave at the moment. Smokes are in, in particular, a miss smoke out long side. And that is going to give a bit of a gap for Brolin, who's detecting all the information and setting up a chance here for Shuei to flank in. They're not going yet, Cloud9, and the longer they wait, the closer Shuei gets in behind them. Could be another devastating play from Shuei, this time against premium weapons, but Perfecto, he's considering this. He's starting to think about a flank, but it's about whether or not he looks the right place at the right time, and he will. He'll turn back for that headshot on Shuei, and Maus now have to retake. I think Shuei might have misplayed that a little bit too fast. Let your teammates who are lining up for this retake take some of the attention, take the brunt of the attack, and you slide in a little bit late. Instead, they've got to go in 4v5 or save. Yeah, here comes Electronic around long side, and he is going to take that fight and win it. Boomich is with him. An exertion and towards the left in a two versus three. It's doable, but Hobbit is going to take that chance away. Nice shots to close it, and it is the first gun round going Cloud9's way, as it has many times already in this series. Yeah, but they really struggled to get comfortable going into that B bomb site. They, they really felt like that that execute wasn't uh, didn't they, did, they didn't feel like they had the space, I guess, up until Perfecto gets this kills. They were being very slow and cautious looking for fights, and once that pressure is alleviated from the flank, they're like, all right, well, it's easy now. We know where everyone else is. I felt like Maus, with the way they were rotating and getting information and finding positioning on the map, had an advantage up until Shuey goes down. It's a little bit of a painful loss. It was great hearing Maui talk about the impact of Cyclone's timeouts on the team and seeing immediately after timeouts you're getting results. Yeah, good hearing Maui talk about those big, strong hands. Those, uh, what were they, meat claws? Yeah, uh, meat claws. How would you feel if someone said you had nice meat claws, Jason? I'd feel great. I'd take any compliment. Ah, oh, that is the life of a man, Lofton. And here we go, two to one, Maus, good start. But if they lose this round, Cloud9 will have tied things up and will likely take the lead following that. I think back to those, uh, you know, as, as fun as like a silly of a moment as it is, Shoei getting those, that quad kill with the MP9 has given him money to drop it off over to Torji. He had so much cash. He was boosted up by Brolin for the early stage of the round, but they don't want to keep that for too long. It's a lot of resources dedicated, so they bust it up and slide into new positions. Not a single eye on mid. Mao was in the previous round, with all the money and all the utility they had, they were able to control mid deep into the round. Triple smokes towards elbow, able to eventually push, get information to set Sui up for that flank. This time, they haven't even positioned anyone there until just now, until just now that Torji rotates back. One minute on this clock, and Torzi has nailed that kill right down on Electronic. So a good start for the Opera of Maus. The weapon they have that Cloud9 do not possess. 
It might it might have caught Electronic off guard. The the, the uh, weapon is even on the map, considering it, you know he might not have thought back to that quad kill and realized that enough bonus money was there to be able to afford it. And you have to worry because a lot of time has elapsed, right? So that AWP could have changed that position. It could take a new angle, and it has. It's over towards this B side of the map now. It's got a good angle on that B stars, and that is setting up this crossfire inside of Cave. It's allowing for this to stay in position. Boomix is clearing it out, though. It's just a single kill. Shuei takes him out eventually, and that smoke is blown open for a moment, but it goes up just as they cross over, and they'll put that bomb down. Important kill for Hobbit, too, to lock that in against the in-game leader of Maus, and a 3v3 post plan. It's about exertion coming through Cave. Can he win this fight versus Hobbit? If he can, then it opens up again for Mouse. If he doesn't, then Cloud9 are favored for this one. And the timing for Hobbit to look away puts Cloud9 under a hell of a lot of pressure. And Axel stuck on default, fighting out left and right, dealing a lot of damage, but eventually overwhelmed himself. And it's just perfecto. Nice headshot on that first. And he's not buying it. He is not buying it at all, Jimmy. You're going up against one of the coolest clusters in the game. And perfecto, he does not fall for it, he'll pick it up, and Cloud9 tie. Dang, two to two. That was a huge battle. Cave dictated who was gonna win that round. The control of Cave was everything. Back and forth, first Boomich tries taking it over. Exertion coming in on the flank to clear out Hobbit. That was massive. And the AWP can't get involved at any point during that. Torji didn't have an impact on the execute. He was standing out in the open trying to take one shot. He missed it. And at the end, he's just locked out of any impact throughout the entirety of this round. And Cloud9 sent Mouse back to pistols. Yeah, it's USPs though, Jason. It's five USPs. And an eight. Uh, it started off with a kill for Mouse. Second kill in from the USP. Hobbit looking to clean it up, but he won't. Oh my god. Yimfat on the USP has littered the floor, littered the battlefield with spoils of war. AK 47s to pick up, and Boomich on recovery mode. It can happen again, and it is happening again. Five USPs in back to back maps. Cloud9 losing to the default pistols. Perfecto is once again asked to clutch, and this one's more difficult. The opponents left on the other side of the server are short damaged goods, but he's got to get all the way around, pick that bomb up again, and walk into a den of three players holding AK-47s. Tell you what, this is, someone's going to be pissed off. Someone on Cloud9 is going to be pissed off. I think everybody will be watching this. In fact, he will go down perfecto, now spotted. They know where he's coming from. Five seconds left in this one. And they have the bomb. They know they have the bomb. They know the bomb's all the way back at T-spawn. But with the time left on the clock, this is really smart for Maus. You know Perfecto, if he's actually going to end up going for this round, you know he's going to attack into the bomb position. So they give it up. They split up into the bomb sites because they know by the time Perfecto clears all these angles and picks up the bomb and gets to a site, there's not going to be enough time for him to be cognizant of everything. And Perfecto just decides to give it away. 39 HP. He's just like, screw it. This round's won by Maus. USPs. Back to back maps with five USP victories for Mouse. You can't you can't win series when you lose those kind of rounds. I, look, thankfully this happens in Mirage it happened at like a swing a crucial moment. Crucial point, yeah. yeah. This at, happens early. At least here if you're I guess if you're ever going to lose one of these rounds, it's early enough that Cloud9 can have a, a round to recover. But after losing a map, going into this, and losing another five USP round, that was certainly a conversation they had between maps. And man, those emotions come flooding back quick. Yeah, it's Yimfat yet again, the player that gets a sick double tap for the USP that really sets it all up. He also got that nade kill, so it was a 3k for him. With just a default pistol, and, and that's what can happen when you go too early into the elbow and you get crunched like that by a low buy. And, and that's going to be something that's very frustrating to a player like electronic. That's worse. They just landing on him right away. Shoe is swing out, flash sets it up, he goes down, nice shot from Axile. Perhaps Cloud9 can answer back with a weaker purchase. <laughs> it wasn't that weak. They got they got some rifles on port too. Oh, good find from Hobbit as he slides out. They've channeled the anger. They've used it to make them stronger. Exertion grabs one, but Torji with the critical miss, and Cloud9's in the driver's seat. Yeah, what a response back here from Cloud9. You lose the five USPs, but as soon as you find the next round, you start to forget about it. You're back on track, and you see when Torji missed that shot, his hands immediately went up to his head. He couldn't believe that he missed that. Yimfat 
Yeah, the the op, this is two rounds now we've seen Torji have it where it's had no impact. This one obviously due to a miss. Uh, previously just kind of locked out by utility and positioning, but for as much of an advantage as it was on Mirage, to not have that op getting you some kills, getting you some impact here on Ancient, it, it's going to feel devastating for Mal's and devastating especially for Torji. Yeah, fat under pressure now trying to hold on to the AK. Oh, he does. He went for the swing last second there. He was hoping for another kill. Note as well, Electronic had the AWP uh, towards the closing stages of that round and went back and swapped it up for an M4, so not wanting to use an AWP on the T side. Good shot from Max Al to really open things up. Punish on the swing, and then Hobbit follows it up, and this is that critical miss. Oh! One key is planting one. Yep. When you're an opera like Torzi, <laughs> Those shots going to right, oh, you just feel it's, so it's, silly. It's a critical miss for going down afterwards because you're obviously going to die after missing that shot, but also losing control of, of Cave, which can be such a, a great advantage to have for CTs in a post-plant situation, not allowing over terrorists to overtake that, Yeah. making it a one-front battle on the retake. Good shot from Brol and a good utility as well, but Hobbit's going to come right through. It's clean. It's uh, Shue, though, behind. This just nips with the back of Electronic. Second kill on that CZ, and now it's just down to Perfecto in a clutch and a 1v4. This game is absolutely back and forth. It's chaos right now, and Perfecto is down to 16 health. Double mid, dunks him out of the round. There's nothing he can do to compete there. Oh, frustrating times here for Cloud9. They can't get a foothold on this T side. Yeah, it's time to buckle in because neither of these teams are going to give up any advantage. That's a great quick flank that screws with Cloud9. The timing of it, and it's all activated by the double kill from Brolin. Shuey's just like, this turns from a big risk to a risk worth taking of me hitting the timing on this kind of a flank. Manpower is going to be lured forward. When you lose that many bodies at the B bomb site, that cave player can't take it as slow as he like. He feels like he needs to get activated earlier to help take over the bomb site, and that opens up the avenue for Shuey. Four blocks, one AK. Hobbit with the hero rifle. He's boosted up on that box, but no one from Mouse is giving any peeks. No one's giving him a chance in this world to get an opening. And he looks to just get run boosted into the side. I like this from Cloud9. It's a sick maneuver. They've actually got some space off the back of that. They need a kill, though, and that's exactly what Hobbit's gone and got. He might even get more from this. Well, those teammates are going down, and that bomb isn't being planted because look where it is, Jason. It's all the way behind those B double doors. So you've got to wait till Axel is able to pick that up and get here. And all that space that you took is completely irrelevant because you're losing players now. Yeah, but Hobbit's in a re weird situation where he could create more from this three kills from Hobbit. Oh, if Axel only had a gun. If he only had a gun, but he's heading back to A instead. <laughs> it is a very, if I only had a brain kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah, plant is nice. Plant is good. And who knows? There's time for him to get into some unique positions. It's just a Glock against full HP and armor rifles. Where can Axel go with one that makes this interesting? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. He, he doesn't have the weapon here for the job at all. And uh, he's going to just have to sit here and, and hope for an absolute miracle at this point. If they somehow don't check this, I mean, you can get a cheeky kill and turn this and into something. And just hide behind the box again, I suppose. Yeah, but that smoke goes on. Tap on the defuse. Axel isn't showing his position yet. Eventually starts spamming. They know where he is, but that time is ticking here. Torsi trying to get it done. Oh, he's running out of ammo. Oh, a lot of damage. Not pulled out. Oh, ho, ho, nearly gets to the position. <laughs> oh, my God, he says. He is relaxed. Oh, my goodness. That's just mental. Yeah, if he disappears in the smoke with that knife, that would have been some craziness. Five to three. Good on Hobbit for doing some damage and opening up the avenue to get that bomb plant. That'll be very nice for Cloud9's economy. Another timeout called. This one from Cloud9 to discuss things. That was the only weapon brought into it from, from Cloud9, that AK-47. It does work. Ooh, close to the end of the mag as well. <laughs> everyone, everyone with just a sigh of relief. Thank God we didn't lose to some Glocks. And Groove now on the microphone. Cyclone. Giving us a fist boss. A little shoulder rub of those big old meat claws. Now we return to the action for round nine. Hiding in the bushes. Perfecto has that instant smoke set up out of spawn. Gonna toss that one out right away. And Cloud9 are back to the weapons. Red is smoked out, plenty of utility. And if a 
bottom, the utility at elbow for Malice. They coat it in a sea of flames and don't let anybody out of it. Desertion gets close even, and this can be a very pivotal position because there's three players on the other side and they've taken damage. Desertion hears them running past. He can get in behind them. He can end the round right now. He's got so many players in front of him. Exertion mows them down, a triple kill. And that's it. That's the round. All she wrote for Cloud9 just like that. That is such a sick play from Exertion. Yeah, start adding that on top of losing to five USPs, and you're going to have a very frustrated Cloud9 who feel like they haven't even really been able to play the game. They're getting knocked out of this map. And this is, like, can be recovered, but it's so low percentage. What a godlike play from Exertion. The last thing you'd expect on the T side is that. That is so nuts. The fact he gets all three because they don't react because they're, they're so confused as to what is happening, where they're being shot from. Communication doesn't flow fast enough. They don't react. They don't turn in time. And Exertion stays composed and gets that triple. And this is what I talked about with Exertion. Like, these are the things I wanted to see back from him in the series. And we didn't really get it in maps one and two. But now he's hitting a little bit of a flow where he's starting to get frisky. He's starting to take some risks. And what you can see when it works out, it just wins you rounds. Boomich and Axile just say, screw it, we're saving. Not even close to a full losing bonus for Cloud9 at the moment. Only two rounds built up. It's not going to be a pretty buy moving forward outside of these AK-47s. But more than anything, time to snap back into action for Cloud9. Overpass looked great, but ever since Mal's arrived on map two, Cloud9 has struggled. Nice, boys. Full, full focus, the money part. Uh, Their money isn't very good, Jason. Yeah, that's what I gathered from that as well. It's not a happy place. Here we go. This is a good view to <laughs> you know, watch it from. How funny would it have been, though, if that nade just blew open the smoke and ruined <laughs> this play? Uh, now that I see that happen <laughs> again. But a great transfer as well. Good control to get Electronic eventually in the transfer to the third. And th the only reason why he's allowed to get that third is because it's such a crazy play to make that you don't expect it. It takes that long for that third player to realize what's happening. Yeah, exactly. Like your, your brain doesn't immediately go to, oh, is CT hiding in the smoke right out of the gate? Just sheer confusion with the craziness. But Cloud9 trying to go back to B. It's Axel to take that first kill of the round. Shuey makes quick work of the response, but he's overrun. He's overwhelmed, and that Tech9 has burst through the B bomb site. Perfecto's got a cross of the bomb, though. There is still a little bit of a danger. Oh, no, he's huddling in. There's the cross. Good dink. Zershin can't be aggressive. Yeah, it's massive danger right now. Axel coming back down. He catches them looking the wrong way. It's just one on Exertion. Torch is coming in on that rotation, and he's the player with Yimfat that need to pull this off. In fact, making no secret about his position. He's inside of the cave. He's down close to Cobbit, but his head was tucked down and covered off by that wood. But Torsi gets rid of him. There it is. And now there's utility. He can smoke that bomb. And it flashes. There's Yimfat, and there's so much chance here. As Torsi goes around the corner, Yimfat's gone. And I think he realizes now that his teammate's out of there. He has to bail out. He'll take that AWP into the next one, and Cloud9 respond with a B play. Good rebuttal. Give your props to Axile. He finds the entrance on that B bomb site. He gets that opening kill, and with such a mid center defense, there just wasn't enough resources to stave that off if you're Mal's really good find on the opening while Exertion was looking for more action from the ledge. And Cloud9 have done that a couple times. When they when they find that opening pick, like they're just going to keep applying pressure to that beat bomb site, keeping it simple. Here it is from Exile. Swinging through the smoke. Roland wasn't ready. Shuei can only get the one. Yeah, Cloud9 don't let out a big celebration. They're not in a position to do so at this point. Full focus, get as many as you can. And that money situation the Cyclone so eloquently put previous round, well, it can be fixed here for Cloud9. They've got AKs out. They're looking to push forward into the last few rounds of this half. This has been the most labored series we've seen out of Brolin in a Mouse jersey since he joined the roster. Yeah. It's been solid for them standing in and stepping into the shoes that Frozen left but needed on a more consistent basis as a permanent member. Well, that hasn't really been an issue, it feels like, until today. He's been a solid delivery. It's just that today he's been quiet. It's not all on his shoulders, obviously. There's been some other struggles, but certainly they'd love to have him back. This is going to be an A-set piece. Torji's in Donut with the AWP. Cloud9 did waste a smoke. It missed at the start of this round. 
So they're just down to one smoke for this, so it's not much of an execute, to be honest. It's lacking. Oh, there's a, there was a drop one in the leaf. Okay, so there's a second smoke available he can toss out. So that's good for Cloud9. Donut smoking. Yimfat playing from that tall box. He's tucked in behind it. Zershin's setting up flashes for his peak, but maybe just a little bit too early. But Yimfat's still able to transition in behind this big box, and he's looking for a big round, looking for shots out, but it's nothing. Not a single kill comes to that initial hold, and Torji sprints back into Donut to get behind the cover of the smoke. Yeah, once again, Torji's up, not even allowed to have impact here. He had one oh. shot, one shot at it, and now he's going to have a tough time getting out. Electronic already wrapping around him. He reads it, he reads it, but not for long enough. Doesn't stick around, and it's time to bail out of your mouths. Absolutely time to bail out. Brolin doesn't have anywhere to go. Oh, Brolin, you gotta feel so bad for him. The timing as he just moves his crosshair away, Axel walks right into it. Cloud9 has turned ruthless ever since that exertion round. Uh, just every round since then has been a big F U to this mouse defense. They've been hitting. Oh, the no. this, this is awkward. Oh, God. It doesn't look pretty. It does not look pretty. They're running out of ammo, they're just fumbling through the magazines. Shue is somehow still alive. Oh my god, he yeah. fights on, he defends, and Shuey got the ace trying to hold on to his weapon. <laughs> a garbage time ace. Look, we, we take that. <laughs> what a weird end of that round it was, but you're absolutely right. Cloud9 have just come out looking absolutely brutal. They've just like they've just said, all right, let's not mess with middle. Like, let's screw it. Like they've they've hit it. The Torji's off there once or twice. They've hit some a tough pistol around there in middle. Exertion had the triple spray down out of the smoke, obviously. They haven't had any success. So the last two ah! rounds that they've won have been, let's hit that B bomb site. Entrance from Axel, cool. Let's keep it going. Play the trade game. This one, set piece towards A. And once again now, back to the A bomb site. Extremity's the name of the game for Cloud9. Oh, Jim Fat, they haven't checked him and usually so good in those kind of positions, but it's just damage in this round for Jim Fat. He hasn't had to face pressure like that this whole game. He probably would have liked to have had a 5-7. Maybe bought the Deagle expecting if he gets into a fight, it's going to be a distance, it's going to be some safety, and just fooled. Caught off guard by the rush. And this is going to be Cloud9 tying things up at 6. They're trying to come back into this one. Mouse, last round of this half. Actually, hold the phone. There's smokes. There's three smokes and two kits. So they're going to toss that utility out, but Buwin's removing the numbers. is certainly not going to help matters here for Mouse. Exertion trying to double up, and it won't happen. A ruthless finish to the half for Cloud9 as they tie it up 6-6. Six to six. Last half of this series after the break.
Welcome back to the opening round of Group B here at the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2024. Malice and Cloud9 juking it out for a match against Game Legion in that upper semi-final. If they go down and they take a loss, they'll face Monty. And that's not a, a team you want to face in elimination. They can be dangerous. They can be a little pesky team to, to go up against. You want to try and get through into that game against the Gamer Legion side of things. Yeah, for sure. And I, I mean, right now, we have, we have a little bit of a, a game between us considering Cloud9 just hasn't given up. They've had plenty of chances to break in that first half. You think the losing to five USPs early on. You think the exertion triple kill coming out of smoke. Chances to really just kind of mentally lose yourself in this game. And Cloud9's hung strong to come back. And now they get a play from the defensive side. And it's so obvious to see they're going for a B play here. Plenty of utility available for Shue and Torzi. And Hobbit, he is not going to hold water in this one. The defense breaks open immediately. Zershin applies pressure onto a second player. Boomic comes back, close lines to Zershin, but has to deal with multiple different sides. And there's just too many bullets peppering him from so many different positions. And Maus comes storming into the B-bomb side. But it's Exertion who cracks that open. Two entry kills, 16 and 8 for Exertion in the map. We wanted him. We got him here on Ancient. Sui's right there with him. Shockingly enough, the captain, 16 and 8 as well. Yeah, and he's had a good series overall, right? He's had a few maps throughout this series where he's been very good and gets some big, impactful moments in. And it's the T side where Exertion usually thrives, being the front man, being the sort of opener to these sites. And he does it right away here at the start of the second half. Cloud9, full USPs, one grenade. Was the recipe for disaster against them in the first half. That's all six pistol rounds won by Mouse in this series. Yeah, Cloud9 haven't been good at those. They haven't won a single pistol. But they've been very good at the first gun rounds. Yeah, well, again, the conversation in MR12, especially in a third map, you put so much more pressure. Like, you're spotting you're spotting your opponents four rounds per map, essentially, right? Like, that. that's never a good feeling. No, definitely not. And Cloud9 making it difficult for themselves. And this round is... It's going to be very easy for Maus. They've found their way through to an MTA bomb site. They've dodged that entire oh stack for Lord. Cloud9, but they're still walking. Yeah, and I'm, I, that made me nervous seeing Jimmy clear Temple all on his own with the bomb in hand as well. He's going to get away with it this round. Plan for CT spawn. Shue and Torji still going for a hunt. Yeah, Shue, he's close by. They're up just against USP. They, they got to be careful they don't get too far away from the bomb, though. Uh, Cloud9 already kind of realized that, that Mouse have strayed a little bit too far away. Still not a great chance that Cloud9 come back into this, but there's that opportunity, that little window they could have slid into and pressured the, the diffuse. But Mouse has spread around the map really, really well and just picking players off now. It's just perfecto. Yeah, if Mouse knew that they only had USPs on the other side, there would be no commitment to that hunt and the pressure wouldn't come in. But they, they might have thought they had a force buy. They st stacked one side of the map. They were likely going to save that into the next round. If you take everything away, then they don't have that opportunity in the next. But Mouse losing one player is definitely okay. Uh, Could have been a lot worse for them there. Opportunity to lose multiple players. A nice little steal away there from Perfecto right at the end. Yeah, cheeky little Galil before you really establish your economy. That's worth its weight for sure. Eight to six, Cloud9 buying up. First gun round been coming in. And again, as you mentioned, like they've lost all pistol rounds, but they've won most of the first gun rounds and they've been able to start getting into action pretty quickly, never too far buried in a hole. If you're Cloud9, let's hope that continues. Double Molotov into middle. Cloud9 applying pressure to elbow early on, not allowing Maus players to go there. No one sets up outside of elbow anyway. I don't have the utility, I think, to sustain any kind of mid presence if you're Cloud9. So you can initially force the back, but you can keep going for it and maintain the control. So maybe you've got to look somewhere else, and it's maybe that's that B ramp. And it certainly looks like it. Here's Torzi. Got back to Leo, but quick switched and uh, not expecting the second player. Yeah, I thought he had a little bit more time to get away. One for one, he sees the aggression. They know there's a third player as well there due to the utility that's thrown. So they have a little bit of information mouths to work with, but they don't realize the follow-up push coming from Cave. Electronic and Perfecto going to double up and say, if you want to escape back to middle, we're going to challenge everything. Nice, easy double for Electronic. Two quick headshots. Now it's Exertion and Yimfat left in a 2v4, and that bomb dropped at the entrance to Jaguar. That's the benefit as well. Clonon had four players there basically right out of the gate. One player ran mid, threw a little bit of utility, backed off to immediately to the B bomb site. They left Axile alone in Donut. But having four players there, you, you have to be dynamic. You have to be kind of probing and moving forward. You can't just sit back on your haunches and wait, otherwise Miles can outmaneuver you. Yeah, speaking of probing, here they go with three down the B ramp. They're taking the fight to the final two players of Maus. 
and Bumich will celebrate that round win. Ancient, also a map that Cloud9 was able to defeat Virtus Pro back at the play-in stage to make it to the group stage, and they defeated them handily 13-4. to We saw the kind of confidence in a strong win over VP had with Cloud9 on overpass earlier in this series. Looking to have another strong CT side. Every gun round, every first gun round feels like Cloud9 is just wanting. Uh, these smokes are strange in Cloud9. Three missed smokes of the last four rounds. Yeah, might have to have a conversation about that. Spend some time in the server tonight. Two smokes there, though. It might be, like, it looks like a, a mushroom cloud almost. Sure. And here we go, out in towards the A bomb site. Shui at the front of the attack. Here's the spearhead. The shaft will follow. But it's not coming through, it's just the tip. He <laughs> didn't get that kill quick enough. And all of a sudden, you're faced with the prospect of three opponents peeking at you. Well, this is stalled out. And Malz, when you have the weaker buy, you generally want that early momentum to go your way. Electronics putting a lot of mileage in in this in this game so far in these first two gun rounds. Running around, getting, yeah, getting he, the step count up. He's being everywhere. He's just shifting, reading the game as well as he can, predicting what's coming next, and putting himself in position to be useful to the team. Putting a lot of trust in Axile as well to have a uh, information gathering position. He's playing in Donut again, so he's peeking towards mid, and he's just keeping an eye on the progress. And if he sees nothing, Electronic can get away with hustling around and making these stacks at different bomb sites. Here's Brolin, having a bit of a tough time. He's going to go for that spam down. He's close to Boomage, but the bullets don't penetrate like they used to. He's not getting that at all. And Torch is going to keep walking through red. Around the back of Electronic, who turns back in. Just about, about spotted the victim, and there's Exertion with the follow-up headshot on the Deagle. Brolin filters in, and suddenly, just like that, Mouse have turned this round on its head. And it might even scare Cloud9 off from this one. And that, that might be, uh, I mean, we've seen Electronic have frustrated a couple times in this game, and it's obviously going to happen. That might, This might be another round that causes him to get a little bit angry, because Axile was safe in Donut that whole round looking towards middle, and just fell back to A unprompted when they had a little pressure at the B bomb site, and that's what allows that mid play to slide up. That's what forces Electronic to shift his attention back and put him at a disadvantaged fight. Yeah, we get to see this again, so perfecto. Exiting Donut, getting that kill, but this is the frag from Torzi that really unlocks the round. And then, obviously, six shots. This should have been Cloud Nines. It really should have, but Mouse have a lot of firepower, and they got them back into it. Yeah, one little, perhaps, uh, missed, missed uh, rotation, blown rotation. A little bit of a mistake, I think, from Exile. Uh, just getting a little jumpy due to the pressure, but on the bomb site, trying to get a jump on that rotate early. And puts the defense in a weird spot. Two-round lead, and Cloud9 have money. Yeah, they do. Perfecto could drop an AWP at 6,300. They're going to call a timeout and talk things over. He actually buys an M4 and then sells it back, so I would imagine we're going to see that op come out. But this is a critical round for Cloud9 to keep this close. Otherwise, you've got Mao's at 10 at double digits. You're going to have to save. Yeah, there's a conflict of the coaches. A comparison of input. We've visibly seen what Cyclone is able to do for this team and how much improved they look after a timeout. And Mao is looking for that final stretch, looking to take this series and get that matchup versus Gamer Legion. Shue's former organization to meet in Katowice, one of the biggest events in the Counter-Strike year. I'm sure that will be a tantalizing prospect for the in-game leader of Mao's. And you mentioned the money. There is enough to buy for Cloud9. They will have a couple of concessions, and that is limited utility and an MP9. But Mao's are going for a quick call out of the timeout into the next round. They're already through to this A bomb site. Good flashes up, and Axel on the double kill. Exertion and Brolin stopped at the door. And Electronics turn, but he is taken out by Yimmy. Axel's doing so much for Cloud9 in this one. He's kept them in it, he's kept them competitive. And now Hobbit has arrived in the rotation over. It's just Shuei left alone in a 1v2. And although Mao's had the up, they had the element of surprise. He has to clutch it in a 1v2 and he slips out. There's the player spotted towards Big Box. That's Hobbit, who's got some cover, and they know exactly where Shui is, so they time a double peak, and that's a quick round. Quick to start, quick to finish, and it's Cloud9 that come out. 
Yeah, that just came in at the perfect moment. I don't, I, I don't know if Mal's, it looked like they almost got like team flash. Maybe it was an exile flash as well. But uh, he's, he just comes out of here and everyone's blind. Exertion's trying to run back into cover, desperate. Grabs a second kill on top of it. And that buys time for Hobbit to slide into the default boxes. Beautiful defense. And again, the third player there was Electronic. He's hustling. He's all over the show. Wherever you go, he'll be there. And Mao's run it back. A fast play this time on the B-bomb side, same result. This time even more dominant in favor of Cloud9. And these pistols don't break through. Yeah, Exile gets up to that ledge real quick to just shave off one player before they hit. Goes down afterwards. Now Boomich is gonna have to hold on to Cave. Electronic, who else? Ready to swing through the smoke on contact. Boomich, oh yeah, you love these kind of positions when he got an MP9. The little Velociraptor in his hand and he rips apart his opponent. It's all tied up, and Cloud9 have found a second win, and potentially that'll be the team moving forward to face against Gamer Legion. It's gonna be interesting. They've just ripped the momentum away from Maus. They've just ripped all the advantages out of their hand with these two round wins in a row. Fast-paced rounds from Maus. Basically an A rush this round, a B rush, and they both get snuffed. So Cloud9 don't hit those economic issues. It's Maus who have to settle back into just Glocks. There we go, then all five block rounds. All right, Cloud9, you lost against five USPs twice. Jason hasn't seen this in a long time. He can't even remember it. Yeah, step it up. Give him it. Oh, that's a nice nade. Oh. Ooh. A lot of damage. It should be softened up enough now for Hobbit, but Brolin breaks through the Glocks are rocking the world of the Cloud9 defense, and the bomb plant is coming through, but Boomich is going to handle that, and his teammate of Electronic denies the plant. I got a little worried when that first kill came I out. Did, I, I did, I was kind of well. just like, I was just kidding, guys. I don't want you to lose. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> don't actually do this. Yeah, uh, that's not cool. Timeout from Groove. Or from Mouse, excuse me. Yeah, Groove, he's using it, though. Yeah, he is, he's chatting. Counting off on his fingers. Mouse behind. Quicker plays have not been working. That's a fast A play and a fast B play that are stopped before the round really gets going. Yeah, the playbook on Ancient seems to be so big when, when you when you have such an advantage in terms of utility over the defense. So when they get the smokes and Molotovs down in choke points, when they make it difficult to scale up lane, when they make it difficult to scale out mid, all of a sudden you got to play a little bit slower. And that might be the conversation Mouse is having, having right now. That's how they want to approach it, because they've seen Axel get aggressive down mid. They've seen Cloud9 put bodies in mid. They've seen them stack the B-bomb site. They've hustled over and been there at A executes as well. Now I was probably feeling a little restricted at the moment, so hopefully Cyclone had a solution. Early skirmish or utility going across the map. Shue was attempting to open up the round with a kill from the bottom of the B ramp. But nothing sourced. And they'll just take this B lane control. Cloud9 not applying pressure. Very passive. In fact, they're making a gamble stack over towards this B bomb site. Four players here. It's exactly what they did in the first gun round. And that round was a push down B ramp, and then it was a follow up push in towards Cave. And they're lining up for this ramp push. Electronic and Hobbit, Perfecto with flashbang in hand as well, ready to toss it out. So Boomich is dropping further back too. He's going to watch red in case they've lost mid control on that bottom ramp push is coming in. And it's devastating. Electronic and Hobbit get three kills between them. And this has got to be it now. Mouse are starting to get very frustrated. This is three rounds now where they just haven't got involved. They haven't competed. And Cloud9 are dominating them towards the end of this half. And whoever came up with this concept and philosophy for this B defense deserves, uh, deserves a lot of credit uh, on the Cloud9 side. This, this is twice now this strategy has worked perfect, and they've ran it exactly the same the both times. I mean, I mean, it looks like it has to be Groove based on the, the body language in that timeout, right? He's instructing Boomich, they're looking at him, they're all listening intently to what Groove had to say, and then they come out, and this is the round they pull off. Yeah, it might just be a back pocket strategy just to pull out when you when you feel like it's going to be so strong against this team that whenever you need a round, you just, you just call it. But, man, this is executed beautifully twice. Double push down B ramp, get your kills, rotate back to cave, send bodies there because you got four at the B bomb site. You can afford to sacrifice two if they get sticky situation. And they haven't really needed to have to worry about that eventuality. 11 to nine. Wow, that's a sticky situation right there. That's why it's all going wrong. Why'd you say that about Pimp? That's exactly why. 
Nice little spray down at range. Yeah, frustration. That round, you have a game plan coming into it out of the timeout, and you don't even get to execute upon it. Money's still an issue, but they buy an AK on Jimvat just to see if he can create anything, just to see if he can cause any damage. Maybe provide a miracle. A lot of pressure on Shuhei, who's looking to potentially end up losing this series. Well, he's lost a his streak head. of winless rounds. It's been four in a row for Cloud9. Yeah, he's lost his head here, and he'll have to sit back and watch the remaining four screens of his teammates and call from that. An AK-47 in the hands of Yimfat. That is the only rifle in the hands of Maus. And they're putting everything into this fight. Is there a pathway to compete in this round? Once again, it looks like a proactive ramp push coming in for Cloud9. Brolin, he sees it, Torzi deals with it. Brolin's running away, the tech down of Torzi is doing work. And in fact, he might even get a second here. Perfecto desperately trying to get back to safety around that corner where Hobbit can protect him. Uh, neither of one of them wanted to really commit to that fight. Both of them was just like fighting to be able to retreat and survive. Yeah, half in, half out. Axel's come over to B, he's all in on that rotation. Yeah, gotta be careful of Torji though, who now has an AK, or excuse me, Exertion, who has that stance over towards Red Room. He only has a Deagle, unfortunately. And Electronics taking position inside of A-Man 2, so he's pushing for information, he's getting space at the moment. But here comes Perfecto, he's gone in for a double dip, and this time he's got another headshot. Torzi finishes him off. Exertion coming to Red Room. Yimfat fighting out of cave, and it's a kill on Hobbit that's locked it in. That's gonna be a kill that puts Maus ahead on the player count. Exertion knocks Electronic down to the ground, and Axel has to clutch this one alone. He does doesn't have it in him, Let's and Mouse will pick it up. How does Mouse win this round from a 4v5? Oh, man. Finding that push down ramp, that lurk from Exertion was perfect. And this is a nice slow paid play, played round. Well, we see them struggle when they've gone faster pace. This one was great. Finally, there's only so many times you can pull off this ramp push before Mouse is just like, we're keeping eyeballs on it all the time. Uh, every stage of the run. And it's not the normal execution. It didn't have the double door smoke. It didn't have the flashbang. Improvised, I think, by Cloud9. It ends up in a calamity. Goes against them for the first time. Run boost fails as well, which means Maus has standing towards ledge and Shuhei. He was so focused down below. Oh, and look at that. There's no fallback. There's no retreat for Axel. He's caught. He's ripped open. And now a 4v3 as Maus looks to push forward to 11 rounds. There's even team kills in all the chaos. And towards he goes down. They line up for Boomage, but it's only two. And Brolin will stand on five health. A measly five health up against Hobbit, who's on A. Five health in a rough game in the office to ask out of Berlin to win this 1v1. It's going to be down to timing on this, and he looks like he's hoping he can catch Hobbit rotating through middle. It's not happening quite yet. He's got all the utility he could want, and he's got the space on this B-bomb side. If he commits to that, there's no Hobbit there. He's waiting for a commitment to a plant before Hobbit moves off, so Brolin's going to have all the time in the world to position himself in a solid post plant. This is a huge gamble from Hobbit, though. He's just parked in A main, so he's so got no information. Away. Yeah, the rotation is critically far. Obviously, it's a checkmate if the plant comes in at the A bomb site, but if it doesn't, this round's going to be so hard to win. Now, Brolin, just don't go to A. Oh, he is. And you're going to clear close position. Maybe he goes back to the B bomb side because of limited time, but he's cleared out all around B. Hobbit hasn't moved in the meantime. He hasn't taken a step off of the position he was holding. And Brolin's going down in towards this B bomb site. Has to commit to their plant shortly. <laughs> Brolin's so concerned. He's like, surely Hobbit's moving around the map. Yeah, like, surely somewhere around here, but he's not. And, and now he knows, based on that utility usage on the other side of the map, that Hobbit has to move. So he's going to go back through Donut, and he's going to have to try and retake. Oh, okay, and the problem right. here is Brolin's so low on health. Five HP to play with. Oh, that's a great position from Brolin. He just heard those footsteps. Moves himself into cave. Here's the rotation, and now he knows exactly what's coming. However, it's relatively obvious for the plant spot, it feels. Yeah, well, we'll Hobbit check it. If he can just fly around the corner with a USP and clear that corner, if he even spams down through that box. But Hobbit's going to stick it. Brolin isn't peeking. Brolin has to go around the corner, has to stop this defuse, and he doesn't do it. Bomb defused. Hobbit gets it. And a heartbreak for Brolin in the 1v1. That's a deep exhale as well. That's a hard bluff to call with only 5 HP. But man, Hobbit just slides a little bit to the side. It takes longer for Brolin to get the angle. 
This was such a nice round for Malz up to this point. The Molotov doesn't stop them from killing Perfecto, but it does force them back towards middle where they get mowed down. Huge win from Hobbit and Cloud9 on series point. And they cannot believe it. They absolutely cannot believe they've got away with that. That defuse stick from Hobbit. Wow. What a way to grab map and series point. Shuei burns down to eight health. Barely alive. Trying to do a lot there. That round is bailed out by Hobbit. The miss run boost in mid had so much to dictate. This time Cloud9 just seed control. Happy to play back deep in red room. Look how tentative Maus are. Taking their time, drawing out all the pieces of utility they possibly can from Cloud9. Hobbit and Boomich defending this B-bomb site. Both of them only have SMGs. So the AKs have the advantage, but not as long as the utility's up. Playing close behind it. Boomich has one flashbang. Hobbit has a follow-up smoke. This, this could just get stalled out. If Hobbit, yeah, Hobbit's gonna put this down. They might have to execute through this smoke, which would be a disaster against two MP9s. Oh, and there's a deep smoke too, so that MP9 can get even closer, which makes it more deadly. 25 seconds, you're right. Mouse have to go through it. It's not a favorable fight, but Bullet explodes with revenge, and it's a sick double kill on that B entry. Mouse are not done yet. This will be 11 rounds. We've got to go the distance in regulation. One more round, and we've got OT. There's nobody happier in this studio than Brolin right now. Redemption with that double kill coming right back out of a tough loss clutch. That's some composure. And for having such a rough series, having impact at this moment is massive. Worth its weight. What a transfer. It looks so good for Cloud9. That final seconds forced through a smoke into MP9s. And Brolin had to step up. And he does it. And look at the buy. Look at the buy now for Cloud9. Five sevens, MP9s, CZ. It's not pretty. This looks like overtime. A lot of quick smokes down from Mouse to apply some pressure, maybe force out some extra utility. Two smokes remain for Cloud9. They can't stall this round out. They're going to have to pick a point to attack with these pistols. And it looks like that point is Cave and Jaguar. Boomich slides in with Hobbit in tandem. Axel brought down. What a shot from Exertion. Not missing that one. And that has left a gaping hole in the A defense. Roland's cut off the fastest rotation through cave. If Hobbit goes forward, which it looks like he wants to, he's not going to have a favorable fight. Brolin just has to be patient. Mounds have all the time in the world, and currently they see Zershin making his way through that A bomb site. He's calling to his teammates shortly. It looks pretty clear right here. Hobbit and Boomich with a couple of kills, but they're answered back by Mouse. And this is the play. Electronic has to step up, and with that 5-7, he brings death to Shuei, and he's locked towards the end at heaven. That bomb is dropped in middle. Needed exertion to come in from red, and that is exactly what oh, he does. Can he catch him? He might be able to catch him. This peak. Oh, he doesn't go around the corner. Oh, that oh, doesn't have the weapon, but can switch to the AK-47 now. And they're both in there. Both remaining players and Malice are inside of the red room, and they smoke it out. Now they can go anywhere. Perfecto just has to take a gamble and oh. guess where they're going, and he's made the right call. He's gone towards the B-bomb site. Torzi's alone. If he denies this, there's no more time. Perfecto gets it done and just needs to hide. Exertion's running in with it. And Perfecto is just hiding in the middle of the side. Oh, search him with a headshot. I cannot believe it. One second in it. And overtime. Cloud9 can't believe it at all. They can't believe their eyes. Overtime in the final second of the round. What the hell was that finish, Jason? That's unreal. Perfecto plays that just about perfectly. It's not even a gamble. He's saying, you saw me fight in middle. You assume I'm going to just jump over to Donut and go to the A bomb site. He gets such a lead. And Exertion is so fortunate. Yeah. Can you believe that? Even the other players can't believe it. A last second headshot. Perfecto just needs to stay alive.
A timeout, the last one, Mao use it. Cyclone has his final say here on Ancient. This game is still up for debate. This game could still go either way. Mao's have been given a second chance, another life. Exertion pushing 24 kills. He's got it on the board. He's looking for a 30 bomb. And this kind of form, gotta believe they can get that. Electronic climbs up heaven. Brolin gets close. Axel can throw a flashbang for him if he wants to turn the corner. Oh, big boy kill from Brolin. There's the flash. This is Electronic wrapping behind it. Brolin's aware. He's had enough after the lost clutch. Some stellar rounds down the stretch, and Mao's with a two man advantage. The adrenaline dump for Cloud9, who thought they had just stolen away this series. To have to refocus and be two players down in the first round of overtime. They've got the experience on this side. They've got to use every bit of it now to try and stay in this. Maos have got the first two, so they can feel comfortable delaying this mid-round and transitioning those players over towards this A-bomb site. Cloud9 trying to piece it together. Well, they're, whatever pieces they got, they're making the right call. Hobbit and Perfecto shifting over. Perfecto is going to be way more dedicated to A. Axile's over in Donut. They're hoping this smoke and flash is enough of a distraction, and it is, but not for long. Utility out of A main. Axile's got to hold on initially. There's one. Tries to step back and can't make it. Perfecto comes right through, and that's desperate. Yeah, it doesn't work out here for Cloud9, and that's the bomb down here for Maus. Hobbit going through and dies as well. 13-12. From a last second headshot to the first round of overtime. This will test Cloud9's mentality. Well, they've bounced back in this map from some disasters in the first half. Losing to USPs, the exertion triple kill in middle. And they've responded each and every time. But this one being so close to victory and having it ripped out of your hands by exertion might feel a little bit different. This 13, game, 12. This game is really being a game of seconds, milliseconds even. You remember that Hobbit defuse he sticks in the 1v1 against Brawlin. The last second headshot there on Perfecto from exertion. There's so many moments that is being decided by little details. And I'm sure that will continue throughout the rest of this map. That's the overtime timeout for Cloud9. I think Groove's thinking the same thing. The stress level, the frustration a little too high on the Cloud9 side. Have an early, early call of the timeout in overtime. Just to calm everyone down, get everyone to chill and focus back up at the game. I'm sure they thought this map was done. I'm sure they thought they moved through this series. But they are dragged right back in. They to go forward to Brawl. It doesn't take too much from it. Cloud9 apply pressure into elbow with utility. Axel is defending mid, and Electronics with him. They're about to have a fight coming out of Elbow. That smoke won't last forever. And here they come through it. Flash is good. Electronic holds down. It's a double. He'll turn back, tries to get a third, and eventually it's removed. Brolin comes back. Another kill from him. And really, he is really coming to life over the last few rounds here. Shuei and Torsi, 2v3 ahead of them here for Maus. And Boomich is not sitting back. He's getting active and he's pushing through Cave. That smoke starts to fade away. And that's the bomb carrier. If he drops this, oh, it is so difficult now for Torsi. It's so hard with how much presence Cloud9 have had in Cave throughout this entire game. Constant pushes. There's the spam. Hobbit's going to find the final kill. 13 13. Timeout worked. Cloud9 stabilize. Yeah, they do. And that's an important timeout. Good timing to use it nice and early in overtime. Just allow that reset of the mentality of the focus to get back on the game here. And this is really sick from Electronic. Flash came up, but he knew he had spotted that second player, so he just continued to control the spray. Inseparable. Our Cloud9 and Maus. Walk over through the A bomb site is coming through for Mouse. They attempted this earlier in regulation, but it was fast. This time, a contact play. x 
Excel shut them down previous. Can he do it this time? He drops into the donut instead of standing and fighting. He knows he has some help with him, but Axel gets nothing. Electronic goes down as well. Sick entries from the Malice players. And Holman has to get back and try and recover this one. It's an important headshot, but it's only one step closer, and they need many more. This is a nice punish from Malz on the defense cloud has been running throughout this game. Is such a heavy lean towards B, towards middle as well. Axel alone is the defender in Donut. You can really get a wide angle on him, and they do it again. Hanging around, and that kill from Boomich does take Yimfat out of contention. So once again, even numbers for this retake attempt. Cloud9 opens themselves up a chance to get back into it. Towards he hides the big box, Brolin's beside him. Smokes go in, last second utility. Boomich comes in with a kill. Now that defuse being stuck in all the chaos. It's all Cloud9 inside of the smoke. The defuse pulled off, and Cloud9 let out a sign of celebration. Yeah, that's, that's two. That's two close defuses down the stretch in the rounds, down the stretch of this match. 14-13. Mouse has had success with those A hits on this T side at times, getting the entries, but the post plants has been so rough to hold on to, and you have to imagine that's going to be a note they're making to have a conversation about. A couple of these post plants a little bit cleaner, and they might be winning this game. Now from the CT side, they'll have to come back. 16, the magic number for a victory. In fact, charges down. He's climbed heaven already. Good position to have this early in the round on the CT side. Maz has been happy when possible to stall out this mid smoke as long as humanly possible. They've got everyone in control of B lane as well, pushed out Cape. No one's at A. Torji's going to shift over just now with the off, but that's going to leave plenty of utility to me. Mid is never open for access for Cloud9. Cloud9 with a full commitment towards this A side of the map. Torsi, well, he's got vision. He's got a line of sight deep in towards A main, and they jump across him. He's yet to pull that trigger, yet to leave his mark. And when he does pull the trigger, it doesn't matter. Yimfat will step up in his stead. A double as exertion swings out with Brolin. Cloud9 fall at the hands of Maus. It's two things. It's the mid control from Maus that allow them to get numbers at that eight bomb site at the perfect moment. And even though Torji doesn't land a single shot and can't get really a clean shot, his, present makes, his presence makes the pathing for Cloud9 coming out of A main so rough. It opens them up to the double kill from Yimpat. Just the presence of the AWP scared them into turning into a disadvantage fight against an M4. And it's all tied up at 14. Oh, it's, uh, it's an exciting game here, and it's just the opening game for this Group B. Cloud9 versus Maus. It's delivering on all fronts, and Axel's taking damage. He's had enough of that early fight, and unfortunately, Hobbit didn't have the option to fall back. He burns to a crisp. Yeah, and that's a disaster considering the HP of Axel at this point. 20 health, and he's had to give up mid. He was the only presence on the other side of the map. So it's all down to Boomage, Electronic, and Perfecto to get some kind of a foothold at this B lane. And here's Exertion Peak. He now getting caught, and Boomage's headshot is fantastic. They needed that kill to draw back. And there's so much time still left for him to call the round for Cloud9. Yeah, and Yimpat can't be aggressive in middle because the smoke just faded now, so he had to back away. He might have liked to have followed that piece of aggression up, but had to give up any kind of a fight, any kind of an idea that he had. Maus is really nervous about the B bomb site. Cloud9's shifting back across the map towards middle, towards A. But there's going to be no information for Maus. And at some point, they might want to start shifting. Middle of the map is wide open. Even if they do start to shift, that rotation is going to be a long way off, given the fact they're majority on the other side of the map. So it's down to how Yimfat plays this. Does he stand and fight, or does he wait on his teammates and stay alive in Donut? Even if you play it perfectly, how many can you realistically get? Not many. Especially with all the utility Cloud9 still have available, and now there's no secret. They're finishing A. Smoke goes down towards CT. Molotov to Temple. Electronic pushing into the donut. Oh, they line up. And Yimfat gets the miracle double that throws Maus into a 4v2. And now suddenly they're completely favored to win this and come back in for this retake. 
Perfecto would need this kill instantly, and Axel in the meantime, how has he done that? From a rifle to the sniper, Axel on the triple. He was an offer all along, triple kill from Axel on the retake. Let's run those back. Maybe we did find the new Cloud9 offer. Maybe he's just in this team all along. Man, I mean, the, 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 the miss clear and donut is so massive. Not even anyone really, uh, Boomer trying to trade it off, but here we go, one. Swings out a little bit wider. Shui trying to take advantage of the position at Big Box, but this is just perfect. Each and every shot lands for Exile. Steps up, and Cloud9 have yet another chance to close this out. I cannot believe they brought that back, and look at the stress of the heading day, staff. Heading day, heading day. play coming in. Electronics at the front. Yimfat this time from Donut. Does answer with the kill. Oh my god, Jimmy, a triple. And that has set up his team with an absolute blinder of a chance to go ahead and force us into another overtime. He has done it, surely here. Axel is in the middle of the side and he will fall. We go again and it's young Yimfat who steps up when he's needed most. Back-to-back -back rounds as well. This one more emphatically and oh man, Electronic, all he can do is really shrug and put on a, put on a smile. This is one hell of a game. <laughs> this is so hard to call who is going to pick this one up. Miracle moments happening for both teams that you think is going to decide the game and then suddenly there's another one. I think we all need a breather right now to settle into this second edition of Overtime on Ancient. Deep Molotov, Deep Utility. Stalemate called, nobody challenging from either side. Just now Hobbit and Perfecto making their move, following up Boomich and B-Lane. More standard spread, nothing stacked at the moment. Biggest change is Torji's op over in Donut. And it's looking for his first target. A little too early, and he goes again. Ill-advised, and he falls to Axile. He never expected that wider off angle from Axile. A uh, beautiful shot to shut him down before he can react. That one's even better, though. Oh my god. Boomich just Boomich. laid Shui to rest. Roland's there trying to make up for it, but he's cancelled out by a flash bang. And you can tell by how fidgety he is. He has to worry about two positions. He's done well so far. Boomich has gone down, and this is a much better CT hold from Brolin than we've seen in regulation. That smoke at ramp is doing a lot of work. It's held Perfecto back. Without numbers, he doesn't want to step through, and that's given Brolin the safety to look elsewhere, but it's about to fade. Yeah, but he's repositioned. Brolin's now thinking about that ramp play instead of Cave. He thinks the work he's done has held them back in Cave for the time being, and he's got another one. Can you believe this turnaround for Brolin? Brolin's back, baby. Here's four already. He might even get all five. He's damn close, but Hobbit stops that from happening. And now Hobbit's thinking about a clutch. Now he's thinking about a hero play, but that's denied. Not even the bomb plant. That's a tough round from Brolin as well. I, that's a that's actually one of the best rounds that that we've seen from anyone in the server in this game. Considering all of those are one by one fight. It's not like he got a mow down. It's not like he lined people up or someone was looking the wrong way. This is him swinging and taking every single fight presented, and he has to. He, he controlled the bomb site on his own despite being the single player there. He made it feel like there was a lot more presence around that corner. He has to control Cave long enough for exertion to rotate over. Like, he, he has to make sure they don't take over that part of the map, otherwise he's stuck in the corner, trapped from two different angles, and that's just beautiful from Brolin. Yeah, this is so wild. His step up towards the end of regulation on this map has been one of the main reasons Mouse is still in this fight. And it's the two players that stood tall during that big peak Navi team. It's Electronic and Perfecto at the bottom of the scoreboard right now. 13 kills for Perfecto, 15 kills for Electronic. It's Axel, Hobbit, and Boomich keeping them in this game. You can tell the tension is raised here in overtime. A lot slower, less risks being taken. More methodical from Cloud9, and they're thinking about this mid-fight. No one's shifted just yet. Oh, careful. Spots the information jumping into cover. Oh. Cloud9 take that as an advantage to say, if you're just spotting for information like this, we've got some room to work with over towards Donut. But Exertion shifts to the B-bomb site, which means Torji gets pulled back from Temple. 
And he'll have Perfecto and Electronic to deal with. Oh. The first one is no problem. Yeah, that's a great shot from Torji. Electronic is going to be frustrated. He has to sit back and watch the rest of his teammates try and unravel this round. 20 seconds left. Exertion with a follow-up kill for Maus. Bumic has gone. Perfecto trying to do his best. The Cloud9 need to put that bomb down, and they're no closer to doing so. Bomb is loose. 10 seconds left. Axel fighting. Has to plant now. That takes him out of the fight and forces Perfecto to defend him. And Axel now, they know he can't have gone far, so they jump around the corner. Yimfat takes him out, and Maus are pushing forward. Forward. They're taking the lead and they're extending upon it. Mouse had three players inside cave that whole time. I think Cloud9 is so caught off guard by the numbers when they swing to take that fight and clear that position. I don't think they realize how many players are defending it. A desperate hold. These are fights you don't necessarily need to take either at that moment. I think if they knew there's three in there, they're just going to let them sit parked and set up a crossfire after the plant. But some big time wins for Mouse down the stretch. Let's not count Cloud now and out just yet because they have shown incredible tenacity they need in one. this game. They need one in this half of overtime. Let's see if they can get that one. Perfecto loses that initial fight. Fortunately, he had Boomich beside him, and that trade is through. He didn't think that anyone would be standing inside that Molotov. I don't think it went deep enough to block Shuey. But look so. at Yimfat. In this late stage of the game, he's pushing into A main. He's taking an advanced position. He's not alone. He's got exertion, but Electronic clears it. That experience to check for the second player and followed up by Axile. That's the A site completely under wraps. Damn, well, the bomb's coming in a little bit late, but Torji's going to be smoked off with the AWP. He's going to have to go towards Temple. Brolin as well, just sliding over now. So bomb plant is in and a desperate 2v4 retake. Dink is there. Brolin. Domes, Hobbit, but they're held back and Maus are not getting any ground. Torsi would need a kill and needs to get out of Temple. And he's done that. He's now swinging with a 5-7. Dead to Hobbit. Now dead to right. Brawling coming through Temple. He's committed to it. Might as well go for it. But Cloud9 will sentence him to death. It is that one round. And Cloud9 need to stay competitive. And this game once again reopens. Bangers from Electronic and Axile when called upon re-clearing A. Coming in real, real late. This one's going to go forever. Mao's just now calling their timeout in overtime. This is the sick shot from Electronic. Because the setup actually looked like it was going to shut Cloud9 down, right? It looked really good. I, I mean, yeah, but like the setup might have also given away the game. You know, that, that contact with that first player, you're, gonna, you're always going to have heads up clearing to the left as you come in if you've already spotted one deep. They do have uh, another timeout for the overtime that we are currently in. And... It's Mao is using that. Will it to be, be to great effect as Cyclone has found impact with his 30 seconds many times. A lot of contemplation from the Cloud9 players on the back foot. 19 now the winning number. Traditional overtime scoreline. Yeah. Made it this far. Early utility from Cloud9 being sent out into the B lane in the bottom of the ramp. Torsi getting boosted up on that box at bottom ramp. He's not seeing too much. But he'll wait. He'll be patient. And perhaps he will strike. I'm really curious at this point in overtime if, if Cloud9 try to run that play with the double push towards ramp or if they hold off on it. It's worked twice. It's failed once. But it's been really effective when it's done. Shuei going to lead the way. Perfecto, the challenge with an AWP. Ooh, that bullet disappeared. Yes, that did not connect. And Perfecto is going out again. They know that AWP is positioned on default of B. Brolin doesn't want to round that corner. If he did, he would have a nasty surprise if two Cloud9 players boosted. Boomich standing above the head of Perfecto. Cloud9's just, just calling it a little bit. They're playing with no information in middle. No one's even spotting it. No one's even really considering it. Electronics just spotting to see if players get into Donut. But this whole time, someone could be wrapping around the beep off site. And Cloud9 oh. just don't care. Setup works perfectly. Yeah. Boomich and Perfecto with one apiece. It works out absolutely perfectly. And now Malice make their way through. 
final 25 seconds of this round. Hobbit plays at the first pyramid with Perfecto in a crossfire. That's the denial of the ball plant. This is Maus falling apart, and it's just Torzi, and he is now gone too. Once again, we are tied up in this series, yet to see who is coming out on top. Great, great hold, Hobbit and Perfecto with a crossfire from long to cave, and it just decimates Maus, prevents the plant, and we're all tied up. Ooh, it didn't disappear, it just missed. So close. I was trying to help you out, Perfecto. I was trying to give you one. I want to take a little bit of the tricep off. But it didn't quite connect. All right, mid-pressure from Cloud9, deep nades. Oh, wow. Searching at the angle, but the AUG wins out. He brings the AUG out, of course he does, Electronic. At this stage in the game, searching for series point again. And Cloud9, have had two chances to win this game, and they've let both of them slip. It's Maus who have never had a chance to actually win it. They've always been fighting for the next overtime. And it doesn't look like they're gonna get that chance. They're taking significant damage. Players so low, a player down two. Roland attempts to peek out a cave. It will not work, and he'll smoke out short instead. Brolin decides to drop on back, predicting a play to come his way, and that's exactly what Cloud9 offer up. Boomich and Hobbit, they come out on top, and now Cloud9 are in pole position to get to map and series point. 4v2, but the beat from Hobbit, and the second shot from Torzi. It's sick, and now Yimfat has a 1v2 in front of him, and this young Finn does not care about the clutch. He feels no pressure. He wins these for fun. And the shadow spotted, surely in fact trying to draw that fight, but now they've doubled up and he won't be able to get it. Oh, look what it means to Boomich as well. That one's a feel-good victory, 18-17. Yes, 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 18-17. One round away from Cloud9 taking this series, getting themselves a matchup versus Gamer Legion and sending Maos down to a battle against Monty. Such a good early win from Electronic in middle as well. All right, third chance. How many is it gonna take? Cloud9 have shown incredible resilience with how stubborn Maus has been, refusing to go away. And this time Exertion gets the opening. That's when Shuhei pounces two for two in mid. 3v3 set up nice and early. Cloud9 a few steps away from closing out this series, but Maus want to battle back again. The first time around, it was a last second headshot from Exertion to stop them from being sent out of the series. And, and Cloud9 really doesn't care about defending this eight bomb site. Not they, at all. Yeah, everyone's gone. And I, and I think at some point, Maus noticed and realized that because there's been such a lean towards the B bomb site for Cloud9 throughout this whole game. And there's no utility, really, for this retake, right? They don't have smokes. They have one flash, one Molotov. Cloud9 have got to hit headshots, and they're going into the donut. Brolin's going to take them out. That's a first kill coming in for Maus, second in from Torzi, and we go again. This overtime keeps on refreshing, and we've got plenty more Counter-Strike. I cannot believe Maus is able to come back in all these rounds. They've, they've won three series points. Again, no chance for them to win this map just yet. Look at Exertion, there's the opening, the space needed. Shui with the trade and you feel like it's a huge advantage in the post plant for Maus and they just close it out nice and easy. You're so right though, you know, we've seen Cloud9 stay committed to that B defense time and time again. Surely now that it's been figured out, we'll see a little change up. I'm just so surprised in a 3v3, Perfecto spots them in mid and hears them in mid and shifts back towards the B bomb site instead of fighting at all for any kind of standing at A. Triple nade stack down into the B lane. Brolin takes significant damage from it, but he'll still stand over half health. There's about to be a peak as Boomich is on the exit of Jaguar. He's going to hear the pins. The utility will eventually be thrown out, and he senses a timing to go. And Boomich is going to go for it. Takes away Brolin, and there's no trade potential. There's no chance for a kill back from Maus. And they're fine doing the setup because Perfecto is inside the bomb site at the default pillars, just holding it up at the angle towards ramp. Now, if you're Maus, that smoke indicates they've fallen back and Hobbit slides out. Perfect timing. Oh. Can't get away, but damage done. Yeah, that's certainly felt here for Maus. They've got to try and recover this 3v4 now. And the bomb stays committed to the B side of the map. They don't have many options to rotate back to A. They still have plenty of time, though. This setup doesn't work twice, does it? Maybe. It's difficult to break apart. 
It has been dismantled and changed up, and Boomich making noise. He's so low on health, utility being tossed into the cave. And Boomich will not take damage from it, so he can stay there. Electronics rotation over. Shuei was not ready. He was preoccupied about the presence towards cave, and that opened up a chance for a kill from Electronic. And now Torchy's overwhelmed. Electronic stepping up in this round, and just exertion with a 1v4 ahead of him. He'll go down to Boomich's relocation, and Boomich is happy about that one. Boomich gets the first and the last, but man, Perfecto's relocation is so, so smart. Shuei's just distracted entirely, because Perfecto puts out the Molotov and jumps in towards cave. And Shuey's just so convinced that's the main defense. What leaves him open for Electronics Peak. And Cloud9 once again take a lead. It's an emotional roller coaster for everybody involved in this series. Now the highs and lows, especially on this third map, the first two maps. First map is a blowout in the favor of Cloud9. Second map's a blowout in the favor of Maus. This one has been neck and neck the whole way through. And no one escapes from that pressure. Cloud9 with the small lead of one round. Utility comes into elbow again. Making it uncomfortable to stick around there. You know you're going to have to pay a health tax, and he is gone. Exertion cannot get around that corner. Trying to force the issue through elbow, but good utility from Cloud9. Yeah, Boomich read that. Mauser's ran this same crunch a couple of times. We saw it just previously towards the end of the last overtime. This time, Boomich holds onto the nade for an extra couple of seconds and tosses it in when utility starts coming over. That was meant to be a collapse between Shuhei and Exertion, and it's just taken away from them. Oh, the spam down. That's a beautiful way to get a kill this late into the game. Brawl and spamming through, catching Perfecto, and draws at least one step back. Especially onto the AWP. Boomich slides into the position that spam would hit as well. Axile pushing up in A main is going to keep track of anyone falling all the way back. He's actually posturing like he wants to wrap all the way around. Oh, he's going. He's going for it, Jason. He's committing to this. Yeah, but there's a window here. If Maus can make it into Donut before this flank comes in, Axile will at least kept tor uh, catch Torji. You'll, you'll see his direction, and he doesn't get the kill, and now Axel is comp completely messed it up at this point because there's no one inside of the A bomb site, and he's giving away what he's doing. He's giving away his move, so they accelerate into the A play. Electronic gets over on time in the rotate to get a kill back, and Cloud9 have got extra players, and those are working very effectively. It's just, just towards you left. They spotted him a little bit earlier in this round. They know he's around the donut somewhere, and they'll get that defuse in shortly. Torshi does not have the weapon nor the utility to get out of this one. He's fighting in the donut, but they're giving him chances. They really are giving him chances. And eventually, they will overrun him. <laughs> and Agna Groove can take a sigh of relief because he looked like he was on the edge. Yeah, that second kill comes in, you get a little bit worried. It, it feels, it looks a little, it doesn't feel, it looks a little bit silly from Brolin just walking through that smoke, but you realize Axile's pushed up and tried to wrap around middle, so he's going to be a main. You know, you know there's one in Temple coming in because he's just killed your teammate. You really have nowhere to go if you're Rolling other than stuck inside the bomb site. Had to try and make something happen. And again, Cloud9 this time opening up overtime strong. 20 and 18, 20 to 18. Here comes Exertion. This time he is allowed out of the elbow. And this time he'll elbow his way through mid. Electronic and Perfecto cast aside. And Mao's up two players right from the get go. Boomich is going to try and pull that back. He's detected, but it doesn't matter. He drops towards him. With that kill, the bomb is down too. And Axel uses that chaos as a distraction to move forward. <laughs> it's an absolute mess in mid. And the bodies scatter the battlefield. Yeah, it's a brawl. It's like both teams agree that the round would be won and lost at middle because they just kept throwing bodies at the problem the whole time. But now Mao's in the three-on-one. They can pause. They can wait. They can take a breath. See what the reaction is going to be from Hobbit. Brolin making his way through B. He's sensing there's no one here. He'll call that back to his teammates. And they shall join him in just a moment. Hobbit once again, just so far out of position. He'll have to sprint the whole way. And Ninja defuse again. Last round of this first <laughs> overtime, half of third overtime. 
Yeah, it's a rough one. So, so it'll it'll be it'll be twenty to nineteen when all is said and done after this. Mal's have to win have to win all three to to win in overtime on their CT side when they switch. Hobbit going for it. Saying what he can in, but as you mentioned earlier, his position was just too far out, and he won't be able to stop the 19th going against Cloud9. He's up to 31 kills, Hobbit, in this game. Exertion at 32, and look at this job in middle. Almost transfers over, but that's a tough shot for Perfecto to hit with the AWP as you recover. And there's a little bit of a change up. The AWP being one of the aggressors in middle. They were hoping to get him in position to take a pick, but Exertion just gets out way too quick and neutralizes the AWP in that role. Timeout called by Cloud9. Setting up what's going to be a T-half. Two rounds and they win. 22, the magic number. And at this point in the game, you're not looking at the playbook. You're thinking back to everything you've seen throughout these overtimes, throughout regulation. You're trying to adapt on the fly based off how, how Mouse has been playing. And if we remember at different points, Cloud9's most effective T-sides have been at attacking the extremities. They haven't found too much success in middle. They haven't shown the overwhelming aggressiveness that Mouse has, that Exertion has to just take middle through the utility. Electronic will get towards elbow, but it's just to throw utility. He won't be going for that aggressive maneuver around the corner. Exertion climbs up. Onto the ledge, Shuei's with him. And they're hearing a lot of presence from Cloud9 here. Shuei thought he had a chance there to take the first kill of the round, but it's not to be. And Bumic is being bombarded. He's down to 17 health. Yeah, the cost of maintaining control of lane that early in the round. He's going to back off, and he'll be the designated utility chucker. Cloud9 settling into this round, a slow-paced T-side. Just wasting the utility of Mauers, getting themselves into position. Could have been a beefy there, but just about misses Brawlin. Does a little bit of damage, takes it off the top. And now Axile's even dropping further back to join them at B. I, I mean, this this obviously looks like it's just going to end up at that B bomb site. They, they want to take over Cave and Jaguar first, so Torji's going to have a chance with his AWP to have impact. And there's so many players on this side of the map, so Maus have a chance to shut this down. Torsi he can't miss though, and he's forced to miss because he has a flash to the face. And now with 25 seconds left, the commitment up the ramp is being stalled out by the fire, so Axel can't join his teammates, and Cloud9 need these kills now. They need to get into the bomb site. And they're doing damage, they forced them back. The plant is coming in. Electronic confirms that. And now we're down to a 3v3. Maus trying to come back in for this retake. They've got an incendiary and a flash to make it happen. That's a huge Molotov out towards Long. That buys Boomich so much time. And he's just got eyes on this. He just wants one more kill, but he's not allowed it. And so Axel has to step up in his stead, and he's been so good on this map, but he is gone. And so it is on Electronic. So cool in these clutches. He's got himself one from behind the box, and this time it's a deep fuse on the mouse side of things. Exertion comes off to swing. He gets rid of Electronic and gets back to that deep fuse. It's tied up all again. That's so massive. There's so much time left in that bomb planet. And Electronic feels like he has to bite on the tap on the defuse and exertion just knows he's got plenty of time to get off and find that kill just barely holding on and cloud nine actually won out at a certain point forcing that long defense to retreat fully back to the corner behind the cube it actually felt like they would they got an advantage but boomage could never find a better position and Torch is bringing the energy, and uh, I think his headset has <laughs> not appreciated that. So a tech issue here to get that one solved, and uh, I don't think it's going to be one that lasts too long. No, it's a classic. A little excited on the celebration. That's a, that's a look. That's a death stare from Perfecto. Admins just passing along. It was a headset issue for the mouse side. And we'll be back underway shortly. Players settling in now. Fist bumps back around. And we continue on with overtime. 
third overtime. What a game this turned out to be. It's always the games that have the two blowout first maps that deliver on Ancient for the third. And again, we are no closer to deciding who will be taking this one. Nick goes forward, Hobbit. Ooh. It's going to be Boomich that nearly eats that one, but just about dodges it. And Electronic, he's setting up his team for what looks to be a quick play up this B site. Brolin comes out, spots out Boomich, laying down the law with his AUG. It's not getting anywhere here for Cloud9. They're held back after that first kill. Uh, Do they run out of steam? Have they finally run out of steam, Cloud9? Looks like they want to burst through this smoke with so many counter flashes coming in, making it awkward. Oh, perfect for Shuhei. Coming oh. in, there's the smoke blown open. He's got another. Yeah, they nuke the smoke. They reveal multiple players. And Mao's up a couple of members here. Perhaps Cloud9 really have run out of steam, but there's new fuel found. It's Perfecto's kill on Prolan. And he might be able to get a little bit more here. Molly's out towards He cancels him out for the meantime. And there is obviously a lot of time and space to plant this bomb now. And Electronic is going to confirm those digits down. And Perfecto's looking for fights. You gotta work up courage to move out of the bomb site if you're one of these two. Oh, they guys. line up with each other. They're eclipsing one another. And this could cost them. Oh, it's fumbled. Oh, it's absolutely awkward inside of the site here on Perfecto. This is gonna be so tough. This is gonna be ridiculous. And he can't do it. He can't pull this one off. And it's gonna be Mao suddenly up to map and series point for the first time. Yeah, it's so hard when you're both stuck in that bomb site. Those clutches, you just can't care, c cover enough area to prevent the retake from happening. And they were forced to just double swing because they know if they both sit there, they're both dead. Tough situation to be in, and finally, for the first time, Mouse is going to have series point. They had to force overtime, they had to force double overtime and triple overtime. Now they finally have a chance to take it away. This game is absolutely incredible, and it could have been decided way earlier on. Cloud9 had a last second headshot go against them. They've had multiple chances to close this. But Maos are now the ones ready to take this series. And they're back to a B hit. Three in a row. Running out of steam. And I, I running mean, out of ideas. They've been stopped here a number of times. I'll say, though, this angle from Torji has not been successful throughout this map. No, and it won't be this time. <clears throat> He's forced behind that smoke, and Brolin, he'll play from the cubby, swings on out. That's Axel down early. Here goes Brolin again, lining up a double, and Maus have done it, pushed to the brink multiple times. This team survived. They showed tenacity. Cloud9 came close so many times. Maus only needed one chance, one opportunity, and they took it. And give so much credit over to Brolin in this third map. When you consider he was having such a slow start to it, a slow series in the first two maps as well, but ever since he lost lost that 1v1 clutch. Ever since then, he responded and was instrumental in this victory for Maus. A great first win to it for a team that came into Katowice cold. And this Cloud9 loss is going to be so frustrating. You're going to leave this game today thinking about all those moments, how close you were so many times, and you couldn't get it done. A last second exertion headshot, so many other chances following that, but Cloud9 can't close. And it's Shuei that will have a rematch against his old team in Gamer Legion in that upper matchup in the group. And uh, down to the elimination bracket is Cloud9. Yeah, man, Cloud9 not able to close three times. And you think like the losing to the USPs, losing track of exertion in the smoke. There were, I mean, it, it was impressive seeing them bounce back from each and every one of those. But at the end of the day, it all catches up eventually. And when you don't close out on the opportunities you're given, those are going to bite you. And that's what the conversation with Cloud9 is probably going to be later on tonight, is those moments. Yeah, well, Counter-Strike is a beautiful game, and sometimes it's decided by seconds. Yeah, it is sometimes decided by seconds, and that's why I have the IGL here, uh, Shuhei. Oh my god! Tell me, I don't know what you want to tell me about how that all unfolded in the end and how you got the win. Honestly, I don't even know. Uh, no, but it's it's great to see that the the composure that we showed on the server. Uh, we did some really good adapting uh, throughout the game, and I'm really proud of my teammates that we never let one round down or we didn't put our heads down. So it was amazing to see. Yeah, especially since it was your first match here in Katowice. Uh, and talk to me a little bit about Brolan because he had a quiet first map. Uh, how did you find a way to activate him? Of course, he also did it himself. Yeah, I think he did a really good job of adapting. Uh, we took a pause and we talked about how we should play B side. And I think the new, the way we approached it to, to the, towards the second half and in overtime, uh, it worked in his favor. So I'm really happy. 
your next matchup is Gamer Legion. Uh, they also managed to win. A couple of words about that, as it is uh, quite important for you. Yeah, I'm happy to meet them finally. Uh, it's been a long time. I'm uh, happy to play against my former teammates. Hopefully it's going to be a good game. Uh, probably expecting overpass like usual from them. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Back to you. An absolute war of attrition on Ancient and one that ends in pure elation for Maus because my god, talk about a slow start on map number one. Talk about having the mental fortitude to hold this one out because this was back and forth, back and forth, a game of absolute millimeters, Maui. So many match points there for Cloud9 on Ancient, but yeah, Maus, them, they stood the test. There were so many times where it felt like Cloud9 found themselves in a position to win, down to literally seconds on round number 24. So many times when it felt like they lost two in a row on that T side, they had to pull out some miraculous C side, even just to extend the game to another overtime. And yet Shuhei, he always had the call, or one of his players had the key multi-frag. Yeah, I mean, I think it's kind of interesting to see a guy like Kimpat stepping up to that task that it was in overtime, because it's a really stressful game at that point. And he was the one who made the difference. I feel like if he wasn't on the day side of Ancient, there would be no overtime here. Do you want to go back to round 24? Because this laid the path of what I thought was going to be a Cloud9 W in regulation. What on earth happened here, Maui? Oh, this was just so, the most ridiculous scenes ever. We obviously see that the buy, not even that healthy right now for Cloud9. They're just kind of forcing the issue with CZs, 5.7s, a hodgepodge buy. And again, Maui, they find this advantage. But look at Electronic. He snuck down into the bottom of mid. He's able to get one. Really waste the time of these two pl these players from Maui. Exertion is able to backstab him, and man, this is where it just gets insane. Perfecto felt like we wanted him to swing so badly. Just catch him. Catch him as he's running away. He let them go. This felt like it was over. Felt like you just closed the door on him right now, but no. He actually reads the play that they're headed to be. He gets onto the bomb the bomb carrier, and there's five seconds left. Exertion has to charge him down right now. He has to find this kill. The final second, Bubski. The final second possible. And, and yet, Exertion was able to get him. I mean, the, the way Mouse played it, they almost deserve to lose it, right? And I think it's really well played by Perfecto. Obviously, at Clutch, you can take the narrative. Is it well per Perfecto doing it well, or is it Mouse doing a mistake? Here, for me, it's Mouse doing a major mistake. But uh, in the end, Perfecto gives them a little gift and a little chance to go into that overtime. And then we go into that overtime, and there was so many moments coming out from basically the entirety of the Mouse squad. I just want to uh, direct our attention towards the scoreboard. There's only four kills difference from the bottom of Mouse to the top. Everybody was putting in the work to keep Mouse's heads above water. Total team effort from their side. I mean, w once this thing hit overtime, it felt like there was this narrative that I had in my head of like, who was getting better map control, who was better on certain bomb sites. I threw it all out the window because there were crazy fights on both sides of the map, and it really did feel like it, at the end of it, it came down to composure. One guy, though, that I really thought stepped it up once it hit to overtime, I know he got at least three or so first kills, was, was Brolin, actually. Brolin found a, a handful of really key opening kills there, and by the end of the whole map, he ended up with 10, mul 10 opening kills on this map, and he only died three times in opening kills. But that's kind of the thing with Mouse. They don't have that money, see symbol type of player. So they kind of rely on everybody carrying their weight through that team. And I think it's great to s that you highlight certain players have certain qualities. I think Brolin is doing a little bit of what Frozen wasn't as great at. I don't think Frozen was the one to go first, but Brolin doesn't seem to have an issue with it. I think it frees up a little bit of space for Torisi, also Surgeon to have a couple of good rounds. And again, Gimpad was just a really solid anchor when it comes to the CT side. So where does that leave our expectations, our, you know, uh, looking forward for Cloud9? Obviously, that was such a narrow loss that they just netted there. Does that change your perspective of them going forward? Personally, I didn't have Cloud9 making it to out of the group stage myself. I thought that Maus were going to win them, win this game, send them to the lower bracket. I don't think I would cite the same kind of problems necessarily. Like it wasn't the clear, oh, their CT side was lacking because they mm -hmm. didn't have an op. It was a lot of incredibly tight rounds. That being said, I mean, you look at who they're going to be playing in the lower bracket. It feels kind of doable. Like in the in the beginning there, they're going to be playing against Monty, and then I think they're going to be playing the loser of NG2. Who knows there? But I really think that the the Big bad wolf in the lower bracket, Vitality. Getting out of this lower bracket is so hard because Vitality was upset immediately by Ents. Yeah, I mean, I've played this once before this format, and when you go into that lower bracket, you kind of feel you already lost the tournament in some way because you already have to beat be three bo 3s in order to advance. In order, if they just won a couple of those rounds, they knew that the path was one bo 3 for standing in this Bodeg Arena. It's such a major difference, and I think the, the Cloud9 
kind of blew that chance here. We got some words, obviously, courtesy of Shocks Down with Shue. He wants to be taking the W versus Gamer Legion. And you know what else that would net him? Spotting the Spodek mm -hmm. on home soil. He's a Polish player. He wants to be making it in that arena. Absolutely. I mean, Shuhei, he was so close to tasting glory, obviously, at the Blast Paris Major. He was able to find the trophy at ESL Pro League. And right now, it feels like this game said a lot to me. It was really a huge litmus test for where is Mao's at right now, because we hadn't seen them since the World Finals. But now with some practice under their belt, now playing with Brolin, I would say that they were the light underdogs. Even though I thought they would win this one, it was by the skin of their teeth. And so if Mao's are able to show this kind of form, I'm going to say something. I, I think Gamer Legion, probably not as strong of an opponent as Cloud9. One thing I also find funny is with Siwi, he doesn't have those deep Polish roots. Like he didn't come from the scene through like Virtus Pro. He kind of made his own way and found a way into the international roster. But the guy taking over him on Gamer Legion is the definition of policy, is right? Mm. Snacks coming from all those old school days where we see some of the players in this hall. I think it's just going to mean a lot and also going to be a really cool storyline to follow. Of course, only one more victory for either Miles or Gamer Legion. We'll see them making it into the Spodek. But that concludes the opening matchups here on the A stream side of things. And we move on to unfortunately an elimination matchup already. We're going to see Navi taking on Apex after this break. All right, welcome. We're doing an episode of Callouts Confirmed. So we asked Twitch chat some questions and came back with some poll results. And we're going to see if you guys can kind of uh, guess what Twitch chat thinks, basically. See how in tune you are with the, with the world, with the people. First question, what do you call a spot on Ancient that gives a CT full view of mid? You have your options there. Window, Red Room, Top Mid, Sniper's Nest, House. What do you guys call it in mouse? Do you guys call it... We call window? it... Demon. <laughs> call it demon. Window, demon. Uh, window demon. or demon, yeah. yeah. Window or demon. Why, because it's red? Yeah. 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 All right. We call it two different callouts. We, we, call it, we do window and house. Yeah, okay. Whatever yeah. someone's but feeling. We always interchange it for whatever right reason. I think house or red room. I think I've red. heard red room before. I think probably window. That's like I think window. Form. It's just like Mirage. Yeah. yeah. Probably yeah. window. It's like a like window map. from T-Small. Yeah, it's have always a like, window. Yeah. Call it across all the yeah. maps. Do you call Anubis mid window as well? Yeah. Anubis yeah. yeah, we do. And, and, and house. house. And house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we do. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an easy one. Right. Yeah, Sniper's yeah. nest. Sniper's <laughs> nest. Yeah. I can imagine Demka. Oh, damn. One sniper's nest. Yeah. Red room, red room. Red room. So which one do you think was the highest? I think window. window. Yeah, I think two. Window? Let yeah. it be window, but we call Maybe. red room also. Anybody call it sniper's nest? <laughs> Cypress Nest. No for that. Oh. <laughs> it's a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah. It's a mouthful. <laughs> you know, this blew my mind. 11% said window. 11. Well, I, I thought it was house, house right? Three percent of you said sniper's nest, <laughs> and we need to talk. Yeah, uh, whoever that three percent is, we need yeah. to have some words. Yeah, we have some words. <laughs> See how high their, their elo is. Yeah, right. <laughs> He's in the sniper's pit. Okay. <laughs> Which one do you think was the most picked by Twitch chat? It'd probably be no. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it would be window. I think window. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you'd be incorrect. All of you. All of okay, you. Then it is it's Red Room. Room. Okay, yeah, it's Red Room. Red Room was up there. 69%. Shout out to Twitch chat. Well done. What? what do you call the CT pathway through a building leading to the B-bomb site on Inferno? Ruins, construction, church, or garden? Or what was the most common usage? Uh, ruins, What's it? for sure. I think ruins. I think yeah. Probably, uh, 100% uh, ruins. Yeah. Probably it's construction. I think construction, though. I think construction. I think ruins, no? Yeah, construction. construction. No, ruins. Church. 
No church. I don't no. think anyone calls it church. No, I, I, I haven't heard. It's ruins now. I think uh, it's ruins are construction, but I would go like, to ruins. There's no way. Because most of the people probably. I think that's what the game says. The game says construction. It's probably yeah, I think construction. It's probably church, honestly, but it should be ruins. Damn! Ding, ding, ding! <laughs> Floppy it's takes church? it. Yeah, this blew my mind. Seventy-one percent. Oh, church. What? Church. I mean, it is a church. I can't deny. It, it makes sense. You know, there's the whole pulpit, I'm not gonna lie. stained glass and all that. If I'm in face and someone calls church, I might have to think twice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what would a brain lag on that one. <laughs> okay, church. Uh, church. I didn't hear you in NFPL, never a church. Uh, one church. Uh, church. Church. <laughs> what, what do you want to church? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, interesting. And, uh, and 16% said ruins. Mm. Garden. Garden. 2% of people thought it was garden. Bro. Only day two of the group stage here at the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice, but sadly, elimination already looming for one. Na'Vi unfortunately stumbling to spirit just yesterday, whereas Apex, one of the only players teams not able to keep that momentum going coming into group. So let's get a few thoughts courtesy of Stiko. Oh, Sticko, uh, a bit of uh, yeah, a dangerous situation here at Katowice right now. Um, I think after you impressed in the play, uh, planes, rather, it must have been a shocker yesterday versus Complexity. What happened? Um, well, Complexity is obviously a good team, and uh, the map was kind of favoring them, I would say, and also we had pretty bad off game, I would say. So a lot of things combined in us being in the lower bracket right now and we're going to be fighting for a spot against another great team. So it's kind of a bad situation, but in Katowice, once you make it here, there's no free wins. You know, you're always going to face a really good team. So this is how we have to do it and we'll do it. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Uh, you mentioned the map pool. Is that because of your re-entry into the team or and is that a general issue, the map pool? Or? Uh, I would say it's definitely the thing where we uh, switched a little bit in the lineup. So we obviously have a new IGL and me coming back and we didn't have really time to focus on everything how we properly want it and we kind of don't want to you know half do it half don't and uh, yeah this is how it is the situation but I think uh, against Navi it's going to be a little bit better. A little bit better. I mean, it is a phenomenal team who now uh, are also fighting against it. So, you know, they're going to be very, very spirited. Um, no pun intended. Um, so what are the main dangers in playing Navi? What's the thing you have to look out for the most? Well, I think usually the biggest danger is ourselves. So we have to make sure that we play our game and we don't adapt to them. Uh, we stay focused, we stay sharp when it comes to communication especially. And uh, we will try our best. We had some scrims against them and we did well, some in we did poor and those we analyzed. So obviously there's a lot of adjustments coming up from us. But I think, um, I think we can be, you know, good opponent towards them. Okay. Uh, on that topic and the last question, then I'll let you go. You, of course, had a stint of IGL as well. It was a while ago now. Um, and Sense is really growing into that role. So in terms of communication, is there a lot of cooperation on that front between you two, knowing that you also have a ton of experience? So first of all, we all try to help him. It's not just me because I had experience, but we all try to chime in when it comes to pushing up for our identity and how we want to play the game. In the server, actually, it's a little bit hard from my isolated roles to kind of contribute that much, but I'm trying and obviously others are vocal as well. But I understand his position. I, I'm empathetic to, to how he feels, especially at this, such a young age. So I know the struggles and obviously, whenever he uh, has a question, I told him, ask me right away, I will answer right away. This is how we, you need to grow and you need to share knowledge from uh, for the for the younger players to to rise the, their level. So I'm happy whenever he asks me and he bothers me with anything because I'm actually like enthusiastic about it. So it, I'm really glad helping him. You want to teach? Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you very much. Stiko back in the mix for Apex and still back in the mix up here on the desk. As our resident North American, the game versus complexity yesterday, were you expecting complexity to, you know, dispatch of Apex in two maps considering what we saw in plans? You know, I actually was. I, I 
rate complexity actually kind of highly, at least as like a North American standpoint, not like in the grand scheme of things, obviously. But um, Apex, like when they first came in, 013 to Spirit. Then they had like, uh, you know, uh, they advanced with a really close slugfest against Furia, but then it's like you never really know what you're going to get with them. They're like, sometimes they're like, wow, well, these guys could be good. Then you're like, wait, how'd they even get here? So it's very confusing to see kind of like where they are. And we heard that in the interview with Stiko as well. It's like, yeah, they're still growing together. So, you know, they can only grow from here, right? Like this is the, the base starting point. So anything that we see that we're just like questioning about them, it's like, well, I mean, they're brand new, new pieces coming in, new map pool. So this, if this is the worst that they're going to be, then, you know, maybe they could do some damage here. Yeah, sometimes maybe good, sometimes maybe bad. I think that's how the saying goes. Uh, Stiko, what's your take on what he's delivered so far? I mean, I think he's the definition of a temporary substitute. I think they've already tried what he can bring to the table. That's obviously not going to change within these couple of tournaments. And I think they wanted to try something new. I was a little disappointed that they went with Stiko again. I don't think he's a bad player in any regard, but Apex, they do need to build for the future. And right now it's looking kind of short term. I do know Katowice is and an important tournament for an organization like Apex. But I would have loved to see them gamble on maybe they're, they have some interesting on the gamble, uh, sorry, on the academy rosters, or they potentially could pick on one from the tier three or four scene. How do you feel about them going up against Na'Vi today then? Because I know there's obviously a JL waiting on the other side who he wants to take his old team down, right? He obviously yeah. made ways with them back at the Paris Major and he wants to prove that moving to Na'Vi was the right decision. Yeah, I'm, that's one of the, these things that I'm not sure about because Na'Vi, you would think, oh, these guys are looking good. They're looking way better with the addition of Wonderful. They're in the right groove of things. But yesterday, I just, I didn't see that. And with how Apex is playing, it's just like, we never know what's going to happen here. And it just, it, it comes down to the maps, I think, actually, where we might see Apex even taking a map. If it goes to Inferno, for example, um, that's a map where I'm not so sure Navi's playing too well right now. They're doing these two one twos. They're just like split across the map. They're not in a position to fight. They're not getting like grimy with each other. They're not getting skirmishy like other teams are in the current CS2 meta. So I'm not really sure if, if I can just be like, oh yeah, Navi for sure is taking this in the bag. Do you want to just dive into the maps that we see obviously on mm. here? We've got some numbers. What do they mean, Bubski? Yeah, I mean, it shows what it shows, right? There's uh, the map pool of the both teams, and I think it shows that they kind of like the same maps. I, I think um, we can see that Nuke, obviously, is not going to be played from always, and they like to play that. I remember playing against Na'Vi back in the day. They were one of the best Nuke teams. They've kind of fallen out a bit with it since the addition of um, uh, Wonderful, but... I'm not going to be too sure that it's going to be an advantage for them to have a shared map pool. I think Navi is going to be very happy to be like, okay, we can play our comfort maps. And especially looking into that Anubis, I think Navi is super sharp on that one. Yeah, Navi, definitely, they're going to go for the Anubis pick here. But having the permaban of Nuke for the side of Apex and then having Vertigo being the permaban for Navi, we're probably not seeing those, those at all. So when I'm looking at what's remaining here, I'm seeing Inferno. And the way that Navi plays and the way that Apex has been playing this event, we're going to see a lot of individualistic plays. And that's what's the scary thing for Navi. So if I'm Apex, I'm looking to exploit that. I'm looking to exploit maybe JL at B, get some of these banana fights on their T side because they will most likely start on T side if, that, if it goes that way. So any map where Apex can kind of focus on their individual skill because that's where they bail themselves out. It's in the clutch around situations and their mechanical skill. So on the eco rounds with the Deagles, that's where they're going to find the rounds. And if they can find maps that they can isolate those types of fights, that's where they're going to strive. So we've got Ancient being picked. Ancient, yeah. That is Makes sense with the numbers. Well, it's, it's definitely their comfort pick of this tournament. Starting with the 0 and 13 loss against Spirit, though, which is always very funny. true. The, the Anubis pick, that's kind of what we expected, right? Yeah, and I also think it's just a map that really plays well into their hands, considering you have that beat on the A side. I think he offers a lot of value in terms of those players who are able to play it themselves and really have a, a good way of not needing anyone to be around you constantly. I think Exile in the prime of his uh, career was really good at this, like playing that A side, not really having to, to get a lot of help. And I think he has some of that same feeling beat. Yeah, Mirage, third and final, if we do so need it. But I think it's time to hear from the Navi camp. We've got JL, courtesy of Shocks. So, JL, have you recovered from the donkening? The what? The donkening. I don't think it's donkening. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we recovered from our uh, bad uh, way of playing and uh, we're ready to take on Apex for our next game. My ex-team and... 
Does that give you a bit more motivation? And obviously, uh, on top of that, it would be elimination if not. So I guess there's a lot at play here. Yes and no. I mean, lower bracket is like a, like a gift from the heavens. And uh, it just gives you, imagine you go for a tournament and you can't, uh, you have not found your mistakes on the maps. And then you go to quarterfinals and lose. But now we found our mistakes. We have a second chance and now we're going to go for the lower brackets and win the tournament. Okay, I'm looking forward to it. You still have to get past Apex. However, uh, and as you said, you're familiar with them. But what are the dangerous parts of facing them or the most dangerous things about facing them? I think they're really good individually and they play some good CS and if they're all on point, if they're all going to be hitting shots, it's going to be a tough, uh, tough day at the office. Uh, but if not, it's going to be a good day at the office. Okay. Well, I hope so for you. Thank you very much. You. Yeah, of course, Ancient coming up as Apex's pick into this. Um, I wanted to throw the question to you, what do you want to see more from Apex? Because uh, there's a lot left to be desired from what we saw on the plans, right? Yeah, I mean, I would just say they have kind of the macro idea of a lot of things, but it, when it comes to the micro, that's when they start failing. They're not close together with their spacing. They're throwing the utility, but then five seconds later is when they start approaching. They're not going with the utility. So just finding an, a, a way that they can be more together to be tighter on the trades, um, make sure that they're going together, moving together wherever they go. That's basically the main thing that we need to find from them because the macro is there. Yep. But I even spoke with the coach, I think, I, um, Torbjörn, obviously, Mithril, from, from the side of Apex. I asked, why, why do you play this way? And he uh, gave me the explanation that if they get a one or two entry kills, they'll not do the usual thing of, like, gathering and, okay, let's go A together. They'll rather do, they just shout a certain word. I'm not going to say it here because it's probably not appropriate. <laughs> and then they're going to all push at the same time because if you kill two or one in the start of the round, there will be an opening somewhere on the map. And regardless of you lose one or two duels, you at least have the side because you now have the space. I think it's a kind of unique approach and it's not the most safe way, but I think you can evolve a lot on it. We just got to see some of uh, Bit stats up on screen. Um, not looking so hot for Mr. Bit so far here and Kato, surely we should expect more from him coming into this game. I mean, they went up against the Donkster the first match, right? So, yeah. and then they got destroyed on two of the three maps. The only map they won was, a, I think, 13-11 on Anubis, which is Navi's comfort map. But, I mean, when you're looking at tough losses like that, it's hard to look good. Surely the pressure is on Na'Vi's shoulders, right? We didn't expect them to be an elimination station so early in the tournament. I mean, when you meet Spirit, it was a kind of 50-50 match. I think they actually played well, regardless of losing 2-1. I think people maybe underestimate how good potentially Spirit can become. So I would say Na'Vi is in a good position still. Like Apex is a, a team you need to beat if you want to go into the arena. And I think also when we look player by player, there is very few roles on the side of Apex that I would rather have on the Na'Vi side. So I think it's really a, a game for Na'Vi to throw in that sense. Well, both squads hoping to avoid elimination, but only one can do so. We've got Na'Vi, we've got Apex, and we've got Ancient coming up first. Yes, indeed. Ancient up ahead of us, a full best of three. Loving that from the desk there. We had uh, some insights shared, and I've got Chaddy B to continue to lather me in insight. What do you think, Chaddy, about this full potential three-mapper? Yeah, I like the discussion from the desk there. Obviously, uh, Bubsky with a little bit of insight speaking with Mytho, and we've been noting the way that they play that uh, spread and kind of be these... Uh, routes across the map late into the rounds once they find themselves in those three on threes. I think the issue they're going to have is uh, Navi should be able to outskill them across the board. Right. Sure, those gaps will still manifest, but I think, you know, with those double lurks that we've been seeing, that very wormy, annoying style of play, Navi should have their number. I am surprised that Apex have even made it to the group stage of Katowice, and I haven't been hugely impressed with the type of Counter Strike they've been playing. The tenacity, sure, that's a different kettle of fish that was. I'm sure we'll see a better performance out of Bit and Imet today towards middle. Maybe they won't be missing their mid mollies. Maybe. One can only hope. This is Jacob, the first victim of the pistol. A clean headshot from Bit. Anito, he has the bomb on his back. and caught on the reload there. Did not expect or anticipate a second tucked in. Bit. Getting run at now. Should get overwhelmed. And oh, wow. Still manages to adjust nicely. As it's only Stiko, the last to fall. Individuals shining bright, just as we discussed. We see the sharpest tool in the Navi shed. Actually, I say that bit's great. Of course, the stats brought up by the boys, but you've got Imet and Wonderful as well uh, as ones to watch. But that's the trio. That is the trio that you need performing if you want to be getting the most out of Navi. And this is the opener here from the young Ukrainian. Very well handled for Navi. And yesterday, sure, they went up against Spirit. A tough task. Donk apparently is 
all anybody can talk about and probably all complexity will remember as Jao giving them a point out the gates and he made a point of this being his ex-team. It has changed in complexion somewhat since his time on the squad. Oh, but he's definitely familiar with the boys in a more intimate way than you would otherwise, for sure. Knows what the players like to do. I, I am expecting a, a 2 0 here today. You I've are? said that in a few of the Apex series so far. You and I have had the uh, pleasure of casting the emotional roller coasters. Oh, gosh, we had yeah. the big game that we referenced. And yesterday, we covered off their opening matchup against Complexity, which also had its twists and turns as far as force buys were concerned. But you heard from Steeko in his pre match interview discussing. You know, new team, he's back in the roster, new in-game leader, different complexion, trying to work things out. Obviously, RMR being a big focus. This should be a slaughterhouse. You have the likes of Shadow. Wonderful and Bit here to deal with this. How many he got for us? Bit, he's going to unload his magazine, and with the combination of Wonderful as well, you're right, slaughter is an apt word for it. And so, Steeko. Just going to look, try and do a little bit more economical damage. It's unlikely, that's for sure. He's trying to bait shots, and yeah, wonderful. We'll wrap it up with three of his own. I mean, in, in, they're in, in their positive side. It was an M4, not an SMG. Going to be stopping an extra 300 bucks from slipping into your enemy's ranks. But a 2-0 start for Na'Vi, and it's Apex's map pick. So we expect to see this gun round uh, hold a lot of water and wait just to see how just how damaging their T-sides are going to be. Yeah, this is where the conversation begins. All right, so we've got the uh, coin toss round out of the way. We've got the Falico. Now the rifle's not going for Galil to facilitate the util. Let's take a look at what their opener will be. Knock with the red smoke. So no cave smoke, no heaven smoke coming straight through the guts. And let's see, do the mollies land? They do. Now, we saw this from Apex the other day. They dropped this smoke, they peek over the top, and they didn't get offered an awful lot. But this time, Jacob will be able to profit. That's something that Emma might need to learn about quite quickly. Ooh, Bit. He's fancying his chances of something a bit more aggressive. He's fired off the warning shot. Now, he knows he's on a timer. Presence has been undoubtedly noted after Jacob's frag. Sense brought very, very low, and Bit's stubborn about this. Continues to try and support for the B lane control. Smoke goes down from Apex. Still surprised that they found the owner in that fashion. That was something that Apex were trying against Big, and they were not able to manifest the same results. Sense low. Bid is on a timer as these smokes start to fade. Will he backpedal or will he stand his ground because the flashes are coming? Ooh, they needed the smoke bit. Doesn't react in time. Oh, he just about got a bullet to Nork. Doesn't kill him, but uh, yeah, operating low. Have to get past Wonderful. He's still towards A as they're rerouting. Alexi forward in cave, not going to hear a lot. JL might even start cheating over. Wonderful can get this done. Tidy on the rifles as well as the AWP. Yeah, he's communicating a lot. I think he's aware he's got a lot of presence and pressure on him. He doesn't have answers and he does have damage. Worried about Donut. They're swinging for him. Good work from Wonderful. Satanito cut down as well. Huge double. And look what remains. Jacob and Nork. A meager amount of health to try and make this one work. Planting in the smoke, it does mean that he might avoid the spray. Hell, those bullets just narrowly whistling past the shoulder of Jacob. A two on two. Jacob. Oh, he could catch JL. Worried about that temple peak. And that's a bit of a fumble from JL. Up to Alexi to clutch up. Now he does have low HP. Can he hit these little bursts? Long range SMG. Jacob, that's massive for Apex. A quad kill. He started the round and he ends it. That's a beautiful round out of the Norwegian. Yeah, and uh, Mitha there having a glance over. I think we're going to get some eye contact with JL. But that is a nice round to win, and this was that opening. So this smoke is one of their own design. They're going to throw that. They know the way that it oscillates early. Another cheeky play through the smoke as well with the HE to disperse. Catching JL, who is worried about them encroaching through that temple position and taking spawn. And classic at this point, since we've seen him with a lot of energy, the young Norwegian. As we're going to be fast out mid, there's a fifth. Yeah, Jacob this time, he's throwing some aggression into the mix. And here again, his first victim. First the boost, now you're getting shot in the backside. This is going to rumble him his confidence. And it was a problem yesterday as well versus Spirit. Sure, they were missed throwing those mollies in mid, the deep one especially where Donk was just able to stand behind. But Apex are using different ways to still manifest these similar openings. If Bit and Emma, who are meant to be the two-star riflers alongside of Wonderful's AWP, can't get functioning in such a key area of middle, you might have to call off the all-ins. Oh, Alexi. We'll spam one through the board, so grab something back shore. But this is where Apex can do their better work once these openings have, well, opened, right? There's <laughs> yeah. a, a lot of rumors. We can see the A bomb site completely open as the rotation starting to head back now. 
CT smoke in the air. Yeah, it's going to limit what the scout can contribute. You just fill out a position, don't you? Because by the time you rotate through Temple, how much space have they taken? They're actually quite slow about it, so wonderful. Oh, Alexi owned by that. HE clear. And Stiko. It's not an easy duel with the Galil. He does manage to bring a bit low, but a three on three. Still up for debate into our fourth round. I feel like save might be a conversation unless you get given another kill. How are you meant to even get into this? Yeah, that's a really nice flash, but late well, on. Now you might give it a look. Most definitely. Still no kit. You're having a glance, aren't you? It's sense on that boost position, tagged by the scout. Ooh, you're still not interested, despite those kills coming your way. Okay. Well, Apex, level things up, 2-2. Two, two. A good job dealing with this force. And uh, I think the main conversation has to be about the type of fights we've seen in middle. So Emma has the correct response through that mid lurk smoke. Right, he plays through it, say, the fight, but not aware of the parving. So uh, really good work for Apex to be able to be exploiting this area of the map so early. And I am just wondering, because once we get to the next gun round, here it is, do you opt with the tone of, we're just not going to fight for this control anymore, which is now going to apply a lot more pressure towards your B defenders, and we just do something a bit more site-centric, a 2-1-2, two, two, or it's a 2-3 with one of the B defenders having to worry about that red slip. Right. But uh, we do have saved rifles, some smokes, HEs, upgraded pistols for the likes of Alexi and Wonderful, so something to work with. This won't be the easiest round in the world. There's a HE chunks wow. Sassanito down to 14 points of health. Very well played with the util for Na'Vi, and oh, still gonna lose the opener though. Sense, great shot onto JL. Yeah, these openings are flowing for Apex. Jacob, he's got the confidence to take these jewels. Bit deleted, and that's the rifles gone. JL and Bit, the two saved rifles, both the first to fall. And so, yeah, this is gonna fall nicely into place for an Apex consecutive third. Emma has been able to scavenge back that rifle as highlighted here by Jakey, but What's he meant to do with it? No armor, out of position right now, as we can see. And Apex are taking their time, understanding that the CTs are down numbers. They do have to continue to try and make some plays. A minute remaining. I don't see this one getting out of control. Sense with the molly, cave called clear. And applying this B pressure to hopefully draw them towards B, the bomb on Sassanito, 40 seconds outside of A, Jacob with the red room control. That's info and he's low. The bomb, if it goes back towards B, yeah, okay. So ping-ponging between the sites and this has been the better of the two decisions. Emma was being a bit of a sleeper agent over towards the tall box. Very well played, good awareness using all the seconds they had. Oof, yeah, Jacob at least confirms their suspicions that A is occupied. But the one will go down safely thanks to that clear on B from Sense. It does lead to three members currently of Na'Vi holding on to these rifles. Yeah, I think that's, nice. that's important as well, because when you look at the finances going into the next, we only have the 2400 loss. So this is actually quite key that they do retain these rifles that will bolster the U2 and make their buy into round number six look a whole lot juicier. When we get caught, Stiko quite diligent on this. I was just jiggling that angle. Bomb, not much longer left now. And yeah, catches him on the way back. So Stiko will remove one of them. We still will see the bike come out for Navi regardless, but it's just going to be two AKs retained. One for one for one for Alexi. And we'll see whose hands they end up in. But an AWP will not be in play for Wonderful just yet. So a very solid start for Apex, putting up some resistance. And again, we have to return to Jacob with back-to-back -back impact rounds over towards middle. Now, this is where the conversation needs to continue. Has Apex done enough conditioning to stop Na'Vi going aggressive? Do Apex not even go for a mid play and opt to be more extremity site-centric? Well, let's find out. It looks like they do want to give it another look. Add elbow mid. smoke. Yeah, the mid U2, it's just <laughs> missing mollies, missing elbow smokes, missing it all. But at least they didn't follow through. Does mean that middle is a bit of a red carpet for the boys of Apex to occupy. Jacob and Sense walking through. Alexi, well drilled on those wall banks. It's really making Satanito's job a whole lot more difficult. But again, it's Jacob the best to, to open up proceedings, his third opening kill. Stiko's found the room. Is a bit aware of this, has to be, because Stiko can already start making his way in towards Temple. And if it rotates in lazily, will the shadow 
play in at any moment and it's a bit even hard clear. This could be the round. Doesn't check his corners. Bombs on its way. JL and Alexi on the wrong side of the map. steko has got full control, full rain, and oh, Nork's precise as he comes out onto JL through that ramp fight. Apex looking very well drilled right now. Looks like they've got Na'Vi's number. Sure, you're missing some smokes and maybe you're missing some of those openings. Bit's been getting bested by Jacob out mid. As has Emma. They've both felt his wrath. But if you can't get your utility down to lock it down, as I'm saying, then just don't play heavy middle. Right. Yeah, and yeah, very well done. They're doing exactly, and you know, we heard Bubsy saying, you know, it might be a bit riskier of a play style, but seems to be working. And this is something that Na'Vi needed to know is coming their way. There's the missed elbow smoke bouncing off the tree. So the trajectory of that one well off. And look, they're not easy. I'm not saying you just stand there. There's certain they steps finicky. that need to be taken. You have to remember each one from this the five different spawns. You don't want to get blocked by one of your teammates. But it's the little details that really add up in Counter-Strike and Na'Vi Coming into this tournament, we're looking hot at the moment. Not. Boost again. This time they're up close. So under the line of sight. Ah, but even up their position, Jacob will unload. Yeah, Bits actually caught Tantanito on that one there, and Stiko immediately catches Wonderful out the big box swing. The Molly comes in. Smoke on Donut, so the pressure is being applied. Oh, look at that bomb, though. Could get awkward if him is brave. He's hearing that. He's hearing it. Good idea as to what's going on here. An audible Jake reload. Jake, the steps. Oh, he oh. knows now. Well, maybe loses its potency. There's a flash for Alexi to go over the A site, but they're currently smoked off. If they creep up behind it and explode, they could try and cause some chaos, but the fact they have CT covered, Nork's now cleared out red. They know that A main is a possibility. The attention of Apex doesn't need to be turned anywhere else other than Donut, really. Perfect placement of the cross there from Stiko. Catches bits, walk up. Now the bomb can go down and contest it. JL, nothing he can do with this one. And Nork this whole time has been parked towards that speedway position, hoping to be able to punish and to stop any of these saved AK. So this is where we, we spoke about this a lot with the Apex games, right? It feels like they're everywhere. Right? It feels like they're taking all this space, they're all over the map. So if I'm Na'Vi, I probably want to all in and make sure that we retain some territory. So do we go aggressive A main, push a rifler up, so we're always going to hold on to that? Do we go for the full press, but we can't really take the mid control, so going for all that B lane space is always going to be a little bit dicey because we can't lock down the key quadrant of the map. Oh, JL, he has spotted one crossing towards the long side, so there's information at least with the pressure coming to remove these rifles and they might take everything as Alexi running in pull it in the side of well not the head but the body and they do not bring anything through so five to two in favor of Apex looking very good we have Anubis up next timeout taken Blade getting on the microphone max loss bonus in the bank account so the buy this time will get wonderful the AWP and maybe that discussion I was just having is there an all-in or are we going to be more, more passive across the map or are we going to try and hold on to our utility for longer this conversation this next 30 seconds is going to be very important I mean it just feel like we've also seen a distinct lack of b-site hits right now like it just it hasn't even been necessary right, has it it's a dream for for the boys on Apex in terms of you're, you're kind of halfway through you're over halfway through your, your T campaign and you haven't even had to kind of have a diverse portfolio of hitting the site. You can just work on A, finding those gaps, finding the picks before you even hit a site. And the rounds have been ending towards that first letter of the alphabet. Blade's timeout is up. Let's see what uh, Apex respond with in terms of this conditioning. Perhaps knowing your opponent's going to have to try and rejig it, approach it differently. Stiko with that spawn red smoke. Are they going to continue to drop one of their own and try and peer over the top now? Will the elbow smoke in play? And it looks like. They want to apply early pressure towards A to force this rotation. So they are calling off the all-in CT mid. Wonderful is Donut with the AWP. Alexi and Donut jail quite passive on B. Emma floating and they're faking A. So it will have to draw a rotation. I think they missed the Donut smoke. It's quite deep in towards the site bit. Transition towards default to get some kind of a glance and blocks with one of his own. So it did keep the feet moving for a moment. And with the bomb still here on sense, maybe it's a double pump. Yeah, I was wondering about that. So now you cut enough noise that you can then apply pressure from Sassanita, but he's a load. How much of a fake can they really make it? He's going to go late. Sassanita doesn't seem like he has a gap at the moment to work with. That's nice. That's what you want from Wonderful. Yeah, and it looks like he's going to get another sense cut down by that AWP, a double from the impactful Orpa. 
First time you get to see it in his hands, and it's the first time it looks like Na'Vi could be converting this one cleanly. But right now they have everything covered. There is an opportunity that there could have been like a walk up the B ramp towards Bricks. That isn't the case. They are considering it, but they have somebody watching Cave. They have two people over towards B. Wonderful has middle. A bit worried about A. They should be able to lock this one down and get their third Na'Vi. Yeah, Emma's going to have a little bit of a jiggle on his own premonition. Oh, and Alexi sticking out. No trade. Yeah, it is. Emma connects. Bits found Stiko on the walkabout A, and it does look like relatively clean round. It's not going to get anything done. He's noisy through the smoke, gets caught by JL, and there you have it, the third. So a lot more hard work still to be done by Na'Vi. Something else that comes into the conversation when you... Oh, there we go. We're back. Am I back? You're back. I'm back. Uh, when you versus a team like Apex is, well, because they have all these lurks and trying to find all of these gaps, you have to make sure that you're not over-rotating. But then they can come into play because they don't always have to be playing for the lurks or playing for the extremities. They can be more grouped up. So that's something that you need to keep in mind because if your rotations are too slow and you lose the sight when all of them are there and then they make you doubt it and then you're, you know, you're waiting. You're, yeah, so there's a lot to keep in mind as we're back towards middle. Yeah, three T smokes. They've got the lurky B smoke, two in middle. Imet, oh, he's got us a lot of pressure. He's worried about elbow, and he should be, because Sense has nailed that shot. He was a bit of a sitting duck there, no trade potential. It's a very disjointed CT half so far from Na'Vi. Uh, there was no pressure towards B lane for, for Imet to try and be able to, to push with. There was no let smoke to deal with that elbow position once the molly subsided. Is he going to go down here? They have to push for some info. So I, I think it would probably be advised if they started looking at, they should pair up and do something together, Alexi and Jo, but apparently not. Well, that nade would have been heard. They know there's a player close donut. Jail's opted to just jiggle it out. We'll have that advantage of the shadow if Nork does try his luck. He's screwed though. There's going to be players coming through cave as well. So. Another, it looks like, once again, Apex are converting these opening opportunities into rounds convincingly. Sure, you've, you've smoked off Cave just as they throw out their util and bit. Oh, he's clearing through just as Jacob falls off the angle. They're recovering. Huge three frags for Na'Vi in the feed. I'm still down, though. It's a bit of an issue. Yeah, Stiko does manage to catch Wonderful at least. He knows the A site's an opportunity, but Nork's so separate from the pack, and still Nork catches JL. This is how Apex pull these rounds out of the hat. So nimble, so dynamic. Picking up the bomb now is Stiko. 15. Wait, does he even have time? Oh, Alexi. Oh, he's going to get cleared. Needs them both. He's got his knife out, a double from Alexi to win it. That was a bit of a mad one in terms of Counter-Strike rounds. He'll be happy with that, surely. Yeah, very fortunate. Very, very fortunate indeed, and he was even cleared, right? You can see this coming to glance, and the position was Nork. Stiko with the knife in the hand, just thinking he needs to hightail it towards that side, even if there wasn't enough time, just quick as he likes. And Nork's going to be frustrated with that. You could see he was on the hard clear. Stiko had the knife out, and they will concede another. So just a one-round game, still in favor of Apex as they get oh, an AK to work with a couple of digs. But yeah, that'll take the wind out of your sails. The aggressive maneuver worked this time, right? So uh, Apex essentially rotated into them. Flick up, shot hit, Stiko low. Yeah, and no one else can really wield that. Actually, not tell a lie, Nork has Kev. Maybe that's going to be juggled across if they do meet once again. Yeah, Nork's headed back to spawn, and there it is. So full HP on their only hero rifle. Tatsunito giving it a good look around the ramp, and... Doesn't seem like Navi are too interested in giving him anything early. Next round's going to definitely have some emissions as far as the buy is concerned. Apex really want to get the bomb down in this round. And it's not impossible considering Alexi and JL is 2v5. Had to get a face full of left. Yeah. Oh, JL goes down. Nork, precise shot to the head. And now that bomb goes down uncontested. As easy as that. No way. Him has got caught as well. Recovered rifles, pressure onto Nork as he hits another, and this is falling apart for Na'Vi. This was just eagles, just pistols, not everyone even having that. That's a miserable round to lose. Oh. That is a, an excruciating round to lose. And, and the setup again, disjointed. The, the, the gaps are plenty. Jail was floating back and forth. I'm not sure what he was tasked of him to, to fall back and take his eyes off, but when he returned, they were already creeping up the ramp. Alexi disconnected in cave. No ability to trade off of each other. Ima gets flatlined. 
And that wonderful and Alexia attempting to save. And wow, Alexia can't do that. He was too close to the bomb. He wanted to get a late escape route. <laughs> and that's six and a half for Apex. Oh, this is a fantastic half for Counter Strike from Apex and, and quite the opposite for, for Na'Vi. Im has been having his tough times towards middle JL. Also, you can see this one just around defining frag from Nor. That's also pretty damn nice from Steeko, long range into Imet. And the rifle didn't even start in his hands. So nope. if there wasn't a tag from Wonderful under Steeko, maybe it doesn't end up with Nork being that precise. Well, just the saved AWP. Some upgraded pistols. Can Navi salvage anything as the Lurk Smoke out towards middle? Imet doesn't want to brave this anymore. And it was such a good start. Pistol, conversion. I was against the eco, mind you, so we'll just go with the pistol. Maybe not the conversion as a highlight, but as far as the gun rounds are concerned, Apex have been doing a much better job. Ima, one kill. You're one of your mid players, Alex, who is in such a key position on the map as far as activation goes. Stalling out the mid players, jumping up, harassing B. One frag. Not good enough. Undisputed. But if the util's not landing, your elbow smokes aren't there, you're not getting your mollies correctly. You're probably not so confident as that mid player either. So I will give him a way out. Wonderful. Looks like he's going to be having a hard time here. Imet does pop post himself one. It could very well have been two. And yeah, wonderful eventually winning out that uh, duel with Nork. But this round has fallen into the Apex Realm. Seven on route. Wonderful. Already getting hunted down. Stiko applying pressure. Wonderful. Forward. Stiko comfortable. And he'll bring that through for the next. Nork gets a special treat. This is, uh, it's definitely uninspiring from Na'Vi. Yeah, and that was most of the counter strike we've seen from Apex. The thing that is inspiring about them is the fact that they never really give up and they grind their way back into games. So uh, again, I come into another series, I think they should be outgunned, they should be outstratted. And right now that doesn't appear to be the case whatsoever. And this is without the need for Sassanito finding the moves. It was Jacob early, Nork showing up with some impact and them just getting it done as a team. So I have to tip my hat to Apex. Can't help but feel that round may have felt different if Wonderful hit that shot onto Sassanito when he first revealed the AWP on cave side. But yeah, picked apart once again. It's wonderful, tested on mid. Seco cut down. Shadow spotted of the second. Jacob backing away. He's not shy. He's definitely not shy. And uh, Jacob was not expecting that. That's a very audacious reclear from the AWPer. So high impact from wonderful, 14 frags. He is at the top of the scoreboard in the server. So there's no doubt he's present. And yeah, Sense feels his wrath as well. Hamstrung by an AWP shot to the thigh. Be dead in a moment. Should be. JL does just about get it across the lines. That's an Ito in a 1v5. And it's a clean one to end. Okay, Na'Vi, they dust themselves off. They stand back up and they've got five rounds to work with as we swap sides. We'll be right back.
First half in the books. It started well for Na'Vi. You can see from Jay, yeah, that was the pistol. He was feeling good about that one. But uh, Apex, they're the ones that have had a whole lot more to celebrate in that first half. Their T side to a blazing seven rounds. And Na'Vi with just a recovery of sorts, five to boast. As they swap sides, they're now taking to the attack. Our machine got sponge with me. We're heading on into the second half of this one. We had our doubts of Apex. And it seems that Na'Vi have been unable to match their pace so far. Oh, Apex love these like 4-1 type of pistol splits where Steeko anchors one side of the map and the other four look for a fight. I'm always impressed when you can win a CT pistol. Glock's just so scary. But the dual Berettas is a good way to even things out. And what about uh, two pairs in cave? Oh, Nork and Sassanito ready to lock bullets. everything down. And they might have company of three. They're going to swing cave from either side. Wonderful. And Imer to clear this together. And that might lull them in. Let's see what you've got, Nork. One would be fantastic. Two would be a dream. None. Maybe not optimal as it's up to Zatsanito who gets nothing done. A single P250 rumbles their double cave setup. Isn't Navi lucky they found a single oh, clone? Yikes. <laughs> well, it's fine. It should be fine. But uh, yeah, a bit of a fumble. It's just wonderful. Continuing where he left off. 18 frags and counting. Navi really grateful to have found another superstar in the making. It's good to see he came to play Counter-Strike. Yeah. Everything else seeming somewhat uninspired from Na'Vi. Again on Ancient. I thought after yesterday they copped the donking that uh, they would have gone and, you know, revised some of their Ancient Util because that was lacking as Steeko is lacking teammates in this one-on-four turn one-on-three scenario. Go on. I mean... You can't win the round. No, but, but it's nice. It's nice to see him looking very, very sharp today. But just present his bottom to JL. But there we have it, Na'Vi getting themselves up to six. A good pistol and thankful for Wonderful. So that's both With 146 uh, ADR is Wonderful so far. <sighs> Damn. And for the majority of it, yeah, we're wielding an orb. That is impressive to be so fly on the ADR. Charts. When you think about it, the rounds where he was playing from Donut with there to be mid and getting multi-kills was some of the only gun rounds that felt like Na'Vi was yeah. actually converting. But uh, Apex going to try their hand at a force buy. We've been seeing them go for a lot of eco. So uh, seeing them go for a force buy now, We'll see if they're able to pull this one off. Steeker up towards Tree. Has Jacob for support. What's Nork the call from in. Alexi? Yeah, and, and, and this is where I was just starting to get a little bit worried because the bomb on the back a bit, now leering in towards main. I don't mind if they go for a look, right? It looks, it looks all right. Have a little bit of a gander. See if you can get a tree boost of your own going, apply some pressure. But if they fully commit, they might lose everything because there's essentially three players here from Apex with the fast rotation of Nork. Yeah, and the angle is brilliant, because now the distraction's there, and Jacob, oh, he would have loved a second. Some significant damage, and it's Nork's Deagle. Good for the one. Wonderful, not shy. He's doing everything for the boys Yeah, right screw now. it, I'll do it myself. Yeah, really, really. I mean, 20 and 7 and 2 to save them from a red face. It could have very well spiraled if it wasn't for Wonderful going wide on that. And he does post what should be a round-defining frag. Satsunito has a look. Warning shot fired out by one. JL should have him. JL should have him. JL has him. Not the weapon for the job. He'll be running around with that scout. Maybe not for much longer either because JL's still trying to hunt. He's just gone back around B to cut him off at the pass. Wonderful might come through your elbow. Emma on the flank as well. You know he can't be towards B. Emma, okay, just getting out of the bomb radius, I suppose. It was Tetris and Wonderful finds him. He's third in the round, so Wonderful, exactly that. Yeah, I mean, truly uh, a stunning frag total for so early into this game. 14 rounds deep, 21 frags total. Now it'll be Apex onto a bit more of an eco. You can see Nork has invested with a 5-7, a Deagle in the hands of Steeko. Jacob has opted for the same. Um, USPs for the likes of Sassanito and Sense. And these are supposed to, you know, just kind of walks in the park, but why is it even at the professional level, these economical rounds, you know, we saw C9 losing one earlier today. 
these economicals can still f slip away from professional Counter-Strike players. Yeah, I, I think in scenarios, especially when everybody's aim is at such a, a, a big ceiling, if you pick a corner and the deagle rips off your head and then the response isn't immediate or very good from the team who's just down a man, even with the weapon advantage, and then there's like a pounce, you get out-rotated and those USPs are there, not when you're expecting them, uh, things can fall apart quite quickly. So it's going to come down to that opening exchange because this one clearly isn't a pop through a flash and swarm. But this one should be handled, right? They kind of baited them in. So Apex thinking they're going to be a little bit more susceptible in that moment. But Na'Vi were the ones that drew them into a little crossfire that they had over towards middle and yeah. will grab their eighth. But I, I do find that, you know, you know, one save rifle and a deagle and the deagle gets a kill. Now you have another rifle in the mix. It can get very dicey. But we get into the first rifle round. That one, half two, Nork, AWP. What's Na'Vi's approach? Red Smoke lobbed out for Wonderful. Looks like they want to harass middle with some HEs, but Apex will not oblige. They're not playing heavy middle, and this could work out quite nicely. The Util really just uh, not hitting its mark today. A bit wonky. Yeah, which is telling. Not posting up at the big box. He'll have some company. Posted for it. This is his first opportunity. He won't get many more of those so comfortably. Because now the mollies are coming. Fires off a shot, connecting nicely. The mollies burning them. A massacre. Look at the damage. Alexi lucky to get away with his life. Steko's incendiary, in combination with an AWP tag, has given them the first blood. Oh, it drew a massive rotation. Apex definitely got shifting. But JL didn't take any room. He's still just been babysitting outside the B doors. So unawares of what may have been available and now resetting her apex. They felt the pressure. They held them at the door. They reset completely. Na'Vi used a lot of utility to try and make that possible. They're really only left with HGs, two smokes, and a molly. And down a player with the walking wounded of Alexi. Red smoke. They look like they want to go into an attempted A split. Have to get past... Stiko in Donut first. Oh my goodness. Where did his health just go? What hell of a name from JL. Donut clear. Wonderful. Again gets away from that Nork Orb. I'm getting punched. Alexi gets it down and they have managed to break into this site now. Despite the earlier damage dealt, Jacob. Spamming through. Temple coming in from Sense. Wonderful. Hitting shots. Nails the head. Controls the spray into sense. And despite their low HP, that should be enough to ward off the potential retake. Nork and Satanito not interested in this, I would imagine. And no kit. So they weren't investing into in this round of play. Wonderful may go down to the orb. Will. But Nork, you're locked. You're dead. You're losing that AWP Ooh. almost between the legs as Satanito, where we usually find him on the flank. No yeah. impact in a round like this. No, and one of the observations you were making last time we were casting Apex was yesterday was about that uh, the double lurks. Not a, not a map we're going to be seeing much of it here on Ancient. No, and, then, and I think you know we're going to move into Anubis next, and, and it's a good seesaw map as well, so it's always possible for them to be able to try and pip those gaps. He meant to do that. I can't believe how much damage that nade did. It landed on top of his body. I think it got stuck between the Kevlar and his flesh. But 97, yeah, that's mad. I don't understand. JL. With a strong throw, strong arm on him. They've got mid just like that. Lovely. Yeah. In the absence of utility, they're up. And Satsunito is out. Escorted out of cave by Imer with a quick jump up. But I like the change to do it knowing that they're going to be on a more compromised buy in a round like this, understanding that, hey, we don't have to go up against full rifles and full utility. So we can exploit middle, we can show the hand and go, hey, look, we can still do this if we'd like. It's something that Apex can't think isn't a possibility. Doing it against it the pistols makes their life an awful lot easier. Yeah, it really hinges on whether or not uh, Na'Vi do their investigations. You've smoked off red, you've got the bomb mid-side. JL probably going to poke his... Uh, poke his nose into the B site to see what it looks like. And there's Steko, gone. Does that perhaps encourage them to overcook it into the B site? JL, nice find, gets Jacob as well on the jiggle. There's Nork's Deke, so already they know there's multiple bodies. That's not Nork, so yeah, they pieced it together. A site's open, and we will see a Na'Vi 10th. So they have really started strong on this T side. Yeah, looking much better. 
It's going to be uh, five consecutive, six straight if you include the last round of the first half. And double digits confirmed. So 10 on the board for Na'Vi in about 30 or so seconds time. Nork's playing, hiding in plain sight, and uh, Emma will be able to remove that. So Blade should be must, much happier with proceedings now that they've flipped on over and getting to dictate a little bit more of the pace. This one almost got out of control. Sassanito able to almost get his crosshair in the right place. Emma finding that first incision against the saved rifle. And Jail doing the rest of the dirty work. And as you mentioned, that information flowing, allowing Na'Vi to get out of harm's way. This time around, there will be a diffuse kit. So there's just going to be one ball on scent. We'll see if that comes into play if they lose the site early. Cave smoke, as well as the heaven smoke, and Apex not contesting for middle. Flash and go. Oh, Set up that's a lot of damage on the nade. Nice for regression, Alexi. Good knee jug reaction. He mustn't have seen anything. Nope, not he just all. copped a nade. The smoke was dispersing. Oh, scent. Yeah, he's going to get both here. Alexi throws a nade on him, and it sends with the double kill. Should be trapped, should go down, does so. Couldn't get away for the reload, just hunted down by bit. It's unfortunate exchanges for both teams. Emma up and over through middle. Smoke, flashes, Molly remaining. Stiko's somewhat committed. I don't think he's getting out of cave anytime soon. What? Maybe he is. What a brilliant frag for Stiko to post. That's... Gonna really tip the scales against Na'Vi. A big one for Stiko to find. What's Apex. the A anchor? Does that lull you into A? It's a good question. Nork does have their rotation on lock. There's no smoke for red. It's a bit of a risk. They will continue to walk into the lion's den. Might catch him in transition. He's backing away. Doesn't tame the spray. Wonderful posted. Bit has to clear. Presents his back to Stiko. High impact round from the cave player. Oh. It's Stiko. Responsible for the double kill that leads to Apex's first CT round. Okay, well, yeah, you put a full stop on that one, didn't you? Their first CT round. Let's see if they can convert this into two in a row. Sense with the aggression down the ramp, so you can see that they were always opting for that pincer with the cave push. Also clamping down from ramp. Great job from Sense with the double. Ah! Emma, not looking uh, very happy. Not looking very happy at all. And yeah, he did have a bit of a miserable first half, but. Everything can be forgotten here in the second. As a second tactical timeout has been called. Blade on the mic. Same for Mithra on the other side. Both teams operating with full buys. Wonderful. Could have bought an AWP. Still has 5.9 remaining in the bank balance, but is with the AK. So that's going to be telling with what type of round we're about to see. And he's great on the rifles as well. Oh, yeah. Yeah, gone are the days. <laughs> gone are the days where you could get away with being an AWP who couldn't use a rifle. We did have them. They, those days existed. Oh, yeah, for yeah. sure. This time they look like they will contest for middle. Double mollies. In there. See if he can put those frustrations into anything aggressive and successful. Nope, Jacob, he's just going to sour the mood further for him. And a bit of a head to head. They've used four smokes just to try and get this mid control. Whoa. They used two to extinguish the mid mollies, one towards donut, one towards red to deny vision. And they didn't get the opening pick, but they got the space. Oh, this is good information for Wonderful. He's hearing this. Should be communicating that somebody's jump spotting red. Jail can swing that with him. Try and get him a bit flustered, and then Wonderful might capitalize, but no. I'm not to swing it just yet. Oh, bombs pin doors. Real opportunity for Sandy. Oh, bit just punishes by virtue of his patience. Alexi goes walking into Stiko. Ayanka still goes through, he's planted. JL pays oh. a heavy price for the frag onto Tatsunito. Bomb coming up ramp. Bit, that's his opportunity. Goes a right. Bomb plant may not be a guarantee. He actually chooses to fake it out to punish. Jacob going wide. A big frag from Bit to post. You can play around this smoke. Maybe even try and slip. Oh, no, oh. it didn't get towards short. Peeks into Nork's orb, hits the shot as he should, and JL in a dire straight. What are you supposed to do here? He can spam. Or oh, he can walk. Stika caught out from behind. It could have been a clean one tap. Made it awkward for Nork instead. Yeah, a labored spray it leads to a little bit too much time invested on the first. Yeah, and uh, just the, the rifles for Na'Vi, right? You've seen the misutility, the proficiency in the aim. It just doesn't look like it's on point. The individuals struggling to get out of 
first gear at the moment. A lot of the impact really has come through wonderful. You don't want to keep saying his name, but it's his multi-kills. And yeah, he gets that cleanly. He might be able to reposition the crosshair to look for the second fight. Not the end of the world, as they still have a one-round lead and are able to get another bite. With only one player staying alive, they know that Apex's finances are on the brink as well. Elbow smoke lands. They meant to deny the heaven jump up. It's going to be a three-man B starter. Sassanito with a lot of info. So, look, he hasn't... Oh, uh, maybe an accidental little mouse wheel there. But, ah, uh, Emma is about to punch his desk. Monitor. Uh, yeah, some... Okay, there you go. That's what you needed. Opponent, yeah. Nails the shot. Look how far forward JL is. And look how ready Nork was. Takes him off of the site. So that was the most forward member of the squad. Now out of the round. Wonderful bit. And MS is the dream team. Was the dream team. Stiko, comfortable. Apex. Absolutely sitting pretty as they're going to be tying this game up. They, ever since they got that round, they haven't really... Let up. And they've had to do it the hard way. This is going to be three consecutive rifle rounds. I mean, this is Na'Vi fully gunned, AKs, all the U2, everything they'd hoped for. And even with Ima catching Sassanito, trying to get Cheeky, who is also trying to find his groove in the game, they, they couldn't get away with it. They used that Lurk Smoke front sight. They crept up in. You were talking about the amount of space they had. That's what that facilitates if a team isn't playing for the B lane press. And now with the bomb down, 38 seconds left on the clock, Ima. Everybody's looking at you, but what can you do? I mean, he knows Nork is likely going to be holding them in some capacity. And yes, that's all that happens is that the bullets land, the orb shot hits, Sense will finish it off, and we are all tied up. Still uh, not pretty for Na'Vi. After those gun rounds, as you discussed, they're not going to be able to put the best foot forward into round 21. No, well, there's enough money if you, know, you wanted to get an AK or two, and oh, that's actually what they're appearing to do. So there will be some form of investment. I just worry how late is the plan out of spawn with the purchases still dribbling in. So two AKs, a Galil, some upgraded pistols, some YouTube to try and facilitate what looks like just a bailout call. Hey, it's not working middle. We're having a hard time B. Let's just try and execute in towards this A site. And if they were to go now, they might be able to capitalize on the three B defenders of Apex on a longer rotation. Stiko from Donut will have the support of Jacob. He's just blocked at the perfect time. Couldn't be a better time, Molly, because look at the smokes. They're just landing. This will buy the time for that rotation to start hedging over. And Jacob, he might be able to smoke him off. Oh, gray screen. Oh, just in time. They're going through. Yeah, pre aimed by Stiko. The anchor delivers for Apex, and it's an absolute disaster for the boys of Na'Vi. You gave it a good shake of the stick. You had a game plan, but disrupted by a solid timing from Stiko. And this is where information in Counter-Strike plays a massive role because the B defenders are saying, nothing B lane, we're not hearing any steps. They're not spamming. There's been no utility thrown whatsoever. Right? It's just too quiet. Yeah. And then as an anchor player, you get your back up. You go, well, I, I need to defend right now to facilitate my teammates to rotate in. And as mentioned, a perfectly placed incendiary. The follow-up smoke, which was the cavalry arriving through the gray screen, and then Stiko even gets to profit. Yeah, Stiko's having a fantastic map. 19 frags. He's right there alongside Jacob at the top of the tables bar. Wonderful. Uh, it's great to see Stiko, who can have, you know, high, high highs and low lows. Last time out, Alex, you know what that means. Only chance that Blade will get, unless taken by Apex going forward to try and course correct some of these missed calls, misplays, or maybe potential gaps that they could isolate. And yeah, Alexi with a shake of the head. This is the thing I'm talking, you know, it's a late buy out of spawn. They're trying to cobble the call together. Maybe all the information doesn't get through because we're obviously going to have a few issues with the English in this squadron, even though Bit's taken lessons. And I'm not putting it on here. It's just, you know, it, some people talk a bit fast. Yeah, no, for real. Been told that once or twice. Yeah, there's a difference between, between being able to, you know, speak some English, understand some English, and being able to understand it in the heat of a Counter-Strike game where people are not slowing down and just trying to get that information relayed as fast as possible. Look at this setup straight away, Stiko and Jacob and 3B. They don't care about A. They know because they shut it down so convincingly, it's unlikely Na'Vi want to return there immediately. Stiko slips over to acknowledge the potential. Now oh, you can see there the update. Team Spirit have made it to the Spodek. 2-0 on the B stream. And this is why I thought today that Na'Vi would have their way with Apex. Big one.
That's a big opening. If it's all wonderful, that's okay. You'll take the rounds. <laughs> I mean, it does seem to be a bit very in right now, having a teenager carrying <laughs> to, a, to the arena. Wonderful doesn't make as much noise as a donk. Not yet, no. He's more soft-spoken, but uh, he lets his uh, gameplay do the talking. Now, if they execute B, they'd be well-timed. Uh, Nork's got impact, and Satsunito's really hard-pressed to find impact. He can't finish off the job onto Wonderful. A double from him, missed shot from Nork. This looks great for Na'Vi. Off the back of a timeout. Into the B side now. Caught by... Oh, yeah. Imez, Galil, Jacob. Nothing here for him here. A two versus five. Hiding out in the smoke. All five members of Na'Vi have got the site on lock. See if you can punish. Take away as many rifles as you can. Wow, just like that, Jacob will take two away. Stiko not interested. Yeah, off on an island over towards T-Spawn to hold on to his weapon of choice. You can see the residual cash if we're taking a look at the CT finances just down here. With the loss bonus where it's going to be at, they're going to be getting themselves, well, bottom of the barrel, 1,400. So Stiko holding on to this can drop. Nork will be able to buy. Jacob will be able to buy. There will be enough rifles to go around. Tie things up 11-11. I should have used an arrow for that, everybody. I'm really sorry. This would have looked nicer if I'd done that. Uh, it would have much nicer. Wow, we really haven't explored all of the... Uh... No, I want to use it more like on the map base, mm. right? So at the moment, I've just been using it for more HUD elements. But we also haven't felt like we've had too many big technical timeouts where we could maybe discuss, you know, what openings we're seeing teams going for, what that allows. You should save. Uh, you should save. Yeah, you should save. Definitely the right call. So here we go. Business end. An opportunity. Navi, you win this. You break the bank of Apex. Only 1,900 loss. And you can close things down 13 to 11. It's going. An extinguish and a push. Ime on the warpath. Takes full mid control. Nork. Holding the red push for now. Actually, yeah, trying to catch them off guard with the nade. It's beautiful. Alexi caught out as Nork delivers a high impact kill in a high octane round. There's one back. Satsunito having a nightmare towards that Jaguar. They split A. They still have some issues. You have Nork's OWP over towards spawn. Can help Stika, who feels like he will be hard cleared, but might be good for one because it's the AWP alongside of Bit. Yeah, it didn't obviously. He just looked away. He's just looked away again. Bit trying to bait it with the molly. Throws it out. Knife foul. Dead man. Stiko continues to rack him up on the A defense. Himmer sprays down the AWP up. The A site open. Bam, bomb plant in. Again, wonderful. Gets it done. I'll have nothing if they go for this round and lose these two rifles. We have a 1900 loss next. That's to defend the game. Take it to overtime. They're giving it a look in. Is this a. Bit too much. An overstep of the mark from Jacob as he goes down. Sense will back away to try and save. Yeah, that should have been another round where once they had lost the side, they had the number disadvantage. Another call of you should save. And it sucks because, hey, you're, you're giving away round 12. You're allowing Na'Vi to secure overtime. But still now, as mentioned, the finances aren't going to be there for a bite. And this is how it started. Great work from Nork. Taking matters into his own hands. Alexi turns around. He sees the smoke dissipate in front of his eyes. A huge trade from Wonderful. It's really just been wonderful having consistent impact throughout this game to keep Na'Vi in it, and now they're in the position to close. Apex have the save rifle on Sense. There's enough for a buy on Stiko and Sassanito. Jacob and Nork, they'll be begging for some form of scraps. Maybe an MP9 could be dropped. Sassanito not being able to find his way in this game so far, but Never too late. If you can get an impactful kill or two on this final round, take us to OT. Redemption's still there. 21 for Jacob, 20 for Stiko, 17 for Nork. As the buys are starting to come together. Sensor's dropped an M4 and has opted in with an SMG. Sassanito rocking an MP9 as well. So the heavy hitters, at least the, the fragging department, of Apex will all have rifles. Apex's map pick and overtime is up for debate. Can Na'Vi take it away from them? This round determines it all. Emma starting his mid campaign again. Jacob fails to jump, force forward. This is getting uncomfortable for Jacob already. A bit of an all or nothing. Things will calm down for a moment. No one applying too much pressure. That's Anito. 
in combination with that smoke, have managed to kind of dictate that heaven is theirs. Jacob has to give up middle and support A because there's just a CT smoke that's deployed, a couple of flashes, now mollies. A lot of pressure that's even drawn the rotation of sense. And look at the util left for the CTs. Now Apex have a flash and a decoy to their name, and we have a minute and 10 on the clock. This could go anywhere, but it does seem like it's pretty sure wonderful direct saw hit. the shadow, the temple shadow. It's up to Alexi here. If he can find Steko, which he has, then that A site is already falling apart. They may overlook Jacob in the donut position. Yeah. They oh! have, and he hasn't found anything. It looks good for Na'Vi, and quite the opposite for Apex. I mean, they were making no secret of that A hit, just slowly, methodically coming for you. Winning their duels, and it looks like they've won the map. Just the two of them, Nork and Satsunito. Last of four, <laughs> miraculously on it, finding Ime on that MV9, covered by JL. And Na'Vi, they will take the first of the series, 13 to 11. They had both pistols, Chad, Apex, some good gun rounds, but Na'Vi, they managed to convert. Yeah, this is with uh, some of the heavy hitters on Na'Vi, not getting out of first gear, missed utility, star players like Ima missing within the first half of play, and they still pick up the map win in an elimination series. They got the hard work done on Apex's choice. We have Anubis coming up next. If Na'Vi can close this, they can go and look at some of their problems before they head into their matches tomorrow. then what's the roulette with the boys you got six chips in front of you and you're going to place the amount of chips is the number of roster changes that team will make by the end of the year navi how many roster changes we make in here another tough one go one from some pious one from magus two from snappy Ooh, a late edition one yeah from stop following the rest of us man <laughs> one goes one again one 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 each Zero. Zero. Zero, zero. 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 The whole team agrees. Yeah. yeah. I don't think the Navi is a team that likes to change players often. It's probably circumstances last uh, seasons. So I think they will try to keep up with the roster and practice as much as possible. Yeah, I mean, I think it kind of depends on if Simple want to come back or not. Valid. One of the risk factors is obviously you have Simple lurking in the background. Simple comes back, man. He can't say no. It's like, that, that's the goat. Yeah, that's the goat. <laughs> you gotta make room for the goat. I don't know if they want him back, but if they, like, obviously he has a huge brand. If he actually gets that hunger back, I would assume they would want him back. And that's a risk of changing the lineup. And I'm not even saying it's wonderful because he's also good with rivals. Right. It's pretty hard to predict this roster, I would say, but um, they have been playing really well recently. Navi is an organization who wants to win tournaments, I believe. I mean, they want to be among the best of the best. And I see a world where if someone is not performing for some time, that they will make one change or like five changes. Yeah. Five <laughs> yeah. That's my prediction. <laughs> it won't be in between. Their coach are pro is co probably safe, so, but I think there's a high likelihood of two roster changes. Also, I heard some rumors about BIT. I don't know if it's even true. I think BIT will go uh, at some point to Grand Ninja. Like, there was just on Reddit or something so like i nothing specific but i think there's a high likelihood something will change nice okay well this has been roster roulette The full 24 rounds required to separate these two squads, and who can blame them in this elimination series? But ultimately, Apex having their map pick swept from under their nose. Navi standing tall, not standing perfectly, if we're being honest, gentlemen, because uh, there were some shaky moments, even though Navi managed to restore, regain, and close this map out. Yeah, and Honestly, it was looking a little scary for Na'Vi, even for a little bit. Uh, Apex obviously having some sort of game plan to pick this map over a map, say, like Inferno, for example. So honestly, I was getting a little bit scared for Apex on the map pick, and then they started climbing 
up, getting some rounds from Navi. Navi looking a little bit sketchy there for a little bit, but then, you know, Navi coming out on top in the end. So obviously, <laughs> Navi's <laughs> supposed to be winning, so. Yeah, but I don't think actually they're going to be too bothered by playing close, right? All that matters right now is just getting your opponent's pick and just winning it is a win in itself. And I think they're going to go out happy there and be like, now we don't have that pressure on us, we can actually yeah. go lose our own map and actually still have a, a feeling going into the third one. Yeah, well, they can <laughs> breathe a sigh of relief. I hope they're not attacking yeah, it right? like that. But uh, yeah, let's go back to the beginning uh, of this map because mm. obviously we were focusing a lot of attention on Stiko. He's been one of the higher performers uh, for the side of Apex. So what did you uh, notice about him? Yeah, I think week? it's just a smart little play here because we realize Spit is in that red room area. Uh, it's just the default coming in from, from the side of the CTs. And then they nade that smoke, and then all of a sudden, when Bits gets that kill in the right-hand corner, Stuko realizes, oh, that's the A player, that's my timing to go. He pushes out, takes a really deep position, manages to completely catch a bit off card, and it just gives the round. I think it's just a smart little thing to show. Aim isn't always the solution. Like, if you can be smart about certain things in the crucial moments, you can still provide a lot of value. I mean, yeah, also, like, talking about being smart, I mean... I have a round I want to talk about. Um, oh man, it was it was round nine basically, and I was gonna frame it in like one point of view of like, mm. oh, like this is something that Navi is doing maybe not so great, and then it's like, oh well, they did this and it actually was working out, and then it wasn't, and then it was again. It's like, what, what's actually going on? So if we could bring this up, so basically what happened was we lost one of Navi's players early on in the round, and in this situation, it's like, okay, you have a four versus five left, but you're split. You have one towards B, one towards Cave, one towards Donut, and five just came down this way. So. Bit was in A site for a little bit, but then they're finally grouping up and they're deciding, okay, we're going to do something together. So what they do is they start actually grouping up together and we're going to see them doing a mid fight. And it's and a, a typical nice move in the middle of the round when you kind of don't know what to do, like gather, as you say, it's just a really nice move. Yeah, so we're seeing Alexi's moving over to Red Room. We're going to see him grouping up with Wonderful and Bit. They're going to do a mid fight together and they're going to re-clear. And it's like, Maybe a little bit too late in the round. I would have expected it 20 or 30 seconds earlier, but then I'm happy they do it. And then this amazing timing happened where Bit gets Jacob, and then there's a huge team fight going on, and you're thinking, okay, Navi made a perfect rotation, a perfect read. They got it into a three versus two, and now it's just like, wh what's going on? So Navi's getting picked in the back because Apex is spreadered, uh, spread around the map and scattered. And this is like something that we've seen from Apex mm -hmm. the whole series, the whole time that they've been in this event, is that it's like one guy A, one guy B, one guy middle, they're spread up all over the place. But now there's 10 seconds left and Stiko has to go back for the bomb. And now it's Alexi B who's catching both of them with eight seconds left, trying to run back to A site. So it's just like, between both teams, it's just like back and forth, back and forth, everyone's scattered, everyone's doing their own thing. I mean, there's also two crucial timings. The first is the Jacob one, but Alexi just gets fried by the corner and into that, like, uh, bathroom or whatever you guys call it in, in English. Uh, copy. Place. Yeah, copy. Yeah, sure. And uh, if he gets spotted, like, from the elbow down there, he's lost around, obviously, two yeah. versus one. But he just gets in there, gets the timing, and I would actually argue the last guy could have potentially had the AK out to trade, but it's so easy to say from outside. I yeah, love also. that you chose that round because I think it just yep. epitomizes kind of the chaos that was going down throughout this whole game. But at least there was one shining, consistent force. It was wonderful. Wonderful showing up pretty well uh, on this first map. And it's somebody that we've been looking at as uh, needing to be a little bit more consistent, particularly when, you know, he's starting in for simple of all orpers. We need him to be doing work. Right. And I would say, like, one of the main things about it as well is that it's not even him opping that's been impressing me. It's he's been with the rifle getting a lot of, like, three kill and four kill rounds. And really turning the tides, and we saw it yesterday as well, where he had that big, you know, four, one versus four against Spear, which, you know, gave Navi some life. But over here, we're seeing him picking up one of the few op shots that he's actually had today. Yesterday, he wasn't really on point with his op. He's been with his rifle, and today, I would say, even now, he's still with the rifle a lot. And I think people maybe underestimate how good he was in Sprout. I think uh, people talked about Dunk a lot, but this guy was literally very close to the same statistics in the same type of level. So I think it just shows a lot what he brings to the table also in this team. There's not too many other star players on paper that is performing to the same level. I'm was obviously perceived as, okay, he's going to be the next big thing. And Jail getting in from big money from Apex as well. So there's all of a sudden we think about these two, but it's that new guy coming into it, the roster. He was on Team Spirit before, actually did really well, but 
I think he was too passive and inexperienced beforehand, and I think it's been really good for him to get down on a lower level, regain confidence, get into the likes of Blade. That's exactly what I was going to touch upon, Phil. Yeah. Kind of Wonderful's narrative arc, I guess. Oh, let's because go. Uh, he has been, I think, classically known as a bit more of a passive type of warper, but I don't think that's a criticism to him. I think it's being able to get that experience to, you know, trust your instinct, right? Become a little bit more proactive. And we totally saw that there. We saw 4 for 0 and opening jewels. How is he going to be a, fa a fairing, rather, coming onto Anubis, obviously, at Navi's home ground? I think he's going to do all right. I mean, uh, Anubis is a map where you can get a lot of value if he decides to op and if he decides to rifle. I mean, we saw Anubis was where he got the one versus four yesterday against Spirit. So, uh, I mean, this is Navi's map pick. This is their home ground. This is their probably best map or favorite map to play because of they're, they're picking it for a reason, right? So we're going to see a lot of value out of him. He can do whatever he wants to get value, um, moving his op around specifically, using it at A. I've seen him go really aggressive and like run through his teammates, Molly even, just to go for an early pick. I also think it's a good map to, to have a hybrid. Like He can both play the rifle, as you said, and also the AWP, because the map doesn't really allow AWPers to take that safe peek around. Often we see them, them yeah. starting either towards the A or like the middle area, but you often get smoked off or flashed away. So it can be really nice all of a sudden if you see on the demos, okay, these guys are like heavily using the utility, then we'd rather set you up with a rifle and do different stuff. Yeah. Well, if you guys aren't already, make sure you're checking out Face It Watch because you can rewind the action, you can use the kill cam feature, and you can also choose one of 10 player POVs to be watching from. So if we're coming into Anubis and you're on Face It Watch, who should the fans at home be watching through? Which perspective? Well, based on what we've seen, wonderful for Navi for sure. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I mean, if you want some some interesting lurks, I would go for the likes of Stiko. I think he has that. He isn't the flashiest player. I don't think he's going to go into a round and just 4 tap five people. That's not really his thing, right? But I think you're going to be looking at the small things in the middle rounds when all this action and stress is happening. He's going to be taking the right decision a lot of times. Well, potentially last chance saloon for Apex. We've got Na'Vi's pick of Anubis waiting after the break. Place there, simple, just jumping casually into the site. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. Don't know how it's come to this I don't know how I could resist I took a vow to never sin But I saw the darkness from within
wonderful. I've followed actually quite a lot for the past year since we were kind of close in level uh, in the tier two, tier three when I was playing in Australia's talent. And I was always surprised in terms of the numbers that he were putting up consistently every single match. And now watching him play versus uh, tier one teams, it's quite impressive his explosiveness and how quick he is uh, with the AWP. I, I don't like to compare players because I, I don't like the, to bring their value down or up in that way, but I think he is, reminds me a lot of Monesi. Maybe a little bit more uh, passive in, in this way, but maybe he was not necessarily in the Tier 1 radar, but he was destroying teams in Tier 2 and 3, so I think that he's a really great player, he's very smart. I think for wonderful he had the hard task. You come to Navi, and not only you come to Navi as AVP, but you come to Navi and you switch simple. I think community-wise, there's a lot of pressure on him, but I think he ended it pretty well so far. Like uh, Navi is performing, Guy is also performing, so he definitely did a good job. I feel like Wonderful is a really different type of player. He's very eager to learn. I feel like that's the best he can do right now with his experience. And he's killing it on the server. He's our best man right now. He's been playing good, winning clutches, getting entries. I just want to see what he can do in a few years because he's been improving at a rapid pace. There's been for sure been a shift in his mindset since joining. He was a little passive. He wants to be at one specific point and stay there, but now he wants to take initiative. He wants, I go here, I want to kill them here. And uh, I want to do it this way. And he just goes and does his thing. And I feel like he's been working really well for us. And you can see the fire and drive in his, in his moves. He's so confident. I just love to see him play. And I'm just excited to see where Navi continues taking him. I think that they're playing really good now and it's a, it's a very exciting project for me personally. All right then, ladies and gentlemen, we return and we're ready for map two. Anubis is on the menu. Ancient just about going the way of Na'Vi. It's all been broken down by that analyst desk. And now we prepare ourselves for battle once more. It's the lower bracket. It's do or die. That Spodex spot in that lower final. It's one hell of a deep run required if you want to get yourself into the Spodex. Yeah, one of the troubles of this format, you drop to the lower bracket, you have to run a gauntlet. Three best of threes consecutively to snatch the final spot per group for a spot in the Spodex. Yeah. A lot of games ahead of Na'Vi after their loss to Spirit, who have now qualified the first team locked in for the IEM Katowice playoffs of 2024. We're about to find out who the first team eliminated. Gosh, it's come quickly. But yeah, that's this cutthroat group stage, an elimination match. Na'Vi already won up. So it is all on Apex. Understandably so, the odds heavily favoring Na'Vi. I think they're five in a row on this map at the moment, and they took down Spirit on their home turf yesterday. So should be feeling confident. I don't expect to see as much missed utility. Yeah, I've been spotted out. There we go, in there. He was stubborn about that, wanted the info on the B presence. And I think Wonderful's getting a lot of pressure applied to him. It's Glocks closing that gap. They have got a very potent B set up here. Seems like they're ready. Four CTs. Wonderful. Needs to track. Satsunito the first. Sat down. Oh, and Jacob doubles up. Bit gets nothing done with the Julies. Uncomfortable for him, eh? Very, very uncomfortable. Pop shots. Stiko puts the Julbarettas to good use. And it looks like Apex is going to get the first pistol of this series. Unless, yeah, hang on, JL, he did just get the one. Mythic will be happy with that. So that's a strong start and on a strong side as well. With this being Na'Vi's pick, Apex opting to start on the T side and winning the T pistol. So everything aligning nicely. Yeah, seeing if they can set a bit of the tone in this one. I want to, uh, I'm going to have a quick look at the stats here for, as far as Apex's pistols are concerned. So, so far out of the uh, three maps they've played in the group stage, they've only won one pistol. Now we add that one to the list. Let's make it two. Uh, and I will add the Katowice play-in stats as well, because I'm pretty sure their pistol stats during that were not fantastic either. And while you're fiddling with filters, I'm going to let us know that a single flashback has been purchased. Bit, perhaps, going to be uh, setting them up for a reactive push. The T is going to be smoking deep in towards a main. Hoping to catch anyone with this flash push, but... Uh, it's all a bit of a silly game. You see Stiko, he's outside of a main. Could be punished by this. They are actually all rugs, so... Ooh, good dig! Holds his spray, controls it to two, and it's the rest of the squad ready to bodyguard that rifle. Now, look, uh, Apex with the play-in stats added in is much better. Yeah. Uh, they played a bunch, so it's 20 in total. 
they were one nine, <laughs> lost eleven. Right, so a forty-five percent win rate on the pistol. But well, all I've just added this and had a little bet boom was zero and eight as far as pistols were concerned. Damn. Yeah, didn't win a didn't single, win a single, single pistol. pistol. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that that is doing it on hard mode. Yeah, yeah that's that's miserable. Poor bet boom. I want to uh, go to the drawing board on the pistol scenario. I mean, this is also quite miserable. Three famas in pursuit of a full belt of util into our first gun round. Uh, looking like they want to harass mid with these Mac tens. At least they did. We held up bay by the smoke for now. Bit will deploy his Steco conveying that information. And Sasanito working up through the canal in towards Connector will also be stalled out for a moment's time. 3 1 1 split of the defenses as Wonderful has been called back for support. And that lightly peppered. The fight offered for Jacob. Takes extremely light flak damage from that HE. So mid pressure. Con pressure and now a main pressure. Going through the stages to get control. Steko, are you ready for the bench play? I think he uh, was a bit better. Still gets a nice opening for this defense. Smoked off on dark. Antonito delayed. Yeah, shallow one. So they're giving over control. Alexi likes to hold on to his for late B main, and that means he can target his pressure towards Con, but this time round. Lobbing in the smoke of their own, and it has thrust the bomb back towards A on the in-game leader sense. But there's three players here, well rotated from Na'Vi. Yeah, and bit, if he gets anything more, wow, it's a bonus. Still alive, bodyguarded by JL. Last two coming through mid. Nothing for Nork here, and it's a perfect round so far. Yeah, just the one casualty. Wonderful did go down, but uh, that's a dream start for Na'Vi into the gun rounds. It does feel like a bit of a gamble, though, right? The fact that they have three players so close towards A and only two on the B side. If Apex were to walk in and trade in towards B, that rotation would be ages away. Yeah, and it wasn't a particularly informed decision, was it? I didn't see any pushes B main or, like, uh, getting that info. Satanita was dark. You smoked it off. You kind of blocked yourself from getting info. This could be where the homework comes into yeah. play, right? So that's one of the things which is a little bit more difficult for us because you, you look at the prep work and we don't know what Na'Vi's game plan is. Oh, we think they do a lot of this. They like to do a lot of that. Aggressive this time towards B main, looking at A map behind their molly, and Jacob already applying pressure. So starting 3B again, Na'Vi, but they're under assault. Yeah, look at this pincer. It almost looks like a B split out of the gates, doesn't it? It certainly does, especially with the loss of Ime. He went looking for answers on Dark. Steko takes him down. Wonderful. Oh my lord, how's he got two there? No trade, he just stands from the glyph position, finds the frags. Apex walking very wonky. Look at Steko's health. The fact that they're already a man down, it does seem like they're going to recede out from the canal position. Now, as it stands, a bit just jiggling cameras passive. So there could be a world where they can isolate this duel. They're hoping for a push, but right now Na'Vi don't actually need to play for too much information. Over towards B, it's awfully quiet. Maybe they want to start pressuring in towards corner or checking out B long. 50 seconds and... We're trying to look for a gap is Sassanito. Didn't have a great map on Ancient, but that's a nice opener. Alexi down, one of the B defenders. And as we can see, it has started to open up a gap towards A. You have a bit floating, staying around the heavens, but they could waltz on in. Ooh, Sassanito. He's trying to get his util out. JL spotted him. Bomb looks like it's coming, B. Interestingly enough, yeah, they are walking into Wonderful's domain. Pua, precise headshot from Wonderful on his first peak out. Oh, stampeding loudly, retrieving the rifle. He's not expecting more. Oh, that's an oversight. Jail's still here. He should be fine. Nork, getting the first is great. Wonderful, completely forgot about it. But with 14 seconds left and a dink already found, it's not looking good for Nork. Trying to isolate, bit will pre-fire, and there you have a second for Na'Vi. All right, well, we have been discussing how Apex are usually very good at finding the gaps in the map, and they were able to manifest one there. But fortunate that the A pressure comes in Wonderful runs out, not aware of Nork after a fantastic round. The bodyguard of Alexi B from the back of the plat, and the third was beautifully precise. But the fact that JL didn't over rotate, hung around, was able to plug that gap, apply that pressure, and Navi will go two for two. As we do see an eco from Apex, just a deagle, a couple of Glocks. Just to play a bit of a milkman round here. Apex allow the util to get lobbed through. Hope that Nort can find a kill on the Deagle. We saw them on Ancient being able to get it done with one AK invested from Steco. This is a whole lot less. So for Na'Vi, 
Just keep as many alive as you can. Try to disallow that bomb plant. Get yourself up to three rounds on the CT side early. Do have two more matches coming your way here. I am Katowice for the second day of the group stage. On the mainstream, we're going to have FaZe versus Eternal Fire. I'm really excited for that one. Yeah, it should be a good game. Eternal Fire are playing some fantastic Counter-Strike. It'll be very interesting to see how they handle a team like FaZe, though. Ooh, yep, motor mouth. He spotted him, nades him, and smokes him. They might try and overwhelm him here. Oh, reload. That's a suboptimal play. Still gets away with murder. Beautiful from him. Almost baited them in with that. Yeah, you'll take that. A little confidence boost a three-piece in his first three kills so far on Anubis. But this is good. Navia looking much more comfortable. Yeah. It was uh, up Struggle Street without a paddle in some of the CT rounds on Ancient. We were highlighting missed utility and individuals not firing on all cylinders. This is somewhere where, uh, as I mentioned, I think they're five on the trot. With their most recent victory, even in a series loss, being against Spirit. This time, a bit of a different start. Not three players over towards B out the gates from Na'Vi. Just going to be Lexi and Imma. Go on, Jacob. Wow. That's a very aggressive Norwegian. Just charges and pillages bit from the mid side. JL there. He's investigating the potential for the Satsunito Tuck. Beautiful awareness there from JL. And he leaves woo, with his health. Only just. This wonderful AWP trained towards main and an aggressive look from him. Yeah, that's on a half-life. As soon as that smoke fades, well, anything could be possible. I think they've just... Okay, so they're going to play JL up close with Wonderful. He's spotting mid on the jiggle, can give the information. Then they've actually used Bogdan's Law, so JL does get the AWP. Was it still the one who refuted Bogdan's Law? Oh my god, he's here. We've got him here. Well, we know what we've got to he do. He might have to speak for his sins. I think he might. Explain yourself. How dare you disobey Bogdan? It's a, a law that's now, you know, still relevant six years on. Info play out B main. Emma has taken some space since. He's been able to get well and truly into the back lines. And that flash gives away the play. But it will be an A split. 30 seconds. Wonderful's got a lot on his plate if JL doesn't find anything here. And he doesn't. Sense takes down that low HP player. I know Wonderful must be here somewhere. He gave him the all. Yeah, and there he goes. Stiko goes wide for it. Nice play from him. He's managed to secure the round with that. One would assume. Alexi B doesn't, though. He's not so sure. That smoke limits his options. He's going to give it a nade. He's going to give it a swing. And no. Nork says no. Just about gets away with his life there. A dink came through. Kalashnikov better. So Apex should have this one in the bag. Mitha still looks stressed. They're in a one on three. Oh, now he perks back up. He maybe prayed too soon. She just gets scavenged, fountain clear, and <laughs> Sense will finish him off. <laughs> just as he's like convinced it's not happening. <laughs> then it's back actually, on. Actually, Whew. okay, they'll take that. They'll again, take off that. again. Man, Jacob just decided he was going to run mid there. You can see how easy it is to apply pressure through middle with those double mollies, right? The house molly, the doors molly. If you're willing to brave the use of the CTs throwing, that was an important fight from Nork. See him cop a dink for his troubles. But I think the most key kill was actually Steeko sweeping in main and dealing with Wonderful. If Wonderful stays alive, the rotation from the other teammates coming in, sandwiched in the sight or Apex. Jail caught up out of position. If I was Wonderful, I would have said, nah, I would have actually refuted Bogdan's law as well then. Maybe him and Steel could start a bit of a club. Sometimes it's acceptable, guys. It's a joke, all right? You know, we're just, just so everyone knows. We're only having a, a fun time. Not too much fun for these two teams, though, with so much at stake. Even Na'Vi wanting to close this two. You don't want to end up on that three. I avoid stressful games at Counter-Strike because they always seem to be stressful, don't they? Especially when Apex are involved. Everyone we've cast has been a roller coaster. Is there going to be similar volatility to this one? Javi's buy is already on the fence. Joe into an MP9. Famous out again, this time for Alexi. We're harassed middle still, it seems. Does Jacob. You know, being forced to... Whoa, no, committed to this. He's going to burn right down. 16 points of health. He really wanted to find that peak. So you can see out of spawn, Nork the Swede. The sniper has decided he's going to go hunting. Oh, and Emma having to dodge bullets. Look into the wall and hope they don't hit him. Tatanito as well. A quiet series from him so far. 
can often be the difference maker for Apex, especially on these T sides. An exchange of smoke grenades. You can see Stiko had thrown one out to try and force a reaction. It has. You can see that Bip's going deeper in towards the A site, so only really Imma here. Alexi joining JL mid side. Molotov to delay, 45 seconds and counting. Starting to get a bit time sensitive here. Jacob hoping for a little too much of an overextension from the Alexi. And it's actually Stiko that catches a bit looking. Whoa, Jacob tried to transfer. It's the end of Alexi. Nice work from Sense to Trade. Maintains a heavy advantage. Wonderful's orbs on A. Yeah, I mean, one is great from Wonderful. Does that Orbs going B plan? now. They have to go B. Rerouting. In there. Him, uh, his next decision is everything. If he can find Satsunito, then he can through, strike can't. in unison, find, find double more than one. Ooh, a tough one there. Couldn't keep the crosshair on him. But yeah, wonderful Zorb sends them into him. Be sight. Maybe he gets one. It's a different story. Two would have been huge. This was great from Stiko catching bits, re-aggression. They had to start playing for info, right? So they're setting up multiple little pushes. Bit on A main, the two clamping in on middle. The trade did come through and yeah, should be. You, you feel like uh, he should have been good for at least one. Him having a rough day at the office as well. Three of his four kills, I'm pretty sure, against the Eco Bash, so. Really could have made the difference, given Wonderful something to work with, but three staying alive. Apex will put their fourth on the board. Wonderful retains the AWP, will not be hunted from Sassanito. It was a little bit of pressure, but as mentioned, the buy from Na'Vi was already touch and go. And right now, it'll be going in the realms of an eco. Now, the thing is, you want to talk about this map. All right, where can we set up Wonderful to try and find some opening picks? We could go down to Connector. They haven't been thrown the Connector smoke. We have. Well, we could we could flash from middle, he could try and swing out. Nork has an AWP on the other side. You could maybe set yourself up for a one-on-one, -on -one, go close A main. He's actually going middle. Yeah, he's just gonna pick, uh, he's gonna get mollied behind him. Uh, oof. That looked very quick from Sense. Pre-fires the, or the AWPer down. And yeah, he's gonna make sure they can't retrieve that one. So good, good housekeeping. Awareness from Sense. Surprised to find the orb there. Well, clearly not with the pre fire. Jacob did get caught unawares there, and it's a messy spray that does result in one, but should be no problem. Should be no problem. JL's managed to go ring around the rosy over his hands <laughs> straight into North. Well, he was sitting in that smoke the whole time, so when the flash came through, he was already ahead of it. So that got very awkward as Alexi. Wrong bomb site. Local Waltz on in. Stiko dealing with any pushes. Sassanito already making one of his own. Constricting the map right now as five. Looking good for Apex. Denying that opening incision of Wonderful saved Orb. That was the biggest problem they had. As well now Alexi has more than a few. Spotted Jewel Red is up against the AK. Taps away. Does a whole lot of damage. Sassanito will get the kill and walk away with his life. Bank being built. Guys, listen, let's start mid. That's all we get. That's all we get. So at least a little look at what could come next. Yeah, J.O. felt uh, desperate on that swing. Didn't he scavenge a rifle in that moment? Yeah, resetting. That'd been the better decision, but regardless, it was essentially an eco round. No wonderful AWP. Ooh, another direct approach from Apex. I said, let's start mid. It's, I guess, mid passive. So 2-1-2. Two, two. Good damage on that HG. Well placed. Dale's here. Boxed. Lexi's got some options in front of him, and he doesn't find Steve Coach. Oh, Im, Im is going to be really unhappy. And he does look away. Tatsunito catches him through the smoke. Round done. Yeah, it has to be a save, and I'd start hunting if I'm Apex. As mentioned, a few of them already starting to build up a bit of cash. You should spring into action. Start taking some control of the rest of the map, shrink it down. Take this away from Na'Vi. Going to be most displeased, the B defenders there. 
Yeah, there's a lot of mollies on the side, man. Not a whole lot of room for Alexi to be able to move. And it came quickly. So I like it. Apex have been doing these defaults. They've been pressuring across the map, pressuring Connector, pressuring A main, putting an awful lot of pressure over towards middle and now more, you know, over towards B, explode in all five of the forces and subvert the expectation. Now V drop another six to three, three round gap. There's CT side Anubis, but this is already a one hell of a T run, four rounds consecutive. Throw the pistol in the second on top. Oh, my. Ooh, only just. And with the loss bonus, they should be able to drop rifles. You have nades on jail, he can drop one. You could say the same for Wonderful. Bit has to buy in you know, Molotovs and all the goodies. So probably he will not have to be the one dropping that silence down four. And you can see the flames laden on the side there. And ooh. Ah, the B site, man. Yeah, another uh, fan of the double face palm. Now, he knows that there's potential for pace, and Jacob, he's given it to them once more. He's happy to get himself so deep. He's actually continuing. Whoosh! JL, good for it, just drive by towards the double doors position. Yeah, does best if, it. if I'm Jacob, they're like, what's he doing? Yeah. What's he, what's he wide swinging that for? Didn't he know that we had all that pressure? Yes, oh. two, baby. The pressure keeps coming. Temple Smoke, Cameron Molly, and. Three towards A again from Navi. Sense he does like a risk, doesn't he? So wouldn't be too surprised if he even tried his luck through that temple smoke. Norks joined him though, so it does look like an A pincer. If they can find fit cleanly, which they have, just Steeko again. These little crouch peeks into A main. He's very well drilled on his pre aims. Flash catches him. No trade potential. Steeko has been run down. That's a great equalizer, and not quite. Still makes it a three v four. The late lurk of Sassanito. Yeah, wonderful. The sense does go down. So now it's a three on three, and it's getting worse for Apex. Despite Stiko's heroics, Navi have the advantage. In fact, they're in the site. This is very winnable. Nork with the orb and smoke of. This is possible for yeah. Apex. They're both going to maneuver towards the camp side. They know JL's coming main, so that's on a timer. Safe from the flash. They need it, though. That's the end of one. Sense has gone down. Missed shot from Nork, and it all falls into place for Navi. All right, nice. You can see that time, JL pivoting back with the flash, the HE, that combo working out perfectly. Yeah, well handled on that retake as well. And those pesky HEs, you know, that that's a very different round if there's no way to clear that 20 second timer. Oh, for sure. They come running through the gray screen, just hoping. Important one there from JL and aware for Sassanito's push. And there you have it, Emma coming through, smoke cleared. So much pressure surging onto the AWP, knowing he has to bolt up and JL happy with that one. High impact, high impact from JL. That was a triple kill round. We saw him start on Jacob, but yeah, he was part of that all the way through. Quite direct towards AMA for pressure, flashing him in. Stiko has surged into this, so trying to deal with Bit's utility early, force him to respect it, and he's already dropped his incendiary. So this battle over towards AMA continues, and it is a war of util between Connector and AMA, trying to drain them out. I think Wonderful called the bluff on that Lurk Smoke Long. There's a 3-2 again, and with a 3 being over towards A once more, that is a nice nade. Reaggress A. Need to be careful with this, don't they? Yeah. I mean, deep smoke, that's fine. You confirmed A is not the threat immediately. It does mean him once again on an island. Sassanito gets the better of him. That's a wide open bomb side. That feels like another apex round by virtue of that double from Sassanito. They definitely wanted to fight it, right? They smoked off B main. Wonderful steps over the orb. He gets deleted Ooh. just like that. Jacob on the strafe. Alexi doesn't even get a chance. And yeah, they finally put a round on the board, but apex responds back immediately. We'll call that seven. They've won out the half. Now there's a great possibility for that eighth. Doing some quick maths with the finances as they are hunting again. JL, if he saves, he can drop. Emil will be able to buy himself. Wonderful will be pretty close. Be a Famous or an MP9. It is going to be a rough final round to play for Na'Vi if they do not retain these rifles. It's found the path of least resistance. Does have to worry about that. Bomb blast, can't hide in plain sight oh, oh, oh. on the bomb site. And oh no. 
bit dead to send. The aim is just not there. All. The oh. aim is just not there. We, we had the same problem on Ancient, right? Just, just missing shots that they should be hitting. He's the head hunter. Yeah, really just struggling again. I'm not sure what's off with Navi today, yesterday. Sorry, yesterday. Last map. Wonderful. Had to continue to have a lot of impact. Long day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, hey. He's only got five kills so far. Look, the T side is where Navi are going to do their best work. They might not even. Oh, we get. Do we get a wonderful peek? We might. He's gone dark for the, one of the first times. Running through. Wide, just straight through the smoke. Gives it a look. Satanito's feeling the pressure. If you peek him, it's Flash. a warp. You're not ready for that. Oh, good work from him. Support's wonderful. Could have lost his orper there, but instead they leave with an opening frag. Now pressure towards middle. Jacob, he's not scared. He is not scared at all. Brave. Because he knows he's trying to level it out. Just in a hard place. Door. Yeah, 25 HP, but he has managed to demand mid control. At least the first stage. Alexi could get caught with that smoke in his hands. They're going to peek through. Sense forces that smoke out of the CT. Mission accomplished. Tough round of Counter Strike from Alexi B. Two frags so far in Jacob's the low. This B main push would be quite easy. Yeah, but he's been hitting some great headshots. Not this time. Ime takes that, confirms B main no longer a threat. Bomb channeled towards the A side. There are two defenders here. Util sailing through the sky. JL forward towards the main side. Has that MP9. And there's 40 seconds here. They'll need the smoke, trying to clear. JL has a little bit of an advantage here. Nice work from Sense. Gets him down. A man up for Na'Vi. Last round of this half. Five would soften the blow somewhat. Alexi, he can hold this rotation back from Nork. 20 seconds. They have to pick a site. Nork's in two minds. Alexi's going to hear it. This is a free frag. It should be an easy one. And oh, Alexi doesn't finish it. Stiko has the site. This is all onto that frag right now. Ime, Ime trying to defend the B site. 10 seconds. He's going to get a oh, chance. No. Hits it. They've got 16 points of health. Maybe Bit can do it. Maybe he can. Maybe he will. An uncomfortable clutch for Stiko and a smoke from Bit. No kit. So certainly still has to do this rather quickly. He's cut noise. It looks like he's considering the clear. It's planted for dark. It's planted for dark. Does Stiko just completely call the bluff? Call the bluff. He's got a chance. A 10 second defuse ahead of Bit. He hasn't used his smoke. He's got nothing. He's capitulating. He's running out of time. He thinks he's on the site. He's it's just hiding over. in plain sight. Calls the bluff. Steco far too smart. He hears that sound, and it's an eight round for Apex. Gotta be happy with that one. High impact from Martin Steak. Ten frags in the half. And Apex making a strong case to take us the distance in this elimination game.
well. When we arrived here on this series, there was an expectation set. I'm joined by Sponge, and your thoughts, Chad, were that individually, Na'Vi should have the firepower to be out-aiming their opponent, Apex. And it hasn't necessarily met that expectation. We find ourselves heading into the second half of Anubis. You can see the frustrations on Bit. One of those aim stars who hasn't quite been living up to the hype. As we've got ourselves eight under the belt, this pistol means an awful lot. Na'Vi only four to work with as we swap to the more favored side. Lots of util in the mix. Alexi only two frags. Maybe the call can be strong. Yeah, I think that's the key, right, is the fact that, sure, it is only four rounds, but it is the T side. If they can get the pistol, conversion against the force first gun, and we're back underway, and Jewel Beretta's at range. Not going to work out for Sassanito. Bit will get an opener, and Wonderful will find the follow-through. There we go. I mean, Bit and Wonderful finding headshots. That's what we were kind of expecting coming into this series. Yeah, and hoping for a lot more of if Na'Vi want to get things done in a 2-0 fashion. Still have to deal with Stiko, and he has Berettas. He certainly does, but he's got three, make it four, and no head anymore. <laughs> there you go. We knew what that felt like in the first half. Stiko was doing that to him on a regular basis. Now, uh, I was hoping during that halftime break, where we had Blade going through the paperwork, mm -hmm. that he was going to find something on there that would help instill confidence within his players. Because, sure, there, there were some rounds where they were outplayed or outmaneuvered, but there were others where, you know, a shot could have been hit that could have potentially had some big impact for how that ra round could have flowed. So hopefully, you know, they find themselves a little bit of better form, Na'Vi, because it's been a bit wobbly. As wonderful on the hunt, wants to remove the Kevlar from going into the next round of play for Nork and Jacob. Hard clear onto the platform and oh, giving up position as they work in tandem. Nork and Jacob both grabbing a killer piece. They stay alive. If, 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 if. And they will. They can go for Famous Kevlar, both of them. Yeah, which is certainly sweetens the deal. I think you probably should right, get a Famous. Whoa. Okay, Jacob's brought in with a P250. I guess they're going to take the conservative approach for this one. Oh. Was he uh, in the air? He was oh, he's, about he's, to. He they was were like, definitely leaving the ground. Yeah, I think they were on the runway, you know, just about to take off. Uh, that's where Mitha was saying Jail's about to be. Cheeky boy. Yeah, I saw that. They were playing a game of Shiraz was Mitha. Hey, get... Mitha, there's still one map up. Yeah. Well, he's just, listen, anything the mind games of Counter Strike trying to get into his opponent's head. But this one should just be five bullets into the head of Apex. This is just avoiding scurrying out in a pack against some spammy 20 bullet five sevens. They have been able to stretch their legs out long. Wonderful is at the back of the pack with the bomb, and there's one of those five sevens. Yeah, if you take too long about this, that's a pretty scary flank. You may not be considering. Especially with Jake confining him there. He will go down looking for that rifle retrieval. Here, come. Here comes the flank. Ooh, didn't track that too well. That was the bomb as well. Denied. Just going to slide on into the A site. Well, two of them ran through the molly. Still want to keep that timing up. They've got to clear this one out. It's an opportunity goes awry for Nork. Oh, That'll sit nicely in the back pocket of Sassanito. Can look for more damage. Stiko's already heading around to deal with any exits out A main. Sense can hang around in middle and see if they want to push through camera and hunt for that Galil. And Sassanito can use those two individuals as Canaries in the coal mine to distance himself from the hunt. Alexi, loud about this. Sense will have heard it. That's a good weapon that he's scavenged. The job at the back 10 leaping. <laughs> the best way to use it. Can't do anything about that one. Just keep on jumping. He does get away with the Galil, so there you go. It feels like they've at least left that round with something. Right, just two rounds. Uh, this was the conversation. Four in the T side, sure. Some of the rounds, the way that they fell didn't feel great, especially with the reactions and the lack of confidence that we're seeing on the faces of the Na'Vi players. It's an elimination game. I mean, it is Apex that are under the, the scrutiny right now. You know, you're on your opponent's map pick. You're, uh, you're up against them on the more favored side. And you are one map away from being eliminated. Forward position there from Jacob. Last on A main. Yeah, straight in. No, making no secret about it. Stiko. Oh, he hasn't got a single nade. 
Oh, that makes his life incredibly uncomfortable. He wants to maintain control, and it looks like he's going to be able to. Just calls it that, the, yeah, there's util. I'm not seeing anything, not hearing anything. I guess they're expecting it to draw a massive rotation or the fact that there wasn't any utility used. Uh, hey, is there a stack here? Would we be going into a large group of players? Here we go. Oh, yeah, he confirms 2B. I mean, that's all he's got out of that. JL, there's a dark smoke fading. That might be an invitation to start probing towards that position. So not even having a look, eh, man? Oh, there you go. Spotted each other, didn't they? Oh, Alexi left to drop off, yeah. His plans are cancelled. That's a great nade. A is completely okay. open. Eats it. I'm surprised that they're not looking A-main at all. No util. They pressured it super early. Oh, okay. Well, that's the A anchor. Bit takes some space. See what's home for us, son. Alexi's got all the way back around. Finishes what his nade started, and it's Ime that gets that trade onto Jacob. So the mid players are dead. You can pincer in. Ime's got the rotation, and it looks like Na'Vi have got a convincing seventh here. It's going to be a one-round game very quickly, rapidly, slips away from Apex. I really feel for Apex in a round like this. Obviously, they took the eco for this type of a buy, but that's the problem. If you don't have a lot of utility and you can't block for a long time, you need to take some gambles. And they went for a few pushes, right? They tried to out B main. They got spotted. They fell back. They tried middle. Stiko got caught. And then uh, as soon as that goes down, Jacob and Stiko both died. The open runway of the A site, you have to gamble. And the other players were all over towards B. I think one of the big discussions from the pros is how difficult it is on the CT side. You need, a, I think, some of the vernacular people have been using is it, it's more like the T side because you have to just be so active. Navi will grab seven. Bombs over halfway ticked. Emma has spotted one on the jiggle outside of B. It is Sense. I don't know if Sense saw him. He definitely. Oh, oh. He, oh yep. Nah, he oh, definitely yeah. didn't. He definitely. Oh, Emma. Emma. <laughs> The game hasn't been going that well for you, mate. I'm, a, I'm a flabbergasted. <laughs> <laughs> like, you'd think he has 25 kills right yeah, now or something, wouldn't you? I mean, I guess it's actually, maybe it was all about the funds. He needed the extra cash. Well, he could have not died. That, well, that would actually have been cheaper. <laughs> it would have been cheaper to have not died. You're right. I love this from Alexi. The fact that that at Mac 10 kill comes so quickly to him is by virtue of the nade he threw after being forced away by the flames. But yeah, here's him as death. The cheek on that. Yeah. I mean, maybe that's going to boost your confidence. Yeah, that's true. That's the first time we've seen him smile all day. <laughs> oh, round 16. It's uh, compromised, but threatening. Again, this absence of utility. Like, you're going to be pretty deep into the second half before you actually get to have all the nades and bells and whistles you desire. The next round, max loss bonus. Nork has 2,900, so he sh should get to see that all come into play. Nice push from Sassanito. You can see as the smoke oscillates, he's getting a glimpse or two down the canal. And wonderful. Tag down to 47. So they're aware, at least of that aggression. Well, this is about to get dicey in middle. Oh, wow, Alexi. He was ready for Jacob. Takes him down. A deep smoke to facilitate that fight. And just like that, yeah, Cheeky. Sense is going to go down. Alexi swaps to the side arm, finds his headshot, overlooks Nork on that tight door position. Still worried about A because Stiko's still up. They know there's an M4 over towards Connector. And okay, get that bomb and go A. Oh, they're not ready for Stiko. Ah, they think he's on A. They're not ready for Stiko. Dead now. The jigger is up. Him at braver, bl Bravely, excuse me. Does just to drop straight down in order to control Stico, that side. if he went now, can have a one-on-one. -on -one. If he went right now, he can yeah, have a one-on-one. -on -one. Such a good idea. Such a good idea. They're planning safe from him, but he's unknown, unnoted. It's not going to be prepared for this. Controls the spray. Here, man, the 1v1. Stiko! Oh, my God. One bullet away from it. Man, that was a close one. Here, pulls it across the line for Na'Vi, but, yeah, on a, by a fine margin. And you see some of the uh, old legendary Na'Vi players up in the Hall of Heroes once upon a time. Markaloff and Edward highlighted there is highlighting the woes of Apex on their CT side is the sound of the tactical timeout. As mentioned, Max lost bonus. We will see the buy, and they got an awful lot done with these safe guns. Definitely stressed out Na'Vi considering the success of Alexi over towards middle. And this is them, as I mentioned, playing Counter-Strike by the names. Stiko still up. He must be over towards A. He's the A anchor. No. And uh, it took them a moment at the end. Jacob, you know, he's uh, one to show a bit of frustration. 
I'm really enjoying watching with that X-ray as well. I've got. I'm doing. Are you doing I'm my doing strategy? What you did. Yeah, it's yeah. my strategy, isn't it? Really gets it helps you find a newfound appreciation for some of the uh, the players and their talents. Unlucky to all of you at home. Yeah. Uh, trust us, it's really good. It's cool, man. It's cool. You Hello. can uh, actually maximize your experience, Alex, if you head over to faceit.com slash watch. Pick your yeah. POVs. Watch the players you want to watch. You can cool. even mute us. Really nice. You can full screen it. You can have all those POVs running simultaneously, toggle them on and off. I don't get anything from promoting that, by the way. I just think it's a better way to watch the game. Yeah. <laughs> Well, but that was. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm we're, we, we can be okay, but uh, definitely watching a player's POV of choice is we're out. This is cool. Main. This is really cool. At least for the CTs, the information flows early. Now, again, wonderful at the back of the pack with the bomb. They are being stalled out. Sassanita is coming. A multi kill on the plate. His flanks oh. haven't been deadly today, but that's some info. Ooh, wonderful. He's lucky to have gotten away with his life there. Quick escape route. <laughs> Jesus, bit. Great awareness of the reaction from Steeko on the molly. Good work, though. They're not ready for Jacob. A forward position overlooked. And positionally, Apex are sound. As a pound, Jacob again gets the dirty work done. A triple kill from Jacob. Finally felled, but wonderful. He's going to try and get this bomb planted. You know, one versus two. Should expect Sassanito on the flank, right? He's pushed B. He knows about that. He doesn't know about Nork. He hears the one main. Nork's just holding his walk up. Sassanito to clear. It's a big round for Apex. And Jacob, yeah, he's going to get a firm pat on the back from the coach. Couldn't have rotated in at a better moment either. Stiko up close just gets ripped behind the smoke, thinking, what the hell have I done to deserve this? But after all that mid-pressure, Jacob as well, behind the smoke, a massive double kill. Like, it's completely understandable why after that sick catch from Bit, you're expecting space. Yeah, for sure. And I think they've mollied off towards Fountain as well. So really, somebody that up close, Apex will strike on the CT side through Jacob's impact. It's so admirable, man. Jacob has, man Jacob has managed to completely uh, adjust into this new game as an older boy. You know, he's coming into this one. He's got to keep up with these young guns, these new talents just popping up left and right. And he still shows up and plays a good game of Counter-Strike his way. Now, the thing I like about Jacob is he's brave, right? He's not one of these players who's worried about the way the statistics look. This is yep. the type of player who has no issues going first as long as you're behind him to trade. He's going to take the necessary risks. He understands Counter-Strike's a team game. He's cut from that elk. And it is good to see him still finding impact. Norwegian Org, Norwegian Jersey. Now, where do we go from here? I think with that timeout that Navi just took, I, I, I don't hate the approach that they've been going for so huh? far. O obviously, there was that B push that could have cost them. It didn't end up to be that catastrophic. Maybe it forced their hand but into the A play. Could happen again for, for him. You can see the same players are heading that way. Nork posting up towards Jail early. So, yeah, it's not out of the realms of possibility that they once again try and remove him and this uh, B info from Navi early. He's going. Spots a little bit of leg. That might slow them down this time. That's an Ito, not shy. And they have full B main control. No info for Na'Vi. They have to try and take the fight elsewhere. Jumping for info this time. Jacob wow. wise to his games. Great headshot from Jacob. Turns the flash. Zico goes wide, straight into the bit headshot. Good mechanics. They are going A, bomb's coming. Yeah, wonderful's already caught Jacob's early rotate as well. So Brick's clear, missed Molly. Good golly, sense pushing straight into him. He goes for an all or save. nothing maneuver, and the rest, yeah, likely to save. No way you're winning this one with all that util now being dumped towards the camera position. Smoked off, two man advantage. Navi, keep us level. And this time, as soon as Jacob gets the kill over towards middle against Alexi, they're thrusting themselves into towards A again, knowing that he can't possibly be close this time round. Stiko a little bit unfortunate with the timing on his util getting caught on that swing. He goes down, and so does the site. And then Sense throwing his body on the line, hoping that he can capitalize coming through as they're setting up, getting into the site for the post plant. Back and forth we go once more as 9-9. Nine, nine. Now the score line. A little bit of a hunt coming out from him, eh? I don't think he's going to no, find okay. anybody. They also don't have much of a bank to work with on the T side at the moment, so it's okay to probably throw one. Terrorists win. Multiple bodies ill-advised at the moment for Na'Vi. They stayed true to the course. Now, is there a change from Navi? Does Alexi look a little bit different? Wow. 
just as he had changed back to the M4. From the incendiary, pips him. Not enough. You can see him scampering into the site, trying to fight for bricks. And just ready to aim map. Oh, Navi. Okay, with those saves, Apex can buy again. Same opener, 3 1 1. Nothing outside of the box. Surely they're not just going to continue with the Leers out B main. They need to do something a little bit more diverse. Yeah, Jacob's heading over to help Stiko again. Yeah, understandable. Bit's been getting the better of him in these last few rounds. Flashed off. Ooh, kind of blocked that. Uh, intended to be a deeper molly. This shouldn't be too much to worry about, but it is an indication of two players on the A site. Yeah, and wasted utility. So they've been able to grab that ground. I do like this, though. They're calling the bluff of Na'Vi, knowing that they're unlikely to push through that smoke again after what happened last time. So immediately rotating the two A players over towards middle. They might want to set up a fight, you know, pop through the con smoke, take a fight top mid, do this as a unit. Just as Alexi's leaving middle, Stiko is walking it up. This is a real opportunity here. Oh, and Lexi had the crosshair in the right place, but it's Stiko that puts the bullets where they belong. Takes down Alexi. Now they can reset and still three on B, looking like statues. Sends the pillar, Sassanito over towards the Ivy position. You've got Nork on the plat with the AWP. Just blocked main. 30 seconds remaining. Nothing jail. HE's disconnected from that smoke main, so him is just locked out. 20 seconds. Stiko's pushing A. Uh, Jacob can rotate now as well. They're coming in. 17. Sure, you've got one bit, but 15 seconds. Navi cutting it fine. One from Nork at the back flat. And it's a good one back. Still looks like Wonderful has done enough to facilitate a plant. Stiko and Jacob in a 2v2 retake. It's all really hinging on this duel. If Stiko somehow miraculously can best bit, he's been his nemesis into this half, he's going to get hard cleared. Bit clears him out. Oh, overlooks the position. An opportunity as the dink comes through. 6 HP on Bit. Maybe Jacob can be their hero once more. A double dart. Just the same jewels. Bit gets it to oh. him. No way! Oh, Jacob. What a hero. A real hero for Apex here on Anubis. Oh, beautiful stuff. You can see he's wanting to swing and take the fight together, but that opened them up and Jacob delivers. No util, no kit, no problem. Oh, you feel like that should have been Navi's, don't you? They were down a man after that mid push, that miss from Alexi, but they trade into the site. Bit gets away with this one. The clear not deep enough, but Stiko sees enough to swing and then, oh, swing it out. Get trucked. Yeah, and if you're wonderful, you're thinking, okay, my teammate's fighting, I should swing and I should get the trade, and normally wonderful would be good for that. Just couldn't connect the dots as Jacob snatches it away. Serious, man, this impact, impact all over the shop. That is admirable. But where does it put it? 15 frags, 1900 damage, 100 ADR. Interesting, Alexi's opted for the MAC-10. I'm curious if we see something fast because of this purchase. It was the Apex timeout, but Navi also get those 30 seconds to discuss. It's $800 left over, so I'm just thinking, you know, didn't necessarily have to go into a MAC-10, and if you, if you didn't want to... Maybe he does. And look at this, four departing toward the A side of the map early. But Emma has the bomb, so it can't just be an all-commit. No, but it might be something that they... Feel they can force loud. You see this uh, deliberate from rotating JL. back. Norks with the orb this time. That's a different look. Yeah, smoking rugs. No one orc orb. You're right. That could very well be a bit of an antidote to this all eight. Oh, oh and they're getting in for the from... right time. No one's home. It's Deco to be tested. It's Nork to take the first shot. It's Deco to just play anti. Here we go. Nor fly, face the shot, not looking fantastic. Actually, wait, bit took down Alexi. It's a 4v4. Held back, trying to flash through. Nor trying to be stubborn about it, misses his quick flick. Bit's done a lot for Navi there. Gets him into the A site. An uncomfortable retake. Santanito T stairs, and it does look like the call's been made. Yep, they're just gonna have to concede this one. So yeah, that's a that's a call that works out for them. What a rally of rounds. We just continue going back and forth. This is going to be the fourth consecutive round, I guess we could call it five, of the back and forth nature. And with 
Need the team having too much residual cash. It makes sense to see the saves, especially coming out of the Apex side. It's going to be harder for them to get the drops. Uh, there won't be a Nork AWP. Bitch just scavenged that one away. Put that in the hands of Wonderful for the next. And it was essentially the go for A out of the timeout. Even though Imma started over towards B with the bomb, he immediately rotated back over. Sassanito, really want to hold on to this. Getting cheeky for exits and cleared by Wonderful in a stylish manner. That's so geeky. Like, that's the kind of stuff that all these new gen kids are doing. Like, you want to see that, don't you? Yeah. Not just jumping up. Oh, I'll make sure I remove any risk. Really cool way to do that. And, and look at the finances. Yeah, he'd have loved a rifle. Exactly. <laughs> he'd have so, loved one. You know, Sassanito's hanging around to, to punish. Understandably so, as we get a highlight of the TK and all the chaos of main. But this is the one surging forward. Nork, pretty good for those quick shots. But this time, gets pipped at the post. As they give away an extra rifle. And, well, they haven't forced bought here, Apex. They've just partially invested. Maybe with the third rifle, it could have been justified. Do they keep heading towards this A site? Let's have sent three now. If two didn't work, let's try three. Try and defend this A site. Question is, is that is Alexi anticipating such a reaction? Stiko using the scout, and so he can keep these kind of intermittent jiggles out for info deep mid. Bit. Oh, we heard the dismount. Flash is ahead of it. Destroys them. That was picture. Pixel perfect. And he's not done yet with JL's help. The A site collapses once more for Apex. One back from that Stiko scout. It'll be hard for us to do anything more with that. And from behind, Alexi strikes. We'll have to catch this on the replay. Maybe we can get it in slow mo, even if it is from Bits POV. But it looked like the CTs were the ones coming around the corner flashed. Oh, really? I mean, I know what I found so impressive, I don't know if it was by accident or not, is the fact that Bits flight path meant he was ahead of it. Or if that's just a misthrown flashbang. If they were blind as well, that really was... I, d I don't know. It happens yeah. in the blink we'll of an see, eye. We'll but see if we can get, back, get it on the replay. But either way, that was, um, I mean, one of the more convincing Na'Vi rounds. And it's, it's bit, you know, we, were, we saw him kind of warming into this series. Quiet on Ancient. He seems to be much more at home here on Anubis, especially on the T side. Yeah, it's not uh, wonderful having to do all the heavy lifting. Only 11 kills for him in this one after a huge first map. So here they come. Ash, turn, turn, pop. So probably only partially blind Sense on was sense. doing the dance. Yeah, thing. so one of the hands were up. Yeah, okay. Well, regardless, Bit destroys them. Doesn't matter how it happened, it happened. What does that mean for Apex when you've tried 3A there and it, and it still just got deleted by raw mechanics? Hopefully they don't go A again. Yeah, okay, hopefully. Oh, maybe try a retake, set up, try aggression elsewhere on the map. You've been able to push through long. Why don't you push through with multiple bodies? You know, turn the round on its head. Mm. You don't need to keep playing it in this fashion. You can... Here we go, some A-man aggression. Held, or spotted, wonderful. And the reaction's quick. They can't really push anywhere off of this. They weren't set up to do so. So the information on the aggressive A-man, if you're Navi, you may as well call the bluff and still return as Jacob doing exactly that in middle, just standing on the little lip, looking over the nade. Towards the doors, will not soften him whatsoever. And they've actually pivoted all the way back towards B. So Apex, just by showing a little bit of leg out main with that aggression, have forced Na'Vi into a site where they don't seem to find too much success. Three middle. Alexi's trying to keep their boots planted. This is a lovely Molotov, full spread. So you have to, you have to get back. If they clamp on B now, there's only two players. This would be the perfect moment. Well, Alexi, you're seeing a lot of util there. They're hearing these sound cues. He's going to keep Nork and Jacob there. Stiko's on A. If they can find this player on B, JL's taken one, but it's Satsunito. They know where you are now. Not a comfortable duel. Still adjusts into Wonderful. Another is spectacular. And he gets away as well. Perfect round for Apex's defense. They're back on the board. It was a run. It was a run. You know, we talked about that rally as you discussed it. Na'Vi kind of bucked the trend and seems like Apex, they won 11 and they'll take it by four. Satsunito comes online. Yeah, happy to sell sense there, but if you're gonna get four kills from that connected position, that's massive work as they deny Na'Vi, who just by getting a, a little bit of A-man aggression had seen enough. <laughs> we didn't notice how quick Jacob's adjustment was onto Alexi there. I feel at this moment, we all know what's gonna happen next. How could Na'Vi not go towards A? It's where all the success has seemingly come from. But again, we know that, Apex knows that, Na'Vi also know that, and at a timeout, the third and final for Na'Vi taken, and Blade, what are you gonna say? How are you gonna convince Alexi that that's the right play? Because just in the flow of the game, 
you'd be thinking for sure, hey, like, how can we keep getting away with this? They're, they're going to stop us at some point. But it was, it was kind of remarkable and interesting to see how that uh, show of aggression early A main did seem to channel Na'Vi straight towards B. Yeah, they didn't even want to go back to investigate. And I think if Wonderful had an orb over towards t Stairs, it might have been a different story. Yeah. So they just shied away quite quickly. Well, he will have one for this round. And it is do or die. I remind you that Apex are hanging on by a thread here. This has to be theirs. They want a hope of continuing in Katowice. Mike used tenacity as the word to describe Apex throughout their run so far from the play into the group stage. I think that's continued. Again, I think they've been punching a bit above their weight. Being able to put up a good fight time and time again against any name that is on the other side of the server is Stiko. A couple of wobbles as the HE does not hit its mark. Bounds back in his face and he knows the pressure likely to be coming his way. Already throws out a defensive deep A main smoke. Very early days. Gets the smoke out of his hands and his inventory. And just by throwing that HE as well, that sows a seed of doubt. He could have progressed. Stiko opts to try and reinforce and bolster middle. Next, he throws out a smoke of his own design. And with a Molotov for mid control, Stiko will have no options available to him. They've put Jacob and Nork on yeah. the side. Yeah, okay, so that is, is different. Stika being tasked with holding middle, they've put some potentially heavier hitters in that aim department over towards A. Sassanio has burnt his final smoke Wonderful on Wonderful moving that bomb back towards the B side He's of the map. had success over here. CT smoke down, 35 seconds. Jacob's rotating. Stiko, this is proactive from him. Nork as well. Confirms A mains quiet. That's a big duel to win. Alexi cut down, channels them in. Pressure from both fronts now, and he's continuing to force the issue from the behind. Stiko strikes, takes down Imet Navi in the hurt locker now. No way out. Only forwards. It's bit again the savior as he pairs together a pair of frags. Hold on, hold on. They can't even plant. It wasn't safe. Stiko, what a high impact round from him. Safe plant. Gets it down, can bit continue to save Na'Vi? The answer is no! It's Stiko with a quad kill. That adjustment, putting Stiko in mid, has resulted in a huge 12. He's caught Alexi a couple of times, just pushing out middle and catching him on an awkward timing. Oh, no. And Yeah, uh, Blade, he took the final time out. He had the conversation. Either they didn't do what was asked of him. Yeah, this is how it started for Stiko, but the way it ends is glorious. All that pressure, and this is it. 29 seconds, you suddenly have to worry about your flank as well. Yeah, it just it, awkward plant position and Stiko, the Marauder, just absolutely monstrous round from him. Bomb doesn't get planted. Na'Vi, we could be heading to map number three. Oh boy, one single round away. Mirage, I believe. Yes, indeed. Okay. All oh, hangs in the balance of a single round of Counter-Strike. Look Navi, at that timer. They're five on the trot on this very map. Wins against Nine Pandas, Virtus Pro, Complexity, G2, and even Spirit yesterday in their best of three series. And that is about to be broken by Apex in a do-or-die series. Tenacious. I am Katowice. Tenacious indeed. And they always seem to find a way to Apex. Incredibly impressive run they're having here. Starting their year off strong. And with sense at the in-game leadership helm, you lose Kixon and you manage to find a young man with a lot of uh, energy. He's not shying away from this uh, large LAN environment. Apex feeling like it has to be an A play, right? They've got three players. Very forward here. Look at Alexi, proactive. Held by Jacob, they flash him the perfect time. Oh, <gasps> team kill. He takes down Alexi, but Jacob was right in front of him. Four on four for all the marbles. Na'Vi just for survival, just for overtime. Stiko confirming A main's quiet. They're coming back his way. He does get a warp shot to they the face. They won't expect Nork. Nork's still close. Quick. I think they thought he'd be on B. He's hearing this. Has to hit that one. High pressure scenario for Nork. Make a decision now, Na'Vi. 30 seconds. Coming his way. Nork turns the flash. Nails it. Whips out the D. Oh. And it's beautiful from Nork again. Seems to transcend and ascend when the pressure's on, as he seems to single-handedly have forced us to a third map right now. Imet, nothing for you here. Nothing. Nork has done enough. Plays his game well. Survives. And Apex take us the distance. Mirage required in this battle for survival in the Katowice group stage. Oh, they do it again. This team, who never seems to give up, 
just stop Navi's win streak on Anubis. Five on the road, that's all it's gonna be. Apex, we're going to map number three. Hey Future Pros, mid control on Anubis can open many avenues. Let's look at a utility set you can throw to help take that space. You will need a smoke, molly, HE and a flash for this one. To throw the smoke, position yourself aligned with this wall. Aim at this point where the bricks intersect. Hold mouse 1 and mouse 2 then jump through the smoke. This will smoke off mid. For your molly, head over to the right side of these boxes. Just make sure you aren't exposed. Aim at this corner of the right window thing. Then throw the molly. This will land outside of the doors and flush a CT out or back depending on their motive. You can give mid a quick jiggle and get this HE out too, as there is a chance the molly doesn't spread fully, leaving a gap close to mid. Finally, you can throw a flash off the tower to blind anyone who might have snuck out in front of your util. Use it as a bit of a fake or play behind it. The choice is yours. The full 24 rounds required once again, but this time it's Apex to be sealing up their opponent's map pick. By no means the cleanest way to get the job done, but a win is a win. They will be pushing us to the third and final decider to see who keeps their heads here at the Intel Extreme Masters Canavita 2024. Things got dicey at the end still. I can't believe that Apex were able to get this one over the line because this was back and forth, chaotic, kind of exactly like we saw in Ancient, right? Yeah, uh, too similar, too similar. I think this event's full of surprises. I can't really put my finger on anything properly. It's like the teams that you expect to do well are just like, yeah, this is our best. And then the teams that you expect to just go out are like, we're in here, we're fighting, and we deserve to be here. So <laughs> interesting all way. I mean, I think it's fair enough to be a little bit negative about what Navi just showed. I think they're such a great team on Anubis normally, and they're losing to a mediocre team, both in the likes of what they bring to the server, but also on the map pool aspect of it. I thought Navi had this one in the bag, but now they're going to have a real hard time going into the third one. Should we go back to the first half? Because there's a round you picked out, Josh, um, which isn't showcasing the prettiest CS by any means, but sometimes, you know, you've got to be critical of what the teams are putting to the server. Yeah, so like this is reminiscent of like, kind of like ancient in a little bit. So JL getting this opening pick here at middle, and then we're transitioning. We have a rotation going into A right now, but then we're having Bit is in front of the smoke, his teammates behind it, they're not really connected. And then it goes from a five versus four down to four on four. And then this good flash comes in, JL's able to capitalize off of it. Wonderful's getting pinched, but he could just like group with JL. They can push out, clear clear through uh, A canals. But instead he takes this duel and loses it. JL's able to get this good pick off here. This secures outside of canals for his team. So when they approach this three versus two retake here, he's actually gonna make a good decision here. He has a flashbang. He's gonna go and actually retreat back into canals. And he's gonna throw a flash into the window when his teammates throw a grenade out camera. So they're able to approach this three versus two together here and, and pick up this round. And this is like a glimpse of what we expect from Navi, but they're not giving us these types of deliveries every time they play. It's like, we see this and we're like, oh my God, they're back. They're so back. And then the next round, it's just like, wait, this is the same team? Like, what's going on here? I, rem I remember JL giving an interview on Hail TV where he was 
expressing that he didn't understand that all Utahs were supposed to do something. Like when you were, he played on the Apex and so on, he would just sometimes throw a nade or a flash. I would also do that. But when he got into the likes of Blade, he doesn't accept you just doing that randomly. So I also think it shows what is that Blade playing through the server. I think that is this moment where he's like, he's going to be watching that round and be like, perfect guys. But it just doesn't come often enough. And then we come on to the last round of the first half, round number 12. Um, I, I, I didn't even know how to put into words, so Bubsy, I'm going <laughs> to give you the yeah. challenge of what on earth happened to him. I mean, it's a little bit of a, a miss and a miserable time for, for Navi. I think they are on the verge of getting a pretty decent half here, but um, in the end, I'm just so disappointed about the mid-round segment. Like this round, they have such a good setup. They're able to play the rounds here. He gets the initial timing. Like, he should have waited. Just let him go by and then jump by him afterwards. You've sold B and then this duel. I'm, I have no idea how you... Like, why is he not pressing forward and just taking that kill? He's already shot at him like five, six, six times. And then, yeah, towards the end, you can't really do too much from bit side. He gets the 1v1. I would say, considering he has no kid, he, he tries to bait him out, but it doesn't really work. I can understand why you would seem as a viewer be like, what the hell is Pete doing? But from my point of view, I can actually see what he's trying to do. Well, it's also the lead up into that situation here where like they have a three versus two, but one's A, one's B, one's middle, and Alexi B, he's walking across the bridge, gets caught out in the open, and then now it's a two on two, and the teammates are split across the map. So these situations happen because there's no way for these guys to connect in the middle of the round. They're just like off in their own little like mini games on their islands, and they're not trying to to move around together like we see other teams doing on Anubis. I think uh, Bit is somebody that we do have to put under the spotlight just a tad because we were coming into this and going, hey, where on earth was he in that spirit game, right? We see glimpses and then we don't. Like, it seems like one side or the other for Bit uh, at the moment, which is a shame because we know he can deliver some uh, really punishing headshots when he's in the zone. Doesn't really seem like he's all there consistently today. I mean, I would say that about pretty much everyone in that server. I mean, wonderful. Yeah. It, is the only one I feel like that's been consistent uh, across both the maps for either team and then like for Navi specifically, it's been wonderful. The rest of Apex, I feel like we might highlight Stiko here and there because of specific mm. plays that he gets, but it's just everyone's kind of in the same basket with only one player standing out. And that is wonderful across the AWP and the, the M4. Yeah, and I don't think it's too rough you saying that that I'm and JL isn't this bad, because, but they should be better. Like they got bought off this team JL ex uh, as an example to potentially go into like the, the top layer of teams, right? And he's not showing it. I think there's very clear that Navi is lacking the individual level needed to like just run these teams over. Like I'm only looking at Wonderful and be like, okay, that's a top player. Like what is happening with I'm and JL? I also remember a round on B where they go for the like initial late execute and he's in an off position. He just like glides his aim over. It's just not what I'm was used to being. Let's uh, fixate on Mirage just for a second. Yeah. That's going to be our third and final decider where both teams hoping to reset, regroup, and come into it with some fresh thoughts. But uh, Na'Vi, they struggled yesterday versus Spirit, but that is a different caliber of an opponent, right? We're expecting a better Na'Vi showing up today. We're expecting a better Na'Vi showing up today, but we've been saying this, right? You, you, can, you can only say it for so long before you're like, Okay, what's going on here? So it's going to be a map where Apex is style right now, where it seems like they're kind of spread apart, especially on their T sides, where they're spread apart, you know, one over here, one over there, a couple people in middle doing something together. And then, you know, off of like an opening kill or rotations from the CTs, that's where they're going to just start walking into an area, getting those lurk timings that we've seen from Seiko, for example. And we're going to see that on a map where there's six potential points that they can come from. There's Palace Ramp, there's Top Mid Underpass, and then there's like Catwalk. And those extend even more if you get into Window Room, uh, you know, so it's gonna be interesting to see. But I mean, Mirage, you can get away with playing Static on the defense, but Na'Vi's been really static all throughout like all the maps right now, except for Ancient, they've been a little bit aggressive. It's, it's worrisome. If I'm Na'Vi, I'm scared right now, like Apex? Yeah, I mean, it's, the, yeah, it's it's not a good team, and Mirage actually has that unique attribute that's actually six ways into the sides of the CTs. There's Window, Short, B, uh, Palace, Connector, and Ramp. So you have those six spots, and it requires a lot of like mid-round rotations to cover them all at the same point. And there will always be a point where there's a timing for, uh, for one of them. We often see it between the Connector and Window area, yeah. because the smoke is in there, and then he'll switch back and forth. But sometimes, and teams who read it well will be able to do it. Well, question is, who is going to be keeping their head coming into this final map of the Elimination Series? It's Mirage, Apex versus Na'Vi. One of these two teams going home.
can jump across. for for apex for this year for what this team can accomplish where do you what are you guys thinking about you know uh obviously an event like katavica but the year in general um in terms of what what you want to move towards uh of course be at the majors <laughs> qualify for the majors uh i think again for the guys who have been there uh one of the biggest goals but uh, play good cs Enjoy as a teammate, as a players, and have fun. Go to as much as events as we can. Qualify to tier one events. I think that's it from my side. I mean, qualifying for the major was our main goal in the last season. That was everything we did. Like every decision was made when we decided to bench or get rid of the uh, shocks. The decision was made that, you know, we're doing everything possible, whatever is in the way, to, to reach Paris. And I feel like we're on the same path, like we, we need to do the same to reach Copenhagen, you know. And me personally, like playing Katowice is nice, but I played it five, six times before. It's not, you know, my main focus is to reach the major. This is just like a step, you know. Mm. Uh, so I don't, like it's nice to be in Katowice, get, don't get me wrong, you know. I have been watching Katowice the last three years from home. Last time I played it, I was in the quarterfinal, but it was, was a good experience, not gonna lie. Uh, but uh, I mean, major is the main goal. Okay. Not true for this side of the table too. I agree. Major is the main goal for sure. This is more of like a test tournament with the uh, first uh, tournament for MSI Gel. So uh, we'll see how it goes and try to improve for the major. And then something that I would like for Apex is to like win a tournament this year. Otherwise, otherwise. easy to say, but uh, Two final appearances last year and uh, could have done it there, but let's do it this year instead. Yeah, trophy lift. Yep. All the way to three, it seems. Na'Vi and Apex just hearing from them, their goals and setting objectives. Katowice, a warm-up for them as they're pursuing the glory that is the major around the corner. Quite the warm-up, uh, yeah. SP. They have really gone through trials and tribulations in their matchup, starting the tournament with a donkening, a 0-13 loss on Ancient to Spirit. The talk of the town around Katowice this time of year. And they've been battling back in series after series, a win against Furia, who uh, may be at their weakest 
A win against Big that was an emotional roller coaster. A loss yesterday against Complexity in a 0 2 fashion that had its force by wars. And now a third map in an elimination game against Na'Vi, who can't hit the broadside of a barn at the moment. I saw them in the bathroom, hopefully washing their face, getting ready for Hopefully war. they had good aim there. <laughs> Hey, yeah, actually, I wasn't checking for that. Uh, but <laughs> this is where I, I think Na'Vi need to recenter. Mm, absolutely. I mean, I'll tell you what, some signs of life for me was uh, Bits T side, getting to see him kind of being that headhunter once again. Some of the frags he was finding, that double especially towards A. He's been hitting his shots, and he needs to continue. If they want to continue here in Kato, it is a gauntlet you have to run if you want to see the Spodek once you've been thrust to the lower bracket. Rebels, Falcons, complexity the teams as well in the same let's see how this pistol goes we are ready to rumble one expert favors now v just an a execute looks like stairs smokes should fight towards ct have to get through bit and wonderful here we go bit his first challenge and trying to back away hopefully a bait oh wonderful and criminally over under check positions, that's Anito's taking him down all the same. And just like that, with smokes and frags, the A site should be there. Bit tries to contest from CT. That's Anito and Jacob make short work of them. Sense gets away with his life as well. And JL wondering what he's supposed to do with this. Yeah, the kiss method, keep it simple, stupid. Just go for an oldie bit of goodie. Up, down, smoke, stairs covering off between connector and jungle. Flash, fight CT, run them down. The pesky Aww. jumping glocks. And secure yourself the start of map number three as JL has been noted. Looking to see if he can take anybody with him before they run him down. Jiggling in, taking those fights, and Steeko with all five staying alive. That is going to feel good and maybe somewhat sour for JL. Important to mention his name. Once upon a time, he was donning this Apex jersey back when they were finding their biggest of successes. That's one of the reasons he got the call up into this Na'Vi roster. Yeah, and I mean, you can't help but uh, understand why it would be extra important. You want to feel like, you you know, your decision was justified, feel vindicated, beating the team you left and in pursuit of greener pastures. Especially because you could argue that this Apex roster is quite weak at the moment. They benched Seeker. They had to bring him back to retain the core three to get themselves the yeah. RMR spot. They lost Kixon. He's gone over and joined Heroic, who had a barn burner of a series against... G2 yesterday, overtime on the first two maps, and then I believe it simmered out a little bit come Nuke. But for a new heroic roster who have been on the road for a month and just hardcore practicing, I'd say still quite a decent showing. Nice work, they wide swing. The protocol's in place to have some value out of these USPs. Could work for Tatsunito, expecting that hunt from JL. So a triple to hold on to his rifle and the round. Ime, he's walking around with the recovered Mac 10, but they're not in any hurry here. So a full eco into first rifle rounds should be no wonderful AWP. So keep that in mind as what type of a CT setup we can see. And then you ask yourself the question, do you want to go like an all-in mid-defense type of round from Na'Vi where you're jumping out, you're running up the guts, you're making sure you stall out that mid-control? If you're going to throw a lot of utility into that and Apex, you know, fake it out and stall it, then you're going to use most of your nades in the early stages. I really liked what Steel was saying on the desk as well in regards to Apex's style and how that may gel with Mirage. You know, he talked about all these kind of lurks and having them spread out. Well, there's a whole lot of places you can be borrowed in with a Chepesky Palace player. You know, this, I think he said 16. There are 16 spots where they can be uh, coming on out late and catching a player by surprise. So there's lots of options. Yeah, this is where you really need to make sure your communication is on point and that information is flowing so it can be capitalized on the most, right? You know what rotations you're likely to force. You know what you're aiming to manifest with these gaps. And the clearer that can be, the better you can punish. So we do see the Na'Vi buy take shape. Emma out the window, willing to battle as it's four top mid. Nobody yeah. underpass. Well, it requires Emma and Wonderful to hit their shots, which they have done. Mission accomplished. JL doesn't need to over egg the pudding here. But they will. They'll just continue to just barrage them with utility. You can see it's forced to smoke out just for survival, but that's not happening. Jacob cut down. Four mid. No problem. We'll just kill you one by one. As Steeko will be hunted on down as well. Controls his spray onto Ime, but at what cost? I think that's very good for Ime's confidence early, but they couldn't have come easier. The window smoke was after they'd already swung. 
Yeah. So uh, turning it into a little bit of an A-map in middle and more than happy to stand and deliver. That's two for JL, two for Emma, and one for Wonderful. A very nice round indeed. Na'Vi, not their name. Onto the CT side with the first round. It's going to be 2-1 in favor of Apex. As, well, they're straight down in the dumps financially. You can see this. Look, just taking Jules top mid. No issues at all. JL just through the cusp of the smoke there onto Stiko. Okay, bye-bye. Still with that wry smile as Apex are saving. P250, Deagle, and Glocks. How much can they make out of this? Is Okay, yeah, Nork just taking a sip. This is a good moment for everybody to take a breath. We're early into map number three. It has been quite the affair on the first two maps of play. An awful lot of rounds we've rifled through. And you also just want to allow the CTs to rifle through their nades. Lob them out, block the choke points as we're seeing right here. For HE, a smoke, that's 600 bucks. That's 900 bucks. Go on. Just keep, look at it, money, it grows on trees. These wasteful CTs. Oh, there it goes. Another 600 down the Swanee. And we do have Rebels versus Falcons currently taking place on that secondary stream, brought to you by Scrawny and Launders. Man. And uh, maybe a little bit closer than some people would be expecting. Rebels, see how far they can push the likes of Falcons. Map number one is Vertigo, if you were interested in going and checking that out. But uh, we might get some kills here in a moment, Alex. They've all congregated now over towards A. You have one member of Bit at the firebox. Emma, inflow between connector and the site. How many is he going to get? I think it's him that gets the majority. Okay. Whoa. He does get two. Uh, hectic spray and two HP, so understandably not looking for those finals. It's going to be wonderful. He gets himself a double of his own. That's all good. Bit can now drop an AWP for Wonderful. And ah. he can get the AK. So that's works uh, out. a trade that I'm sure Bit's more than willing to make. And that's exactly what's happening in the buy department. No AWP available for Apex right now. But that was a nothing round. They are the rounds that nobody is getting excited about other than the players when they look at their stats at the end of the game. Taking notes is Blade, or looking away from what might be about to manifest. Just doing a doodle. I'd love to know, you know, what, what he's taking notes about after a full eco round, essentially. So where they hit, him. is it, you think you'd tell me? Narvi's prank room's at the end of my corridor. I might just go knock okay. on the door. Hey lads, I've got one guy Oh, and... wonderful knocking on Sassanito's door. Just jumped out into his demise of middle. That's peculiar. Very Indeed. Aggressive. What was the tell to go for that? Well, that's an early disadvantage for, for Navi to stomach. Didn't even get to use the AWP. I what happened there? Yeah. I, it, I don't think he's even pulled the trigger on that one. So, yeah, a very potent piece. Gone. Tatsunito, a, a brilliant find. Take those every day of the week. Nade. I think the sound cue would have been heard, but... I really like that Vertigo sticker on Senses Galil. It's part of the Verti gang. And it's Immet that's found an equalizer. There's an opportunity for Sense. And he really lackadaisically walks around the corner into the... I'm heading B. Loving embrace. Alexi, Bianca holds firm. Nork seems to have lost him. Well aware of the potential for Alexi up close. Oh, 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 they're working it out. Nork's a dead man. Jumping. And Nico going to give it a good go. JL wraps it up, and that's a recovered round. You do not recover the AWP, but you'll take four AK boys. Yeah, just such an odd start of the round with Wonderful jumping out to his demise, but they're able to recover that very, very easily, and you have to thank Emma. This is fantastic work from the connector player. AK up and over on the little box, picking up two big kills. And then, well, with not too many options left, they try their luck on the B bomb site where Alexi doing a dance on them. Wonderful. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, but I'm glad he can keep smiling about it as it will be the first tactical timeout now used by Apex. And I think one of the keys in these last three rounds is the lack of plants as well as the lack of kills. One kill per round for the last three means lack of damage to the finances and lack of extra money in the back pocket. It's funny, that was an Apex timeout. Felt like we got Blade got a whole lot more of a value out of it, at least from what we're seeing on the cams. Mytha more of a kind of a motivation in that one. Of course, it, when you're calling these timeouts into a, a deco, 
what what can you really uh, do? Yeah, you're either just steadying yourself or you're talking about the follow-up gun round. Right. right? You're, you're trying to, okay, well, this is where the finances are out. Let's just take this eco. We don't grab a deagle. We'll go for a bit of a default spread. See if we can hit a couple of nice shots and warm ourselves into this game. Yet to find a frag is sent. He's had a couple of quiet ones. He really has a tough task. The fact he was even happy to be the in-game leader of this team. I thought with Sticker coming back on, maybe he'll have to do it. The fact that it's uh, such a young individual at this level of Counter-Strike of sense, showing he's up to the task. I don't envy him at all. Tap to the head of sense on his walkabout. And it's good that Emma's looking much more comfortable. Even when we started with the first gun round. Just getting to aim out up middle, grabbing a couple of kills, and now he's continuing on a bit of a rampage here, up to seven frags in total, and that's what you want, especially with a rifler who can be as good as Immer. We go back to the Paris Major, you know, in, in contention for MVP, the guy was an absolute monster. And that is what put him on the map, as Seiko Ooh. takes wonderful off it. Shot. And they're able to scavenge back the AWP, so wonderful. We'll get that back into his hands. Plenty of cash flowing now for Na'Vi. Another round's gone by where only one kill and no plan is what Apex have to take home for their troubles. So he took the time out in the previous. What is the follow through now that the guns are out? No, a no Nork AWP to contest with Wonderful. Looks like an instant window smoke in the air. Also, top cat smoke as well to get them across towards the mid box. Him, he's going for a forward mid maneuver. Supported now by JL up on short side. It's JL that combines perfectly, repels the invaders. Mid now there. It's Nork disrupts. Did catch some flak from the underpass. Deco pokes his head out of pallet. He whoa! The head spit. Great shot from Steco. Now, ooh, JL just about getting away with one onto Satsunito, puts it all back onto Nork. And that aggression seems to be a, a very solid go for Na'Vi. But again, just confidence from Emo willing to do that. Now, obviously, those suppressing flashes from his teammates really help. It holds them at bay. They're not just scurrying through the smoke. He's able to capitalize on that. And the rest of his team gets the mop and bucket out. And now it's just Nork to go for a big one-on-three clutch. He's not ready for this. Just going to be cleared out. Oh, oh, missed shot. Nork off the bomb. They know where he is. Flank coming late. So it's essentially a 1v2 for now. Smoke and Governor a go. Hoping he jumps up. Playing for that elevation. JL. That's his triple kill. Nine frags so far from him. He seems very comfortable so far here on the CT side. And he was a big part of, of the reason that Imer managed to get away with that. Finding the first of that mid aggress. Yeah, it would have been really nice to get the bomb down, obviously, with the missed shot from Wonderful. I think then he can win that heads up duel. But you can see harassing through the smoke is JL. Then Imer gets to activate. You see the flash assist as well showing up in the kill feed. If that bomb went down, Apex could have had another buy round. Now it has to be a partial investment. And now JL's starting to make some noise. This is a Na'Vi who, during the break, must have had a good hard look at themselves. Starting to see some confidence in the way that they're approaching the game. It's an A play. Yeah, a bit. This one time to incendiary. Imat does extinguish to stay under shadow. He gets away. Nice synchronicity between the A defense. In the smoke is Stiko. Not anymore. Imat ensures, and it is all over. Unless Nork's D can find four more. This great is the great that I think I was expecting. Right, they're confident, they're making decisions. The decision. Oh. Yeah, okay. Keeping them on their toes. A couple of nice ones there from Nork, but. <laughs> there's, no doubt, Nort. there's no doubt they can shoot. There's no doubt. But yeah, Na'Vi, they are shooting harder right now. And in the gun rounds, especially, and the absence of plants, it has just kind of. Yeah, not a single one. Not a single one. But it is trending upwards, Alex. In the last two rounds, they've managed two kills per round, as opposed to the previous four, there was only one kill per round. So if we continue yeah, but this fashion, yeah. uh, so we're going to do four with only one, we're going to do three with only two. Oh, this is like and that. We do two with... Only with, with two. With, with only two surviving. Yeah. Yep. And then they start planting. Oh, no, then they won't win any rounds. Oh. I remember those math problems. They were the fun ones. Like, what, what's the what's the go with this sequence? None of them were fun. No. Okay. And this isn't fun for Apex at all. Man, oh they man. need to penetrate a site and get the bomb down at least. With the max loss bonus, they can put themselves in buy potential again. They're so just th going for an exec. 
Like, Jacob's throw a mid util, great, but... But that makes sense because Na'Vi have been aggressive middle. So you're trying to catch it while Ima is either pushing up mid or overextending, and here they come. Bit, you need to delay them. Well timed. He's going forward. Look how perfect it is. They can't go through. One incendiary solves that whole problem. Just a well-timed one. Now the backup smoke towards Palace separates Deco. I feel like it's a fake through. because there's nothing behind it. Power of a single incendiary. Wonderful has that flash should he need it. Bit does. He's under a lot of scrutiny right now. Swings on out. Jacob. Haven't said that name an awful lot here on Mirage. He's been a high-impact player throughout the series. Smokes will be fading. They'd love to get that bomb down, but in the absence of smokes, it's not going to be easy. Jacob again. Fills the feed. A double. Sense needs this one after the orb. Wonderful misses the quick scope. If he can get another one CT, it's the round done. It's up to JL. Quick on the first. A 2v4 now three. Turn over. Could be planting, but not with JL and CT. Are going to fight Con together? That can work. Alexi. Ooh, gets away, but then the loss of JL. Trying to reposition. Bomb will go down thanks to Jacob. Nork to cover. Opting for the full round the world. 2 CT. Will they overlook this if he's quick? 12 bullets. I don't think he's in a position now where he can go for the reload. Might even. Oh, they have lots of cash. Give it a crack, Alexi. Yeah, but with such low HP, he'd have to really catch him unawares. Nork's safe from this angle, I think. He is now looking towards CT. Considered it for a moment. Alexi trying to catch a timing window. Jacob tucked towards the Tetris side. That's Nork converting the round for Apex. Yeah, it, it kind of rough a bit because his incendiary was so well placed. They didn't extinguish or go. It was quiet on the side. You connect the player in and it's like, well, there's obviously nothing. A bit still alive. Let me take a look towards middle. Wonderful rotating because he's obscured by the smokes. Bit gets exposed. That flash that you mentioned couldn't come out in time. And then they slowly picked them apart. There was a decent chance. If Wonderful had hit that shot, the second onto Sense. Maybe, just maybe, it would have been enough as Blade has called the first tactical timeout of Na'Vi. And he always has a lot to say, does Blade. But they've been winning the mid-fight. That's something that's been going well for Na'Vi. So in this back and forth, when you're considering the mental warfare of in-game leaders, now with Sense and Code, you go, okay, well, the sight hit worked. Do we continue to go for those sight hits? Are we expecting them to stay so heavy on middle, right? Because you think about this, you've got one player, Alexia, at your B extremity. You've got the other a bit locking down A. It's that combination of Emma, JL, and Wonderful around middle. And if they can be lulled and baited into needing to clear that out or thinking it's more of a fight, then it can keep these extremity sites quite weak. But a full buy for Na'Vi, made possible by the big streak of rounds. Six on the trot, finally concluded. And a default spread from Apex. So not an all-in, not a fast play towards middle for control, allowing Na'Vi to make the next move. Maybe even the first. Yeah, I mean, if Emma had considered a full mid control push, it would have been difficult to get past that Nork Orb. Sense and Stiko hanging around controlling A pushes and this default spread will have a timer on it. T smoke top mid and now smokes start to fly over A. Oh, a miss. Wonderful. Had an opportunity there for the opening. And Sense, first man in. Trying to lead by example. Clears his corners and down. Bit. The anchor delivers first blood for Na'Vi. It opens some gaps. Look at this space that Jacob's taken. Able to get here undetected and now pressure towards B. Jacob might be able to really work with this gap that his team are helping present up through connector. These are those Apex oh, T rounds. Yeah, exposed. Nice work from JL. Has to be a B finish. Look how disconnected Stiko on A, the other two with the bomb towards B and noted now. Ooh, good fine from Satsunito. If they can get past Alexi, it's game on. If the old Satsunito sits him on his ass. Him at hard, long-range shot does dispatch of Tatsunito, but the bomb now down and north. We know what he's capable of in the clutch and tends to come alive under pressure. Oh, going to reroute all three together, so not allowing him to isolate these fights one-on-one. -on -one. Makes it perfect against an AWP. Can only fire one bullet at a time. And there it is. Gets his first and does away. isolate. Yeah, gets away. Repositions, and he's hit another. The Nort clutch manifesting before our very eyes. He gets all three. The sweep does it again. 
every game we've covered, Nork has had some massive impact with the AWP. You can understand why Apex have signed this boy on a long-term contract. He just comes alive when the pressure is at its highest. He doesn't crumble. He doesn't miss these shots. He lights them up and wins a huge one-on-three. Nork, you did it again. I am astounded. That is, I mean, he's a gift. He is a gift for Apex right now. They were running out. Look at him. Oh, it feels good. It's rare to see that much emotion yeah. on Nork. Some fire in the belly. That's got to feel so damn good. He's given him a real opportunity to close this half out pot strong. And Sense has found an opening onto the rival as well. Wonderful's gone. They do not give up easy to these Apex boys. Compromised in their assembly of this roster. Satsunito caught out by the angle of JL. Strong equalizer, but he is trapped. That HE could be right on his nose, Jacob. Oh, fading oh. the smoke. Oh, bit. His aggression has been rewarded. It Takes down Jacob, and that's him. Walk out, eh? Oh. Never mind, Steko. He's hit the first one to him immediately. Now off the sense. If he can get both bit, it's brilliant. Still goes down, but not without a fight. Here he is again. Let's go. Welcome to Nork TV. Clutch after clutch with the AWP. Stay tuned. He's cooking. Interesting decision making out of JL. That implies he could be right there behind the smoke. It might delay Nork and that plant. Yeah, it has. And it allows JL to reposition. This is a thinking man's clutch from both of them. Now Nork considers the reroute. Does he? JL, what a clutch! Yeah, I'd raise my voice too, raise my tone. A triple kill, 14 frags from JL, and he has saved his team from red face in the 1v2. Okay, very important from JL Nork. Looked like he was getting up to trouble again. That smoke really slowed him down. Yeah, just so focused on the fact that he could have leaked out through that window. Where on earth did JL get off to? Well, this rude shock as he closes round number seven for Na'Vi. Oh, that's a gift back. Clutch on clutch. Last round. Compromised buys for both teams. Trying to shake it off. Gets himself ready. CT smoke lined up. Bit under shadow. A heavy emphasis towards mid from Na'Vi. Just bit here. Forward position. I say that as Zimmer is going to provide a smoke to delay. Sticker does have a molly from Palace. So he could burn him out from shadow. Bit has retained his smoke. Or had. Just uh, dry, without the flashbang. Sensor's caught a bit looking, playing anti, staring at the floor. Him at one back. Mid, less of a threat. Pushing CT. Three 14. of them about to fight CT. Oh, fighting. Hey, Lexi needs to tuck in. MP9. Could be the weapon. Deep clear from talking. Sense. Great awareness. Three on three. Last round of this half. There's a huge difference between 8 4 and 7 5. I don't see a kit. No, that makes things even harder. Seeker fully flashed off. The double would have been huge, but Jacob keeps it level. Favors Apex now, especially with a headshot onto JL. Wonderful, what you got for us through the flames. He's got no time for this. At a 7-5 half, Apex, they find the recipe for success, winning three of the last four rounds of that half. They're making it work in this battle for survival. Frags and flashes into the bottom of B. Olimp. He'll pull back. Consistency in that A ramp prod out of Rebels is still set up, but it's not as brazen this time. Yeah. I do like the op here. It is hard to take ramp control the exact same way, but they're swinging on it. They're going for info. 
You do have to appreciate this. Yeah, I mean, if they were to just play in the dark, I feel like that would be to just succumb to the better players. All right, but uh, it's uh, pressure's mounting on Casey. They might catch a peek on this walk-in. Oh, wow. no, the shoulder's a little off. Casey Ooh, gets bottled, enough. but he still gets his frag. Not only one, oh. but three! He's got the A1S in hand. He's got a teammate right behind him. SNX comes over to close it, and Sun Pius is going to have to give us something. Finally, no, sir. Oh. Not going to happen. What a hold. Wow, a bottle to the head, and he powers up and gets three kills. He might be kind of British. Just slips out the right side. <laughs> Barrel stuffs two. <laughs> that molly just bounces off this his forehead. turned into a bar fight right here. That was beautiful. Nicely done from Casey. <laughs> no one's going to leave a mark, but at least he also bruises up the Falcons. All right. Now, that'll get him thinking now. They try to play that as a hard round. Flay back to the same spot, but wasn't known. Oh, ouch. Uh oh. Shot. Yeah, yeah, there's more coming his way. Ah. Host. Well, at least he got a shot off to spell with some utility, but no damage dealt. T's still coming on with torrential force. Who's and SNX. Oh, I think. oh, snappy comes through as well to get the other. Rebels trying to play into it, trying to get something actively going, and unfortunately, it just gives away three separate kills. The booster, a victim of the boosty, that dink on Snappy doesn't even so close. drag. Yeah, so close. unfortunate here for Rebels. Again, playing proactive. I would be... Good evening. You're joining us right at the end of this battle between Na'Vi and Apex. It's gone all three maps. There's been uh, some celebrations. There's been some heartbreak. There's been some clutches, but uh, no surprises there when Nork is in the server. The tenacious Apex are fighting to take Na'Vi out of the running. Right here, right hey. now. Yeah, Nork's really feeling himself, and understandably so. 12 frags to his name. He's kept Apex with a fighting chance into our final half. Again, it's... Uh... Bit of a split pistol for Apex. It's not going to be the 4-1 tank. It's Steco and Window. It's Sense over towards Spawn, and it's Na'Vi out middle, springing to life with three. Alexi with that bomb posture towards Con, short smoked off. This feels quite telling of an A split. So out of position for now are Apex, but the commitment hasn't come through just yet. Alexi might overlook that jungle position. Not takes a pot shot. Steco. He's been spotted. Wonderful's got him locked in. A bomb down. Now the smoke kit for this. Yeah, keep your eyes on sense with that. Making his way back into the site now. They have jungle control. Alexi on triple though. And oh, what? Stiko. He gets two on the hunt. And ready to knife it. Alexi B. Oh, oh, yep. No. It's not gone fantastically. Now sticking the defuse oh, again. What, what is going, going on? on? Zatsunito closes a 1,500 injection of cash and the round. Oh, okay, that's both pistols in this map. And, well, not out of the woods because the bomb went down, but Stiko just lying in wait. And the fact that he snaps into the second, very surprising to see. I thought it was all cooked for him when he got spotted out by Wonderful. But Bit, yeah, actually presented his back first, so... Yeah, Miss Calm, I guess. This, yeah, this and I think weird. I think Alexi thought he had like a samurai sword or something <laughs> that far away. He was with the bomb with the initial slashes. But as we mentioned, the bomb goes down. Navi can force in Galils and pistols. They've opted to get a bit of util to work with. You can see dotted right now on the radar. Those two smokes that Jacob is contending with. One towards oh the window smoke. I believe it's missed. It has done. Top con smoke now. And a huge nade on Emma. Only one of the two Galils chunked down to 50. She's going to walk through. Jacob is holding for it. Emma punished. And he's been a bit of a shining light for the boys so far. So wonderful, wonderful would retrieve. And Jacob's already picked off another. This is a double high impact from Jacob. Caught by Wonderful but traded. This is dreamy for Apex right now. Narby, they're losing their grip. Letting it slip. Another round straight for Apex, and it feels like an eighth is guaranteed. You just put all your investments into that. Empty handed at the end of it. So both pistols, conversion's comfortable. An eighth round imminent. 
They want to keep your heads high right now. I, I don't know who the talisman of this Na'Vi team is in, in terms of, I wanted to say attitude to uplift them, but it's JL. He's currently at 14 kills. Immer's at 14. Uh, they, they need to, wow, I was going to say activate some of these individuals. We just started the Tiha, so we still have a, a bit of time before we need to start worrying about that. But when we looked at Ancient and we looked at Anubis, that's the one that really sticks out like a sore thumb is Anubis there on a five map winning streak and it was their home map and they still weren't able to get the job done. Sometimes you just have to question, there's big names on Na'Vi as far as the value put on them goes. They haven't been delivering as well as they can. I think without Wonderful on map number one, they would never have converted that. It could have even been a 2 over Apex. Oh yeah, Stiko's abused them there. Yeah, you love that, right? The Molly forces them back deep in the kitchen, hit him with a wall bang. Hit them with a deagle headshot. Yeah, and that's the type of wonderful we need a little bit more of. Is there some way that Na'Vi could sneak the plant in a round like this? Ooh. Okay, that has opened the door to do a whole lot of damage. Yeah, he's fine now. Knows that Santonito is the next first responder to he this He needs ace. to value, Alex. He needs to stay alive. Nork's pushing. This timing could be insane. It's going to be massive. The whole squad got their back turned. Nork. He's going to... A wonderful in sight. Just takes the fight when it gives it is given to him. They can plant though. Yeah, playing for the retake now. Injection of cash. Deco, what was that from Bit? Punishes the aggression. Up to Nork now to step up. Loud, audible, awkward for Satsunito. JL's keeping him trapped on mid. They need to retake this bomb site. Navi. He's done so much. Somehow, with some Deagle headshots, some mechanical prowess. Nox get no help. Yeah, and he's gone down to the Alexi P250. Na'Vi, it's their turn now for the complete perfect round. I mean, it started with Wonderful's Deagle. JL hitting that shot onto Sense completely pulled everything out of the hat. Yeah, Chef's kiss right there from JL, and understandably so. They were some nice shots. I think Bits was extremely important as they enter in towards that B bomb site. We'll catch these again in the highlight reel, but that, as you mentioned, we conclude against the force by you sitting there thinking to yourself as JL looking smug with himself. It had to be the eighth for Apex, and had it should be. have been. So this is the shot from, well, yeah, this one is a big one onto Sense, right? It opens up the door and kind of sucks out that rotation, but this one from Bit, the banger onto Stiko, and as mentioned, Nork wasn't getting any help. And, oh, a tough moment for Apex. That is going to get them down in the dumps. Have a quick little technical issue here to solve. Headset, apparently. So we'll be trying to get this one sorted ASAP. Well, that what felt like a guaranteed aid that has been stolen away. And you can stew on that while you're trying to adjust your headset. Still troubling for Na'Vi. If that's the type of rounds, oh, well, it doesn't matter, I suppose. It's an elimination series, do or die. Jail, feeling a good vibe after that, but the ups and the downs that Na'Vi have experienced today is classic. Maybe it comes with Apex. Maybe they're the ones that bring you down, wrestle you into the mud. Yeah, you have to fight them with their own game. Ooh, yeah, it's a tough one. It leaves you kind of feeling a bit icky. I guess to recap the series so far, we started on Ancient. That was the map choice of Apex and it fell against them 13 to 11 with Na'Vi getting both pistols and Wonderful with a huge performance, 28 kills to his name. We then moved on to Na'Vi's turf. That was and, Anubis. And as you explained, you know, this was where a five game wins, uh, or five map, excuse me, win streak from Na'Vi, broken by Apex. Yeah, and it's their home turf, right? You're expecting them to get it done there in that 2-0 fashion. Split pistols, Stiko and Jacob with some big impact, especially late clutches from Jacob, Stiko with some big pushes. That's Bit with a smile. And this is where we find ourselves, map number three. Seven five on the half in favor of Na'Vi. Now just winning a big deco round to keep them just in the lead by one. And during our tech pause, if you're curious, you can be sure to check out that B stream where Falcons are taking on Rebels. The Polish squad impressing us during the play-in, securing themselves a spot taking down a big name to start off proceedings in that play-in. Yeah, Cloud9 on yeah, Mirage. None other than C9. 
world rank, current rank 118, according to HRTV. I will uh, be, a, you know, a, a, I'll put a dampener on the Rebel story. They had the easiest bracket run, maybe in Katowice history, to get themselves from the plane into the group stage. Rooster M80 with a coach. Those were the two possible teams they could have played to get themselves here. I'm not, I'm not going to doubt that. Not going to. But if they that, beat Falcons, that's where I'm going. <laughs> if they take down Falcons, this multi-million dollar squad. Uh, I mean, that would be one hell of a feather in their cap. Well, that's an if. <laughs> you can check it out for yourselves over on the B stream, or of course watch them simultaneously. You dual monitor gamers. You see the clap of the hands there from Blade, and the oh, crowd nice. starting to move again. That means tech timeout that has subsided, and we're about to get back into play. Sassanito saved the M4. The rest of the Apex members apparently about to do the same. Next round they get 1,900 loss, and it's going to be touch and go with the buys. Let's see, Sassanito need to find some impact with this early and going for an underpass push. Emma, the individual tasked with dealing with that, and might even offer himself up as he starts to leer down the stairs. Okay, it's all about his timing here. Sassanito versus Emma. Him has caught a whiff, I think. Yeah, he was well trained on that position, and so the potency of this round fizzles out. I like the aggression. I just think maybe a bit more follow through. A teammate, someone to bait for you, it being more aggressive, sitting and waiting to not even get a chance to use the save rifle. It's like, well, maybe last round you could have helped Nork. Stiko has at least been able to take some space based off of Emma's movements, and they have three players over towards A. There's a chance it could get chaotic. No, there's not. It sweeps any problems under the rug. And the Deagle gets wild, but will still connect. And it is just the aforementioned Stiko B apartment's push. This butter knife. Well, it's like a nice uh, a welcome respite from the chaos in this uh, series so far. Probably the most convincing one Na'Vi have had in some time. And also in this moment, we can talk about the uh, matchup to come this yeah. evening here on the mainstream. FaZe versus Eternal Fire. Eternal Fire on quite the run. FaZe just started their campaign against the easiest of opponents. Nice shot there from Stiko. Couldn't miss that one, could he? But uh, the reason that that's important is the winner of this series will take on the loser of that one. So if uh, FaZe or Eternal Fire lose, they will be taking on whoever is able to come out triumphant as we continue this tug of war, this arm wrestle, this back and forth affair between Na'Vi and Apex. This lower back at run, which whoever the third team from Group A that will be able to push their way into the Spo deck, it is going to be a tall task as sticking out. You could see how much of an indication Ember had to find that frag. And out come the guns. Feeling like it's becoming do or die for Apex now. Navi are just four rounds away from picking up map number three. Keeping their kind of it's a run alive. Interesting, they're gonna go for a bit more of an aggressive setup towards B, the Satanita that takes this early amp space. Boosted up and tucked in. Oh, if you can't go under them, apparently you go over them. Satanita might need to go through them as uh, they've completely evaporated from any B apartment's pressure. Wonderful being called back over towards A. Emma now tasked with middle. Sense burnt out of position. And a rotation from Nork and Jacob because they've been smoked off for now. Interesting to see Nork floating back. He's. I guess they're worried about a window, window boost. boost. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Because they don't have any eyes on middle. Sen's been having a rough go of things. Contact. He's going to be burnt out. Flushed. No reaction required. Sen's Surprise. completely off guard by that contact walk up the ramp. Emma's going to catch Sassanito here. Oh, wow. Jacob that does a lot of damage onto Wonderful. Emma catching Sassanito for sure, so there's really no hope for Apex here. And down he goes. Bit hits him with the shrapnel from the HE. And Stiko once again finds himself on the wrong side of the map. They know where he plays, and now they know exactly where he is. Taking down Emma's one. But they want to take this away. They want to remove everything. Wow, this is on point for uh, classic Apex right now. I'm sure we're going to see something that's a partial investment, and then there'll need to be some heroics. Somebody stepping up with the clutch. We tend to get these bursts of rounds. Are they able to bounce back once more and show us that same play that we've seen throughout this tournament? It's been quite a wild ride for Apex from the play-ins to the group stage. But this was perfect. Just contact out the molly, perfectly placed. Sense, no choice. You either sit and burn or you swing and 
walk into three Navi members. It's the final tactical timeout. The final 30 seconds is, as they get closer to victory, JL becomes even more animated. Myth up with final marching orders, final inspirational speech. Done it once, he did it again. This could be the third bite of that cherry. Is there anything left here for Apex? It's, a, it's been a convincing little run now from Na'Vi to stabilize in this lower bracket. And it all started with the Deagles. Yeah, I mean, that round. Those are the regrettable rounds, right? There's, there's a reason that they really sour the mood within a team when you lose a round where the others have just invested, what, 700 bucks? couple of hand cannons and they just hit some absolute zingers and now you've lost three on the trot you're on an eco of your own 11 feels like it's destined for navi the guns come back out you lose that well it feels like you've lost the game well i mean there's a reason that you could see just like so much joy uh, from jl after that round he kind of he knew what it meant he knew it marked what was a nullification of those hero rounds out of nork and they found some confidence across their individuals oh yeah miss jump start the rifles starting to find some form J.O., Emmett, and Bit, all in the teens. Dead now. Sense as well, Emmett collects and punishes that retrieval. Can walk the bomb wherever they want. Nork and his trusty 5-7 going to be disconnected from this one. Of course, you can see there's no answers yet. Wonderful. He'll be diligent on his clears. Wide open B bomb site, but they're not to know. Maneuvering in to get that bomb down, an imminent 11 for Navi. There it is, secure. Imet with a triple, padding the stats nicely. 19 from Imet, and two rounds away from elimination are Apex. Yeah, it has to be somewhat flawless in a round like this. Need to show strong rifle form now, Apex. You had the pistol, the conversion against the force, the loss to the Deagles. You've lost one gun round since, and now you get another opportunity with everything you'd want and more. I say that, they're missing a defuse kit. And Sense could have bought one as well. He has $500 left over. Oh, that would have been nice. As look at this, very forward position from Bit. He's just going to creep and crawl. It worked for him once, and it might work again. Sense was default. Save from the flames this time. Whoa, image sharp. He just out orped an orper. An AK-47 bullet right between the eyes. Nork is gone. JL's working. Stigo has support from Sassanito who's floating back towards B. This would be hard for now to break. Oh, so hard. you'd suspect. Jacob's been hurt hard done by there. Four HP left on Alexi after that engagement. Stigo breaks out, hits his shots, commits to the ball back to JL. I mean, he kept his boots planted. So three versus two, advantage just by a slight margin. The path of least resistance would be down through the underpass into connector. Senses over towards the A ramp. He's become the loose piece on A, but they know he's the A defender. And Sassanito already starting to cheat back from the B site, but staying silent about this. Boosting window. Alexi can cut off the rotation. Oh, Sassanito. Kind of wears. And no sense is the A holder. Are they going to? Try and find him and fight him. Gives him a, an opportunity. It's not much, but it's an opportunity. And Alexi, wow! A triple kill round, two of which with four HP. Jacob brought him low and it didn't seem to matter. Oh, those claps aren't going to mean a lot. Lost bonus, maxed out in the dumps now. Just one more round for Na'Vi to keep themselves alive in Katowice. The individuals maybe not showing the highest of their skill ceiling this evening. But they've shown up on map number three where it matters most. Just need to get past this final investment from Apex. Yeah, and Emma's really kind of warmed into things as well. High impact opening in the previous. And it all has to be Apex. If they want to stay here in Katowice. Could end right here and right now. Nade looks good. That's better. Jacob's aggression has caught Emmett unaware. So taking down that potent piece. It's a good start. More required. Jacob down. Alexi. Meets Katsunito's double. Huge start for Apex's defense. Nico's going to find the bomb with this push. 
a bit. Yeah, it's going to be nice out for him. Oh, he gets his gun out in time. Good anticipation from him. Satsunito putting in a strong shift. At least Pitt's got himself that bomb and that kill. He's got time to work with as well. If Satsunito over pushes this, you can see he hasn't. He's actually starting to get himself back out of dodge. Be responsible for that B-bomb site. And getting the info there, Nor quick to do so. Just had his knife out and jiggled. Sassanero should have. It's Nork that finds it. So, yeah, I mean, this is a long road back in. This is a long one. <laughs> there are some huge issues that they're going to have to overcome to get there. Alexi, before investment right now, has 16K. Mm. Uh, and a timeout has just been used from Blade. So does he have the finishing blow? The answer to this Apex problem. And that's what they have been for multiple teams. Just ask Furia and Big about that. Moving a million miles a minute, 30 seconds to get out how you would want this team to proceed. A nod of acknowledgement from Alexi and freeze time starting to trickle on down. So we're about to get things back underway. Apex, how much longer can you hold on? I started with Jacob's aggression through the underpass. Which we know Jacob is a, is a brave soldier. He'll go and do that without another question, without second guessing the call. And off the back of this it again. Now, let's see what Jacob can do this time. Audible, Imet, just charging, stampeding. And it's going to be, oh, nothing. Empty handed, covered by Alexi, and two immediate frags for Navi in the feed. Couldn't have worked out better. Apex are three deaths away from elimination right here, right now. And it's sense with a whole squad in front of him. That smoke won't last forever. Bit expecting, anticipating a close ramp play. Pre-aiming it. Cover JL. One is great. Wonderful missing his shot. Could lead to another, but quick to swap to the Glock. And now it all hinges on these two. Stiko, good for the first of this 2v4. Nork playing CT. A smoke to play around. He's given himself a little bit of a playground to survive. He swings through. Ahead of the smoke. Doesn't find the kill. The lethality was needed. Alexi's found Stiko, and it seems Na'Vi have done enough. It's just Nork in the clutch. And he's gone. Bit secures it. Na'Vi will fight another day. Apex packing their suitcases. They put up one hell of a fight, breaking the Anubis streak of Na'Vi. And the individuals, they had to wake up. Ime at the top of the scoreboard here on the third. Bit not far behind. Apex tenacious for sure. Taking scalps on their path, but it ends today. Yeah, eventually snuffed. I think they performed above most people's expectations, did Apex. A plucky team, quite clutchy, an annoying play style to deal with. But this will be the end of the road for them at IEM Katowice. Their story is closed, but Navis, can it continue? The individual's not showing the best of form today. They're going to need to go back to the drawing board and look at some of the fundamental problems, missing a view till on maps like Ancient in back-to-back -back days. That needs to be nipped in the bud because it is going to be a tough road forward. They play against the loser of FaZe versus Eternal Fire, and Eternal Fire has shown some very, very good form. If they do fall to FaZe, I think they have a great shot. The Turks going up against the international super team of FaZe this evening, so it could be a Na'Vi versus FaZe matchup on the cards. And we're going to head down to the sidelines with Shox for the interview. Yes, we are, and I've got JL again. I talked to you before the match, and you were saying how, yeah, maybe the lower bracket, it's a good opportunity. You know, you can find out what you need to work on, but oh my god, that was a difficult matchup. I mean, with us playing like that, we have a lot to work on, and I'm quite glad we jumped to lower bracket so we can fix all these mistakes, and I just think we're not there. Not disrespecting Apex, but our level of play is uh, not where we want it to be, not where it was at least a few weeks ago, and we're playing uh, Ajax, yes. Yeah, I think people understand that you don't mean any disrespect, you know, when you look at some of the individual performances, as you say, on your own team. Um, will you have enough time? Because it's not like you have a week to fix them. I don't think it's about CS. I think it's about our mental. Maybe we should prepare a little bit different. Maybe we should eat an extra banana or maybe less bananas. It's. I think it's all in our head and we should uh, move away this burden from our head. And if we manage to do that, there's nothing to stop us. Um, can you say something to uh, some of your ex-colleagues who unfortunately are now uh, out of the tournament? It's unfortunate. 
That was simple enough. I know I, sh uh, I saw it in the game as well. There were some moments where you know that when they're behind Apex specifically, they can clutch it out of nowhere really, right? And we saw that from Nock a couple of times. Was it very satisfying for you that one time when it was 1v1 and you repositioned, you waited for him and you knew exactly what to do? I know it's Nock. I know how he likes to play. He doesn't want to plant the bomb, but he wants to kill the opponent first and... I just knew if I smoke, if I throw the smoke, I know for 15 seconds he's either not planting on B or going back trying to outplay me. But I was a step ahead because I played with him for a long time. I know how good of a player he is, and yeah, unfortunately for him, I was a step closer this time. Yes, you were. Well, uh, Navi, get the victory here. Back to you. Thank you so much, Socks. Yes, Navi live to fight at least one more day here in Katowice, as unfortunately it is Apex to be amongst the first to be eliminated from the group stage of the Intel Extreme Masters. Steel, I think uh, JL kind of summed it up perfectly. A lot for Navi to be working on, but a win is a win. They will be moving forward. Yeah, he did say a few things there, like they weren't playing to their potential, um, that it was more a mental thing or preparation thing than it was an in-game thing. And I think I have to disagree with that because while we did see a few good moments, especially from JL in this Mirage game, yes. uh, the clutch situation that they're talking about where he threw the smoke out market window, repositioned and was able to go catwalk. He did another play like this. They had a, a he had a deagle, he was up at top con and he saw one of the um, uh, players moving up catwalk and he just, knew not to overextend, not to take that fight, not to die, and just keep his life. And those small decisions where you keep your advantage or you push your advantage or you stay a step ahead of the enemy, that's not what we've been seeing from Na'Vi. We've been seeing overextensions. We've been seeing sloppy play. We've been seeing missed shots. So I don't think it is a preparation thing. I think it is just a, a matter of playing poor CS on their part. Yeah, but I also think I wanted to add towards that last map. They actually do manage to do a relatively clean Mirage. Obviously, it was not... 13 0, but they did win, right? And I think the difference maker is once we see Jail and I'm coming alive on the server, really like delivering on the fracking side, it just becomes a whole nother Navi. Like, once it's only wonderful, as you said earlier, that is the only one above the basket. When these guys also move up to that territory of being like really great players, it just changes the perspective of Navi because I think they actually have really good basics. I think the mental part of where you talked about, I think I don't buy it either. I think they yeah. just solely need to find a way to make these players perform. I'm not sure if it's an Alexi B thing or it's like a I'm jail thing, like, but like somebody needs to sort out these things because it can't happen in the playoffs if they want to go there. I'm very glad they at least got to put, you know, the pieces of the EMA jail puzzle together on the last map. But I think we need to give uh, the flowers to a wonderful throughout this series. Here's our Air Force aim high player of the match because uh, yeah, he was consistently delivering. And I think it's uh, been, you know, a claimed of what he was able to put up on the server today, particularly when Na'Vi were tested by Apex, which I don't think any of us were, were expecting. Yeah, he definitely played some really good CS. We didn't see him show up too much on the last map of Mirage, but he was performing in the other two maps wonderfully. <laughs> Except for, I mean, there was a little bit of a blunder on the, the plant on B on Anubis when they were, yeah, they we'll, were in the first two. We'll, but we can we'll skip through. We'll, 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 we'll skip through because it's highlighting how good he was and yeah, maybe Mirage wasn't his best map. You'll, you'll also have to kind of give him some credit for like the immense pressure that he's on. Like he's replacing yeah. one of the best of all time. And the fans, I know they don't expect it, but he himself will be like, I'm stepping into the shoe, like play the shoes to working with this. Now all of a sudden he got me. And I think he's done a, the best job of all of the players at Na'Vi. I think Alexi and so on is the ones we need to see more. But from the guy of Wonderful, he's actually the one in my mind that is doing his job to perfect. Inversely uh, from Apex, obviously one of the first to be eliminated here. I am kind of it, sir. Um, how does that leave kind of the taste of Apex in your mouth? Is it a bitter one? Is it one that you're looking forward to the future and going, hey, there's actually some decent pieces here to be building with? Yeah, I think one person we kind of skipped on highlighting was Nock, actually. He had a lot of good impact, especially in those clutch situations. We saw him win a one versus three, for example, on Mirage at the end there. Mm -hmm. um, on, on his T side, he planted, he took one at a time, but that's also Navi kind of trolling, like eh, maybe group up a little bit better. But he had a lot of performances like that where he's able to convert rounds that maybe Apex had no, you know, reason to win mm. and it's just like okay who are we looking at we're always highlighting Stiko and his his moving around and his uh finding the lurk timings but knock was a closer for those guys for sure realistically i also think they're happy about this result like just to talk about it a little bit mm. i think going to the group stages was their win i think yep. they get that first game against the complexity it's actually a really quote-unquote easy game of what you can expect in a group stage and once they throw that one or like are not able to put up a fight it kind of says like their end station is coming 
pretty soon because they're going to have to go that through that lower bracket all of a sudden with three games and free build freeze and vitality is down there as well like for me it was just a matter of time before apex was out and today was the day well that apex train unfortunately has moved into its final station they are eliminated here from iem katowice so let's get a few departing thoughts courtesy of sense the end of the road, unfortunately, for Apex uh, Sense. What a match. Uh, unfortunately, you didn't come out the winner. Uh, I'd love to know where you think, in the end, it went wrong. I mean, if you look at our city side throughout the whole BO3, it's, that's where we struggle. Like, we, we also knew that before coming into the tournament. Our city sides are kind of weak, so... Yeah, we couldn't do it on the city side. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at your whole tournament, though, I think there were uh, a lot of people that were very surprised that the results that you did get, and you were also open saying we're all going for that RMR, we're going for that major as well. So how valuable has this then been for you also in terms of your IGL route? I mean, this uh, tournament has been very important for us. Like, uh, we come and we open uh, the tournament with a 0-13 against um, Spirit. So it was important for us to come here, check the things we have been practicing at home, and uh, see what we need to adapt. Definitely. Uh, look forward to hopefully seeing you at the Major. Thank you. Thank you so much for the word, Sench. Yes, sadly, the end of the line. The clock does strike midnight for Apex here at the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice 2024. Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the site. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. He's in contract jail in the Fury Tower. Well, firstly, congratulations, everyone. You are the lucky few who have made it through the auditions. What auditions? Now, it's time for some dry runs. Now, I'm sure you've all memorized your lines. You guys never send me the script. But the script is here if you need it. Now, Hugo, please, go on. Interior, night, a troop patrols an underground bunker. We follow a tunnel leading to an impenetrable metal door. Inside, a meeting takes place. Look around, gentlemen. I was tasked to assemble the greatest minds Counter-Strike has to offer. But none of them could make it. You read the brief? Keserato is in contract jail in the Fury Tower. I ask for your best trust to get him out. Well, what do we have here? Take it by force. Impressive as ever, Victor. Kirill? But you always made the plan the best. 
Alexi? I may have something, but it's complex. Try me. We hit the north entrance and we hit it hard. We send in Alpha for a full force breach. With the Furia forces occupied north, Beta Squad sneaks in through the southern entrance. Alexi, sorry, please, just for me. Can you simplify it? Okay, concentrate. Let's take the north entrance labeled A. The south, B. We send one squad north to hit A, but what we're actually doing is hitting B. A diversion. It's so crazy, it just might work. Of all the IGLs I've worked with, you are the only one who gets it. It's genius. Call in Alpha and Beta. Let's go get our man. What? You really don't know. It's fake. He's a fucking idiot. Well, yes, Eternal Fire is uh, about to play face, so I'm going to do a little vibe check and see who I can find. I see Woxic here setting up. Hello. Hello. Hi. We'll do it like, like this. Huh? We'll just do the interview like this. Is that okay for you? Uh, yeah, it's okay. Okay. Um, you uh, have been doing amazing Eternal Fire on quite the streak. Uh, now that you've had some time to kind of watch your own demos back, what has been the most impressive thing about your own play, you think, or the best thing? I think uh, we just... Um Find our like find out our chemistry in the end, and that's why like we are showing the performance like this. And I think we're gonna keep doing that till the end of the year, like maybe even more. So we'll see. Okay, till the end of the year or more, that's a long time. But you gotta start by beating Phase, and of course they're gonna be the most difficult opponent that you have faced yet. So tell me about that match. Uh, I think it's gonna be a great matchup because uh, almost half of them is my ex teammates. <laughs> so it's gonna be a great matchup. It's good to see always. Look, he's uh, just doing like this. Uh, do it one more time. Yeah. <laughs> So it's going to be a great matchup. I like to uh, face with the, one of the best teams in the world. So we're just going to show what we are capable of. And we are not here by luck. And we're just going to be here all the time. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Finally, we have arrived at the last matchup here on the group A, or excuse me, the stream A. But, uh, well, yeah, we've arrived at that last matchup of the day. My name is Trace. I'm taking over for Freya for the rest of it. And we do have FaZe taking on Eternal Fire. Now, here are the implications. The winner advances to the playoffs. And meanwhile, that loser is going to go play Navi, who just won in the lower bracket. So the Intel Extreme Masters is very much alive here in Katowice, Poland. Some teams, though, well, that's a different story, isn't it, Josh? It is a different story. I think, you know, from the, mass, the last match that we just saw, we're seeing, like, not great things, but Eternal Fire, on the other hand, they've been looking pretty good. They've been looking good all through the play-ins. They've been looking like they're on point. Um, I know nothing about them, but I'm happy to learn. Well, you know, part of the I'll trick was to not say that, and the, then everything else would have came to fruition. <laughs> I guess I just have to look at this and start this, the story of Eternal Fire 13-1 and open a match. Yeah, I, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I'm also just going to be bringing in the thing that I think there's two teams in this tournament that have surprised me, and I think one of them is Eternal Fire and the other one is Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. I think Eternal Fire has done it on a more reasonable level. I think they didn't totally do anything out of the ordinary. I think Wikadia is the one to watch all of a sudden. I don't think anyone expected this guy to be that good considering it's one of his first lands. He did do it a couple of times beforehand, but this is one, this is like fourth or fifth land. We're also seeing uh, resurgence from Xanteras and Woxic, though. They were the ones that were performing pretty well in the last series that they played in as well. So even though we do have some new talent coming up, we do have some of the old guard coming back in. And, and that's the thing, like, Xanteras is that type of player for me who has... He's been at the top before with Big, and he was, like, a really good player. But for some reason, he didn't get picked up by anyone else. He decided to go back to Turkey and make his own project with Eternal Fire. And it's not really ever gotten to that point where you feel like, okay, these are a playoff contender, but all of a sudden they stand in a position where they're very, very close. Yeah, and, you know, for a side like Eternal Fire, right? So they obviously had the 13-1. That's, that's pretty much what you can ask for, right? That's a great start to any tournament. Doesn't even matter where you are. 
you go a little bit further, you, you've got him still showing dominance and showing a good performance, albeit, you know, we were talking about Zontera as being one of those main guys that you're looking at to make plays over there. However, I mean, Waxic showing up helps. It does help a lot. I mean, for me, he is the one that needs to step up because when we're looking at Bukhari and Santaris, they're actually delivering a really high bottom level, but Vojcik is so inconsistent at times. If he's able to be a part of that trio, they all of a sudden have a really, really strong one going into the teams of the likes of FaZe, who potentially have one of the best in the world, right? So they're going to have to come alive, and Vojcik, yeah, he's the one to watch. And he also have a lot of former experience with the likes of Robs, Frozen, and Kerrigan back in the days doing dirty stuff to other teams. So let's uh, let's do this. Tell me about the vibe that, that you're getting here from Eternal Fire when you watch them in the server, when you're watching them play. I think when I see them, it just feels like they enjoy to play with each other, right? I think we have those teams who step into the server and they feel like, okay, now I'm on my job, I need to do my thing, I need to perform, right? When I see Eternal Fire just going around the, the venue and so on, it feel, really feels like they're all, oh, <laughs> all a sort of a family. And I think it brings a lot, especially when you're like that local team, you're going to be looking for local talent all the way. So I think you need to have a very inclusive type of, of atmosphere. Yeah, I definitely like even around the hotel, for example, it's like they move as a pack, as a family. <laughs> like you're not even, you know, other teams, they'll just be like two parts or mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that is ideally what your team should be doing, working together to kind of like problem solve goals. Maybe problem solving means where we're going to eat dinner, but most teams can't figure that out. Yep. Uh, let's take a look at this map pool comparison right here. And this is why this sticks out, uh, at least off the page, because it would look like, you know, Eternal Fire doesn't necessarily want to run with an Inferno. They don't want to run with an Ancient, right? Yeah, the Permaban is Ancient, but they can play an Inferno at times, so it's a little bit confusing at times to, to see where they want to go. And for sure, they're not going to have that statistic going through that whole tournament because somebody is going to dare to challenge them. But Anubis, I mean, you're looking at this, I'm seeing a little bit of a weakness there maybe. Does that sound fair? Yeah, I mean, for, for um, we have those middle ground maps, which is often the Mirage, and I think it's going to play into their strengths in some matchups, and some matchups they're going to have a really hard time to like go to their strengths. I think this is what we are yet to see from the likes of Eternal Fire is like having that deep map pool where they're able to play on weaknesses once they're figured out because we know some teams have really good analysts and once they're figured out to a certain level, we also need to see them being able to expand upon that. Yeah, and expand we will because now we talk a little bit about FaZe, right? I mean, they're no strangers to the front lines out here now, are they? So let's hear their thoughts going into this matchup. Frozen, welcome to Katowice. Thank you. Uh, is it uh, to your liking, not too cold? Uh, it is. I think last year was snowy, so I think this year is a little nicer. I think better weather, but the rain is. Uh, yeah. But it's nice. Yeah. It's a, it's a little bit annoying. Anyways, let's uh, get into uh, yourself and your form. How do you feel you're evolving, progressing within this new phase system? Mm, I think you know, learning, maybe getting better every day. Um, still so much for me to learn, and as I said, the, in others were like experience with the boys. So yeah, I mean, it's a learning process in a way, and. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I think uh, maybe in like three months, it's where I would like to be already, like, you know, at 100%. Okay, I see. Uh, I did see an interview uh, with you, or I read on HLTV around the spring groups, that you said that you're getting a lot of freedom to test your limits and also sometimes secondary calling on some maps and things like that. Could you explain that a little? Um, yeah, I mean, I have some, I would say, crucial part of the maps that I need to control. So, yeah, it requires the demanding a lot from the teammates. Uh, yeah, sometimes commanding them as well. Okay. So... Yeah, I mean, if you could, could uh, if you can call that second calling, uh, in a way, maybe I have some, you know, pocket strats uh, as well. But uh, I think that's that's more of the second calling that I do. Okay, I see. Now uh, your first opponent here will be Eternal Fire, and they, where well, they are fired up, no pun intended. You know, they have a dream of getting to those playoffs, and they can be dangerous and very, very scrappy. So, what do you think is going to be the key here? Uh, I mean, who's one, who will want to win more, I guess? I mean, everyone wants to go to Spotag, right? For me, it's as well going to be first time playing in Spotag, and uh, yeah, I mean. I don't want to have any obstacles in my way, so yeah. yeah. So you want it more? I want it more. All right. Let's see. Yeah, Frozen joining the squad over here at FaZe is, is definitely something to behold. It's been an interesting thing to even comp uh, you know, kind of contemplate. But when you look at the numbers, I think he's done his job. Now, that poses the question to you there, Bubski. Let's talk about Frozen. Let's talk about what he brings to the table and what he brought to the table, Miles. How is there a comparison to be had there? Um, I think he's a different type of player from Twist, at least. Uh, I think Twist was the more explosive rifle. I think he would sometimes just take games on his shoulder. I don't think Frozen is the exact same, but he's that solid anchor who's always able to deliver. We're also going to have some cross um, roles between him and Rain, so it's going to be really funny to see how the future will evolve around these two, like who's going to be taking their initial roles and who's going to be switching around. For now, it's been very much a dynamic thing, but obviously Frozen and Twist 
they're not the same player, but they very much bring the same type of aims and situations, right? Yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to see how that slots in because when I look at FaZe, I look at their roles across the maps and it looks like Kerrigan, especially on the CT sides, he's putting himself in positions where he can move around a lot. And you're typically in positions where you would be, you would put like a star player in a certain position where Kerrigan is found, where you would think, oh, you, you're going to be a lot of engagements, therefore I want someone who's aiming really well. But we're actually going to be looking at Kerrigan probably staying in that role, which means that there isn't a lot of flexibility for Frozen to go and pick up other spots. But I mean, they he looked really good in their opening game, which is a plus. But I mean, replacing twists after they had all these like, you know, string of run, like they won like five tournaments in a row or something. Not actually that many, but. Sounded they, good. They, it sounded really good. Yeah, you just got to embellish the, the truth a little bit. I mean, there's no denying what they did down in Sydney, right? Like that. That's yeah. a pretty obvious thing. We're talking about 13 I mean, hours on land. In the like, finals. Okay, well, yeah, we, <laughs> we don't have to go that far into it, I suppose. But truth be told, this is still a phase that is full of problem solvers. Yeah. Right? yeah. So if there's someone that's going to pressure them and someone that kind of needs to step up at that point right now, Eternal Fire, if they can do that, that speaks volumes on their side. Yeah, and you just mentioned Sydney, and that was the first CS2 event, right? And we talk about being dynamic and being attributed to certain things. I think. Kerrigan is the one l learning in this adaptability. Like, he's always able to learn new stuff and able to teach his players the ways of playing. Because I think for FaZe, the reason why they were so good is, w is was that they were able to pick up the meta relatively fast compared to other teams. We also saw complexity for a current period being really good at it. So, yeah. oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to add on to that about FaZe, like, picking up the meta, is that they've been looking really good in a lot of ways, but they also have the tendency to troll rounds away and like have rounds slip and have games slip. They end up winning somehow, but they, they do have the propensity to troll. Yeah, so, okay, that begs the question, which one are you gonna go against FaZe in this one? Oof. You gonna yep. slap? You know what, I'll do it. If, if you're not gonna, you're gonna go, go, I'll, gonna I'll go Eternal Fire. Why not? <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's a, that is a gamble. Uh, what do you got? I got the. I still got the two-one for face. I believe the experience will play in here. I do love the Inferno pick. We didn't talk about it too much, but I think it's gonna. It's kind of like a fuck you statement. Uh, oh, sorry. Oh my God, this is a family show. <laughs> it's all good. Okay? But but I do like it in some way because they haven't played it before and they know Kerrigan and those guys are so good in the anti strat and all of a sudden they're going into the blind spot. Yeah, well, uh, there's nowhere for us to head but to sit back down and watch this game because we are ready to get this one underway uh, just shortly. I'm looking at several things here, several components to keeping this game very much at the forefront of your mind. So if it is, make sure you use that hashtag IEM to let us know everything you're thinking about what we're doing up here. Hell, you want to talk about our commentators? I could talk about them forever. I love those guys, so I might as well just mention who they are as well. It's going to be Sponge and Machine bringing you all the action in this best of three featuring FaZe and Eternal Fire. We love you too, Trace, and uh, loving what we're hearing from Steel and Bubs Key. It's nice to be hearing those opinions uh, about what a game I'm very, I'm very excited for, Chad. I I've been excited about Eternal Fire's rise to power. When you review their route to this point, is it, is it hard? It's hard to argue that FaZe is their biggest challenge. They haven't played a team like FaZe before. No, not at all. I think uh, we're still learning about Falcons, who are also learning about Rebels right now over on our B stream, brought to you by Scrawny and Launders. You can check all that action out, but we will be turning our attention here. And yeah, look, Eternal Fire, the thing that we are liking about this team is the type of Counter-Strike they are playing. And if they can continue to do so against a big name like FaZe Clan, well, now we're cooking with gas. Winner of this in the Spodak, team number two, just quickly behind Spirit, who locked it in earlier in the day. And we have some heavy hitters in the server for Eternal Fire on their map choice. Laxus and Tara is going to be grabbing some of that banana. They control it with Kadri as well. Talk of the town. And FaZe Clan, while well, they've chopped and changed some of their CT setup since the addition of Frozen, he's playing over towards B with Carrigan. Rain actually playing short in the A side of the map. We'll have to compliment Rops quite nicely as a jump spot. Rops with some info. Rain staying aggressive, poking his head down middle. As Eternal Fire are not in a rush. Ready for any aggressions they were as Frozen. Well, he's ready to fight. He's gonna have to. Brokey and Frozen. Ooh, catch a whiff of Zantares. A flash over for the peak, and that's what they were waiting for. Now the counter utility in. Chip damage dealt to two of them. Safe from the flash is frozen, but backing away, just trying to take an isolate a duel. He's done it. He gets the first of the pistol round. It's Zantares as well. It's a good scalp to take, and look at Woxic and Magia limping already. Still have the utility to execute, but frozen. Apparently, he wants to continue executing, Ooh. pushing out into Wakadia. He's down. And if he was to find Brokey, it really turns the whole round on its head. 
I'd still like to see them just execute B here. Two smokes. Smoke CT, smoke ruins, flash and go. But Madja, he's got other ideas. A seasoned vet, 1.6. CS go, CS2. Ah, that oh, guys. does nothing. <laughs> that does nothing at all. If anything, it's going to free up. A ra Ooh. Yeah, Rain's going to activate. He's like, that was so sus. I'm coming. He's going to have a fast flank on him. Now with 25 seconds left, they are heading in towards this site. They have got the smoke. They have got the flash. And Rain's already knocking on that flank. It's Madja. Dead. Quick. Woxic. Back. Brokey. They may overlook Carrigan. I know he's a B defender. And they found him, but it's with a bullet between the eyes. Wakadia. 10 seconds. They need to plant. They need to plant. Carrigan. Last man two. standing. Eight seconds left. If he can find this one, it's all a 1v1. No bullets. Four seconds. Can he survive? He's darted around. It's hectic. And Calix with two seconds to spare. He secures it for a turn on fire. Wow. Oh, Talk about down to the wire. He's a seasoned vet, like we said. Yeah, no traumas at all in that one. Just like they planned. Just like they planned. Let's see this one again. This was a great shot from Acadia. They, it, they did make it very, very intense with the timer. Well, this is it, right? Because as soon as oh. Harrigan pokes up his head, takes down Woxic, the yeah. tire, yeah. Three bullets left, Chad. If he didn't hit that shot, oh. it was probably Carrigan. Getting away with that one. All right, all right. Well, it's not actually going to be the force from FaZe. They've stacked four towards B. Okay, so this is what I wanted to highlight just quickly for everybody while we've got it. FaZe are going to be throwing a smoke that's going to be landing about here. Let's do this. Yeah. Uh, that, that's probably what it's going to look like. smoky. Yeah, and then there's rounds where Brokey will have an AWP. We have a short side. They'll actually nade the smoke. So clear, bang, smoke gone. And then Brokey will take a sight line down, look for some picks when they push them back with Molotovs down banana. But we can get back into the action now. Thanks for that, MC. Just wanted to illustrate something we can look for and something that Eternal Fire will have definitely noted when watching some phase demos. It's going to be interesting to see what their responses are to that play as well. We used to see back in the day Twists pushing up, looking over as well. Yeah, and I think Calix, the man that was just on our screen, is going to be quite important because Rops is a very active boiler and apps player. Mm. A lot more than the most A-side anchors. If anything, he uh, really feels that side of the map. When you look at Rops' play style traditionally, he's quite passive. He sits back. He definitely doesn't get in your face, but Inferno is an outlier for Rops. Taking the path of least resistance here. And understandably diligent. Like, they, they, they are not going to leave a single corner unchecked, as Woxic demonstrates. Full control of the site. Now they can get that bomb down uncontested. I guarantee you all of uh, Turkey is going to be watching this one today. They have a massive fan base to Eternal Fire. I was playing some pugs today. I had a Turkish individual in our team. They're like, oh, today, Eternal Fire, what do you think? I'm like, yeah, they're going to do it. Right, obviously. Yeah. I won't give my real prediction, but... Uh, I was on board. He was excited. Understandably so. I mean, it, it, it's. Uh, I, I have no idea what it feels like, obviously, as a Brit. <laughs> but uh, you had I had players. I've had players, point. and I know how that felt. You know, that was quite exciting. Never mind having a full five man roster representing your region on the global stage in a game that you're uh, 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 obsessed with. They're hunting here against no armored opponents, and well, they're only giving up one casualty. Drops is going to fall as well. They sweep the board. That is quite tidy. Brokey's going to have to operate in this first gun round with only 3.7k. And something you're noting when you're getting those kills is, did they have head armor? Because right. that's going to be help re relaying that information to Maja of were they in a force buy or was it just a light investment? And uh, speaking of light investment, I see four MP9s. Yo, this is intriguing. And a shotgun. Yeah, no. Alexander B. Richardson. Yeah. In all my years. Yeah, maybe Big Clan are going to be taking some notes of this. That kind of... Uh... Well, there's that smoke. Half by. Just going to throw some aggression into the mix. Ops burrows deep into the smoke, trying to catch a timing. A little window of opportunity with Cardia. Oh, it's a really, really deep push now for Ross. Now, they'll be aware of the possibility, but the threat, it exists, and Frozen's planning to flash upon the fade. This is up against AKs. This is an inspired idea. Let's see how it works. Flash in. Zatar is blind. Just about gets that spray controlled. He takes down the rifle up and Rops, he should have Wakadia dead to right here. You're not ready. Ready. Oh. Oh, no. That's an uncharacteristic sequence of events from FaZe Clan. Somehow lost control of the MP9. Oh, Brokey. He can farm. How many's he got? Oh, nothing at all. It's Wogsig triple. Now, they're probably scratching their heads as well. You know, you talked about relaying I don't information. Need, but this is the thing that I don't get, right? That type of investment, we still go into the first gun round and they're not going to have all the utility they need for the standard map control. 
I'm looking at the buys coming through uh, right now, and the amount of Molotovs I cut is, uh, what, two? Maybe Rocks will get one out to be a third. Good rifling from Wogsik. Handled that. Fortunately, it is on Frozen and Carrigan, those incendiaries, right? That's going to help them get the banana control, and they've also been gifted a smoke. You can see that one flying through the sky. It's going to help get just past logs. Oh, barrels now. You know, maybe we can update the naming. We've been calling it car for years. There hasn't been one of those in an awfully long time. As that banana smoke that was just highlighted, the one that's a little bit more orangey, that is something that Eternal Fire like to throw to allow Zantara's to get some space, but this is... Zantara's nowhere near Banana, up in the boiler room, and maybe they wanted to send in for these head-to-heads with Rops, who we can see with the X-ray is boosted on the other side of Porch. Has rain directly below him. And broke to assist from the long side. Considering his smoke... For the third time. There it is. That gets rocked. It's going to be an A explode, Alex. Yeah, yeah, it looks like it's going to be a flash and go. Rain tucked in. Who's responsible for that bulk hold? It's Brad Brokey. Keeping rain forward position covered. It was oh, broken. No, it was. Oh, he's found the perfect timing, but Rops and Rain have both won oh, their duels. There's more to be done. More to be done. Calix and Mikardi are ensuring there's a chance. It's Brokey. He was the third component of that A hold, and now he is no more. Rock 6, 1v3 has swiftly become a 1v1. This would be one hell of a introduction to your rifling prowess. A triple kill into a 1v3 the next round. Keep phase on the goose egg. It's frozen. New addition. Rounding the corner as Woxic disappears. He's going for the round the world. Maneuver chat. He didn't plant necessarily for default. Frozen's going to scare him with the smoke. The sound cue. Woxic's going to have to turn tail and, and peek back out. Frozen from the edge of the smoke. And it's a good clutch from Frozen. Oh, close there. And these are ex teammates once upon a time donning that mouse jersey with Carrigan and Rob. So. I definitely wouldn't say it's bad blood. They had a great time together. But yeah, that was a long time ago, 2019. It's, it is interesting. You know, both of these games, we have seen ex-teammates clutching against one another. JL, we talked about that with Nork. And this time, yeah, Frozen. He gets the better of Woxic. What would have been a sensational clutch. The first two came so easy. This one, not so. And frustration, sure. But I mean, it was uh, a solid defense. The fact that Rain and Rops managed to get away with that so, so swiftly, brought and leveled out by Wakardia. It really did hang on by a thread for phase. They'll take it, though. That yeah. first round on the board. Brokey's double was huge. I'll say mid-smoke in play once more. Props this time. Playing for info. Oh, and not info. Fight. He wants a biff. Full committed to this, isn't he? This is cool. This Told you he's aggressive. Aggressive, yeah. You were bang on. And he actually just catches Calix with a nade out. There's no way he was expecting that. Thank you very much. I'll be out. That's what I was saying. Calix is going to have to contend with those type of plays. He heard the retreat. Ricardia tries to isolate the duel onto the healthier rain. Brings him down to 73. Fires off those warning shots. It is just Ricardia going to keep those boots planted. Every smoke towards the banana. It is pretty wild that Rops went for that maneuver. There was three players over towards B for phase, which is now manifested in four players locking down A. It is just going to be Carrigan with the smoke at an MP9 to try and block banana because the util, it doesn't exist. Phase need to grab this top mid control and they have it. Rain even tucking in quite aggressively on the long side. CT smoke arrives, so... Running out of resources. That was the last day they'll have, so... But Eternal Fire, aren't? No. Unless Carrigan can somehow miraculously find something early here, they'll start using their util A. Carrigan's not going to move a muscle, but he has no help, especially now with the loss of one. Frozen rotating away, oh, abandoning no. Carrigan. He's got a lot to do here. He does strike beautifully. Oh, and Carrigan gets a double kill before Woxie can get his orb sights on him. High impact from the in-game leader. No smoke for CT. Swaps to the AK. Woxig knows. Not too shabby on the rifle, and it's just one to find. If he can isolate this duel, that's a round winner. So many gaps. McCarty is ready for this. Woxig loud about it. Denial of the plan. Perfectly placed crosshair from Frozen. Traded by Wicardia. Might be able to get the bomb down. They're disconnected on this retake. Gets it in. Brokey loud about this, but will wait and play for his teammate. Rops is very low. Be one hell of a clutch. Ready two frags deep. Ricardia. Reposition. Oh, isolate and a quick shot from Brokey. He's looking sharp today, Chad. All three of his frags have been quick headshots on that M4. Yeah, and impactful, turning them into rounds. So, Brokey, this is the form you would love to see from him. And for EF, two rounds back to back, very close, very winnable scenarios. The highlight, I don't think it's this Rops kill. Sure, it's great. It's annoying to Calix. It's the Carrigan double. 
the fact that this pesky MP9 activates late as the smoke fades. Without those two kills, we may have just seen a phase save. Need to contain this early. Map has just started, only five rounds deep as the bomb went down again. Lots of damage done. And another bite back in for Eternal Fire. Madja just has a Glock, armor and nades. Drops very aggressive. You Again. Not lying, were you, Chad? He is just... It's like a different player. Ooh, Wicardi has cut him down early. That might uh, take the wind out of his wings for continuing aggressive maneuvers early. Well, there's a gun for Madja. Uh, listen up, boss man. We've got you a rifle. Uh, express delivery. Wait, he's going back to spawn. What did he forget? Oh. Ah. Okay. Maybe <laughs> somebody told him, boss, you've only got a Glock. But anyway, I just said there's a yeah, rifle. Yeah, Wicardi yeah, has done the hard work for you. Actually, that's for Calix. Calix has got that now. Thank you, Jakey. Regardless, uh, yeah, Rob's losing this engagement this time. Took the same kind of gamble. And Rain, he's covered by Brokey for this mid-presence early. Why do three players have smoke today? Actions. Oh, Brokey. That was beautiful. Double kill. Quick scoping. Turning the flash and sticking around for more. It's a double <laughs> swing out of Rain. Manages the spray. Deadly. Is Rain, Calix alone in the apartment, anticipated by Rain, and he's not quite going to finish the job. Brings Calix to half. Bomb can be retrieved, and just two more to find. Loud about this, Carrigan's going to tuck in. If Calix can isolate this jewel, if he's, I mean, yeah, ready, Carrigan certainly was, and there we have it. Phase. They will equalize three on the trot, albeit hard fought. Yeah, uh, we've got rush vision, right, which is uh, obs hard that is, and it highlights the nades being in the hands. And I'm sitting there watching them walk up middle, and then three players with smokes in their hands getting ready for the execute as FaZe come for this push. But this is one of the keys with a team like FaZe. Right? This has been kind of Carrigan's mantra when he has such skilled players who are very good in playing out mid rounds, 2v2s, 3v3s, those type of rounds. All they need to do is make sure you can't cleanly execute onto a bomb site as a team, and then his players will take care of the rest. So by having these jarring forward positions, Rops, obviously, as we discussed, aggressive over towards abs, boiler, but there's still the peaking of mid, the pushing down, the backing their form, and getting you in these awkward areas just like that. So phase, tie things up, 3-3. Three, three. Should be good for the fourth as Eternal Fire have had to stomach a bit of a half buy. Toxic looking like he would want to bring out that AWP, considering he's only got the Glock and a couple of flashes. Setting up for an A pounce, three players on this side of the map to deal with any of those attacks. Brokey alongside with Rain. Rops under the porch. And more crowd control utility being lobbed out at about the minute mark now. Okay, well, it looks like Kalix is getting ready to throw this, but he has been here for a while, making sure he's ready to dump. I see extra flashes at his feet. First smoke, he's going to throw the second. Oh, oops. Well, that's going to block short at least. Yeah, it works out wonderfully. Rain gets the first two, leaving out. Trying to take that mid space. Rops, head on a swivel. Look at this. He's got to worry about both apps. A full 90 degree turn between the two engagements he can take. And his teammates are winning all of their engagements. Overlooking Rops for the finish. Lovely work. And that uh, is a bit of an issue because in the three previous rounds, Eternal Fire were able to keep FaZe somewhat humble. 1v1, two players surviving in back-to-back, -back, and now all five staying alive. That's a bit of breathing room for FaZe now. And that smoke that Rob's missed worked out quite nicely. Able to play behind it. As Eternal Fire tried their best, but this was great. They were ahead of the long smoke. It hadn't even plumed just yet. Madra and Wakati were trying to take that space. Rain will take those kills every day of the week. Nice tracking from Brokey, managing the spray on a leaping player. Eternal Fire. Four rounds empty-handed. This, however, as you've highlighted, the most convincing of the lot. So some cash in the back pocket for FaZe. AK's in the mix once more. Yeah, so uh, Rops has been very active, as we've discussed. He's already got three opening duels in his favor. Last one he lost to Wakadia, skyrocketing down second middle. A little demonstration for everybody. Rops doing it first time every time. The rally, a few to the banana, and this looks like we're 
Moving into something a bit more standard. Playing into one of the strengths of Zantara's. Trying to be the can opener in Banana. And Frozen goes down. Zantares manages to spray beautifully onto Frozen. It's Paragon's double. Just unloads his magazine onto them both. Roki in support now. And a spot, a spray, and a little bit of damage from Madja. He wants them to go up A. This port setup's going to be very pesky to deal with. Yeah, they've re-smoked mid at the perfect time now. Oh, Rain's got it all covered. Can be a hard angle for Kalix to clear. Oh, he spotted his shoulder. He spotted him. It's a free frag. Sure, Bacardia has at least taken down Rops. It's interesting. Madja joins him. Heading A. Smoke obscures Rain's view. Oh, and he adjusts. How has he found that frag so convincing? Rain has not experienced a dip in form. If anything, this turret's firing harder. Yeah, I spoke to him uh, doing some media just the other day when they were rocking up. And I was like, oh, yeah, so, you know, you're playing a different spot on Inferno now. And he's like, yeah, I like it. I get to move around a lot. Oh, okay. Yeah, so fair enough. He's looking right at home. Very important round right there to stop it from getting out of control. Top mid flash. I thought it'd be hard to break, but uh, Wakadia dealt with Robs. And then Madja trying to go up and over the truck to subvert the expectation. Thought he was going to use that smoke to get into the site, but another partial for EF. And Brokey really would love a plant, wouldn't they? He's taking a lot of confidence to be just walking on down to Zantares. That's going to piss him off. The fact that he's dying that quickly into the round from an aggressive M4. Well, you can see the Zantara's tilt. He picked it up from his time at big. Right. Brought it back to Turkey with him. And it's already had a good few... Um, bit of stimulation from the aggression. Oh, yeah. Days. An outing or two. Yeah, an outing, yeah. Kerrigan's got himself uh, multiple double kills so far on his B defense. So, you know, in the absence of rain, who cares? I think one of the... That's actually a bit of a slip up. The loss of Carrigan, the loss of the rifle, and Frozen just turning tail to try and delay. They are not stopping. Magic knows he's got a player isolated on that Flash side. Flash coming. Flash short. Frag better. Frozen holding on. Magic down. Wide swing. Wicardia. Oh, Tinkin Brokey in the smoke and finishes Damn. him off. That's a lot from Wicardia. Another straight through the smoke. The dude is nuts. He's cracked. He's jacked. And it's a 1v2 for Rain. No hope for him here. Loudly stepping into the spray. Woxic takes him down, and we need to see that from Wicardia. That all just worked perfectly. Overrunning Banana. I'm looking at the flash of Brokey coming in. Frozen gets one, but Wicardia, he just happens. This is the name that is uh, at the tip of everyone from Turkey's tongue right now. Fantastic over there in the realms of FPL, but that dink on the Brokey keeps on spamming. Then gets a silence down four. He's doing it with every weapon under the sun. And that is quite frustrating that Banana was exploded upon, and Brokey yeah, can't quite believe it. That is a nice round to win. And I was going to say, it's great for a total fire to have all these strategies and these moves and, you know, moving the chess pieces around the board. But you need your individuals to hit some nice shots. And that was a very nice round from EF and especially... Oh, he really wanted that molly, didn't he? He's going. Harrigan's in his forward position, blinded off and dead. Zentaris makes the play happen. Yeah, looked very determined for that banana control and continued to thrust himself forward. Look at him go. Just this unrelenting aggression, and it has resulted in a trade back. Double swing. Brokey, lucky to be alive. Missed his shot. Gets away with his orb and life. Now they've burrowed very deeply in towards this banana control magic. Already across. For, I think Kagan must be calling something right now because there's a big rotation over towards B. Brokey and Rops are coming, and wow. Brazen from rain just picks top mid. That looks 10 times more impressive without X-Ray as well. Really, really sharp shooting out of rain. Frozen. He's a swing. He's going for it, and it's not gone well. Woxic was posted. Match is walking up. Brokey, that low HP. Good find from Rops. Brokey connecting the orb. A re-peak punished. Woxic, 24 HP. These nades are really hurting. 30 seconds, fake plant, and not a peep out of Rops. He starts wandering back down Banana, and... Starts running about now. Maybe he could make it, but... Okay, yeah, this is going to be close. Okay, you have He'll my get attention. The bomb down. He has a smoke. So if he plants, maybe smokes Moto. Has the molly to work with as well. He has a lot of time to reposition. HP is his biggest enemy. Mate, use your util. 
Monksoft Library. Robson Rain. They have the kit. They could wait out that smoke. They're both walking through it at the same time, I suspect. Loud and oh, oh missed shot. Robs does not make that same mistake. That must have been quite a banger from Robs. Yeah, that happens so quickly. Uh, of course, Pitt, a key position for yeah. someone to try and pe play within the post plant. But uh, I, I think he'd be quite happy that he even was able to get the bomb down. Here it is. Oh, the head just popped up as well. Yeah. Very well done from Rain. And that rotation that was called over towards B, worth its weight in gold. If that was a Carrigan call, beautifully done from the Danish in-game leader. Another decent clutch attempt from Woxic. And as I mentioned, it's good that the bomb went down and has facilitated another buy for Eternal Fire. Nope. We're dropping guns in spawn. <laughs> okay, well... Yeah. We got there. We got but, there eventually. But we're late to our default positions, and Rops is aggressive boiler again. Oh, this could lead to tilt if you do end up getting caught out by Alex a is the position. second mid defaulter, and he's just now at the base of second mid. How does this work out for them? Cardi has gotten the best of Rops once. Oh, Calyx that gets the best <laughs> of Rops this time. No problem. Late to the party, fashionably. Most definitely. Okay, well, Laps is free. Now, thank you very much. Calyx and Wakadia, that's a, a sharp shooting duo that take that space. Flash on half already cocked and smoked, so they might hold a fire on that. As I say that, Molotov. And Zatara is pushed through the smoke. Yeah, lots of resources to help him get this space. I don't know if we'll see a retake. Is Carrigan is starting to reposition? He could do half wall U tilt. Just they're ahead of the curve though. They're already backed away, conceded all of that. Saying you can take it back if you want. It's under operating under the assumption that they have, but so far not. The case, Frozen and Carrigan backed up on site. Smoke long site. Just broke in rain here. Not an easy hold by any stretch of the imagination. I guess Magic could be somewhat scared of another gamble stack or another, you know, heavy lean towards that B bomb site. But they've stayed stoic with the 2-2. Two -two. They drop Util to Magic, so they're hoping he can sell this. Oh, well, that smoke was thrown regardless of Magic's presence, but Brokey still be drawn across. Rain, this one's on you. Well, Brokey will be here in time. From library, he can assist. Harrigan thinks that's a bit sus. He's even starting to back out as well. Leaves Frozen to it. Brokey nails it onto Acadia. Rain in trouble. Brought down through the wall bang of Woxix Orb. That's massive. Carrigan cut down. They're planting just with a couple of seconds to spare. And a very well played round out of Eternal Fire. I think that opening pick from Kalex after they'd flubbed the weapon drop in spawn and the fact that he gets the better of Rops trying that trick again. That one's going to feel real good for Eternal Fire, making sure Rops doesn't get up to any of his sussy business. And we're at the tail end of the half. This one has flown by. Lost bonus for FaZe going into the final round is only going to be 1,400, so holding on to these guns means everything. The molly comes out. He missed the molly. Oh, it's just a, it was a firework to signal, pig me now, please, Rops. And uh, I think Calyx was looking, oh, I, uh, I missed that, did I? And get to kill, so a round of, a comedy of errors <laughs> results into a Eternal Fire opening. One hell of a T side. I mean, yeah, they've got such pep in their step. They're zooming. Uh, in various intervals, we've just seen them kind of charging. It does seem to have thrown FaZe through a bit of a loop. Every round's been close. Bar one. I do like this timeout that's been taken at the tail end of the half, just to make sure that they can maximize this CT side. You saved an AWP, you saved an M4. Just because the upgrades around it are going to be light doesn't mean you can't make some magic happen. Eternal Fire are strapped. Four AKs and AWP, plenty of view to everything they could hope for to level things up at 6-6 on their map choice before we go into that two-minute halftime break. We have Anubis coming up next as our second map of the series. I'm sure Eternal Fire would like to be one up to the good as they head into a map that is a little bit more troublesome for them. Let's see what the go is. What's Magic cooking for his final call on the T side of this first map? Ooh. Gets himself his extra nade and a quick smoke from Spawn. towards that half wall. Here you go. That's a setup. There's a nade. And that's a leg shot. Woxic was prepared. He knows your tricks. Didn't even look like it fully cleared, did it? Still pulled the trigger. As did Brokey. Woxic. Well, that's what I highlighted on round two. Those type of moves. 
gotten himself a huge opener. Kallik's not going to get caught out, Rain, considering the potential. It's Rops that re with the recovered AWP. A T smoke towards CT, but nothing else. No sound cues or commitment. So just kind of cheating an extra player towards this A site, as I do see that congregation of eternal fire. I think Rops heard Kallik's jump off the balcony. Yeah, ready for him, rotating back to B. Hello. Goodbye. Surely that's an indicator for a rotate, yeah. Rain has flashes for Frozen. Come in, flashing, fragging, beautiful team play. He's got another one as well. Could work out wonderfully. Flashed off with Cardium, one much closer. Oh, nearly accidentally took down Madja. Doesn't have the bullets, but Rain does. Catches off Madja and FaZe had looked to have made a seventh happen with some compromise by. Orping is Woxic, low HP, impossible. And this shot though from Rops's orb does at least give him a second chance. Eats that flashbang in the hopes of catching a re-peak. In 15 seconds, he does need to find one of these. He knows he's going to get run down as he punches in the code. Rain runs some guns, and it's seven for FaZe Clan. Don't think either side's going to be too upset about that one. We're going to be taking a break as we return. The second half of Inferno is on its way. We're headed into the second half. A T-side they can be proud of, and FaZe probably not too stressed either. Carrigan, some heroics towards the B-side of the map. Rops, some uncharacteristic aggressions, both successful and punished. 
that's just the first half of this series. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to IEM Katowice. 2024 is the group stage, and we're looking to advance one of these teams to the Spodek. Joining Team Spirit has already locked themselves in earlier on today. Our machine, I've got Chaddy B with me, and we are heading straight on into this pistol. Smoke that. FaZe recognized that, I'm sure. Oh, Wakadia, this is very dicey. Hasn't seen much, so can't relay a lot of information. As we can see, ooh, three bodies in second mid, two behind the smoke towards Chicken Pit. As that starts to fade, they'll continue to comb forward. Frozen task with dealing with any banana aggressions. And right now, Eternal Fire are out of position. Rops the stepping stool for a silent entrance of rain. Long smoke, moto smoke, pit molly, flashes and go. Yeah, Zantaris is already getting a move on, as is Wok6, so they have to click oh, fast. Okay. Did not burst? He had burst. I mean, I don't think it would make much of a difference. Galax has owned him there, and it looks like all the clicks are going the way of the Turkish squad. Frozen got something going. Just a little something. And another from Frozen. Sharp shooting. Triple kill to get that bomb down and perhaps turn this round around. Hold on. Through the smoke is Woxic. Bit hectic. With the ace. Frozen could be acing this pistol, completely saving FaZe Clan. And it's Rops to find the final frag. But Frozen comes alive for the FaZe 8. Ah, frustration if I'm Eternal Fire. Your two A defenders, who were the weaker of the sites, did more than you could have possibly asked for. The Calyx double. Wakadi even grabbed one of his own. They did more than enough. And then just, oh, it's even a missed molly towards Pit. You see it? It's just sitting there burning the rooftops as Frozen Whoa. melts the A site. Oh! Yeah, and that one, another one for Eternal Fire that feels like it could have been theirs. They'll force by in. MP9s are plenty. Util not. Ah, there's been a few that have been quite tough to stomach for Eternal Fire. Some clutch attempts. They sure. Won the pistol and were able to pick up a lighter purchase of their own with some Wakadia Heroics. Remember, this is their map choice. Anubis up next. And it's not going to get any easier. This is cool. Not taking the bomb anywhere. Just uh, using some of that util advantage to try and find a bit of info as to where these CTs may be gambled and stacked. Well, smoke, one of the few that they had has been used and utilized. The, the one from Calyx has already faded in top mid. So now it does just come down to the weaponry. 4v5, Carrigan the one to find that pick, and now they just park that AK and Frozen with all that territory they fought for. Well, to discuss FaZe's closing options for the round, two smokes, a molly and a flash, could just smoke Coffins again, CT once more, a molly towards new box, a flash and go. And as everybody starts to get pulled back to Banana, that appears to be the case. But Madger hedging his bets as Wakadia and Woxic also to help him fortify this site. Util, in thrown out. Oh, well, he didn't land. Quite the one. Side advantage or an opportunity for Madja. Wakadi on that boost position. And it's hectic. Oh. It's beautiful. Madja gets two on the 5 7. Hanging on by a thread here. Look at Carrigan's HP. It really does have to be Ross to bail him out here. And caught out on the spam Gave as him well. Gave a chance, didn't he? Tracers lead to another. Three bullets. Oh, he's only got three. Doesn't matter if he hits the first. And yep, that's the round. Eternal fire. Respond immediately in the second round of this half. If that molly had landed, Magic would have been flushed out. I assume it was meant to be for first oranges. You see it lob through, not hitting the mark. Magic gets to stay alive and he gets a multi-kill on the 5-7. It did a great job of stacking out this site. That snapping turtle just rips off multiple heads. And then Carrigan, he's so worried that Rops is going to get spammed. He wants to draw the attention. But by doing so, his traces through the smoke allow Wakadia to reposition that aim. And Madja, the fire in the belly. Eternal fire heating up now. Game on. Oh, man. After that kind of initial push and press B, Cutting noise, and then to have the presence of mind to gamble stack that very same site. And it feels like they should have been good for the pistol anyway. Once with the AWP ready, Woo! and he makes good on that purchase. That's exactly what you want to see with your AWP whips it out for the first time. Ooh, intention off the rip. Carrigan just runs straight into Wakadia. Great it's work. Crossfire from Calyx and him. Snuffed out. Nothing left. I like the confidence of Calyx as well. Why not? He wants to get a piece of action. Feeling himself. 
inaudible. Well, the two traditional sacrificial lambs of Phase are dead, and here comes another. That would have been the bomb spotted. This is falling flat for Phase. Oh, they're going to four-man swing top mid. Go on, then. Bye. Calix scorts Rops out of the round. This one's worth two as well. It is. There was a full investment from Phase, and it's gotten nothing. Hunting him down. Oh, aggressive. Eternal fire. They have definitely got some tenacity about them as well. You love to see it. You love to see it. A couple of uh, little unforced errors leading to a force by win. The audacity to take some peaks, knowing that you're up against a lighter bite. He's swinging with an AWP. Sure, it's the biggest gun in the game, but FaZe, they all know how to use a Deagle. Dodge that flash, hits that shot, and then Carrigan tries to will his way through top mid into Wakadia's hands, and from there, easy shooting for Eternal Fire. FaZe, onto Glocks. After that heroic pistol round from Frozen as well, this could this could have been worse than it is currently. But after that second round force conversion, it does seem to have stabilized very nicely. And this economical. Not going to get phase far. I'm good to see, like I'm, I'm very happy to see Eternal Fire putting up resistance with the type of Counter Strike that they play and the power that uh, quite a few of their individuals possess. They definitely have the potential. I think that's what's been exciting about this team. Hold up, Calyx. Hold up, Calyx. There we go. Uh, so, you know, if the stars align and now they can tussle with a big name like FaZe, where sometimes this is just the nameplates on the other side of the server, the name of the team can be something to cause a few jitters, a few nerves. Definitely trending upwards and in the right direction. And they should tie things up here in a moment. Five alive would be nice. <laughs> As I say that, frozen. The jinx. Yeah, what have I done? Sorry about that one. Forgot that was still a thing. The power you possess. Wield it wisely. Kept my mouth shut next time. Well, this is uh, interesting to see how FaZe want to open up the account with the T-side gun rounds. No brokey AWP. Plenty of AKs. Eternal fire. Do you have an opening move of your own? Moxic lining up a smoke towards middle. It'll just be him and Kalix starting over towards A. Wakadi, Imagine, and Zantara's the three tasks for this banana control. And that same smoke that FaZe were throwing. One that Eternal Fire would also like to deploy. T's have thrown out a defensive smoke bottom of banana. That's to give the impression that they could be out towards that logs or broom position. Also to make things a little bit scarier for Maja as he tries to progress down banana. Smoke has just been thrown out from Zentaras to replenish. And a molly, so well timed. This will flush out anybody pushed up. And Madger wants to clear his corners just in case the spread wasn't favorable. And game leader still has a smoke. Still four. Smoke grenades, but three, I say that. Excuse me. Interesting, Magic didn't continue to smoke deep, so he's pressured off, and now he's going to use it a little bit more defensively. I suppose that makes sense because the turn, uh, sorry, Phase are going to have to clear out sandbags, car, etc. But we're turning our attention towards mid. This or here. Like a, uh, um, this is going to hurt. Look how many bodies there are. Just running, gunning with Cardia, Zantaras, and Woxic. Three different names in the feed as they just throw their bodies up mid. Flawless defense. Stunted from Phase. Yeah, completely held off at the pass. Job's done. Rops and Brokey will do what they can with 20 seconds left. I just have to be the save. Probably the best of a bad set of options. This is great from Eternal Fire. How can you not love it? They get the banana control. Make sure that they apply that presence. Know that FaZe are going to at least need to show that they're trying to take it back. Madja doesn't use that smoke deep as I was prefacing. Saves it so he can use it defensively on the site. And then grouped up top mid, it's premeditated. They know that FaZe has to come as the second wave of this. Get that brackets control. And as they're trying to unleash that utility, because now right, you can't b bounce Molotovs off of the skyboxes to deal with short or long. You need to be in that choke point, which is a bit more early CSGO days. We didn't have, well, maybe we did, but we weren't aware of that capability. We were doing things a little bit more linear. You know, throwing that from boiler, throwing that from close mid. And as you're in that tight little choke point, Eternal Fire clamp down and force out a second tactical timeout 
from FaZe, who are scrambling at the moment. The pistol win, the force by loss, four on the trot now for Eternal Fire, and one away from double digits is Carrigan. Looks like he's looking deeply. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's early stages of, uh, of a full best of three series. This is your opponent's map pick, but uh, uh, it's already seeming to be getting under the skin of Carrigan, feeling quite helpless on this T side. Yeah, pistol win. And ever since, it's just been one way traffic. Eternal fire up to nine now. And I like the fashion they've been able to get here in as well, Eternal Fire. It has allowed extra cash. So even if they do drop one CT side around, you can see just the sheer amount of money that the players have on this side of the screen to have reinvestments. So even if they do drop the ball, uh, hopefully not in a round where it's only two saved AKs and some light upgraded pistols. Oh, that's cool. Woxic doing this aggressive util set that implies more of an aggressive team maneuver towards A as they start for a B. Flash is ready should they request it. Nadja has a little glance. Flash is going to through. He'll take space. Resmoke deployed and rotations on the way. They are staying so dynamic. I mean, these CTs are just always moving. Smoke long from phase. Woxic posted up short side. Through all of their utility and still a minute on the clock. So FaZe, just by waiting, won't have to deal with any more smokes or Molotovs. So they're giving themselves an opportunity. It looks like they want to pounce for this banana control once that smoke subsides. So they flash over for top banana. It's magic just with this tight gap. Might even dodge the flash in that position and has done. Hearing steps. Not the weapon for the job from Frozen. They just clear out close logs and broom and think that's enough. And Well, now I guess they have to finish towards B. Call Madge's bluff, see if he really is the only one here. Has a quick rotation of Zentara's playing Speedway. With 20 seconds left, here he comes. Yeah, that's exactly what the uh, defense needed. Madge needed some help. The flash and push, he wants to disrupt if they commit. It's a good headshot An from Ross. rifle for this post plant now. I remember there's no util for the retake. Yeah, actually, you're right. They're going to have a bit of a hard time getting back in. Oh, that's a gift. Zentara's catches Brokey with the spam of the smoke. And Carrigan, if you don't win this duel, which he hasn't, it does get awkward for FaZe if they wanted a chance of closing and converting 10 HP on rain. Three of them about to triple swing. I mean, what's he supposed to do? It's some headshots. Not to be. Zentara's gets another. It's a triple kill from him in support. Rops I'll alone. for Rops. And he's already taken a hefty amount of damage. Woxic did get his crosshair on the head, on the money. Do need to be seeing a defuse soon. Another quick headshot from Robs, but there it is. Zantares on the defuse, triple kill, and eternal fire. They create some distance between themselves and their opponent. Okay, well, again, that was just the two saved AK. So the fact that FaZe were able to get that bomb down with the loss bonus in their favor and the extra cash money coming through will be a full buy for FaZe was a moment where that got a little bit scary. Can Eternal Fire really do this? Was that moment as Magic got a one bullet headshot from Robs? Yeah. Yeah. Everything else though fell into place and Taris was there in time. Yeah, if they could have uh, played off of each other a little bit more in the post plant, right? Carrigan was on his own, gets isolated. He wants to try and get space, so you can understand why he's extending out for that fight, but they weren't together, they weren't tradable. Panic's boosted up. There's a lot of diversity in the Tunnel Fire setups towards this mid hold. And this time not rinsing through their util as quick. Rain and Rob's in the apartments. Flash over. I don't know if I'd be peeking out boiler knowing that mid is now obscured by that smoke. So Rain still had a look. They're congregating in banana quickly and Eternal Fire. Finger on the pulse. Three players towards B if it it's a B execute. They're more than ready for this. Yeah, they know what's up. And Moxic's re-aggressing with Zantares. They bring the fight to them. Again, it's a tunnel fire with the aggression. Big miss. But that's a miss. It's costly. Madja does manage to take down Brokey, though. Didn't kind of play shy, despite being alone on the site. Rain needs to pick up that bomb. Frozen's taking space. Oh, this is a big frag if Frozen can find it. Deeper smoke. Flashing. Madja, again, aggressive. 
Oh, and the bomb goes down. Frozen covers successfully. Phase set for success now. If I give this a look, there's a bit of residual cash on the likes of Zantares. 11k to his name. Maybe go fishing, see if he can find a kill. Bomb still has about 30 seconds left. Yeah, Wicardia on the fade. Does ooh, get his crosshair onto Rain, but does not quite convert. You'll take damage now if you Calyx. Which way do they choose to exit? Oh, they're exiting. Ooh, oh, they were. were. <laughs> Just watching that minimap, it's like someone said, no, no, CT, Carrigan maybe overrules. Let's get out of here. We know that Calyx likes to be that A anchor. And we haven't been in Banana for a while. Get out of there. Okay, we'll face. Even though they went in towards the stack, that missed shot of Woxit came back to cost them. You can see the flash is coming over. Zantares turns, pushes, grabs one. It's the missed shot of yeah, Woxit that could have been the real difference maker as Frozen doubles up and makes it a triple as Magia was attempting to play off of the flash, but you could just see the positioning of Frozen there avoiding a white screen. I mean, multiple examples we're seeing of Eternal Fire kind of deliberately looking to disrupt pre-execute, like just as the... Just was like FaZe was doing. Yeah, it seems to, it's definitely oh, this a go. Pace. Frozen's going straight up the gut. Look how the damage, but still the headshot comes in. He nearly managed the spray full flash. It was Antares swinging in, brought down low. Straight back to A, look how quick the FaZe are starting to hit this site. Yeah, Kalix is going to anticipate this. He's got Woxic as well towards the apartment side. Not a bad position if they do decide to hit back A. And look at the rotation. Eternal Fire trying to be ahead of this. They're ahead again. They look like they'll fight top mid after this phase. The phase are resetting. And they're going to have a look. Centares investigates. Robs caught off. Good one back. Magic caught by Brokey through. And now a two on two. This constant uh, aggression. This time it's going to cost Kalix his life. Yeah, just not ready for second mid at all. Woxic's still here. If he just looks towards apps, he could have a freebie. Has to turn the flash. Carrigan drops off. And Carrigan gets caught. Woxic knows where you are, Brokey. You've got 37 seconds and we've got a 1v1. Time to go B. He can definitely rotate around the world. He's going to try and mind games it. Cut noise. Head on collision. He's got his knife out. He's got his knife out, manages the Tech-9, Brokey! Completely bests Woxic there in a battle of wits. And FaZe, they are very happy with that one. It was a necessary clutch, otherwise things could start to spiral out of control. Instead, we stay level. Yeah, your heart just stops there for a moment, and it's massive that Frozen even gets anything done, considering the bombardment they were under. But FaZe is getting a taste of her medicine. The fight just keeps coming, and Woxic has been in a couple of clutches now, and another one slips through his fingertips. Frozen's the man making an awful lot of noise after that one. And yeah, Woxic just very frustrated. Oh, I'm so happy we have the teams facing off against each other because I love just seeing those little... Eyes guys, dart yeah, across. Guys. It's so obvious that that makes the difference. It the makes fact, such a difference. The fact that this hasn't been a staple in a game that's a competition is beyond me. Right. It took us long enough. And that smart glass, instant. As soon as that round ends, you can see your opponent. That was an eternal fire timeout. And as discussed, there was residual cash and that did linger into round number 21. It's just Madja who's going to be operating with the MP9, but we've seen some heroics with him on smaller weapons. Big round for Brokey. Still just recapping that one. Oh, we could have another head-on collision. The start of a round this time, I say that, as both of them seem to think better of going wide. Starting with a 3-2 division of the defenders. Yeah, not a lot that they can do here. FaZe just going to wait out some of the util. They will disperse. No one posted up behind. They can be layering of deep banana control now. Zataros can molly out towards logs. He's got the deep smoke in. Oh, they've got close molly. So there are a lot of threats that still exist. And now with the car molly in place, Zataros has to respect it. You, you can't be forcing yourself into that fight. Long smoke down now will force Wakadia with the reposition. And this is difficult for Magic to call a stack. There's not a lot of information. I was looking at the non X-ray. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I wasn't even ready for that swing. There was a reason we we're on that player. Yeah, wow. And Rob, see, he just kind of perfectly counter strafed into Woxic's crosshair. So that's worked out well. Look how quickly he's ready for short side leak. 
Wakadia. One, crazy, nearly two before Woxit gets his uh, scope on him again. A two-man disadvantage early. The defender's locking it down. Woxit's AWP reverberating around Inferno right now. Frozen actually ahead of that smoke. Madja, though, this boost, it needs to be cleared by Brokey. And he does nail the shot straight to the skull. Safe plant. 2v4. Eternal Fire have handled most of these retakes with class and poise. Can they do it again? There is one flash for Kalix to try and set up Zentara's returning to the site. Kalix clears Banana. Trying to bait. Investigates now. Missed shot from Brokey. Don't get many more of those. Don't forget about Banana. Yep. Kalix has smoked off his teammate. Frozen trying to remain at presence. Can't just be the AWP. Great shot from Brokey. Can't hit another. It's out of fire looking for the bomb. Kit on it just in time. You can see that moment of communication. They had to get there quick and they work it out. 11 is theirs and the retakes keep on coming. Yeah, you bang on with the communication. We could actually hear how hectic it was in that moment because Zantares, as I'm monitoring it, the only one with the kit coming in, yelling at him to get over to first oranges to get that defused. That was the Woxic opener onto Rops. Wakadia grabs on top mid as well, but then the round still almost gets out of control. A great clear from Brokey on that boost position to get in and get the bomb down. What I really liked from Woxic as well is he knew he didn't have the kit, so he didn't even like move towards the bomb because that can that can really mess with your teammate. He thinks you've got it, is everything's fine. It's just, just yelling at him to get yeah. the hell over come, here. Come, come, come. Eleven ten. Here we go again. All players through second mid. Kagan's actually going to transition through Chicken Pit and Brokey. Looking quite brave with the AWP. Already trying to post up on any glances. But the fact they're blocking middle already tells a three towards B. The nuke of a nade onto Madja as he'll assault Banana with this MP9. Nobody home at the bottom. And now they need to reset up over towards A to Eternal Fire. That late to fortifying positions for Pit and Sight. But FaZe can't go anywhere. They're locked out. They need to respect this U2. And you know that Eternal Fire have been swinging and taking a lot of jewels. So you be ready for more aggression as... So another 4-1. Great flash. flash. Wow. Incredibly effective. Confirms the AWPA. Is on A side. And then they just cut noise. Park Rops in Boiler. He continues to bad, apply bad that smoke, pressure. Bad Ooh, smoke. Yeah. I think he got jarred in the window. He's got caught in the bricks. Well, that has allowed the rotation of Zantara's back over towards B that has just been blocked. If they can both get sight side, they might be able to defend with just the two of them. There's the no mollies. Oh, Zantara is just going to have to try and stand and spray. Force behind the smoke, frozen, incredible shot, but it's Antares who disrupts with the double. Three on three, difficult retake ahead of them. Yeah, so far has been so good on these B-side retakes, but look how far away they are. My goodness, still on that A-site. Bukati is looking for Rops, right? The Boiler Lurk is still alive. That's why he's hanging about seeing where Rops is, but I think Mad just called the party off. Boys, we have to save. Let's not throw everything away. Our loss bonus is only 1,400 into the next round. We need to concede. Just about got their bodies in the right place on that B bomb site, but the push through the smoke phase knew they had to hit that go signal. Zantara has kicked up a fuss, a third, and maybe Eternal Fire would have been tempted into this, but we tie things up once again. Phase will grab their fourth T side round. Legs 11. We heard from Frozen in the pre match interview talking about how he feels like he's got a lot to learn still. He's doing a fantastic job fitting into this phase rank doing what is required of him. 17, top of the tables. Still, I'm sure, quite the adjustment period. As he takes a whole lot of responsibility upon arrival. Yeah, very vocal as well, right? We're always calling him the young veteran over there on Mouse because he was the most experienced member of that roster that was bolstered by a lot of academy players. And he would have needed to be that shining beacon for them, that example, and also taking charge because that was a team that was able to make stage matches go relatively deep within majors. Uh-oh, bad job. Careful Ooh. now, Zantaris did find Brokey and that was just the two orc. little bursts. Very well placed bullets. I don't think a single bullet missed. He just burst down Brokey straight through the smoke and that's a real heavy blow to concede. Well, uh, considering Brokey's impact in some of these rounds as well, even reflecting back to the CT side, he needed to get a few multi-kills within the early stages to help them post some rounds. That's a long smoke lobbed out. It's a double pit setup at the moment from Eternal Fire. 
Alex bravely repositions up towards the balcony, now playing anti-flash. So a lot of presence to be felt top middle, and the idea that long smoke could be lurked through. Frozen was just at the tippy top of Banana. 45 seconds, darting back towards A. Moto Smoke lands. If they go through apps, it's going to be tough to break this pit setup. If Carrigan could get his molly towards bike, there's always a hope, but this is still going to be very difficult for FaZe. Yeah, this favors Eternal Fire, you'd think, with the setup. Frozen's flashes. How good are they? Anti flashes Calyx. Calyx needs to activate. Distraction from the pit shit. First shot hits. It's Calyx on the double up. Robs is his next victim. Frozen. What have you got for us? No time for this. No bomb. How's he going to get It's lost in pit. 13 seconds. This is just a perfectly patient Woxic hit. Can't immediately run him down, or they can. He's going to try. And perfect. Woxic secures it. Eternal Fire lock it down. And they are just one round away from taking their map pick in this advancement match. Yeah, the C in Kallax is for contingency because the fact that he's anti-flash there is perfect. That's exactly what you need. Wakadia goes down. You can see the flash assist in the feed. And he surges forward looking for more. A tasty triple kill from the anchor. What I, what I loved as well from that pit player was he, he still started firing bullets. It just just bought Kallax enough of a distraction in order to get that multi-kill. He played it well. You know, he had to put his crosshair on the head for multiple kills, a triple. OT or bust for FaZe. And look at the buy. Oh, it can end right here. Tataras, he brings the fight to them. Burning, burning, so much damage, no way out. Carrigan finds 100 to zero with his flames. From the grave, you'll be happy with that. Madra is also extremely low from the utility. Oh, man. I mean, that's a brilliant play from Zentares. But now he has to watch, biting through his fingernails as they look to take their map pick in regulation. Well, the AWP in the back of the side, I'm not sure this is going to be expected. Woxic, you've had your moment in the clutches. They haven't landed, but you can close things right out now for Turkish Counter-Strike. What's he got for us? Oh, a bullet between his eyes. Trying to spam, trying to spray an equalizing frag that changes everything. Rain taking down Woxic cleanly. And phase force OT. Two smokes. They can replenish both coffins and CT. This is going to be so difficult to retake. It's going to be hard fought to find even a single way back through. I guess break the smoke with Wakadia and go. Just use his HE instead for damage. It limits their options. A boost pre aimed by Brokey. He's ready for this. And already Rain puts the bullet onto Madja. One back from Wakadia. They have to go. Kalix and Makadia. You've got to push. Off the flash. No time for this. Broki just alive, and there we go. Overtime required. FaZe, hold on. Despite the aggressive double out of Zantares. We need more. <sighs> uh, I put it all on Woxic there, didn't I? Uh, look, this was the double from Zantares to open up proceedings. And Woxic, the best weapon for the job. Rain just walks in and rips off his head. And another, ready for the boost. Everything that Eternal Fire could have offered, it meant nothing. And having extra smokes that late in a 3v3 post-plant situation on the B-bomb site, that's tough. Yeah. That is tough. It's the most convincing one we've seen. Rain solves their problem. Froki trying aggression. It could cost him his life. Look at the amount of damage. A HE in combination with the incendiary. It's the phase Orpa down early to just 16 points of health. A deep smoke towards Banana, a wide swing out of Magia, trying to finish off the job. Broki gets away with the bomb and his AWP frozen forward. He's going here. Nice flash. Broki sets him up for that. He's getting frazzled. Tarez, they know where you are. He still stands his ground. And the fight won by Calix elsewhere. Carrigan gave it a good go. Both in-game leaders with some questionable plays right there. Magia knew that bottom Banana couldn't book cold clear. Range have this. Three on three. Molly Pitt, Woxic, what have you got for us on the AWP? Wakadia disconnected. No one occupies the A site right by now. Woxic missed shot. Won't get many more as Brokey puts his scope on him. To, whew, long range headshot from Rain. He's getting sharper. He is. Like a fine wine is Rain. Yeah, Carrigan took that risk top mid. Magic also took the risk with the banana push. And you can see they didn't bother to clear it out correctly. You heard that molly extinguished because of the T-smoke that's just to the side of Frozen there as he steps forward. And Kallax searching to try and get that space back. He got the kill on the long side. Woxic misses a shot. They know exactly where he is. They line him up. They knock him down. And FaZe will grab 13 first. Whew, Carrigan's going to feel good about that because, uh, yeah, as you were highlighting, some less, some suboptimal fights being taken from both leaders. 
I just hope Eternal Fry don't continue to play Frazzle because they played a, a very good game. Don't get desperate about things. Sure, you've had your opportunities, but you're playing against FaZe. World-class individuals. Oh, come on, production. I want to hear what he's saying. I mean, we all do. We want to do mid-expo. But I can name at least six people that don't want us to hear what they're saying. Oh, yeah. I'm intrigued. Okay, right. Get your pens and paper out, folks. Will it be quick or will it be off a default? We don't have that info as Rain is going to lob out that banana smoke. Okay, so it is going to have some pep in the step because Carrigan's joined the second mid pack with Rain and Rops. Walks it aggressive in apps. This is different. Yeah, and this might catch him off guard on the flight path. Actually, he's pushing in the issue. He's forcing the issue. He's not hard clearing this. Yeah, and it's all about timing now for Rops. Alex is in boiler at least. Sound cue given away upon the retreat. Get out of there, boys. You're looking a bit disconnected, disjointed, doesn't look clean. You might slow him down a little bit. Slow him on their crawl. Here comes the mid explode. Any banana side. Zataris is on the way. Will he beat the timing? Oh, just smoke him off. Carrigan's gonna go off the flash anyway, and it should be Kalix with the frag. Does find Carrigan. Raynal Trey, big from Magia. Look at the damage as he spams the smoke. Rain and Brokey. Lucky to be alive. Maybe not for not much longer. And Centaurus re-aggresses. Considered his options. Three through apps with this HP. Wakadia should eat them all for dinner. Yeah, he's got the power position for it as well. How good's your pre-aim rain? Have you got anything more? Any more crackers for us? And nice work from Wakadia. Activates for two. And it's just Brokey. Wallbang headshot. Brilliant. Spotting out another. Drops into that pit to try and isolate these jewels. Wonksix posted for this. Oh, gets the info, but no, walks it closes, and there's an equalizer, convincingly so, from Eternal Fire. Yeah, nice damage from Magic, right? And the fact that he's had that heads up push through Banana, not afraid of getting caught off, needed to take that risk, was able to capitalize on it. Sounds like it's heating up. I want to know what's happening. Yeah, we can hear Launders and Scrawny in the room just next to us. Falcons versus Rebels. Map number three. Yeah, you heard me right. Rebels, the Polish hope. Well, alongside events. A team that I don't think anybody was expecting to make it to the group stage. But let's focus in. We're in OT number one. This is the main event for your Sunday evening. Turkish Counter-Strike fans, I'm sure they want to go to work tomorrow, Monday morning, with a smile on their face. Because this is for the Spodek. We're just on map number one. Anubis up next. Eternal Fire would love to take their map pick and run with the confidence. Confidence from Frozen. And they're punished for it. Guitarra's on the back foot. Coffin smoke. Carrigan could do CT. Ooh. Wouldn't free ball that one, especially with the info you got on the jump pig. He'll do it safely. Looks like wider the smoke. So this is going to be a double pump B. Carrigan's now going to help Rob sell something on A. Long smoke down. Short pressure to come. It should keep it. Oh, Woxic's starting to rotate. The tower's feeling confident he can do this one alone. How do you continue to sell this? You've got full mid. They're, they're flying blind on A. He's back, but he's got the orb. Vision will be obscured. He needs to take a risk. No smoke towards the orb's position, and he will thrive. A Bomb's bit going, ahead eh? of it was frozen. And now it's Kalix that's isolated. Ricard is swinging like a pendulum. He might get back in time. They will smoke him off. Rob's trying to time this to perfection. 15 seconds of the smoke blooms, but the spray's good from Wakadia, contributing long range. Alex's turn. Needs to do one. Just one. Oh, the no scope. It's enough to save them because Rops, the bodyguard, comes through. Oh, man, the finest margins defining this round. Brokey hitting a no scope with two seconds to spare. Hard retake. Just the two of them. Woxic and Zantares, franchise players. And Brokey makes it just one. Zantares left it to his own devices. 14 in the bank. FaZe will take the lion's share on their T side. Having to keep him moving, though. Oh. Making him dance around the map, back and forth, back and forth. The B fake, up mid, lots of pressure. The double pump in towards B without the commitment. And this was Frozen, finding the opener into Magic and Banana. Disperse the smoke, find him through it. 
looking for that pick, but that was the kill you were talking about. The frag onto Kalex. He gets that. He delays long enough. The rotation gets there. The plant. That player, once they're punched in the digits, they're taken off the board. Carrigan, happy with that one. Eternal Fire starting to look a little bit more deflated, but we swap halves. Eternal Fire are back on the attack. Remember, some of the rounds that Eternal Fire were able to pick up, there was the pistol. There was that lighter buy where Wakaria went Wakaria with the Tech 9. Oh, that was crazy. Kind of searching. Yeah, this is nice. Brokey. Oh, just as Ricardi is jiggling, he's going to have a he's real ahead. perfect he's opportunity. Ahead. What a shot. What an opener. Ricardia has punished Brokey. Pantses him. And Ray's not ready either. Ricardia, a one man army right now. Takes down Rops. Eternal Fire have found a gem in the form of Wicardia. 27 and counting, and that round is all Wicardia. That's the type of play That's... you need. He was able to identify the setup as soon as he saw where the orb was. It was instinct. That's what we just witnessed from Wicardia. He didn't have to think. He knew what he had to do and executed it to perfection. That's one to just replay in your head when you're having trouble falling asleep, just how, start smiling. How fortunate with the timing does he get though? Brokey scoped up, Brokey scoped up. Then as he starts to jiggle the site, that's when Brokey pulled the smoke. The smoke comes, he plays ahead of it. Brokey thinks, no way, I was just watching this and no one's dumb enough to push a smoke, are they? He was already ahead. And then the comms, you know, Rain's processing. He's like, okay, he does not consider him in pit a moment later. It was beautiful from Wicardia. Man, oh man, that's Counter-Strike. Oh, we were just talking about his Tech 9 round and there he pops off again. And he has a smile on his face, understandably so. That is a massive round for this fresh face, looking at one of the oldest and biggest legends, the coach of FaZe Clan on the other side. And to do that against a team like FaZe Clan, the coach just tells you the pedigree of individual that gets to don that jersey, catches him jumping, speed demons out. Rain, no idea, and then just the spray at range onto Rops. That was beautiful. I mean, you can see why why everyone is excited about Wakadi's arrival. He's going for an aggressive one. Finds that gap between the two smokes. And they could do damage. Oh, and Tantaris is going to run straight headlong into that aggressive maneuver. Frozen finds first blood for Fates. So much nade damage during those exchanges, and they don't have Wakadia aiming to make a play. I think that was meant to be Zantara's turn. So how can Magic move his pieces around the board with a lack of space and a lack of manpower? Well, Woksik's going to provide some covering Overwatch, and Wakadia will be the one to walk on up and take some space back. Kagan's currently holding a flash for Frozen. He's playing on the jiggle. How far does Wakadia push this dry? Frozen. Tested. Precise. Into the head. A double kill. A molly on his face and a smoke to delay. He'll be able to get himself out of dodge here. I say that as actually Kagan did get caught. They know Frozen's trapped behind the smoke. Jones has managed to get himself out of dodge. Brokey's rotated through. Rop slinks into the boiler room for a more forward hold. Doesn't really feel like there's a way back to A now. That U2, they know it's going to be a fake. Yeah, Rain's already starting to move. Rops as well. With 15 seconds left. Could have a very fast flank here. He knows that they're going to be focused on other things. Brokey confirms their suspicions. There's still a player new box. Frozen can do something. Rain <laughs> just sprays them down. And they will find 15 first phase. One, kill David. one round away. Oh, that first kill is so important, right? That number advantage that he was able to garner for them and then keeping him as the only forward prong in the CT setup. Right? This is them playing info for top banana. They didn't have mid info at all with the setup they had over towards A until later in the round where Rops went a little bit more forward and was able to secure a boiler and know that it was going to be that B finish. And Rain with the crab walk spam. It's two buttes through the smoke. Now, once we do get into OT, all timeouts are wiped if you had any residual. And every overtime played, you get one timeout each. So if we do go 15-15 and we go again, both teams will get an extra 
30 seconds to use, well, not an extra, an only. An only. As I said, it gets wiped. You don't, yeah. you don't build up. One per OT. Last round of this one. A cache of additional retake utility left at spawn. A battle of wits between these two IGLs and it looks aggression. like Ops has been given the green light to throw some aggression into the mix. This hasn't come for a while, Alex. How ready are they for this? Robs. Oh, he hears someone very, very close. A flash to try and facilitate. Worried about second mid, understandably, already through this one. Nice find from Rain. Robs will catch Kalix. Brokey connects onto Woxic. Everyone's winning their jewels. Finally, one will fall in favor of Eternal Fire, but the damage is done. Just the two of them now. Centaurus and Madja. Great awareness from FaZe. And Eternal Fire's map pick could be slipping through their fingers. As Brokey hits his shot. And Madja finds himself in an impossible one. It's nice timing. Brokey will flick. And just about there. A long battle. 30 rounds played. FaZe Clan, they will take it. 1-0 up and a map away from the Spodek. Running through the flames now is Twist. They are falling like flies, Face Clan, on this bomb site. Fucking booted it again. Bro, don't we have a game? Yeah, but finish saving, so... Let's Holy go, guys. Shit, this is real, this is right? I thought you were gonna now. save. Yo, Good job. Rocky, wake up now. Hey, 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 chill. One echo and we win, okay? What do you mean, echo? Just run around. How? The story of Eternal Fire and FaZe coinciding right here on Inferno. We do have that result, and it does come out for FaZe. However, they really had to work for it, didn't they? Let me go ahead and just also do this while we're at it. Welcome back to the Intel Extreme Masters. It's Katowice of the Year. It's 2024, isn't it, Bubsky? For sure. All right. Good start. We're off to a great start. Uh, uh, chomping at the bit start, even. So, for FaZe, test it or not, Josh? I think they were tested. They were pushed to the limits a little bit. It was obviously Eternal Fire's map pick. So they had something in store. They got close, but no cigar. Mm, I also feel that relied a lot on the individual powers of Wikari and Voxic. I think Voxic, we spoke about a little bit before him about the game, uh, saying that he was the one really to carry his weight, and I think they could get over the line. And all of a sudden, Zentaris is not really there, and it just makes a huge difference in the end. Yeah, Zentaris didn't have a great start. I think I saw him at like 5 and 13 at one point. But where he started to pick up was on the CT side. And I think that Eternal Fire had a really kind of like old meta-esque thing yeah. where 
a lot of the rounds they started off four people banana. Yeah. They would take the control of it. They would leave three people there for like the second phase of the round for when phase was going to come and retake it. And it almost looked like they were whatever they did, they were fighting together as a team. So a hard banana fight, then you would see all these like four people swinging mid fights and then all the retake si situations, they were all moving together, making sure that their spacing was good, that they were going to trade out the frags. So all in all, I think there was good team play out of the CT side, but when it came down to the T side, I mean, outside of Wakadia getting a few openings, yeah, it was looking a little bit flat. I also agree with you, kind of, when we're looking at the default, I think really good teams are able to both take banana and apps at the same control, while the lesser good teams on Inferno is only able to take one thing at a time because they kind of need that trading power and the utility as well. I think we saw a couple of rounds where they tried to do that 2-1-2, two, two, but we see that round where Rubs runs down mid and kind of stops it early on. It also gives them the confidence that they're not able to do that anymore, so they kind of have to go back to the basics. That and, you know, just open, uh, winning out flat right in the, uh, the opening kills department is going to be eternal fire, right? So maybe that paints a picture, but however, you know, FaZe dropped this first pistol and then here we have it, right? We get a back and forth sort of slugfest. Yeah, I went back and forth pretty much throughout the game. I saw Kerrigan early on, for example, in the first... I would say eight rounds. Like he had a couple of big two kill openers, which really set the pace for phase. And I think that stopped Eternal's Fire's momentum a little bit. And had he not been able to get two and then get away with his life as well, it's not like he did some like crazy miraculous stuff where, you know, people uh, weren't able to trade him. It's like he was, he just sat behind the car one round, peeked out got one, there are two more people literally right around the corner that could have traded him and he gets away with his life. And that happened basically two different times where he was able to get a, a two kill opener and not, not go punished. And had either of those or both of them gone punished, well, we're looking at, a, at maybe an eternal fire victory on that map. So Steel, what you're saying is the, the sheer fragging prowess of Kerrigan is what helped to elevate and then furthermore push phase over the finish line. Well, for 14 rounds or so after that, he didn't get a kill. So okay. I, don't, I don't know if that's the case, but early on it did make an impact. Yeah, but that's the thing with Kerrigan, right? He has a couple of good rounds and he doesn't need to deliver on the fracking side every single game. If he just has that one, two, three, four moments in a game, it really is all that's needed when you have superstars like him with Brokey alongside him. And it's speaking of superstar moments and plays and ideas and pushes, we just watched Rops push down mid right there, get some valuable info. I mean, so it's little pushes like that, right? Yeah, and I also love to see Rops is that kind of player. You don't really often see him in those offensive positions because he's such a passive one. But when he does it, he has such a good feeling about it. He's he's almost like too perfect at CS at times because he only pushes when it makes legal. sense, right? And for some time, we can also argue that Rops maybe at times becomes a little bit too irrelevant in rounds because he's like super passive and doesn't really go for the initial timings but I think he's, he has found a really nice balance. Yeah, I, I've noticed him in CS2. I've watched a lot of the phase games actually and he does seem to find a lot of timings. Um, we see him on maps like Nuke where he doesn't take the first initial timing. He'll yeah. usually go in like the second one. Like as soon as his teammates get spotted, he'll go. But I do see him getting a little bit active. He's not really just going to sit in the, in the back lines. So I, I think seeing him active or assertive isn't really too far-fetched, actually. No, it, it's really not, especially we've seen what these guys are capable of, you know, even all the way down to the newest edition in phase. We know what Frozen's capable of. Uh, right here, why do you think it was it was something where where Eternal Fire could actually come in here and make it competitive? I think it's because of that Inferno pick. I don't think FaZe necessarily expected it. I think they're a team who likes to have that comfort of being like, okay, we have a broad map pool, but we kind of know what the opponent's going to pick. And I don't think they expected that Inferno, considering how little Eternal Fire played it up until this point. I think they kind of saved it up until now and be like, okay, we, we really want to use it when we need it. And this is probably the closest the Eternal Fire is going to get to a Spodek Arena for now, right? So it's a really good timing to get it in there. Wow. Do you agree with that, Josh? It sounds, now? it sounded smart, so I'm going to go with it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's the NA way. That's the way I know it, at least. Uh, yeah, I mean, we could start talking about that next map in the series. Now that, you know, FaZe maybe have gotten a, a scary map out of the way, is that something you want to paint? Uh, I would argue, but they're going to start on that CT side of Anubis, and we've seen teams massively struggling on the CT side. I think teams who are picking Anubis and Overpass is going to just normally have a little bit rougher start on the maps because they're going to start on that really rough side in the start, so I'm, I'm, I'm not too sure if FaZe is going to come ready with whatever um, they're going to bring to the f table Eternal Fire. Yeah, Nubis, uh, I've got Eternal Fire T-Start, so this should be wild, right? 
I mean, it should be good. Eternal Fire, I think the map suits their play style, so it should be good. Phase is always kind of like, they rely on the individuals to kind of get the job done. It's not like they rely as like a team effort, whereas Eternal Fire, they were doing a team effort on Inferno, and if they carry that over to Anubis, then we could see them doing a really good job of, you know, taking control of the CT side when they go into the second half. There's also going to be a lot more soul responsibility on the players on... Um on Anubis because the rotations get kind of cut off. We kind of talk about that beach rotation. It's so long, so once you lose that initial duel, you kind of almost call the save. It reminds me a little bit about Inferno, and they just managed to pull it over the line, right? So where do we see Brokey playing with this AWP? Because he was having a good time on last map, so I just want to know where to put him now going into Anubis. You know, here, there, everywhere. Nice. I think okay. that the most value is going to be around A main, and then like the secondary most value is going to be being like the third person at B so that you can take angles to contact out B main, mm -hmm. so you can peek through E-box and clear canals, go for that early pick maybe, um, and then be just like a, one of the two people in a B setup so that the rifles can move around and do like duels around mid. Bobski, I'm going to get us out of here real quick, but I want to know, does the series end here? I'm a little bit of a face enjoyer, I'm going to be honest. I carry again a big legend in my book, so I'm going to go for the 2-0. I, I do respect what Eternal Fire has brought today, and I think they're going to have a good time in lower bracket if that's the case. It's the way you've said a good time in the lower bracket, as if anyone has ever had such a thing. You're watching the Intel Extreme Masters. We've got a break. We come back. We find out what's going to be going down on Anubis. You know it. We'll be right back. Let's start with the big thing. You knew this was going to be the opening question. You peeked at the notes. Uh, you guys have obviously about frozen in. I wanted to check with you, Kerrigan, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> about this uh, relationship with frozen because you told me a story back at Cologne last year. Oh no! Um, <laughs> <laughs> about you? Uh, really? <laughs> <laughs> no, but you told me when when you joined Mouse back in uh, 2019, um, the first thing you noticed on Pan joining that team was like frozen is being used incorrectly like he's not in the right positions like he's not he's not in a position to play the game that you think he likes to play and immediately when you got in you changed that around and then you guys went on to win what like three tournaments to end that year or something something like that um so you have you brought him back in after twist's departure like do you still do you, do you look at him now and you're just like there's a whole new set of skill set like you know how to use him still like everything is picking up where you left off I think when I first got to play with David, it was he came from like a tier two team back then, mm -hmm. right? He played a lot of FPL, so I think I didn't know him that well. Uh, yeah. Normally, when I try to scout players, it often comes down to interviews, talking with the players, see how he plays in different teams. And but David was unique situation because it was kind of like fresh off from from a lower team and. I had a picture in Mouse. I wanted Crusade to be a secondary caller, being on the on the side of the map, and then have David with me and kind of like turn him into a good entry fragger because mm -hmm. I knew he has a good aim and all that stuff. But you don't know how the player thinks when you don't play with him, right? So after that, I realized that David has a lot of other set skills, like a mature player, and you don't expect that from 17 year old uh, player yeah. back then. So I think. Quickly, I realized that it didn't work out uh, the way I wanted the team. And then we figured out a, a solution to put David more on a, a free role where he can like also mature over time and actually gain a lot of experience. And playing with him in, in phase now, uh, I think, again, he matured in the way he demands uh, from his teammates how he wants to be set up. And I think that's something we actually lacked in our team, uh, at, like a stronger voice uh, in, in heat of the moments. And I think... That I didn't know about David. Uh, I kind of pictured that he would become that um, sure. back in the days, but seeing actually how far he got is like insane. So um, yeah, it's it's good to see him here. 
How'd that feel? Is that good? It was great. It wasn't the, it wasn't the, the, it wasn't the question I read. I was, asked, <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, was I was reading for some different one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate the words. Um, well, I mean, pay me off though. <laughs> <laughs> you pay off. Yeah, now you owe me. <laughs> well, I mean, it's funny because like the whole thing that he's mentioning is like maturing. You had to like kind of you've been on that Mouse team that has been an academy team for like three years apparently that we've always called. But like you were kind of like the veteran at a very young age. So like, do you feel like that kind of accelerated the process of having that extra responsibility? Mm, maybe a little bit. I think. I just had to grow up, you know, in some ways, since, you know, Robin left, Finn left as well. There was a lot of room. Like, there <laughs> you was, said that like it was so painful. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, not gonna, Robin I mean, left me, Kerrigan left me. I mean, it was painful. Not gonna lie. <laughs> I mean, uh, when you're used to something for a long time and, you know, suddenly it's not there anymore, like, of course, I was missing them. And, uh, yeah, it was a big room of shoes to fill, you know, so I had to grow up in some way and, uh, yeah, you know, in some sense lead the younger guys back then. Cool. So I think everything had happened for a reason, I think. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it shaped me into the person I am today, it's right? Like so getting back with the next girlfriend. It's great. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> give it a second chance. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's cool. So this is like kind of like a little bit of homecoming, joining up with the boys. Yeah, somewhat of a homecoming phase. They have that reunion, Frozen joining the ranks, and they do seem to have hit the ground running here in IEM Katowice 2024. FaZe Clan, one map away from the Spodek. It's where many expect to see them. I'm sure many of those that have bought the tickets for those playoffs are expecting to see the FaZe flag flying. And Eternal Fire up against them. It was a hard fought first map on Eternal Fire's turf. 16 to 14 as FaZe have got themselves one under the belt. And we're ready for the pistol. Let's get Anubis started, shall we, Chaddy? Yeah, this is uh, gonna be a tough task for Eternal Fire. That win-loss record we had on the graphic, uh, not really showing too much of a strength for them, but uh, likely knowing this could have been the pick from FaZe. Let's see. Oh, uh, Wakati is already dead. Oh. Yeah. Well, that will slow things down. Significantly. Range just hit a banger. Takes a glance, takes a head. Got JK and MC providing that observing goodness. And we are going to, yeah, really slow things down in the absence of Wakadia. Not the way you'd be hoping to open the campaign on a map that you don't have a great record on. So uh, the fact that they're having to do this at a number disadvantage, Madja with a flash over the top to garner the A main control. But Alex, if they continue, Heading in this direction, there's three phase players home. Oh, well, Zantares, he's no slouch. And with the P250, he can take these long range engagements towards Bricks, Heaven, Cake. Close. He's baited them in. The bomb's committed now. Oh, long range from Kalix, no less. And now it's up to Brokey. Nice bait. Frozen strikes. Kalix, he's gone now. But it is just falling into place nicely for Faze. And, and this late mid component of was Woxic is, well, late. He doesn't get anything done. Faze will start strong. Yeah, it might have looked stressful. But uh, you could see it wasn't going to be any problems with that stack on the site. Rops was merely bait. And this was the opening shot from Rain. Wakadi are going to feel very hard done by trying to get across the bridge water side before that connector peak. And those frustrations from Zantares, we have seen them from time to time, but I'm sure after, well, might feel like letting Inferno slip. Now going up into Anubis, it's gonna be a late night. And you know what happens if you lose this one? A lower bracket run if you wanna see the Spodek. And Na'Vi, who are misfiring, are the team that the loser of this series will be facing. Na'Vi can find their form. We know they can be a threat as a flash in towards Khan is disparaged. An incendiary and now a smoke. Oh, they're going B. It's very telegraphed. Good catch from Carrigan. Catches Roxic out towards the main. Tatares onto Rain and it's Brokey all the way from behind. Pushes mid, finds Magic. 
all onto Calix. Good onto the first, and it's sensational Deagle headshot. Now two more encroaching. Frozen and Robs. He nearly had his cross there in the right place for another. Nice try, bit of dump, bit of damage at least, but FaZe do weather the storm of the second round force. Tidy Deagle shot. Those are what uh, clutches are made of. You know, you hit that, you follow it up with another banger, you get a hot hand. You put yourself in a very winnable position, but the timing of Eternal Fire's hit was really stalled by that util from Rain. And you could see then they just felt hopeless. They had to run in through the smoke with those flashes that were being thrown out by the B main players. Still got some damage done, so not the worst in the world, but that was a force buy, and now we see an eco. They're going to try for a B pop again. Carrigan posted with the org, a good weapon for the job. And yeah, that's why. Yep, yeah, we'll get warded off the fight. And with Ladger actually opening up the account quickly, this is falling apart at the seams. The Wakadia Tech 9, it's going to be something FaZe live to fear. Frozen needs to survive while Rops can work on this flank through canals. Bomb yet to go down, so doesn't need to overextend, but just wants to harass. Yeah. Dancing with him. Rops is here. McCarty's been waiting for it. Madge has gone all the way around, loop-de-loop. -loop. Trying to flank the temple player, but this absence of a plant is already getting them a bit suspicious. Frozen, considering the potential for a Madge flank. 11 bullets. I'm going to come down to time. Rob spots out with Cardia. Frozen distracted now. Maybe Magic can get a move on. Running out of bullets, and here it is. Magia strikes on Frozen. Awkward round for FaZe Clan. They need Rops to do it all. How's it, Molly? Dropping on the bomb. That could work. 30 seconds. The bomb's in front of him. He may not be aware. And now they just triple swing. Hold on. Yeah, it's Wicardia. It's all Wicardia. This Tech 9 has run into the B site on essentially an eco. And they'll leave with the round. I'm just talking about Carrigan, the org. Good weapon for the job. He even got the opening pick. But it's the kill on the Brokey. Ah. Okay. That is where it went wrong. Brokey pushing through a top mid smoke. Didn't catch that one. And they were able to overwhelm the B bomb site. And they must have known the bomb was there because it was in front of him and Rops had That's actually leered forward a little bit. So it just seemed uh, a bit of an odd mixture. No, yeah, no reaction to it. Brokey has an orb regardless and so does Woxic. Deep-ish. Dark smoke, not as deep as they can go, but enough to send Brokey back for now. Faye's able to make this force by work. It really is the beacon of the big green. This is just pistols and an SMG as a house smoke is thrown out from Centaurus. He's going to do it all himself. Or Molly. Flash anybody off the line. And start to crawl for that space. Brokey. Started towards B, now towards middle. Scoped in on the doors. Has company. Carrigan spotted out. Brokey still not revealed. Tucked in for... Four and the T side orb for Woxic. They're dropping into a B split, I think. It certainly looks that way. Feigning A presence. Now dropping down to hit B. Nice day. Oh, that's a lot of damage from Carrigan. Softens him up for his Desert Eagle as he fires off another shot just shy. They're wrapping. Applying a lot of pressure. A lot of scrutiny. And Frozen trying to get pushy towards the A side. It's been caught by Calix. But four of them committing into this B-side. There should be no way for Faith now. This armor Deeg's not getting far. Rain has got one. Wicardia kills Carrigan with his own weapon. Rain hoping to punish on the plant, but Wicardia safe and gets away. And there's no way you want to lose your AWP to the round like this. So Brokey putting all his pennies into this. Going to try as hard as he can to keep it into the next. Looking for an upgrade or maybe a little bit more damage. Face. Yeah, another one of those wobbles. We saw it on Inferno with Cardio as well with the Tech 9. Ran into the B site, got that dink onto Brokey. Over towards the Coven's position through the smoke. Finished him off and, oh, Badger. Covered a few bullets. Might go down. Get out of dodge. Probably goes down to the bomb here. Yes, he will. So while trying to get an upgrade, loses absolutely everything. And I don't speak Turkish, so I don't know what the uh, round is going to look like at all. 
for Eternal Fire going forward, but we know that they saved that Brokey AWP. Rops with the MP9. Rain with the Deagle. Still some landmines available for Eternal Fire to trip on over. Yeah, they're sending Brokey to start B. I don't think that's where they had hoped that was going to land. Just going to be holding on towards B main. Frozen has got the unenviable task of trying to hold middle with a USP. Down goes Rain. Good start. Madger. Walk sick. Everyone winning their duel. Brokey still yet to be able to find anything. That's not bad from Rops. There's Brokey's chance and it has gone awry. Missed shot. Smoked off. Forces the reposition. It's Rops tucked in on this A site. He'll give it a good go. Great precision into the head of Zentares. So he's done an awful lot with that SMG. Not off back, Brokey unable to contribute further. The bomb making its way through main. Oh. Would have heard the singe there. Looks like he's giving it up. It's only Carrigan who can cause concern. Would have been a hard shot to hit. Yeah. Easier with an AWP. Do they start hunting? Because now that the AWP has fired off, Brokey, you are a wanted man. Manja already starting to give this one a good look in. Quickly found, finds himself coming up Canal in towards Con. Brokey trying to stay alive in Temple. Having to worry about all fronts at this juncture. Tippy top of the stairs. Magic combing through. Bomb 15 or so seconds remaining. They're exiting towards Beach. So, Magic, he's actually rerouting. Thinks that Brokey may have gotten off towards T-Spawn. Bomb goes off. Brokey saves the AWP. Loss bonus comes in the bank bouncer phase, and they will be buying into the next. But Eternal Fire have the lead, 3-2 to two on their T-side campaign. Phases map choice. And there was some typing. You heard those little clicks? Well, that's a conversation being had of some variety. It looks like Zentaras might be experiencing a bit of a technical issue. To span through the smoke, you love to grab one like that if you match up. Oh, head just pops up, walks six strikes, and he even is able to grab his third kill. Onto Carrigan, trying to desperately find anything. As uh, we have League Ops, you can see. Over with Zentaros, trying to rectify the issue. Normally, headset issues. Seems to be a bit of a classic. And with clear discussion about the ears, I would imagine that's exactly the case. So, a buzzing noise. Yeah. I thought that was normal. Don't we all have that going on in our heads at all times? No, you just... Or are they the voices? A few, a few too many heavy metal gigs, I reckon. Yeah. It's Chad Sponge Burton in the mosh pit. I couldn't see me getting that in. No, but I'd like the I like the mental image. I'd be there. At, I'd just be at the back. Yeah, no. Bobbing. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you'd be starting Listen just wind, windmilling drive or in the circle pit. Bring me the horizon. Yeah, you'd actually. You'd, we should go. We would find a, a, maybe a local band. Oh, we've turned off the buzzing. We found the off switch. Nice. Okay, buzzing resolved. Let's see. Fraternal Fire can keep this one up because they've definitely seized control of Anubis T side early. Guns are out. No longer so compromised. Rops Brokey. Going to start off with a 2 2 1 2. Actually, quite a forward A main setup establishing that AWP. Rops close. He'll be able to hear them if they're coming rugs loudly. There is a smoke behind them thrown by the T's. I think it's meant to dissuade this aggression, but they're still posted. Should be a flash. Yeah, you'd expect. Needs to be a flash. Shadow and trigger. Oh, just like that. They try and run him down. Woxic at least gets one. He'll stop Rops from retreating, but they know what's up. And FaZe have handled a fantastic opening engagement. They leave with a man oh, advantage. Look, look at his knife out. He knows what's up. That's so much space That's taken. Audacious. They are going to go back through connector, however, and that's been left wide open. Rain has found himself in their spawn, and yeah. as Carrigan darts back, they could start entering in towards the side. He's got a smoke grenade. He's not going to pull that in time. He's about to get a face for the lead. He's got a lot more than he bargained for here. Oh, gets away. Trying to delay. A smoke, a nade. Carrigan under scrutiny. They're coming for him. Finds a little bit of a reposition. A nice little moment's respite. The XX in, as is the remaining three. Rain smash through. Back. Jump straight through. And Rain, this is a perfect flank. They're not going to expect this one at all. By the time, aim is sublime. Plucks Wicardia out of the pack. Woxic 
in that one versus three and that time sensitive. Hits the no-scope but just, but nearly finished off the frag. Frozen dinked him. Brokey got the sidearm out. One bullet would do it. 13 seconds, there's Brokey. And FaZe returned to their winning ways. And it was all set up, really, to facilitate Brokey. Gets an opener, gets the closer. I feel like there was miscoms from Eternal Fire. There was a bit of dilly-dallying in spawn, a bit of going back, coming back. Kalix was in a position to throw that flash, and it kind of just, yeah, I think it, by, by delaying it a little bit, it gave them that shadow advantage. They knew what was coming, they knew what was up. It worked out well for FaZe. And attack timeout immediately in response. And the reason I think it was a little bit off is because they threw that smoke essentially from spawn, the one that landed deep A main. Right. So I thought they would try and capitalize on it a little bit sooner. But yeah, as I mentioned, maybe a miscom because we immediately see a tactical timeout off the back of it. And there is enough money to get an eternal fire by. Woxy AWP, AK's out and about. A deagle for Calyx. That's the biggest problem that they have. Well, maybe not the biggest problem because FaZe are rocking double orbs. One for Rops, one for Brokey. It's a good map too. World two AWPs. Especially on the CT side who can sometimes feel quite stuffed for options. We're always talking about that CT side aggression being necessary when to push and pull. So a lot of maps we talk about double ops as well, where you mean doesn't have, don't have to use as much utility early. You get to hold on to it as how oh, frozen peeking with the flash. Brokey the AWPs. Yeah, he's caught Wakadia and both extremities back to back. Brokey has managed to fill the feed early. Feel quite hollow. Sort of fire, are unable to get the bomb in or make this an interesting round. This next should be the eco. And with how the last felt, two of those in a row is going to be tough to stomach. Going to test middles, and Tarez does manage to best frozen straight across. Spots the presence of Carrigan tucked now into Cam. Roki considering around the world rotation. Molly forces Carrigan into the fight. He had a choice, and he opted for fight. Oxit uh. gets him, three on three. It's Rops posted up for the day main fight, and he's not going to let that one go. Nails the first shot, not so lucky on the second. Calix, good for it, good precision. A site's open, little do they know. There's a window for a plant here. Rain can flash in through the windows to enable Brokey, but oh, he's going fast. Yeah, and it caught Wox completely off guard. Just like that, it falls into place for FaZe Clan. Sorry about flashes. Running, gunning. And again, Brokey a mainstay in that kill feed. Gets the close up. Rain and him having a good start here to the defense. Four already in the bank. When did he get a neck tattoo? I've seen it. I just. Yeah, it was I don't like know when it happened. End of last year, maybe. Okay. Mid last year. Yeah, well, that went to the database of player tattoos that I keep. Yep, thank you. The Excel spreadsheet. I guess as soon as Brokey hears the plant going down, Important. Rain thrusts himself into it. Important. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever he was pointing at. Hmm. Well, uh, lost What's bonus. This? this is. Yeah, it, it's an interesting little purchase here because only 2,400 losses to the next round and. A lot of the players have invested more than should be available yeah. for Eternal Fire. So it might be two buys that have this complexion in a row for Eternal Fire. Might be more than FaZe bargained for. Well, Wakadi will have to make a play. He's the only one with an AK. Well, he's no stranger to doing that. Well, I'll give him a Tech 9. Yeah, doesn't even need the AK. Good time, Molly. Carrigan doing a very safe jump spot. Expecting a B explode, but it is just Carrigan and Rain here, so they could overwhelm. Here they come. Oh, Rain just been run down. Carrigan doesn't have the bullets, doesn't have his head. Wicardia combines with Zantares to take the B site. This is uncomfortable for FaZe. Such a tough side to hold. It is brutal. Just that burst. 100 to ooh, 0 to 100, rather. And they've you even used that smoke to great success. It's kind of limited the retake options they have, and it looks like FaZe are just going to have to lay down their arms and play for the next. Yeah, Tunnel Fire positioning three players. Make it all four outside B main, so quite confident they can defend this one from range, and FaZe are saving, so they should be able to get out of here. Both teams going to get to hold on to what they currently have in their hands. 
Great call out of Magic. I mean, they're threatening by the, yeah, the focus the, on utility. Because it wasn't an all-in. They didn't invest oh. everything. But they still wouldn't have had a full buy into the next. So uh, quite curious that they were able to pull that off. And that's two rounds with the explosions on to B that have worked. So for FaZe, does that mean more aggression? Or do you start playing a 3-2 a split where you're a bit more passive on middle? You can turtle up in towards that A site. Lots of questions to ask and be answered. It is 4-4, tied up as far as the rounds are concerned. The save rifles with now some MP9s behind it for those B defenders. And if you're Eternal Fire, do you just think, all right, well, why don't we just do that on the gun rounds? Yeah, it felt so good. Oh. My goodness, Brokey has just been completely caught off guard by an aggressive run down mid. I mean, that is hyper aggressive from Brokey. Wasn't anticipating Woxic. But a gift has been given to Eternal Fire now. The biggest gun in the face clan by is almost irretrievable as well, unless you want to throw the smoke down. He'll do just that. Well, Rain, as we've mentioned many a time, not known to be an AWPA, will be able to pick it up. When, it, when necessity dictates, Rain steps up. He may have to try and pass it off to Robs. Well, they're congregating for the B play. Yeah. We can just see how many bodies are starting to get outside B main for that execute in towards the site, which needs to be heavily fortified. But guess what? That rotation from FaZe. Oh, if he gets that smoke down. It's here in time. Just in time. The whole squad here. Smokes are in the sky. Rain throws out one of his own. You don't have to go. There's 50 seconds. They've just invested their util. Sometimes it's that sunk cost fallacy. You feel like you have to. Flash. Rain. Pushing. Huge from Rain. He destabilizes the push. Only the one. Feels a bit hard done by there. As it does look good for a turn on fire. A four versus two. With the smoke still up. Bomb is down. Throws in a forward position. May be able to catch one. Bacardia ratting through though. Nice awareness. aggression from Ivy. Keeps Frozen humble. And Rob's just going to try and keep hold of this AWP. Brokey conceding it in the opening couple of seconds. And he's been got caught by Woxix. So there you have it. Eternal Fire. They have seized control of this T side. It was looking a little bleak. But that call from Madger, that conservative pistol with one AK round that exploding into B has put FaZe Clan in a bit of a downward spiral now. Yeah, we head back into another tech. You can see there the uh, admin just giving Zentara's a hand, so probably still having audio issues that they would love to solve. And this means that FaZe now silently have to stew in their juices. The fact that they have lost two consecutive. Uh, wow. Oh, he dropped out. Yeah, they did it without him. Didn't even him. notice that he wasn't. Did it without him, completely. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, all right. We just start hyping it up. Zentara's has made it late, look. What's he got it out? <laughs> Is it a one-on-one? Five already. This is really recovered, T-Half. It was looking really, really uh, bleak for the boys. Frozen left as well. And you think you got, the party got started, right? So it was pistol in the favor of FaZe. Yeah. Then it was a force buy that FaZe were able to convert against. Then it was just some light pistol investments with that B-Swarm, Wakadia's Tech-9. Then they've been able to streak a couple of it together. FaZe bounced back with two of their own and now have been broken again after some saves. So... It's uh, sitting pretty for Eternal Fire, who should be more than comfortable to convert their sixth round on the T side before we do see weapons come back out for phase. Now, we've just had the match medic, and I can tell you, freeze time is starting to tick down, so we will get the game back underway. And, uh, well, off the back of that, technical timeout, a tactical timeout, the music. I'll let you know right where we are. The first from phase. Yeah, and it, it, only now is when they feel a, a bit in hot water. You know, you lose a force, that's going to happen. It is a T-sided map. I think if they can walk away with five rounds to their name in total on their CT side, they should still be feeling comfortable enough to close things out in regulation. But if they don't, they're one map up to the good. Eternal's map choice of Inferno fell to phase 16 to 14. We find ourselves on Anubis, and the third map, if we need to get there, will be Nuke. But we still have one and a half halves yeah. of Counter-Strike ahead of us. And I have high expectations for Phase's Nuke. Phase's Nuke? Yeah, if it's required. Oh, if we get... Oh, okay. If it's all required. Right. Oh, all right, like, all right. Like, as in, they wouldn't be uh, out of the fire uh, <laughs> if they do get it to all the way to the third. No flash. Just gonna go dry. 
ahead of it. And the whole squad's here as Antares. Lovely little shooting gallery for him. Gets away on the reload. Handled with class and poise. Bowling him over. Flawless victory for Eternal Fire in that sixth. Yeah, it did come with ease. Phase. It took a timeout, so let's see what that discussion has netted them for said gun round. And do you want to try maybe a bit more of an all-in to see if you can win the round in the opening stages as opposed to just getting executed on? Because at the moment, it does feel like Eternal Fire are the ones dictating the tone and the finish of these rounds. Well, sick. this is an aggressive orb line. He's been stopped by the flash. Peeking over that Molotov, though, it is a gaming move. To get that early control, that early pressure. If Rain over jiggles, he's in trouble. What's going on here? Look at that angle he's working with for info. Oh, knows where you are. Knocks the shoes off the Norwegian. That is walking in. Yeah, why not? He knows he's already going to be playing scared. They're out of position. This is a full amount of pressure. Look at where Cardia go. Cool start clear. Centaurus burrowed deep into mid. Frozen going to be caught off guard as well. Eternal fire bringing the heat. It might be eight at this rate. It's looking very likely. This was going to be a perfect round. Uh, a whole belt of utility for Kalix on that A-Lurk. He doesn't matter. He doesn't need it. And Roki does at least take one. Stops it from being a perfect As round. well hunt him. 2,900 is the loss in the next remove this. Nothing You've got plenty lose. of residual cash. Throw your bodies on the line. Take it away. And Woxic will oblige. 7-4. to four. And there, it's looking like a score that Eternal Fire should be able to work with. This is beautiful. This duo, this Woxic Wakardia duo, they just work some serious magic on B. The, the information from Woxic, the damage from Woxic, and Wakadi is just proactive hunting. Look at him go. I was just staring at the minimap for a lot of it because FaZe were doing something interesting to start the round. They went 2-1-2. Carrigan went to B. I think he donated a smoke. Then he rotated back mid. Brokey started A. I, he may have donated some utility. He was rotating back B. It just didn't seem like the setup was solidified. And now they have to defend their honor for the final round of the first half. The pea shooters and a baby orb. Phase. This is where the individuals need to multi-frag. <laughs> Gotta reload that one, Badger. Didn't quite switch it at the right time. Pressure on terrain. And pressure onto mid, Frozen, caught off guard. Centaurus makes it look way too easy. Only two kills for Frozen in this half. Yeah, he's had a tough go of things. How when you're always rotating into B? Oh, wow, Rops, that was perfect. Maybe he's ready to catch Box. A is wide Rolling open. on him. They're walking into the A site, and Brokey's got a scout. But they've just taken down the rival Orpa. That smoking cams and that bomb going down. Dragon has a kit, but he's going to go the long way round. Yeah, this are yeah, not ready for that. Beautiful from Madja. Catches the rotation of Rain, can support his team from A main. Might even catch them on the drop, he heard it. Info. Knows what's up, how aware is Rocks. Oh, not aware enough. Madja, triple kill, sprays them down. And it broke heat. Yeah, recovered Orp, sure. You got three to find. And one is all you'll get. Eternal fire. A T side they can most definitely be proud of as the eighth round is secure. Anubis making a strong case that this game is not done in two. Looking to stay in the upper bracket and looking to secure a spot in the playoffs. It's all up for debate. Stay tuned.
walls are closing in This room is smaller Another desperate eye Another face shot The clock is ticking down Embrace the case Game on! One T side that EF will most definitely be proud of. FaZe flustered after what was a bit of running and gunning. Yeah, matchup composing himself because he knows it's within touching distance now. Going all three and one of their best opportunities to continue a deep run here at IEM Katowice 2024. The playoffs just on the horizon. If they can get past Anubis, a single map will separate them from it. FaZe, it would require a pistol to start things off. Four rounds is all they boast as we swap sides. Yeah, Eternal Fire continuing to play that good team Counter-Strike with individuals packing a punch with Cardia's name again in some impact rounds and Woxic getting the better of some of his former teammates from the Mal's days on the AWP. Slow crawl from FaZe on their T-side pistol, not in a rush, not using shock and awe as the method of victory. Wow. It couldn't be more passive, could it? Holding top mid, holding your A main, holding the dark. I just think it's very common as well for, you know, the CTs to try an opening gambit somewhere, mm. like stack a, a position on the map. And they are stacking towards A with three. Magic camera, Woxic, Wakadia, more site-centric. Centares, he loves middle. Kalix on the retake B position as a temple smoke lands. Centares is rotating over. The bomb coming in through dark means it doesn't have to cross this gaping void. Can get planted default. Breaky thinks better and gets a little bit wider. And there's two flashes on Magic for the retake. That's what we need to focus on. Here they come. It's too quiet right now. It's going to be one big burst of energy. Calix, Centauro, caught off. Rain takes the first engagement. In synchronicity with Rops. Can't find Magic though. There's still threats. Double kill from Rox, and it's Carrigan's turn with that P250, gets Madja very low, and the round comes their way. Hard fought, triple out of Rox to end it all off, and just slow and steady, winning the race. Yeah, well, uh, both pistols. Now it's about making sure they convert what should be the gimmies, and that wasn't a guarantee within the first half. Now, and I imagine with those flashes, I'm thinking, does he have some special way that he's going to flash the entire B site? No, no, no. So it wasn't that exciting at all. If anything, a little bit lackluster. And they were hoping that they would have head elsewhere. As we do see Eternal Fire going to fight fire with fire, it's going to be a force bite. Rops, this is a very powerful position. You can also hear a lot of rotations from behind that box. 
if they're running loudly back and forth from A, camera middle. That's a deep smoke towards dark as well, goodness. Yeah, I like that one. It gives the option. You either play ahead of it and fight middle, or you sit behind it and essentially give up dark and hope that you can win on the fade. And well, that's tough against Galils. Gave it a good go. Pulled the trigger first. And Rain has got a lot of control. There's a lot of pressure on the Galix now. Three CTs here to try and receive. Faze in no hurry. Off the flash. They surely Ooh. start to apply it. I think they're just going to wait for this B main smoke to clear so they can do it together. At the moment, it'd be a bit disjointed. That makes a lot of sense. Here they come. Brokey goes down. With no trade. That's the bomb on Rain. So if Roxix quick, which he certainly is, it could be another phase fumble. One bullet. In the second round conversions. Yeah, run down on the reload. It's all up to Robs. The pressure is on. He's due one of these, though, isn't he? Most definitely. Loudly stampeding through the canals. Makati is bitten him to the punch. And he heard the step. He heard the wood. He hears him. Makati up. An armored desert eagle. Not going to be there for Rops' pre-aim. He's so screwed. Yeah, he's in trouble. And as he holds it, oh, fakes it out. Delays it 14 seconds. He's playing with his food here. This is smart from Makadi. But it's time for the main to call in. First headshot found. Rops. Take again. Seven oh. seconds and still run down by Calix. Eternal Fire have done it again. This second round pesky force by. Slips away from Faze. And three from Woxic. Three from the Orpa. On that MP9. Yeah, and we're talking about waiting for that smoke to fade and going in. They'd already blown a lot of their util. And then Woxic activates. The fact that he can pivot into two and then chase down Rain for that third. And, oh, Carrigan. You don't often see him having a meltdown in that regard. But when you're losing as many low buy scenarios as you have been in this series so far, you can understand why. Uh, this is a phase classic. Yeah, but if this round goes against them, let's just head to... Oh, never mind. <laughs> the Torres, where did his head just go? Popped by Brokey. In middle, playing behind the smoke. Did Brokey just spam him through? I'm sure we'll catch that one. But now it becomes winnable. What looked... Looked like it wasn't too far off the mark. Matches brought Carrigan low and Calix to be tested upon the fade. His turn. And he's a quicker reaction though than Madja. Or not. Rain. <laughs> Fully. Perfect. On the execution into the site. Now they've lost all the territory they need. It's B bomb site's just a misery, isn't it? Yeah, I'll try holding on to this one. Well, that's FaZe Clan for you. <laughs> and it started with Brokey. <laughs> well, to be fair, Brokey did give them away the opener in that first half. He pushed through that mid smoke. I think there was like an exchange on B. He pushed middle. Magic took him with the P250, and then Wakadia ran into B and got a whole bunch of kills on the uh, Tech 9. But his, oh, it is just complete spam. Classic BS. Is Zantares trying to use it as a wall. That's not the case at all. That's, that smoke is also so suffocating. That's two for two on, on FaZe finding the frag through it or upon it. Wow. Well, that's a gift for FaZe. It was, it was about to run away from them. It was like they were, it was halfway out the door and they've just about managed to get a lid on it. Yeah, and seeing Carrigan just run towards B desperately with a deagle looking for a heads up right. aim jewel, it's like, oh, okay, is he that like tilted? He's fried. Luckily, he's fried. Brokey gets the kill and then he just rouses it. Oh, hold up. We're winning. This round oh. is winnable again. Oh, okay. That's all right. <laughs> Okie dokie. Sm born Smokey from Frozen. And, and there's reason to be getting a little bit heated if you're Carrigan because the way that this game has gone, I'm not saying Eternal Fire are a bad team. I think Eternal Fire are a very good team, but you won their map choice 16-14. You come into your territory, somewhere where they don't have very good stats at all. You get this done, you close it down. You're in the spur deck, baby. Super cool smoke. They just, that, that deep, dark smoke. Oh, and they're pushing. What's going on? Is this from Rops? Flies out of the rug smoke. Takes the fight, aggressive. Centaurus is super low. They're going to run him down with a spray. This is hyper aggressive from the T's to match the pace that the CT's set. Charging out a main. <laughs> I, it's rare. I've, I don't think I've ever seen Rops leaping into a duel against two. Does manage to stabilize for the first. Like a Spider Man maneuver. It was. That was sketchy. My goodness. Well, they know the last player was a main. Rain saw a little bit of leg. There's still the trouble of the lower HP and the fact that now he could have rotated away, which Major has. He's currently residing in the mid doors. The bomb going all the way through T spawn, the safe route. Throws him lining up some util just to make their final commitment towards the site a little bit easier. But do they want to find him first? Apparently so. And Carrigan, he will remove Major's life 
and force Eternal Fire down to an eco. Now they have to win this one. They have to. They certainly do. Look at this. Here he comes. Yeah, nearly got two as well. Look at the damage onto Zatares. So quick moves from Robs and good team play. Everyone else backing up that aggressive reaction. Yeah, this smoke, this is what I'm saying. It's super early. Like, the CTs don't stand a chance. The fact that it's spawn based, that this is where we're hitting a whole another level of geekery. Wait. That was a deagle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to answer that then? Was it not through the corner? I guess it was. I've seen reports of deagle headshots not being one shot kills, but. Yeah. Was it? Well, I'm trying to investigate. It was... Oh, it could have been. There's a bullet through the corner of the wall right here. Yeah, that might have been the Badger. Well, they're fast flanking. Fast dying. Fast anyway, frozen. Loses control of the hose pipe. Good Deagle from Calyx. He can definitely use this sidearm well. Don't give him an inch. He will take a mile. And hold on by rain. Karakin looking... Uh... Perplexed. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, uh, that was the eco from Eternal Fire. Now we get the guns back out. So both teams, here we go. Ah, must have just been through the corner of the wall, I guess. <laughs> yeah, there's that bullet. Oh, Wakadia. Robbed. 10 HP, the difference. <laughs> yeah, that's how I would have been he feeling too. He sound, he heard it, he knows what he did. All righty then. Get into the guns, shall we? A main pressure coming Wakadi's way. Yeah, just walk in the open, scoped up. Has support. I mean, but if he's jiggling, this is where he could get caught off guard. How well drilled is he? This young talent. For eternal fire. Are they going to explode on him quick? Yeah, he'll get this smoke. No, he won't. He dips away. Has support, multiple bodies. Oh, Carrigan's caught timing. Just as Antares looks away, Carrigan through the smoke. And now the pressure's on from multiple fronts. Now you've done enough, you've done enough. Pull your jets and say that as well. two frags come through. The double W. Picardia, Woxic. Now Carrigan should be, should be dead. What? He's robbed on that spray through the smoke. Somehow, miraculously still alive, they can erect this boost. Maybe they can catch one. Yes, they can. Good find onto Frozen. They're thinking Hello. quickly here. Flash and go, that feels like suicide. Smoke, that's something though. They can peek around that. Carrigan towards the heaven side. Oh, great angle from Ray. Yeah, they're overlooking that position every time. Madja with the hard clear, he knows where you are. And a 1v1, Madja. Six bullets, hard clear. Good shot from Rain. And that's got to feel good for FaZe. I mean, it really hinged off Carrigan getting that frag. It caused the reaction. It nearly still fell apart. Yeah, that patch of chaos. You thought Eternal Fire, especially through Wakadi and Woxic hitting those shots. That nade. And yeah, Zataris just pulled away. Carrigan finds that gap. The fact he survives the Calyx spray is huge. Oh, the nade as well onto oh. Woxic. Very frustrating. Sick, and their sick own replay. smoke used against them. That covered off all the action. And now a bit of a sinking feeling for Eternal Fire. 9-9 nine, nine as Turks will have to find themselves on just a partial investment. Max loss bonus into the next, considering we have four straight rounds from FaZe. They want to keep this one clean. They haven't really been able to get too many easy rounds. And it felt like they were down and out until the Deagle of Brokey happened through that mid smoke. For every FaZe game ever. Yeah, always need a little bit of FaZe BS. Welcome to FaZe, Mother Truckers. To be fair, I'm uh, somewhat concerned if I face because these are the type of rounds that they struggle with. True. That's true too. Yeah, it's a double-sided coin. Is that the expression? Okay. Yeah. Walking on in is Carrigan. Careful now. We know what the pistols can do. Okay, wow, sharp reactions from him. And a brief fire back into the MP9 long range. Puts him low. He'll get out of there. Alex and the Deagle, the potent mixture. Look at the damage, just body shot in rain. Doesn't get the finish. Jumping down from Zantara's traded by Robs. Madge will be accounted for. Frozen's coming. Yeah, not going to let that one slide. And Wakadia might offer himself out the window as well. No, nope. he wants to see if he can challenge Frozen. I just believe he made a step, so Robs would have heard that from below. And on high alert. 
can see the intent behind the clears. <laughs> Killer kill. Thank you very much. I'll be taking that. Oh, but he's empty right now. <laughs> they had all evacuated, seeing if they could hunt him down as he's going to do his very best to hold on to this AK-47, and they may as well allow it. Ten now for FaZe. Just three rounds away from booking their ticket to the Spodak. Terrorists big win. event, a big name. Someone that I think Carrigan believes they should be playing even with the addition of Frozen. I think this is one of those players you plug in and you go, okay, well, let's pick up where we left off. We shouldn't be taking too many steps backwards. Yeah. I mean, FaZe, with Carrigan and Brokey combined, they're currently eight and two in opening duels between the two of them. So definitely some heavy props to be given in that respect. Especially considering, yeah, Carrigan and Brokey don't actually have all too many on the totals. So the frags they are finding are defining rounds. Tactical timeout from Eternal Fire elapsed. And it's do or die for them if they want to stay in this upper bracket. Guns are out, you've got everything you need. Woxic on his orb. Let's find out what the call is. Bomb on Brokey, looking maybe to maneuver towards the A side of the map. Let's find out. I'll phase the champions of Kelevitz 2022. Missed the playoffs in 23. And as mentioned, they're just three rounds away from heading back there. It's a heaven smoke, but what else have they got? Trying to sell this early a util, and it's a gap that... Oh, look Not ready for this, this aren't they? Thing. Look at this! The power of this dark come smoke. Come back through. Yeah, come through. This is a beautiful conditioned play. Exploited. And using this smoke for multiple different facets of attack. This is gorgeous. What a call. Floundering. Our eternal fire. Overextending perhaps his character. But the job is done. The site is lost. The nade. Ooh, had broke his name on it. And he's delayed it long enough. But the bomb does go down. Gets away with 6 HP. They are hanging on. Frozen and Brokey low, but the job is done. The round is won, and I love that. I don't know if they're going to be able to save these weapons either, because once the dust settles and the sound cues start, Rops is able to start pushing and chasing, and they probably should. But you're highlighting this smoke, right? The fact that we're seeing them throw it off of the spawn, whoever gets that spawn is throwing that immediately. And as discussed, you have two choices. You either play ahead of it and try and fight, which you're very susceptible to, or you have to completely give it up and allow them to take that control for relatively free. So eternal fire, it's difficult to solve that problem on the fly oh, while you're in a progression match to the arena. And for the first time this game, or on this, for the first time this side, your A players are immediately under threat. Heaven smoked, Molly breaks. What do you do? You want to help. You want to try and support through dark. You want to try and get some info canals. And what you don't realize is, is that smoke also means you can't hold that angle jail. You can't hold the entrance into B. And Carrigan has called himself into one of the easiest, least friction rounds. Phase clan to secure 11. I love that. And that's the thing. So what are you going to do to try and deal with this? Uh, if you might want to in the next round, push yourself out B main and yep. forgo even Co yeah, yeah, contesting. And yeah, that's the frustration because you're trying to puzzle solve. Well, they brought out double orbs, Magic with one. Smoke lands again, <laughs> highlighted from above. And you can see that segregation that is created. Now there's more pressure towards B main. A lurk smoke has dropped just behind Magic, I do believe. Baited Carrigan. He confirms the forward position and the fact that there's an AWP present. Maneuvering forward. The slow crawl from Carrigan. And it's perfect onto Calix. I didn't know that was coming. He's found the gap. Pressure from multitude of different fronts. And he's got another. This is Carrigan on his A game right now to secure the Spo deck. If Wakadia. Oh, I was going to say pushes A. The bomb was still lingering around. Brokey. He's dipped back from rugs now, so in safety. Zantares and Woxic, what can you do? You've lost the sight. These rounds, they're so quickly defined. But this is for 12. You don't want to give it up that easy. Zantares, he is going to give it a look in. But held by Rops, or sorry, Rain. Do excuse me, Rops is long gone. He's deep in mid. He's not even have to do anything in these rounds, yeah. is Rops. Hands free, hands off. Let's watch that flank as Woxic and Wakadia will be saving in this 2v5 situation. 12 is secure. That's back to back. Arrogant uh, rounds. And think about how in the dumps they felt. Round two of this second half, Woxic with three on the MP9. Some desperate deagles bought. Brokey gets a blinder through the smoke onto Zantares. The round opens up. Carrigan starts believing again. And now they've got a massive run of rounds. We'll make it seven. And it might even be eight with the next to close things down and head to the playoffs. Outstanding. What a recovered. Oh, they are hunting. 
And they are, yeah, the Molly, he's still gonna push through it. They are fully blind, he has got no fear. <laughs> He's been watching Donk demos. He knows what's up. Just keep pushing, keep moving. And Brokey trying to run through the smoke with the orb. He's all a bit ambitious. He's pinned. Yeah, he's got no way out other than shooting them in the head. Rain will do that to him. And 12 on the board for FaZe Clan. Has to be theirs. This has to be done and dusted now. Walks can buy another AWP. Some rifles can be equipped. But they're using all the cheese in the book. Uh, that con smoke, the problem we've highlighted, but they also just paired it with the... Lurk smoke at B main. You can come out over towards jail. You can head over towards the pillar side. And while well, there's just too many angles to watch with only two players defending that B bomb site. So what do you do? You start 3B. And if you phase, well, now the map's your oyster. You've conditioned eternal fire perfectly. They're sick of this smoke, I'll bet. Yeah, Calyx trying to jump over it, drops out one of his own. And that's the thing, even if you wanted to play in the gap that's available, susceptible to spam. Walking on the A door. Cardio, very isolated right now. Oh, this is perfect. This is perfect. Yeah, is these last few. He has to kill them all. Oh, he didn't. Didn't see rain on the jump up. His crosshair implies he might have. Just get to play the fade. They Molotov him out. Well played to get it behind the cake instead. Avoids the flashes, but if you peek too far, Brokey will be posted. Woxic's been summoned. That orc could make a difference. Looking for answers. B Carrigan, he tucks in. Spotted out. Not a confirmation of their suspicions about A. Mid is a completely abandoned, and Rain going to start to maneuver towards the dark position. This is just to sell it further. A Molly dark. Going to keep your defense up. Now Brokey starts to work. What have you got for us, Woxit? Can Eternal Fire hold on here? Adjusts, doesn't find the frag. Tags up Brokey, good work from Wakadia. They've got ah, an attack from the side. Carrigan gets nothing. It's Wopsik and Wakadia holding on for eternal fire. Just the two of them. They take all five and are two rounds away from saving their skin. That is going to feel really good. The fact that it was essentially just a 2v5 over towards that site. Massive work. Going to bolster the confidence of those individuals. But you don't see the massive celebrations coming out from Eternal Fire. The job's not done. They want to take another map to overtime against FaZe Clan. Ah, the fact that they're able just to sit and be so stoic about that as well. They didn't play for any information. They sat in the site. Just played that 2-3 split of the defenses, and they have to start 3v again just because of what's been exploited. Brokey with pace towards middle, jumping into the fight. Oh, straight down the window. What's the harass B? That's just going to be jiggling. That's naughty. Brokey no, no smoke. smoke. They didn't do the smoke this time. It facilitates Brokey. He's gone deep <laughs> straight into the site, and oh. it has been punished. Love the idea. Execution costly. Two versus four early. And they won't have a full buy in the next round. What next round, says Robs and Rain. Separated. Passive mid hold, exploitable. Oh, interesting combo from Rain there. Kind of in reverse, so Smoke's camera, Molly's temple, but if you're Woxic, you're like, yes, please. Spotted. A third rotation. Calyx connects. Only rain. Up against them all. And it's a clean one from Eternal Fire. This game's not done. With four alive, AK's recovered and not a full buy. As you said, this is not going to be the easiest one for FaZe to get across the line of regulation. I think Frozen can drop an AK. Carrigan has a Mac 10. He's currently building a Tech 9. Oof. Stress on Carrigan. Yeah, I mean, he just he wants he wants it done. He wants the Spodate locked in. He just wants to know the playoffs are theirs. End your day with a smile and an efficient 2-0. But Eternal Fire, they're not rolling over. They're not giving this up without a fight. It's just going to be a big Spodate. They're all here. Yeah, and Calyx is going to try and delay them. You can see that jiggle. Molly. Well timed. Yeah, Sold perfect. them out. They're throwing their util. They're going to have to extinguish and go. Calyx hiding behind the pillar. Great strike from Magic. Gets them two down. Eternal Fire doing a lot here. The Tech 9's a problem. He's run out of bullets. And oh, wow, Mad just had a round there, a quad kill. Somehow, some way, Madger holds on.
Oh, the in-game leader, the vet, the man that's been doing this in multiple iterations at Counter-Strike, just like Carrigan, denies them at the door, the perfectly timed Molly, the explode comes through, oh. and just gone all in for that B play. I need to see this one again, because yeah, it starts here, sprays him down, runs out of bullets, says no problem. Finishes the job with the pistol, pulls five, out the five seven. seven, and just like that, the round is theirs. That is stunning work from Madrid, and that's why you buy a pistol. Yeah, go to in the last round of regulation, don't you? Get your upgrade in and a smile on the face. <laughs> we go overtime again, and now that that stress has been alleviated, Eternal Fire maybe freed up a little bit more to start setting the tone. There's gimmicks around the smoke. We'll see if that can continue to rewards for phase, but it's cooled. More standard dark smoke as well, so that in itself might imply something or allow something. And this just looks like a very standard default. Block towards middle, they're going for the A main control. Baskets molly, clear down. Trying to force the CTs to use their Uta, which they have done. Kalex has a full bell. Zatara's just used his incendiary, trying to stall out this mid for as long as he can. We have a minute left on the clock, so harassing as Zantares cops an eight on the nose. The flash is good. Wow, great awareness from Zantares. He knew that nade signaled something. Something aggressive. Carrigan gave it a go. Cut down early. Zantares finds himself at the beach, so as it stands, it's just Galax and Woxic here. But Eternal Fire have no, had no issue defending these outnumbered positions on their CT side. Util lands at their door. Roki gives it a go. It's actually frozen. No, ooh, I said not ready. Rain adjusts into Kalix in the Goblin corner, forced forward by the Flames. Wakadia caught off by Rops. Phase have recovered. Bomb down with the man up. Double or retake. Yeah, not sound. Doesn't sound ideal. Plus, very costly investment to give up in the first round of OT. Especially like that. He's walking around the corner. They know where Woxic is. He's sticking around. Surely you want to get out of there. He'll take a frag. He's going forward. Ops for the rifle. He's not done. Five bullets. Reloads in front of them. They know the time is on their side here. Takes the fight. Robs will do it. And just like that, eternal fire. Not a single weapon through. Some heavy investment short. But FaZe take the first of OT. Oh, and Magic's just snapped back into another AWP, and I'm sure Woxic's going to do the same. If you don't win this next round, then both Woxic and Magic will not have any real money for the final round of the first half of OT. And they both have invested in AWPs, so uh, the fact that they've gone for that retake, I, I don't think it was advised if the double AWP was meant to be the plan. I understand you're in OT and you feel like you can fight for a few more rounds, but it's not 16k, it's only 12 and a half. So this is going to cause some real problems. Eternal Fire might not get anything done on their CT side if they don't convert this one. And FaZe, instead of trying to be direct, again, they are much slower. They can see just how much utility Eternal Fire is lobbing through. Might need to have a little bit better economy of utility as Kagan again, Whoa, thrust flash. through middle. Really cool support of Util. Trying to set him up for success. He does well to find Wakadia, but with the Zantara's onto Carrigan, they leave with an advantage. Frozen was brought down early on eight. Boxic Sorb connecting into one of the two. Hold on, Rain. Up against Zantara's, caught with the smoke in his hands. He does get it off. Brought down to 19. Brokey working that bomb through. Deep Heaven Clear is always quite hard, but Zantara's, he's not holding that angle for camera. As Molly will deny him for now. The bomb should get planted. Magic to come through camera. Kalex on the flank. Rain low HP playing cam. A little bit of an element of surprise to his position, but Magic with the orb set for success. Takes and blows the head off of Rain. Broke in a 1v3. Oh, quick scope onto Zantara. It's suddenly becoming a little more realistic. A one versus three on that AWP and bomb is ticking. He misses his shot. Eternal fire, they find the equalizer. It was hanging on close by a thread there. If Kalex doesn't hit that shot, I'm pretty sure Brokey would. 13 apiece. And considering the discussion about the finances, Chad, they needed that. Yeah, they weren't able to actually pick up a secondary AWP. They actually didn't pick up any ops at all. It's an AK and an M4 carried through. But Brokey in that position that we're discussing, right? He has a chance to isolate one-on-ones with the way that they're retaking. And the peanut gallery have the phones out. 
to document the moment. Eternal Fire. Maybe it's their turn to snatch the map away in overtime. It's nothing again out of the box for FaZe. I think this is probably the better direction to go. Just get your standard map control, harass, call out the U2 and group up and try and play with that information you can garner from a default. Yes. Looking like a B main aggro. Like Alex is just on the jiggle. Again through middle. Yeah, testing the sharpest tools in the Eternal Fire Shed. It's Woxic, it's Centares. And it's frozen, first to fall. Face, might only be getting one around on this T half. Kagan will have to respect that. Dips back. Using his own utility to try and dissuade anyone pushing up close. So keeping eyes and attention on middle short. We've already seen what this Woxic Wakadia duo over towards A has been able to perform while under all the pressure of the world. Are going to contact this? Ooh, loud about their presence. Carrigan spots it out by Woxing. Repositioning quickly. Wants to address front A main. This is actually where Woxing can do his best work. Close quarters. Doesn't get his eye to the scope, but Ricardia will find it. Takes down Rain. Looks good for Eternal Fire. Carrigan would need to do a whole lot more than that. He's found the A anchor. Ricky has a re-smoke. That would be a huge to delay. It forces them to push through. Going. HE, here they come. Brokey though, the AWP hits. And all onto the AWP now. What have you got for us, Brokey? A missed shot. Two of them right in front of them. Brokey, this is so uncomfortable for him. He knows Heaven could potentially be a fight. Zantara is spotted. He's got that Tech 9. Second guessing now. Time is ticking. They have to find him. Just need to trade. That's all they need. A trade. And Madge is the one to run him down. Enough time in the round and a CT side they can be proud of. A recovery of sorts as Eternal Fire leave the first half of OT with a lead. And this is where FaZe struggled was the CT side. They had some real troubles. And Carrigan completely switched up the game plan once it got late. There was so much affection given towards middle. And that's where picks like this were found from the likes of Woxic who hits another looking into the wall, flicks into Rops. And this A... Sight, sure it falls, but what's Brokey meant to do? As soon as Carrigan peeks out heaven, uh, he's only got an AWP. The Tech 9, he's unable to win out that one on two situation. I mean, I was asking a lot of Brokey. Oh, it was? It was asking an awful lot. And that smoke, if it had been up a second, half a second earlier, maybe they wouldn't have felt as brave going through. They could see for a moment there was nothing on the other side, and then it plumed. Yeah. Kind of gave them a little bit of extra confidence on the push through. Big one from Eternal Fire. Magic, look at him. Wow, loud about this. Let's them know. I have a main. Remember, Frozen really struggled in that first half. Only two kills. And that was a lot of the time they were rotating in towards B. Oh, this is it. Oh, this is a lot. This is a lot. And quick from Wakadia. Just the one from Rain. B site open for business. Just like that. I said rotating into B, Alex, they're rotating in again. Yeah, I mean, it's going to be uncomfortable. What's Brokey supposed to do? A well-placed Molly might delay them. Alex isn't across with the bomb, but smoked off now. Oh, we can see over. Yeah, second one, just for due diligence. Contingency required. Frozen can't close. On towards that duel with Woxic. I think we're headed for Nuke. Looks like Nuke is on the cards. It's not a fire, I've guaranteed at least double OT. Brokey. He is investigating just a little, but they've already set up for this post plan. Going searching, one down. Nothing for him here. Madja spotted out. Good work from Eternal Fire. These guys, resilient. And now with two opportunities, two map points to equalize this series and force us the distance. Now we come into this, we're looking at last three months, the win record, fourth phase on Anubis. Victory against Cloud9, ends Cloud9 again, complexity fell, G2. And on this side of the year, 2024, they took down Spirit without Donk and Magix. That was the coach and Baz, the stand-in. So we can throw that one away, but regardless, they're on a bit of a streak. Now that streak didn't always have Frozen in the roster. It was with twists 
Coming into this on the other side, you think, okay, well, what's the confidence? What's the reason for the pick? Well, Eternal Fire, they've got a lot of losses attested to their name. Most of those, well, actually all of those, going down in 2023 as well. So maybe a New Year's resolution for Magic and their gang. Let's fix our Anubis. Because right now they are on the brink of victory. Just one more to push this series to nuke the distance. Two opportunities. Do you do anything a little risque? I feel you've outplayed them on the T side, Eternal Fire. Stick to it, continue to just bully this B bomb site because it's hemorrhaging. It might need a look at by FaZe Clan. Let's see what they've got for us here. Carrigan's got that flash for Frozen, should he desire. And he's just gonna get sprayed down fully blind with Zantares up to Carrigan, dead as well. Zantares, he's got Nuke on his mind. And only three frags away. Oh my god, he's taken down Rops as well. That was up against an AWP. Zantaris has had enough. He wants map three. He wants that spot in the Spo deck. He's not going to make it easy for FaZe. A full five alive. Brokey down as well. Zantaris with a statement. He's going all the way. A third map required. 26 from Woxic, 22 from Wakadia, a stunning quad kill from Zantaris up to 21. Every individual doing what was necessary to take it in OT. All right then, roster roulette with the boys. You got six chips in front of you, and you're gonna place the amount of chips is the number of roster changes that team will make by the end of the year. Phase clan. You're familiar with them? Yes. <laughs> Three, two, one, how many? Nothing. Nothing. Okay, <laughs> I was wondering. Ooh, nice. Victor is gambler. <laughs> I think there is a, a possibility uh, in the mid season that uh, a lot of teams will change players. So. I think Face Clan is uh, like a type of team that needs, uh, like, wants to stick together. This roster is good. It's not really like a weak link or anything like that. If in half a year they don't do much, I think they will change something. I don't think they will stay for a whole year. Maybe just one person leaving. It's hard to point at who, actually. Just got to upgrade with the last move they did somehow. So I think they're probably gonna stick it out and play well. If there is a change, it's not like change, but maybe somebody quits or something. Can anyone do that cool chip thing where they roll it on their knuckles? No, I don't, no, I don't know. James Bond stuff. Oh, kinda. Oh, yeah, kinda. Yeah, almost. All right, well, that's Ross Roulette. Well, in proper Katowice fashion, I must come to you and tell you, holy moly, red beans and ravioli, can you believe it? Because uh, you're going to have to. It does look like we go to a third map, and it does look like it took an overtime here again on the second map. That's right, the Intel Extreme Masters is marching right on. And for FaZe, well, you might have grabbed the first map, but you damn sure didn't grab the second one. Therefore, we do look at that third map. I want to welcome you all back and also introduce once more Steel and uh, the Bubski, they're calling him around here. Bubs, what happened? Um, FaZe ran into the wall at 9-12, right? I feel like they're normally a team who's able to deal with these type of situations. They even had the good buys, like the T side, they had a lot of stuff going for them. They even get an advantage in one of them, but they're simply not able to fulfill the rounds. And for some reason, I also felt like they felt kind of nervous at times. Yeah, I don't know if it was nervous. Like, they had such a good lead in their T side. And obviously, like, we can skip past, like, the first half shenanigans of, like, oh, well, and, you know, 8 4 half or whatever it ended up being. But once we saw Kerrigan kind of, like, going up middle on their T side, exposing the setup from Eternal Fire, those 2 1 2s setups that Eternal Fire had, where, you know, Kerrigan gets in the back lines and the rest of the team can split and they work the map that way, it was very easy for FaZe to pick up rounds. But then, yeah, as you're talking about going into the last few rounds there, like, we see 
see Brokey coming down, picking one through uh, E-Box, and then next thing you know, they're just trying to force the rounds, and it's just looking kind of gross and disgusting. Like, the last round of regulation, it's like, did you run out of ideas, or what's going on here? Yeah, you could also argue that would, there's a, a period of time where it will be different from the likes of Twist, and now in, instead it's frozen, right? So I'm not sure if that's playing into the cards right now, if that their map pool or like their tactical depth is not to the same level solely because they don't have time to, to put Frozen into the positions. But yeah, it looked grim at times. Yeah, and you know, that is kind of the harsh reality. Once those rounds start slipping away, once there is a, a close contest and then you think, yeah, maybe we'll close it out, it just doesn't happen like that, does it, Josh? It doesn't happen like that, unfortunately, for FaZe Clan. Um, with Eternal Fire, we're seeing, though, very strong CT defenses, and that's why I was so confused about watching FaZe Clan's attacks towards the end of the game there. They were just like, yeah, let's try going through A main or B main. And it's like, Eternal Fire was just shutting them down. Especially on like B site, they have like multiple people defending the site. And it's just like, one guy peeks from here, then this guy, and then they just get this crossfire. And then for, a, for some reason at the same time, we're also seeing FaZe Clan trying to just force through smokes. Still, we have an extraordinarily expensive piece of equipment right here that can help illustrate a story. However, you have a round. I'm not even sure if it's going to be on here. I don't, it might I just don't know be, if it's on here. I think it's just straight full I, play out. Don't worry about it. It's not going to be there. I'm pretty Watch sure the screen, man. Pretty, Watch this. I'm pretty sure it's it. Yeah, it, yeah, we'll see it here, maybe. Okay, so basically what had happened just before this was Eternal Fire was making a fake towards A at the start. <laughs> now we don't even have a screen. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Who pushed that button? Eternal what? Fire went Attention. towards A made at the start of the round they threw a smoke they threw a molly they're like hey we're doing like a default towards a they also did some stuff maybe towards mid but then they waited outside b and what phase is thinking at that moment in time is that hey they're doing stuff towards a but like we're all towards b we have to do something so what they do is they're like okay let's go push b and get information of if it's a fake or not and they walk straight into the trap of eternal fire yeah a good way to uh, to kind of use utility to bait people into like obviously you would normally want people there to actually show okay there's one two but you can also make make sure by using nades in a certain way that, okay, this is what they normally do on their A default, therefore we believe, okay, it's one, two, three, four yeah. people maybe, but yeah, they, as you said, they fell right into the trap and tried to get information on the opposite side of the map, but they stood all four there. So you're telling me that after two maps of play, we've come to an even keel where it all comes down to just one map, and that map is Nuke. So what, you know, what leads you to believe in any way, shape, or form uh, that this won't be as close? Wait, who said that I was going to say Well, this is what you were saying. I'm just trying to reiterate now. I'm just hanging around. <laughs> just hanging around. Uh, tell, um, me, tell me about Nuke and what to expect. I mean, should this be as close as an affair? We've, we've gotten overtime two times. I think it could be. I think Eternal Fire's CT sides are looking really good and dynamic with how they're fighting together. It's mm. it's really nice to see that. Face Clan have looked pretty decent on Nuke in a lot of cases, but they also have the propensity to troll. So, you know, knock on wood or whatever for whoever you're rooting for because it could get dicey. Yeah, and it's also the thing that I've, from my understanding, Rain is actually keeping the outside position. I think Rob's, or sorry, Frozen was one of the best in the world to play it beforehand, so I'm not really sure how that's going to play in long term. If they're potentially going to switch around, I would love to see Frozen out there. I think Rain is a better anchor than Frozen at times, so, yeah, I mean, Frozen, he's going to also have to step up to the plate now. I feel like we've seen two games where he's Done all right, but I would really love to see that, okay, I can do my thing and really just take over a game for once. And, you know, uh, I'm sitting here, I'm looking at this, and we kind of know the sort of fire we're seeing out of Eternal Fire. I didn't even mean to do all that. Yeah, yeah. But, the, you know, we're seeing their style of play and their approach to the game, and we're looking at FaZe Clan. Does it seem as though they're, they're as fluid? Are we seeing, obviously, examples in the last round or so, but, you know, we'll look past that for the time being. I think they've looked pretty decent. I, I mean, we've seen really good, like that last round of Anubis, for example. I thought that was, like, a really well-played round. Um, they struggled a little bit on T-sides here or there, getting caught off guard uh, by by Ops, by Karen Gig, and getting multi-kills. It's not the greatest, but we also see that their strength definitely is in the CT side. Kerrigan was getting away with a lot of things there, timings and getting into the site. Yeah, that's the thing he's good at, right? He's very good at, like, taking those shots short moments that you're going to get in the mid round and really go for it. I think Boomich is also an IGL we look for when he's trying to go for those small spaces. The only thing that I'm going to go for is that Eternal Fire actually look really decent when we're talking about the trios. We have actually not seen Santeros being like that dominant force that he normally is. And while Voxic and Wicardi is actually playing to a really high standard, Voxic is still miss. Oh, sorry, Santeros is still missing. If he's getting online in that last map, I would be real scared if I'm FaZe all of a sudden. And that creates an Aki Momo for FaZe. Is that right, Josh? Tell me, you know what? Screw that. Who's going to win? 
Who's going to win? Um, Better make it good because it's getting the internet. You know what? Forever. Well, I already said Eternal Fire earlier, so because you asked pre series, yeah. put me on the mm -hmm. spot. He was taking phase because he didn't want to go for Eternal Fire. He mm -hmm. would, didn't want to look like an idiot. But who looks like an idiot now? Because <laughs> we're going third map. So I mean, I'll, I'll stick with Eternal Fire. I've seen phase play, and they are pretty good at nuke. It's not their best map, but. The propensity tr to troll is th what I'm like looking at here. Like I'll just keep banging it on. Yeah, Rain plays outside and he locks that down really well. But oh man, like that last round of uh, Anubis regulation that I brought up, that type of stuff happens all the time. Where they'll get some info of like, hey, there's like outside smokes. It's going to be a play towards this position, and then people just whip out their knife and like run through. Like oh yeah, it's all clear. Almost lackadaisical and in a way. It is, and they skip steps and they get caught off guard. And any small amount of like noise, like banging pans over here, is going to cause someone <clears throat> Kerrigan <laughs> to run with his knife out and get caught and I mean that's those those types of openings are gonna crush phase so if phase don't troll we're gonna see them playing a good game because they're obviously you know top five top two whatever yeah and that's all hunky-dory and also you know propensity to troll is something we don't do around here we go to a break so that we can come back and maybe, just maybe, there will be some trolling involved. But I don't really know. It does get pretty serious when we talk about decider maps. That next one being Phase and Eternal Fire settling the score on Nuke. Welcome, my friends, to the Cathedral of Counter-Strike! Same place there, simple, just jumping casually into the site. Wait, 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 what, 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 what was that? Never miss a play again. That's not allowed. This is not FPL. This is a major. Finally. With Face It Watch, you're in control. Switch between player POVs live and see the game through the eyes of any pro. Never miss a moment with replays. Relive each highlight on demand from all angles. Watch it, control it, face it. A new day means new submissions to the workshop. Let's take a look at some of the maps that piqued my interest. Thera is a map created by the legendary FMP1. Some of you may know him as FM Pwn or even FM Pony, but yet again he delivers a gorgeous map that is well thought out. At first I thought this would be a facelifted Santorini, but it's actually quite different while keeping some of the elements from the original. Set in Greece, this 5v5 diffusal map offers clean visuals and a beautiful setting. Valve have yet to add any maps into CS2, but I believe this will be one of the first ones, as FM Pwn delivers every time, not just when it comes to visuals, but also to gameplay. You can tell FM Pwn has had some some good time in the new map editor, as it's all on full display right here. Vandal is a map we got a sneak peek back back before the workshop was released, and now you can all download it and check it out. This is a wingman map set in an abandoned granary. It's also on the coast of South Australia. I really do like the theming of this map. Vandal in the name and some vandalizing in the game. Many walls are plastered with this bluish graffiti, which perfectly matches the dawn dusk golden hour haze. Personally, I don't think I've seen a map utilize this color palette, and it is really easy on the eyes. It also matches my gloves and AK skin combo, so that's a big win in my book. Foroglio, I think that's how you say it, is a wingman map placed in the Swiss mountains. I've never been to Switzerland, but if the scenes are as beautiful as a skybox, then I might need to head over. 
Just look at that waterfall. This cute map gives you a nice rural feel and some lovely murals are plastered onto the walls. I have to say, this brick texture is one of the nicest I've seen. The art direction is fantastic on this map. Spawning in as a T, I almost forgot I was playing Counter-Strike. The map features some drop-down areas with close and open areas for fights. Unlucky for me, but the three friends I know were not around at the time, but I'd love to give this one a playtest. Even though, I'd probably be too distracted by those bricks. Sakura is one of those rare maps, where we get a look at what a wingman map could look like with Japan as its setting. However, you don't need to be an otaku to enjoy the look and feel of this one. Set in the evening, this allows the neon lights to illuminate your path consisting of alleyways and courtyards, all leading to this beautiful Sakura no Hana that's cherry blossom for any of you uncultured out there. Well, that's what Google Translate says at least. The effects on the trees are lovely with the petals falling to the ground. I may watch a lot of anime, but my language skills are not the best, so I'm very curious what the signs say. There is a lot of cute imagery dotted around this map, along with some fairly familiar logos here and there. Spodek up for debate. Upper bracket, phase and eternal fire have gone the distance. We have had a whole lot of fun, a whole lot of overtime and a whole lot of Counter-Strike today from IEM Katowice 2024. Group A, it has featured a whole lot of great games. Right now, myself and Chad are in the middle of one. And so are Phase Clan and Eternal Fire. We're here on the third, knife for side done. And we've got the side selection. Eternal Fire will be starting on that T side, which went swimmingly in their uh, opening affair. Yeah, their opening matchup against uh, BB Team, Naphany's boys, was uh, picked up by Eternal Fire 13 to one while starting on that T side. So that's 11 rounds they were able to convert. Let's see how many they can pick up here against FaZe. It's a cool smoke, cutting through that from spawn. More of that spawn smoke goodness and it limits what Frozen can hold. And it means Rain, the only one that can take that fight, oof. Roki's grabbed one down I the vent. Yes, yeah, so the rotation has been noted. That's bomb though. Is this all? He's in eight. Games? Yes, indeed. Magic just died on eight. Down Carrigan. This was all the fake. The fakery has oh! not worked out. Rain, such awareness. And he's going to get another one. They didn't clear their corners. Just like that, FaZe will take the pistol. That is bizarre. Yeah, juked them as far as the rotation was concerned. That's exactly what they were hoping to pull off, but thought that more bodies would be chasing the tail of that secret play from Eternal Fire. And no bomb going down means a very limp-looking force bite for Eternal Fire into round number two. The idea was great. The execution was nearly perfect, but Rain one of the positions he's been able to retain since the addition of Frozen to the team. So they gave him a uh, blank sheet so he can play wherever he wants. And, well, Frozen was more than happy not to take Yard, which is where he was playing on Mouse. It's where Rain got a major MVP. Yeah, that's his domain. In they come. Awkward for Carrigan, caught on the quick switch. This pace change straight into the top side. Some chip damage dealt through the smoke, and they're in no hurry. It's the flash. It's the flash. I'm planted. The phase really fumble this. These tech nines, effective rounds for Eternal Fire throughout this series. You can see the timing of that as well because they were spamming and reloading and just as a bit of utility was starting to subside and they popped in. Uh, master or Major starting to become a master yeah, of really. these very rounds. And Zantara's by being boosted, they might rip away another round four. I'm not sure Rob's be ready for this. Oh, he is now. Yeah, long range support, frozen. Onto Wogsick, and yeah, they just give this one up. Come on, Rops. Come on, mate. Looking to do some damage, but you're the one with everything to lose. 4 in 4 saved. We may as well just look straight into a gun round of the next, but if you're Magic, do you want the boys to get rid of the SMGs? Do you want to try and rock and roll? Ooh. Again, don't speak any Turkish. Have literally no idea no. what's being said. Still want to listen. Would have been interesting if, uh, yeah. I did, uh, did over the Christmas go. holidays. Come on, yeah. Chad, step up your game. <laughs> yeah, just a, a handful of languages that need to be learned, but they will retain the SMGs. Two Mac 10s, a scavenged MP9, a Galil, and an AK walking to round number three. And the heat is on out the gates of map number three. The stakes of this one. It's a 
costly run from Wagardia. Half HP, but across to red. And this is quicker than Rain's going to anticipate his internal timer by disrespecting that Molotov. Frozen was called on the rotate. He's just headed down the bend. So he'll be the one who has to cut Wakadi off of the pass. And that timing is very important. Oh, Rain. That's his chances. Great awareness. Catches Antares progression. The utility kind of sold Antares out there as to what his intentions were. Huge gap on ramp. Who's responsible for that? Should be Rops. A drop into the site from Broki may have been audible. To see Eternal Fire have definitely done their homework the way that they're playing with these rotations, but it might not matter. Wrong gun oh. for this type of a fight. Two of them. None the wiser. Look at this. Oh, oh. Got it on the radar. Surely. Still adjusts. Still adjusts. And gets away? Yes, indeed. Rops is on the hunt, but he's been noted as well. There's still two other members of this squad trying to help Madger out. Frozen secret now. Wow, Madger's had some high impact, but Frozen will catch both of those red container players, so it may not matter indeed. Oh, he just wishes he had an AK in that Such moment. He could have taken that at a fight of range, maybe gotten both kills, open back up the round now. Surely not wanting to save an MP9. Well, with 20 seconds left, you better get a move on. His phase with the save rifles will immediately respond. Picks that one up. Doesn't have to reload, but Brokey removes it regardless. And that is great outside. You love it. They do the secret cross. You were bang on with that util that Zentaris is throwing. It's telling the intention that they want to come back up secret and try and crunch outside. But they are playing with the rotations quite well, Eternal Fire. Ooh, just about, but yeah, Frozen coming secret. This, uh, this was the round win up. Yeah, I was talking to uh, Rain about this the other day on the media day because uh, we were looking at Nuke and Yard. I was asking, you know, what's the, what's the go? Are you calling the rotations? You know, and he said, yeah, with Frozen joining the team, he wants me to call, like, should it be the ramp guy to drop or should it be the vent guy? So that's a protocol that they've had to implement. Not something they worried about before. Mm, okay. So that uh, Frozen wants that info on. I guess it makes sense on how much space is taken because if you're Frozen and you're the vent player and they've already taken too much room and he drops down the vent, could get caught off guard. Is this going to be a... Rops just walks straight through. Yeah, fair enough. Takes a bit of a risk and looks like it's worked out well. Rops' his handiwork finished by the nade. Respoke squeak. Early casualties for Eternal Fire to stomach. And just searching outside. It's a hard angle, but a common free aim. And yeah, just a one through the steps. It does bring rain to 50, but the loss of Magia extends this man discrepancy. A two versus four. And here's one of the problems. Zentara zero kills, Wakadia zero, Woxic zero. Well, that does not sound like a recipe for success as it stands. Good angle from Brokey. Does not find a kill onto Wakadia, but that's coming his way now. Nice double clean so far from FaZe Clan. Okay, so again, starting with some wobbles, course correcting, and now holding on tight because they've forced Eternal Fire down to what should be an eco. And also, I mean, I think just not to, you know, over committing to that second round when they lost top site. Just saying, all right, we're four M4s, so let's just do it next round. And it has kind of stopped it from spiraling, stopped it from running away from them. Yeah, well, if Eternal Fire haven't bought the respect at this moment, I don't know when they would have, yeah. right? That's not a round where phase you can just be going, yeah, let's throw this away. They snatched Anubis from you. That was your map choice. Gonna have to drill down. They want to have themselves a day off. And secure themselves the playoffs of a legendary arena tournament. And for a legendary name, FaZe Clan. Broke, he's caught one outside. These Deagles are just searching, hoping. I say Deagles, yeah, it is Alex and Wicardia. You're good to get Wicardia, you know, just online. Exactly. Just one kill would be nice. Even if it's labored, even if you happen to get three Deagle bullets. But there he goes again. And Reigns looking tappy. Starting to look crisp as these are fights he is very, very comfortable with. EF just going to be soaking some time off the clock before they're all obliterated. Shouldn't be too much longer left in this one, even with the dinks coming through. Tucks his head down him and Brokey. Both wobbly knees. I'll leave it there, you know, throw in the towel. Even a defensive smoke. We'll get out of here. Someone else can fill our place. It'll be Rops. Here it comes. Oh, wow. Is that Glock doing? <laughs> he even got him! <laughs> oh, many headshots as Woxic hit this round. That is wild from Woxic. Oh! oh! It's a laser beam! 
And on the highest of sensitivities. He's controlling those tiny micro adjustments. Okay, well, this, so admirable. this has been quite costly. It's very impressive. Probably worth a bit of a laugh. Here he comes. Watch out, it's the Wokzik block. <laughs> Come on. All right, well, still a stern look on the face of Wokzik. There's a job to do. Whoever wins this one sets himself up for a seeding matches. Here we go. We get it in the highlight. Just getting oh. so many chances. Just straight up. He dueled Rops all the way from Silo. <laughs> yeah. Damn, son. Fair play. All right. Well, the buyout, Eternal Fire. I feel like they're lacking a bit of util. Smokes in the sky. Creating a wall outside, and they've gone for the quickest of walls. The one that will give the shortest distance from point A to point B, especially with the disbursement of those smokes. But no commitment behind it. It's forced a heavy rotation. Hydra might want to be calling a pouncer towards this A site as it's a very deep, squeaky smoke holding them back for now. Another deployed. This is quite annoying. They know nobody's down secret due to Rops, and he's even creeping up to try and clear Yard. Oh! That just feels unfair. Just the perfect moment to start spraying and unloading his magazine. It's been such a quiet round. And he's going to do more. Ray, an animal right now with that M4. Holds on to Squeaky Door. Tintares, however, has just about arrived. A double kill, his first contribution in this third map. Rops up the vent. Frozen, trying to distract. Carrigan, element of surprise, he strikes. Does surely get traded, not to be. A double from Carrigan to secure it. And five, already under the CT's belt. It felt like they were dawdling a little bit there as well, trying to get into that site. Kalix gets around towards the back of the bomb box. They can plant, but obviously a lot to worry about. And this is the uh, premonition of rain. Essentially wins the round right there, even with a couple of important kills from Zentaris, but they already feel like this one is slipping away. Five to one, four round difference. And it would be a shame to see them just completely capitulate after pushing it to a third map. You'd like to see a tunnel fire continue to put up a fight. Only round they've, they've posted so far is with that second round Tech 9 top pop. Yeah, and they did the smoke wall outside. They didn't use it. Phase flushed it out, and they also didn't capitalize while the rotations were in play. Right. So there that was, was that little window of opportunity. Yeah, and if they were scared because it was such a deep, squeaky smoke, then sure. But we are going to see another one of these lighter investments. Oh, watch out. Wox has got a Glock and no armor. But he has got a Molotov. So maybe he's going to be sent, sent Molotoving behind the site, flashing his boys out hut. Molly hut. Let's see where they go Be for. on high alert for this if you face, surely. Yeah, he's going for the molly back site. Not going to affect him with their current setup at all. Carrigan is literally just playing anti-rush, right? He's ready for this pop. As soon as the util comes through, throws the flames on the ground, denies one of the key entry points. I mean, yeah, Carrigan could get flashed by this, but already Brokey taking down Madge up. And ahead of the play. The util hasn't been thrown yet. Carrigan's even lands before theirs. Really good calling. Good positioning. Brokey racking them up. Looks comfortable with the AWP close quarters. There is a chance for Wakadia if he can open up the ramp side. Wow. Rops actually gets the distance frag first. Rain will sweep the rest under the rug, and we have got a sixth. It's really, it feels like it's been quick. FaZe suddenly uh, have got themselves the majority of the rounds in this half. They look like dominant FaZe now. Yeah. That was, uh, well, magic coming. Swinging around that corner, and then broke his reposition, catching them off guard for a couple more. Rain did get the AWP back, and look, double orbs out on the CT side. Rops is working with one, and we have three going into round number eight with Woxic's investment as well. Let's see how they choose to spread those out. Brokey Yard. Spotted with Jawan, that jump from Zantares has given it up. It's a cross. Just the one. Rain already has tended to this and a quick smoke to delay him. They started secret, so it's quite nice. Already can deal with this threat. A suppressing smoke for Zantara's. 
Dangerous game here, right? Trying to send Centaurus back up, and Brokey's there to receive him if he gives it a go. Sends the ladder. Centaurus still secret. Is it not for the spread and allows it to maintain the angle? Boost not going to find anything. It feels like a clumsy round for EF. Yeah, I mean, 40 seconds. It feels like it was hinging on Zentaris, but he hasn't been able to work at the same pace. Delayed by rain. Brokey, it's 30 seconds and he's responsible for Hut here. Major on the top of Mini. Maybe there's something to be said. Kagan still has a molly. Brokey will punish Ricardia first. Look at this setup. It's just one by one. Ah, oh, Frozen holds on to main. Comfortable on the top of the hut with five alive. It does seem like eternal fire, a, a running dry of ideas. Faze just taking a dominating stance. They will win out this half. The end of round eight. It's happened very quickly, hasn't it? Even though these rounds have felt drawn. Two saved rifles, an AWP and an AK. Loss bonus, of course, it's maxed. A second timeout, and you're going to be hitting the big red button right now, boys. We need something. We need some rounds. We didn't go this far to fall so short. Inferno, their map choice, overtime. Anubis, that of phases. Eternal Fire were able to show the form required, and now that they've taken it the distance, six-round gap has presented itself. And Madge, he's been doing this for an awful long time, in and out of the Turkish squad. And the same to be said for a bunch of these names. They've never been able to find that perfect constellation of players. And this one looks potent. It looks like they have the recipe for success. They've been playing some good CS. It'd be a shame to see it stop now. And that doesn't mean that it can't continue. There will be a lower bracket run ahead of them. Whoever loses this series right here, right now, gets an opportunity to take on a misfiring Na'Vi. Yeah, they just about weathered that Apex Storm. I just want to see something with a bit more gusto. No wall of smoke this time around. They have individuals that can hit hard. I just don't feel like they're getting themselves in positions to even take decent fights that would favor them. Sure, Zentara's got a bit of secret space, but just him. Where's the opportunity for your likes of Wakadia and Zentaris to flourish? Rocking this double orb as well, so... Ooh, missed shot. And Brokey, he didn't miss his, but ramp is open. Zantaris has made sure of that. Frozen on the rotation. Rain actually right behind him as well, so he swings open the doors for his teammate. Losing control. Both the doors open, so the sight lines now threatening for the T's. They're trying to take this space away. Frozen swinging through. Oh, they need to get some both. Traded by Carrigan as well. They take the advantage. A leg up in the round. And Rain comfortable onto Woxic. Kalix. Safe. I assume so. He wants the orb regardless. Taking a little bit of a look at the state of affairs. Forced into the channel. Aimed up by Carrigan. Molotov down to 30 and out. That was an effortless looking retake. Yeah, and the response time was so quick. And they almost threw, well, they did everybody down towards the lower deck to deal with this. So floundering now, at least they were able to get that opening on ROPS and find themselves some space. The bomb goes down, but this was great. Frozen going first, the leader says push. Well, he obliges the trades there. Cux misses the shot, no chance, and out. And the frustrations as we head ever closer to midnight, actually, we've just ticked past. Distinct lack of frags across the board for, for Eternal Fire. Yeah, and, but that's the thing. How many opportunities does it even feel like they've had? No, it really hasn't. Brokey's across quick. Takes a pot shot. Besides, he's had enough of that. Doesn't want to give them an opportunity to, to find an opening pick like that. I don't want to say it feels like they've stopped relying on the individuals to find the kills, but they're just not finding the kills. Like, the tactics are still there. Yeah. I remember in the early stages of this, they were playing with the rotations perfectly. That's finding right. the gaps. Imagine in hell with an MP9. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, Rob's comfortably spraying down two on the headshot. Just the tips of their head spotted and controls and oh. tames the M4 Ray 1S. You say control, full control. Yeah, man. This is uh, just rough to watch. This doesn't feel like the rest of the series that we've seen so far. You got dinged. No one's going to be able to inject any life into this. Out of gas. 
Our eternal fire, the flame starting to dim. Yeah, walk back into lobby. Waxika Deya. Brokey posted. Hyper aggressive. This just feels so comfortable for FaZe, this map. Actually, yeah, Match has got a good drop, a drop on them. Not ready for the events. Carrigan accidentally baiting and setting up Frozen. Walks like baits the shot. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. And not going to happen a second time. Jump peek another corner, Brokey says. Gosh. I mean, just... It's a different game, isn't it, to the one we had had in the previous two maps? It's completely different. And it kind of makes the fizzle as the third timeout will now be called... This is, uh, well, the smokes had faded as well, so they needed to get into a bit of a hurry to get across, and Rops just sits them on their ass. Faber, you can understand why he wants to take this third and final time out of the first half, because if you go into the second with only one, it's not going to be a very long second half at all. It's nice BB. And I suppose from the FaZe camp and for the FaZe fans, they'll be very happy to see their international super team with the addition of Frozen. Booking themselves a playoffs appearance. The Spodek awaits. Spirit awaits. There will be a seeding match against Donk and his band of merry men. And that will be a fun game to watch because Spirit so far, they've looked somewhat untouchable. Questions on what Donk was going to look like in the big leagues. Well, so far, so good. More multi-kills than single rounds of frags, apparently. Just on Twitter, in between games, having a quick little read. Mind-blowing. Donk stats are out of control. He's a corkter. Okay, wow, that really got awkward for him, this movement. And just like that, the dominoes tumble. Carrigan goes down as well. This is an olive branch to an exciting matchup. Phase of God, hey, we really enjoyed the intensity of the last two. Can we try it again? Have this one. Not over yet, Chad. Well, yeah, they can't completely give it away for free. Green, he's got a bit of a good idea. Definitely of... spotted. You're not throwing a nade like that otherwise. <laughs> What's coming? How's ramp looking? Unoccupied. Hmm. Take lobby or go down. Early rotation by both Four of from them. Two. They can smoke single. They can smoke windows or doors. Oh, if he gets dark, that would be crazy. Ooh, nice. Again, the Wakalia Tech 9 at that mid-range. Finds the head of rain. Frozen. He'd have to do something rather absurd if he wanted anything more than just the one. And Zintares, yeah, trains his aim. Hits the shot. And that olive branch, as you highlighted, has been converted. Things were going too well. FaZe thought, let's throw some aggression into the mix. We are able to stall them out all across the map. They were playing slow. They weren't doing anything. Let's go to them, shall we? And yeah, it was just a fluster from, from Brokey, that molly spread. Scroll wheel jump, sealed his fate. An immediate reaction trying to push forward was Carrigan, and then, yeah, the, it all just collapsed. Oh, to walk away from this half with double digits can face. But Eternal Fire will double their round count. The second now confirmed. And I don't know if the next one will come as easy. I'm so mad. It's, it's the first time I've done it, but internally I was just like, oh, it could be a 9 6 half, actually. They could <laughs> bring this right back. But the amount of times just in like passing conversation, I've said 16, but during the cast, I think I've been pretty good yeah, at it. Yeah. Me too. But that's, awesome. this is the first time my brain's just gone, oh, wow, they can actually really recover this half. Isn't it? <laughs> Last round of the half. And we're sure. I'm, I'm definitely 100% last round of the half. Let's get cracking. Still looks a bit clumsy there from EF. Well, Nate's being lined up on the roof. Delivery. An Alexek to finish. Slight chip damage on that AG. Rops will also layer it with the molly. I don't think that one. It is destined target. Oh, the timing of that was sublime. Just as the smoke was fading, Zantares had pushed forward. But he still gets the better of Rob. So a nice opening for Eternal Fire. Brokey forward position, anticipated, pre-aimed and executed with Cardia. Zantares, these are names we haven't been saying much this T-side. Still got the ants in the pants, don't they, FaZe? Last round, yeah, sure, maybe Brokey gets caught and then Carrigan decides to push. This is two audacious peaks from FaZe. Late within the half, just wanting to get things done. 
and it's resulted in a bit of a stabilizing scoreline. It'd be very frustrating if uh, we come back from the break, a ton of fire win the pistol, conversion, first gun round, back up for contention. Yeah, here's those double mollies we saw. Frozen dismounts the hut. Rain's caught with Cardia and oh no, actually, wait, magic goes down. Ooh, damage is done. Damage is done. Rain has vision. All three of them on that site. A little overextension was all it would take. It's not to know the whole squad there. And Madja will close. A nice headshot to post it. And three. Is it enough though? As Chad has highlighted, there is a path back into this game and the Spodek in this series. Let's find out if they can find it. Could be locking our first pole into the Spodek if FaZe can convert a 9-3 lead. Neo, coach, and of course, legend of the game standing behind the boys as they are close. Within touching distance, Eternal Fire have made one hell of a game over the course of these three maps. However, it does seem that the energy has run dry in that first half of our third. I think they've been offered a bit of a lifeline with a couple of audacious moves from FaZe at the close of the half. Get the pistol get the conversation started. Roki's just going. They're just running straight into the top side with Cardia. Oh, he falls he off, off the, the hut. That dual Beretta power position, woof, walks it. Quick snap into Frozen has kept them in the running. No kid, a HE and a flash for the retake. Make it just a HE, make it none of the days. Lobby, but they're not clearing out Robs. He's behind them, Kalix through already. 
trying to take this duel on multiple fronts. Brokey's using those duelies to more success than Macardia. And yeah, Robs, he's hit the shot he needed to. This was... Uh, was this part of the comeback uh, requirements? It needed to be a no, pistol. not at all. Uh, Eternal Fire have done great in some of these lower buy rounds, so at least we can keep hope yep. alive for another round longer. But Wikadia, who, you know, we've been singing these praises, he gets the special package of the Jewel Berettas, your top heart. That's where you're meant to at least be able to get one kill to unload 30 bullets of pain, and he didn't get anything done. I think he must have just got on that door and slid right off. We'll see it again, yeah. A bit unfortunate. Phase. They will get to 10. Felt like they should have probably done that within the first half. And you're going to be a bit frustrated as mm. Adja normally can turn to your star, and he has been delivering the high impact for you. Throughout, I mean, some of his plays on Anubis Inferno, they all of Bacardio winning rounds on his own, but. Sig takes the scout. We have got the force buy in. Eternal Fire have been very proficient in rounds like this. Yes, uh, FaZe, awfully cautious, I would imagine. You'd have to expect Wopsic to bring out a scout and a few tags from that. Could spell dire consequences. And his luck through the smoke. The Famous will sound off. Yeah, he makes the wise and informed decision to back away ahead of any reloading or upon the smoke fade. They do have this util advantage. So just the two smoke wall, a molly towards secret. And Rain with his flight paths ironed out. You can see they're just under the lip of the smoke, but not ready for this. MP9 unloads. And you can see with magic quick to communicate there was no one else. Heading ramp. Get ready. Calyx readies himself for battle. Three to find. Great Ding gets away. Tag as well. Kill. Phase, they are weak. They are susceptible, and it's getting worse for them with the loss of Carrigan Lobby. How low they are. 28, 29, 7. Up the heavens? Really? It's held by Zentares. Brokey. Oh! Awareness. Zentares has dropped the ball. And now Brokey can get the bomb down. Still, though, Wicardia with that MAC 10, with their health where it is. If he can catch them off guard, a little well timed play. Maybe Brokey on the reload. He slipped past them. Huge gap. Element of surprise. This is Wicardi Huge where he does gap. his best work. He's going to surely catch Brokey unawares. There's only one to find. Seven HP on Frozen. There's nothing for him here. Spotted as well. The two of them can work this out. Shouldn't be a kit. Flubs the first flash. Peeking on the second, perhaps. He's held by Kalix. Someone's got a sit comfortable it. fight. Kalix doesn't finish it off. He does eventually. Just in the nick of time as well. That timer just hit 10. Oh, it's the classic eternal fire in these lighter investments. Getting it done against FaZe once more. Look at every map that they played against FaZe. There has been a bunch of rounds that they've been able to pick up in similar fashion. These second rounds, they're so hard to deal with. And Eternal Fire's proficiency on them has been fantastic. Kalix with the dink in the early stages. Woxic with the tag on the scout. Wakadia not overplaying his hand. And of course, Magic to open up the proceedings with the MP9. And that is still going to keep the belief alive, right? They lose the pistol. That's all right. We got a second round with peanuts that we can put in our back pocket and force the first tactical timeout out of phase. Neo said, hey, boys, we can't let them back in the game. This is not the point we want to let this get out of control. If we now contend with a force by war of our own, that is opening the door. Let's just take a save, which it looks like they're about to do. Oh, boy. <laughs> Just when I thought this was going to be a slow finish to an intense series, Ooh. Eternal Fire are in it to win it. Not going to give them that force by, not going to give them the opportunity to close the gap dramatically. It is just going to be a couple of Desert Eagles, Tech 9. Rain going searching with that Deagle. Certainly got the aim to back it up. Boosting up. Doesn't spot anything glimmer of that main presence they're well aware of. Straight bullet into Wicardia, but he will on to carry it. And there, just that like that, a flurry of frags. Four found. Leaving Frozen. With an impossible task. All right, well, FaZe won't expect to get a lot out of that type of investment. Almost. Oh, we almost. Yeah. He, he's doing something.
Yeah, they're gonna do something. What's he doing? <laughs> are they? Purchases are coming through. You tilt. Bought in. Rops with a key piece. Oh, he to blow open that squeaky door. It's being broken. That missed one. Most important one. Yeah. Hang around to make sure they'll have to be reinstalled in the next. Deep Molly suppresses Rain's movements on Yard. Calix posturing for a pop behind this smoke. Not far off the mark. It's always fun to see ramp players have that battle of wits between the two halves. Rops was trying to apply that pressure to Calix. Two smokes again. again. Oh, not far off the mark. He actually gets rained down to 5 HP. Harrison's looking in the warehouse. He's found the gap. He has. He's... Oh, adjusted into Zantares. An opening kill from FaZe's leader. It's a big one to post. Taking down Zantares, and Calix just slinks away. He concedes ramp. He gives it up. In response to the Carrigan frag, Robs now investigates and realizes it's a bit quiet out here. Oh, Woxing. The Molly's actually a godsend here. If he just rounded the corner, he probably goes down. They're still trying to flush out this position of Carrigan, so multiple bodies glued on this as just they park the bus. Nobody can Everyone's rotate down, down towards B. You can't go secret. You can't go ramp. You might have to go ramp. Well, Cardi, you can't even go vent right now. Three players are going to be quite swiftly here. So two players are pinned on yard by Wakadi in main. Yeah. Well, Wakadi was main. Here we go. Out from Madja. Lots of bodies. Nice from Frozen. Somehow still alive after that one. He's had his bell rung. But Woxic and Calix, they're thinking better. They're thinking twice. And it's Carrigan, this late arrival on the hunt. Oh, he knows where they both are. He will go down, sharp shooting from Calix. It should signal a successful save, but still being hunted, actually. Robs has got him. Just like that, controls the spray, they lose it all. And you know what that means. You can see from the celebrations of FaZe as well, not just for the round win, but for the successful hunt. Yeah, miserable decisions that a ton of fire have to make now. And they all just came with Carrigan braving through the smoke and catching Zantares off guard. You can see he just limps through the right side of that deepest smoke while Zantares was having that exchange with Rain uh, and Carrigan. Massive impact. They're able to get themselves down to B. That forces the rotation of Calix away. Walks out of position. The void is too big and no way back in. It will be the force from Eternal Fire. Ooh, well, we know, we know what we've been saying about those. But yeah. with so much at stake. They have too many good guns to make this one possible. Yeah, Space. three rifles. Hold on. It's two rounds away from the Spodek now. Taking the path of least resistance to the playoffs. Making light work of Rebels. And Calix. He missed him. He didn't see it. Carrigan can't quite believe it as he adjusts. And Calix, yeah, that's a face to palm moment as this full investment has collapsed. They came your way. The element of surprise was yours, but. A quick adjustment from Carrigan, another high impact opening. And those three M4s up against the five man unit. Just regrouping, ensuring there's trade potential heading on into that low site. Rain controlling the vent rotation. Starts to poke. A little bit of an investigation towards the top site as the bomb looks to be planted. A silent descent. Yeah. And you don't want to be giving this one a go, do you? So you? I mean, it's so it's so brutal to be accepting 12 like that, but... Oh, they've been played off right interest. now. You yeah. can hear the music. This one's done. Wrap her up. We are done and dusted, Face. I think one more round required, and they're not surging forward to wipe the board, but they might...